if is that so mr gurumurthy we it's like you you've known someone for the longest time and uh, for me he has been my guru so when you meet your guru for the first time physically it's an overwhelming moment for me so mr gurumurthy i can talk about what he's going to talk about but i'd rather talk about him i am tremendously excited today to welcome someone on stage who is firebrand firebrand if there ever was one a risk taker a person with the most altruistic spirit fierce nationalist ferocious nationalist and people talk in in lutians very easily about who's an intellectual and who's not i have no hesitation in saying that mr s gurumurthy is beyond doubt india's number one public intellectual who is among us today he's a thought leader he's a thought leader and an inspiring person so i'm tremendously excited today to to welcome here and he makes very rare appearances like this those who know and i kept him for the last session because mr gurumurthy rarely comes for events like this rarely comes on panels his influence people talk about his influences is spoken about for me he is a very influential thinker and we are honored to have you um, among us here today a uh, formal introductions are not required for you sir you are the chairman of the vivekananda international foundation uh, you are a well known india's number one corporate strategist political thinker macro economist you are on the rbi board but for me as i began by saying mr gurumurthy is a truly my guru a mentor and a guide and he is someone who i have looked up to from the beginning of my career as a journalist his views are dogged persistent and totally unpredictable you don't know what twist he will take but the incredible thing about mr gurumurthy is he will take a month two months three months sometimes to produce two articles but those articles when he writes them are so condensed and factual in their wisdom that they are bibles by themselves so i called him i called mr gurumurthy i said sir you please come i want you at my event but he set some conditions to me he said to me or no in his own humble way he said i don't want to be a burden on your event i said sir you please come he said i have been working for the last 6 months on one subject almost for 8 to 10 hours every day for the last 6 months mr gurumurthy has been studying and analyzing if i get it right and he can correct me later on stage in a multidisciplinary way the impact of global geopolitical trends post covid post ukraine on what is going to be the future geopolitical and economic order in the world if i have got your overall picture right and he believes that we are in for a unpredictable future but since i was just talking to him even before he spoke about a silo free world he says that the financial system is no longer predictable he is extremely critical of the western capitalist model and he just said there and i thought it was a very uh, a prophetic thought he said that the short term capitalist view of the west as opposed to the long term view of china is bearing fruit in some of the trends that we are seeing today and it's going to be very exciting for us to listen to him and mr gurumurthy fanboys should not be allowed to do such long introductions anymore they should be told to get off the stage so huge round of applause we are honored to have you amidst our mist mr gurumurthy thank you sir
నమస్కారంస్ టు ఆల్ యునో వెన్ యూ ఆర్ ఇంట్రడ్యూస్డ్ లైక్ దిస్ ద బార్ ఈస్ రేస్ టు సో హై యూ హ్యావ్ టు రియలీ క్లైంబ్ అప్ అండ్ క్రాస్ ఇట్ టు కన్విన్స్ యూ దట్ హౌ ఐ ఆమ్ ఇంట్రడ్యూస్డ్ ఈస్ వర్త్ ఇట్ యునో ఐ వాస్ ఇంట్రడ్యూస్డ్ యాజ్ అ మైక్రో ఎకానమిస్ట్ ద వన్ థింగ్ విచ్ హీ డీన్ సేవ్ అస్ ఐ వాస్ ఆల్సో ఈ జర్నలిస్ట్ ఐఎమ్ ఎ చార్టెడ్ అకౌంటెంట్ బట్ చార్టెడ్ అకౌంటెంట్స్ థింగ్ ఐఎమ్ ఎ జర్నలిస్ట్ the journalists who do not want to accept me as a journalist they call me as a chartered accountant he called me as an economist but you know when we were carrying on a huge movement against the kind of globalization that had set off in 1990s so i had taken a position that uh, india will have to produce huge domestic energy domestic savings and our domestic consumption will be the core and the global will be the additive for india and this i have been articulating in diverse ways through researches and all that somebody told dr jagdish bhagwati you are saying that uh, india must focus on imports rather than domestic uh, production and it must focus on getting fdi rather than domestic savings in fact he went to the extent of saying india doesn't need savings india must spend and through that there should be growth i mean i was very critical of him so somebody went and said mr gurumurthy holds a contrary view he said mr gurumurthy who is he no he is also a very well known economic thinker oh if mr gurumurthy is an economic thinker you can call me a bharatanatyam dancer see this was the extent to which we were all subjected to in terms of public comments humiliating us in those days and uh, in fact recently mr p chidambaram quoted this in an article in a newspaper the indian express which i used to very proudly associate with that modi's government is comfortable with bharatanatyam dancers as economic advisers you know i study economics not from the perspective of a theoretical economist i have my experience in the world of finance corporate law geopolitics and when i hit the vekananda international foundation which is probably the uh, most sought after think tank in india by people from outside because it has put in the trust deed that we will not accept donations from outside india that is why all the think tanks from outside india want to associate with us deal with us because we will be thinking independently <laughs> it was ajith doval's idea that we should produce a nationalist think tank which will be uninfluenced by people from outside money from outside politics from outside so we all exist for a purpose so from that perspective you know my credentials now how economists call me it's like a bharatanatyam dancer speaking about economics now you have to listen to me with this kind of negative comments which the mainstream economists used to make about people who think independently about economics now i have been asked to speak about the indian way you know my introduction to the indian way was quite accidental being a corporate advisor dealing with uh, all kinds of international uh, fund flow investments i never thought i would get into the sudeshi movement but when the tsunami of globalization started thoughtlessly the indian people were lured into it by the inevitability of uh, the country being in a huge stress on the external front we had no option but to accept whatever was said so we needed to create an alternative opinion in the country so i went about studying different places i went to ludhiana batala rajkot jamnagar morbi right down to tutukudi i studied about 30 40 industrial clusters to find out whether india has the energy to fight globalization i mean i i knew about bombay i knew about uh, corporates how do they handle i even deal with them what i found was an india which 
Indian leadership was not aware, media was not aware, economists were not aware. In fact, I used to ask this question in many audiences. Which is the place with the highest per capita income in India? It's not Bombay, it's not Delhi, it's not Bangalore, it's not Hyderabad, it's not Calcutta, it's not Delhi. Can you please think about it? It is a place called Morbi in Gujarat, which was devastated by a dam burst in 1965 and wiped out by uh, an earthquake in 2001. It has 1200 textile units and almost equal number of ceramic units. It is the ceramic capital of India. And it makes the Ajanta wall clock has a, an external arm to export Ajanta wall clock into America to take advantage of the MFN between America and China. You know, the one language which those people do not know is English. The entrepreneurial energy of that place, there are four lakh people there in that small place. More than 60% are employed. This was the revelation to me. When I went to Ludhiana, I never knew. Ludhiana was such a big center. They manufacture machine tools. And they export cycle spare parts to all multinational cycle manufacturing companies. Where did that technology come to them? It was because of a community called Ramgadia community who were born engineers. Punjabis here may know whom I am talking about. Same experience everywhere. But this is not the India which you will read in the policy documents. You will see in the RBI reports or in the finance minister's reports. So a different India I saw and began thinking differently about how we have to approach the subject of economics, particularly in the context of what is the Indian way of working. So I will share some of this with you in the context of the international studies, which is very important because India is not a country we can live with itself because one-sixth of humanity, it cannot live isolated. And it cannot be dependent on the world. Some people will say, see how the East Asian, East Asian economies have grown. Whether it is Singapore or Hong Kong or... These are all countries which you can cycle across in a, in a, in a, half, in a half a day, sometimes 15 days. India is a huge country. It cannot be dependent on the world and it cannot be isolated from the world. So we have a very difficult job to perform so far as our relation with the world is concerned. To understand the Indian way, we have also to understand the ways in which the world works and world powers work. So with this, I will take you to a small uh, bit of history because without history you cannot relate to the present. Actually, when the 2008 financial crisis came, many American economists felt that you have to cast aside the macro macroeconomics and we have to go for history of economics to know how nations, how peoples, how policies have been made. Without that background, you cannot handle the present crisis. This is one of the very sound views which were expressed at that time. You see, in 1951, the Western nations formulated a model that if the underdeveloped nations have to develop, they have to give up their philosophy, they have to give up their culture, they have to give up their way of life, and all caste, creed, everything has to collapse, and this is nothing but the Western anthropological modernity. This was the official document of the United Nations, and it was founded on Max Weber's theory that only Protestant Christian ethic can bring about development. And he wrote a book on uh, the religion of Hinduism and Buddhism to say these two countries, India and Russia, uh, India and China will never come up because they believe in karma and rebirth. Only an individualist society can produce entrepreneurship. This was the base of the 1951 document on the base of which our sociology department, our economics department, Everything began functioning. We must understand that was one size fit all model. This one size fit all model was recommended to all the nations, but in 1990, this one size fit all model became mandatory. 
through globalization. So they created institutions, they created theories, they created a huge amount of uh, campaigning model against which we are fighting. When I was talking to Administrative Staff College of India, that this globalization itself is based on a philosophy which I will deal with later, that it might collapse any time because the institutional arrangement needed for globalization presumes there will be world peace forever. In fact, Francis Fukuyama, who theorized the idea of globalization, he said it is the final victory of the West over the rest. It is the best for the rest to follow the West. This was a simple formulation. Liberal economics, uh, liberal democracy, and market economics have won against the rest, and the entire world will have to be co-opted to that. And he said, all conflicts have ended. We can close down the history departments, which is based on conflicts only. This was the foundation of globalization. And at that time, when we were talking about, you know, every country will have to stand on its own. You cannot really be a... And especially a country with one-sixth of humanity cannot be dependent on the world. We have to be on our own. When I was addressing a meeting in the Administrative Staff College of India, somebody stood up and said, people like you must be shot dead because you are taking the country 500 years back. This was the institutionalized opinion at that time. And now what happened later? I will take you through how the world order changed later. In 2008, you know the economic collapse took place. First, it was a recommended one-size-fit-all model. In 1990s, it was a mandated one-size-fit-all model. In 2008, it became a suspect one-size-fit-all model. In 2020, when the COVID came, it became a questioned one-size-fit-all model. After the Ukraine, it has become a challenged one-size-fit-all model. We must understand that the shift that occurred from one to the other, it was not only that. In between, in 2001, a 9-11 attack took place, uh, the Americans felt, you know, they need a larger forum to bring people together. So they, they had the G20 arrangement. In the first meeting of the G20 in Beijing in 2005, the, all the people consulted and passed a resolution. This one-size-fits-all model will not work. Each country will have to work out its own model. No newspaper published this in India. In 2008, the World Bank said this. In our experience, we learned the hard way because they were the people who were propagating this one-size-fits-all model for all the countries. They said, we learned the hard way. It won't work. Each country will have to work out its own model. In 2010, the United Nations, which propagated one-size-fits-all model in 1951, it said it won't work. In 2013, in the Millennial Declaration, they said each country will have to work out its model based on its own culture, its way of life, its history. Did you see anything in the Indian discourse? It was only in 2014 when this government got elected in the Niti Aayog. The fundamental charter Narendra Modi wrote that imported models cannot be replanted into India. You have to think of what will work in and for India. This was this was the statement which was overdue. It was almost a decade more. So with this, the idea of how the world moved from 1990 to 2014, so far as India is concerned, and the foundation of globalization that there will be permanent world peace has been disturbed by terrorism, by wars consequent on terrorism, and now the Ukraine war, and before that, the COVID. So the mutual trust, which was the theoretical and practical foundation of globalization, is all but over. Today, there is no global commons left. Even the swift method, which is common to all, this has become a weapon in the war. Dollar reserves have become weapons in the war. Anybody can seize your dollar reserve today, if the Western countries want. 
so now in this world nobody can be called upon to trust anyone and the entire architecture we have built is based on the global institutions we have built whether it is the wto or whether it is the bank of international settlement or the financial stability board laying down the rules for how the banks should function in different countries with the same uniform lending model all these are under stress heavily questioned heavily challenged and so we have to now look at what india went through in this period india was a docile player it had no will to power in fact nobody even bothered about india it was in 1998 when the pokhran blast took place the world took notice of india because the indian began celebrating all over the world about india's rise as a nuclear power and more than that which is less noticed but more important is that the india development bonds which is the government of india issued asking for 5 billion dollars because we were bereft of money uh, all the sanctions financial sanctions technological sanctions trade sanctions on india so everybody thought india would collapse in the next 3 4 months in fact i have heard finance ministry official saying this government has destroyed india i have heard this comment in my ears but when the indian development bonds was announced and the subscription was not 5 billion dollars 6.2 billion dollars when nobody would trust india with a dollar <laughs> that made america understand that there is something working in india you know one thing you must said about say about america they can understand the turn so they immediately felt that we have to engage india then slowly sanctions were removed you know what was the growth in that period the senior will tell you in that 6 year 5 year period the growth rate was average of 5.4% or so and in that period we posted for the first time current account surplus in two consecutive years never happened between 1950 and 90 and 2002 except for one year during the emergency we posted current account surplus and our employment generation was 16 million in 5 years record never happened in the past never happened later afterwards you know we had a government which said we are having a 10% growth rate in fact many people say the golden period of the indian economy in 6 years they had an average of 10% growth rate you know what was the employment generated 2.7 million it was a jobless growth the entire growth was that money came from outside dr y v reddy said don't accept this money because this money is poison you cannot digest this money 300 billion dollars came into the stock market stock market hit the root it went to 20000 and economic times wrote india the super power stock market going up to 20000 is going to make you super power you know how many listed what is the contribution of listed companies to the india's gdp 5% the entire corporate sector 15% i am talking about at that time and this kind of misnomers misinformation misrepresentation about the country and its energies this was diverting our opinion and afterwards india was accepted as a power which could not be ignored in the international fora and india's stature began to rise we were part of the g20 and then we were also being thought of being invited to g7 and in 2009 one turn took place regularization of our our status as an atomic power is a very important achievement for which i must credit dr manmohan singh despite the fact sonia gandhi opposed it the only thing on which he protested against sonia gandhi and did not give in was signing the indo us atomic rec- uh, deal very major development afterwards we went to sleep till narendra modi arrived on the scene that was the third and the most galloping moment of the indian economy and the man's approach was very different 
people used to say first generation reform second generation reform third generation reform he threw all this in the dustbin his reform was how many bank accounts the indian people have do they have bank accounts i know what discussions took place the rbi would not allow more than 10 million accounts the finance ministry will not say more than 30 million accounts not possible the prime minister said i want before march 2015 75 million accounts it happened you know what is the tally today 420 million accounts out of which 380 million accounts are operating you know what is the amount of deposit in those accounts they said where will you get the money you said you open the accounts i know how to put the money in it he had the dbt arrangement in his mind this is not the reform that world bank was talking about this is not the reform that economists were talking about this is not the reform that media was talking about this is a reform which will work in and for india you see what happened to the dbt scheme afterwards the total amount in the accounts is over 1.5 lakh crores is ordinary people's money is lying in the bank account this transformation and demonetization many people at that time criticized and even continue to criticize it but demonetization is what made the indian informal economy formal today the uh, state bank of india has come out with a report that the informal economy in india has shrunk it was almost 50% 52% it has shrunk to as low as 15 to 18% this happened only because of demonetization without demonetization gst would not have succeeded and it was such a tough decision to take up elections were coming the whole country in distress the prime minister said please give me 50 days i will set rate everything see the kind of leadership they have the courage the competence the risk bearing tendency you know this is the transformation that took place and afterwards you know housing we never went into housing like china did china went into housing in the same model as the americans which i'll come to later america europe and china not japan they all went into funding real estate for growth and that is what i am going to deal with as to how it is dynamiting the world economy today and if you look at the world asset base you must know that uh, credit suisse is publishing a world wealth report in 2019 the total wealth they reported is 380 trillion dollars out of which 280 trillion dollars is real estate out of which 220 trillion dollars is house property against which the liability is 3253 trillion dollars it's all credit suisse figures the 253 trillion dollar liability is real this 280 trillion dollar valuation is notional this is the structure of the world economy and now after 2008 the movement forward is so dangerous it is not being recognized by anyone and i will take you back to 2008 when subprime lending lifted the asset prices this did not happen accidentally in 1980s american economy stabilized because of control of the us federal reserve system over the interest rate over the quantum of money that was in circulation one year they dropped the growth but they completely reversed the whole thing and became a very major economic power because of one man called paul volcker who was the federal reserve chairman at that time he was backed by the monetary theory of milton friedman this combination worked wonders you know afterwards what happened in 1990 so much dollars went out of circulation you know out of the printed dollars of 2.8 trillion dollars 60% is circulating outside america this was the currency after 1990s what happened america began to export dollars and import goods from 1976 till now 
America's current account deficit has been 14 trillion dollars. In 1989-89, if I remember right, the Economist magazine wrote uh, an article that the most export-oriented industry in America is printing of dollars. They exported dollars and imported goods. All these dollars accumulated outside America. According to the latest Bank of International Settlement reports, the non-U.S. banks sourcing money from non-U.S. sources, including citizens, has 12.8 trillion lending in dollar, which is beyond the control of the U.S. Federal Reserve System. The sovereign funds which have accumulated huge amount of money because of the oil sales, 10 trillion dollars, at least 22.5 trillion dollar, which is more than the GDP of America, is in the hands of people who are rich in the U.S. Federal Reserve System's interest control won't work. Its quantitative expansion or contraction won't work. That is why, even when they put up the interest rates, inflation is not coming down. There is a complete contradiction. Why American economy is not responding to hike in interest rate? And it is not a big hike. It's just about 3.4% now. Why it is not working? You have to go back to what happened in 2007 when Alan Greenspan, who was called the god of uh, money, he said, you know, it is not possible to measure up what is the amount of dollar in circulation. So we will not have normal tools of monetary management. We will have discretionary monetary management. And I must tell you something which the world has not discussed, India has not discussed, but how important it is. He said, you know, the asset price rise, you know, whether it is property, whether it is stocks or anything else, asset price rise is not an evil. It is actually proper prosperity. It is a commodity price which is uh, evil. So we should focus on commodity price. We should allow the asset price to rise. The result is, today, you have asset prices have risen to such an extent because of not the value of the property, because the cheapness of the money. Nil interest, low interest. So at this time when you are putting up the interest rates, a discussion came and the US, uh, the former Treasury Secretary, uh, Lawrence, I forget his name. So he said that it is not possible for the world to get used to higher rate of interest because the entire asset class which were based on low and nil interest rate will collapse on which the banking system is working, non-banking system is working. The banking system is today almost equal to the non-banking or shadow banking system. The banking system lends about $180 billion, trillion dollars, according to the, uh, the, the FSB report, Financial Stability Board report. The shadow banks lend $142 trillion, out of which $63 trillion is lending of short-term money for long-term purposes, it can result in a huge mess. This is the global situation. Normal times it would work. We may be able to get over the, even normal times we could not get over the crisis which Lehman Brothers created. It, we are not in normal times today. Today America is in no position to control the dollar. It is in no, posi no position to control the oil supply. There was a time when America was importing oil it could import more, it could import less to influence the global oil prices. But America from 2019 has become an exporter of oil. It is like any other oil country. It will not be able to influence the oil prices. With this, from 1970, the game that was being played by the Western capitalist financial model of finance dominating commodities has been completely reversed by the Ukraine war. When these financial sanctions were levied on Russia, everybody thought Russia would collapse. In fact, Biden even said, ruble has become rubble. In seven days, the situation reversed. Only on one announcement. We are not going to sell oil. So the power of oil dominated over the power of money. 
a very very powerful message against the entire architecture of global financial theories which were questioned in 2008 in fact there was a street fight among economists in fact i was introduced as macro economist by uh, arnab economists came out with a front page cover story the economic theory book is melting away what's wrong with economics inside the editorial said it is not an economic crisis it is economics in crisis so much so they began hitting at each other the la the last 40 years 30 years of macro economic research is useless at best or harmful at worst even today the same theories are functioning the debate stopped because there is no answer to the kind of problems which have been created lehman brothers published a report in the 2020 annual report that the share of the banks regulated by the us federal reserve system in us is one third of the total money that is being lent and borrowed where is the us federal reserve system's control and our newspapers our media our institutions i'll tell you when the us put up the interest rates our newspapers came out with story that 100 billion dollars will move out of india i studied from 2001 till now there is no correlation between us federal reserve rates and money coming into and going out of india i have completely proved it there is no correlation another there is no correlation even between the difference between the us federal reserve interest and indian interest so far as the money coming in and going out is concerned because money moves seeking profit wherever it is available it is not dependent on the interest rates i tell you what happened on 27th july the us federal reserve system increased the interest rate a second time everybody said more money will move out of india you know we bet from july onwards we began getting money we got about 8 billion dollars in july and august did it come in the newspaper did any newspaper say that we were wrong so the assumptions on which the world is working is not the basis on which the economy is working so there is a fundamental shift in the us economy and i will make four points and then i will come to what is our response what is the indian way you know four shifts that have taken place in the in the us for the last 50 years is going to dynamite the us economy i am giving one by one the supply chain model which were worked out during globalization has made us import dependent almost forever it could produce money import goods it can never reverse it even today you can see any media writing the only way to control inflation is to bring down the duty of imports from china you can see in any newspaper in america because us federal reserve system has lost the capacity to manage inflation it has been managing only through printing dollars and exporting it outside and bringing in cheap goods this has been the model for the last 20 years do you mean it can change and you can see any number of newspapers in america saying the same thing and they said no 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 you bring down the duty from the european union there is no use of bringing down the duty from european union because the european union inflation is higher than that of america so europe cannot export deflation to america so this is the situation in which the us is second is state dependent population has peaked in america 51% of the american population is taking some handout or the other and even more important because two things i will tell you which will shock and i will compare india in 1960 in america per household 
there was 3.3 persons today it is 2.5 persons the reduction of 0.8 percent per household meant a construction of 32 million more houses at the cost of 8 trillion dollars and this added to the gdp in india we have almost 30 crore houses households and our our uh, average person per household was 5.1 in 1950 it is 4.5 now if one person per household is reduced in india we will need 6 crore more houses and we are promoting individual rights we are promoting human rights of son against the father father against the son daughter against this is what happened in america we should work on civilizational policies to sustain our economy your law your courts your media destroying the civilizational foundation of india which makes india maintain 4.5 percent per household does anybody discuss this the indian way is that we will bear with difficulties but we will be together and that means even one person employed is a whole house employed there is savings why india is one of the highest saving nations in the world is because we have family responsibility we have to protect our uh, we have to safeguard our children you have to take care of the parents you have to take care of the elders all these responsibilities are removed and universal social security has been mandated in america against which people like milton friedman said don't do it their advice was not heeded. 1980 american economy in transition several economists came together to discuss this this book has been published by the national bureau of economic research america this is one of the finest books which captures how america degenerated as an economy in which milton friedman said please don't interfere between the two generations let the sons take care of the parents don't ask them to pay the tax and you take care of the parents you take care of the children forget about it you have already taken over the kitchen through multinationals if you take over family responsibilities also a functionless family will cease to exist this was the conclusion of the economists america did it you look at the american social security report today you know they were collecting money and paying out to people they were collecting money from all people who were working and they were paying out to people who could not work the receipt was more than the payout till 2009 now it has reversed payout is more than the receipts because more people are retiring they have found out that the present value of the future social security obligations which they have undertaken today they need that much money to discharge that obligation is 63 trillion dollars america doesn't have even one dollar let us assume if it is some other country that currency will cease to exist all this is now putting pressure on america if commodity becomes dominant the dollar will not be able to dominate the world that is the message of ukraine now if you look at the direction in which the world is going and what we should be doing i will conclude with these two points the european union has published a paper it's a very important paper i sent it to mr ramp it says by 240 that 2040 there will be diffusion of global power the power that is concentrated now will get diffused among the nations it's not our document it's their document and it will shift from west to asia the second point that make is by 2030 there will be no hegemonic power in the world and i told you about the harvard economist who said that american dollar is not sustained by rules of economics it is not controlled by fiscal rules it is not controlled by trade rules it is not controlled by monetary rules it is backed by what is known as the laws of physics the world the universe is sustained by a dark matter 
dollar is also sustained by a dark matter called the power of the united states it is not because from 1976 14 trillion dollar is the current account surplus the deficit you have incurred dollar value must have gone down to the depth but dollar values had gone up by three times in this period to which the explanation of the harvard economist says no 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 for us economic laws don't apply it is a law of physics this was the extent to which the american establishment discredited itself and that is the money which we are. china had 2 trillion dollars in us government securities they have withdrawn the money and come down to as low as 900 billion dollars they say they will put the money in some project which may not even fetch return but i am not going to put it in american security because it is a suspect currency today we must understand how the world is moving it is not going to be led by the west certainly not by the us and unless we really understand where things are moving and in 2040 e7 china india indonesia brazil russia and mexico this is called e7 the output and the gdp of e7 will be twice the output and gdp of g7 this is the documentation we are moving into a very a, from a west centric world to a diffused world the world order which we talked about that's not going to be the same in world economic forum in in may 2022 two great men spoke about the shift that is taking place in the world order one was henry kissinger very wise man he told the americans not to start this war he told the americans not to expand nato he told the americans give up uh, uh, uh this ukraine he said the war must end immediately in one or two months otherwise the world order will be restructured forever and permanently and then george soros he said the western civilization is in danger these are all nor- normal people they are very influential people so the entire world order world institution whether it is nobody cares for wto does anybody speak about globalization these days no it's over so we are moving into a totally uncharted course and what india should be doing on that i'll tell you we have to maintain our civilizational basis even our even democracy is civilizational in nature in fact yogendra yadav he had done a research how in india voting pattern takes place he says more unemployed people more illiterate people more poor people more scheduled caste more minorities vote in india than educated people then higher class people then wealthy people india's bottom spread is strong you look at the liberal democracies only 40% of the youths vote educated people only vote wealthy people only vote and in fact there is backsliding of democracy in west east east european countries the entire western liberal democracy is under great stress from 80% voting they have come to an average of 45% voting the liberty that you have given to the youngsters they are making use of only to enjoy their life and not to contribute even to the sustenance of the democracy so our civilizational democracy is growing freedom of said india is one of the strongest democracies in the world despite the fact they don't accept us as liberal democracies indian democracy is strong because of the indian civilizational base indian economy is strong because we have a strong civilizational base as i said if all earning indians decide to disown their responsibilities towards people who are elder to them 50 to 60 crore people will be standing before the narendra modi for two square meals a day can they afford it indian economy is sustained by indian civilization indian culture indian value systems does it come in economics textbook 
इकोनॉमिक डिस्कोर्स वॉट इज द इफेक्ट ऑफ फोर पॉइंट फाइव परसेंट पर हाउस होल्ड इन इंडिया एज कंपेयर टू टू पॉइंट सिक्स परसेंट पर हाउस होल्ड इन अमेरिका इफ दैट सिचुएशन बिकम्स लाइक इन अमेरिका वेर विल बी इंडिया एंड यू आर नॉट सस्टेनिंग इट थ्रू एजुकेशन यू आर एक्चुअली प्रमोटिंग द डिस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ द सिविलाइजेशन वैल्यूज कल्चर वैल्यू सिस्टम रिस्पेक्ट फॉर पेरेंट्स एल्डर्स टीचर्स दिस इज पार्ट ऑफ इकोनॉमिक विजडम ऑफ इंडिया the third thing is we are a non aggressive hard power fortunately we are quite hard power no world power can ignore us and we are an attractive soft power and family as the social security foundation of india nation first approach which has shaken the world we had only 24 hours to decide what position we will take on ukraine the position we took changed the complexion not only india but also the global situation as to what a democratic power which had elected a very powerful person and he is the top person of the uh, of all the leaders he is occupying the top position for the last 3 years continuously it's not a joke all this has contributed to the rise of a, an indian model a confidence as a nation today the, the foreign minister goes and tells you you are saying we are buying oil the oil that you are buying in one afternoon we are buying in one month they have no answer this is the indian way we have been subjugating ourselves we never thought we could be self reliant we have now come to a position where we can think for ourselves work for ourselves lead ourselves mediate and take positions there was a cartoon published in in japanese newspaper with which we learned whether it is in g7 or in brics or in quad everybody on both sides is holding narendra modi's hand this is the cartoon published in in uh, japan so this time has come we need to build up the spirit and i am extremely happy that arnab and republic tv are the ones ceaselessly building up the indian spirit and i congratulate them thank you very much Avati faculty have filed over 1600 patents. Yet another reason why Avati has been ranked among the top for innovation achievements. Legislature Barak Arbe, a member of the opposition Republican People's Party, smashed a smartphone with a hammer while addressing Parliament, saying the clampdown on social media would make smartphone obsolete. Critics fear that as elections loom, the measure will be used to further crack down on social media and independent reporting. The 40-article legislation was approved with the vote of President Governing Party and its nationalist allies, which together hold a majority in the Parliament. Agency Report, Republic TV. Day on the Bombay High Court, acquitting G N Sai Baba. Now Solicitor General Tushar Mehta is reported to have maintained that the acquittal was not on the basis of merit but for lack of appropriate sanction to prosecute him under the provisions of the UAPA. ये जो फैसला आया है ये बहुत ही दुर्दैवी है बहुत ही निराशाजनक है क्योंकि टेक्निकल ग्राउंड्स पर इस प्रकार से ऐसे व्यक्ति को छोड़ देना जिसके खिलाफ इतने सबूत हैं जिन्होंने एक प्रकार से ये फैसले के कारण जो हमारे पुलिस नक्सलवादियों से लड़ते हुए शहीद हुए उनके घर वालों के ऊपर इससे क्या बीतती होगी इसका विचार मैं बार बार कर रहा हूँ हम 
सर्वोच्च न्यायालय गए हैं सुप्रीम कोर्ट गए हैं और मेरा विश्वास है कि सुप्रीम कोर्ट में न्याय मिलेगा A 21-year-old college student was allegedly molested by an auto rickshaw driver and dragged with a vehicle in Maharashtra Thane. Now, a video of the incident that took place in the city around 6:45 a.m. surfaced on social media. The national president of JDU hit out at Prime Minister Modi, calling him extremely backward and a facade. Now, JDU President Lalan Singh further stated that the PM had been spreading his conservative mindset since he came to power. Shubham Garg's family has been granted a visa to visit Australia. Now, the Indian was repeatedly stabbed in Sydney as a result of an alleged hate crime. Following the case of human uh, sacrifice that emerged in Elanthur, the police are expected to visit the site of the incident to ascertain whether there are any more bodies at the site. The Coimbatore District Administration sealed four offices of the Popular Front of India. The police was accordingly deployed at the offices and in areas of concern during the sealing of the offices. A shootout took place at Kashipur in Uttar Pradesh, where raids were conducted at the house of a police personnel who escaped custody after being taken to a hospital. And the shootout that took place during the police personnel's escape stated led to the death of one woman. Vice Admiral Ajendra Bahadur Singh, Western Naval Commander of the Indian Navy, reviewed the combat readiness of the fleet under his command from October, which included extensive weapon and integration drills as per a statement by the Navy. Now, over 20 Indian Navy warships, including aircraft carrier INS Vikrant, six submarines, and a variety of aircraft, participated in the exercise. There is shot dead Kashmiri Pandit in Jammu and Kashmir Shopian the victim was hospitalized at the district hospital Hum yahan the baag mein the to piche se pata chala ki kisi ki kisi ko goli mari gayi to hum dorte aa gaye yahan pe to yahan dekha yahan khoon gira tha yahan khoon gira tha aur jab hum dekhne lage to tab tak usko apna bhatija le gaya tha bike pe अस्पताल में तो वहाँ से फिर वो एम्बुलेंस में शायद शुपियान ले गए तो फैमिली क्या है इस फैमिली इसकी दो बच्चे हैं छोटे एक लड़की है बड़ी और ट्वेंटी ईयर्स अमेरिका हैज लॉस्ट पॉलिसी कंट्रोल ओवर बोथ फाइनेंस एंड देयर इकोनॉमी एंड दे अलाउड मार्केट टू टेक चार्ज दैट हैज बीन द फॉल ऑफ अमेरिका In Alan Greenspan's declaration in 2007 was precisely this: we will not be able to regulate the finance; let the market regulate it. That is how the banks themselves began shadow banks; they became investment banks. So, the power to control money, which is the signoraj power, which enables stability in the economy, American system has lost it. This is my. That's why I said 22.5 trillion dollars being outside domesticated dollars, which are beyond the control of the U.S. government and U.S. Uh, central uh, bank. It can do so much harm to America. It can buy the whole of America. Abbotty faculty have filed over 1600 patents yet another reason why amity has been ranked among the top for innovation achievements the national president of jdu hit out at prime minister modi calling him extremely backward and a facade now jdu president lalan singh further stated that the pm had been spreading his conservative mindset since he came to power Shubham Garg's family has been granted a visa to visit Australia. Now, the Indian was repeatedly stabbed in Sydney as a result of an alleged hate crime. Uh, this is 
Legislature Barack Arbe, a member of the opposition Republican People's Party, smashed a smartphone with a hammer while addressing parliament, saying the clampdown on social media would make smartphone obsolete. Critics fear that as elections loom, the measure will be used to further crack down on social media and independent reporting. The 40-article legislation was approved with the vote of President Governing Party and its nationalist allies, which together hold a majority in the parliament. Agency Report, Republic TV. Today on the Bombay High Court, acquitting GN Sai Baba. Now, Solicitor General Tushar Mehta is reported to have maintained that the acquittal was not on the basis of merit but for lack of appropriate sanction to prosecute him under the provisions of the UAPA. This decision is very and very Because technical grounds, पर इस प्रकार से ऐसे व्यक्ति को छोड़ देना जिसके खिलाफ इतने सबूत है जिन्होंने एक प्रकार से ये फैसले के कारण जो हमारे पुलिस नक्सलवादियों से लड़ते हुए शहीद हुए उनके घर वालों के ऊपर इससे क्या बीतती होगी इसका विचार मैं बार-बार कर रहा हूं हम सर्वोच्च न्यायालय गए हैं सुप्रीम कोर्ट गए हैं और मेरा विश्वास है कि सुप्रीम कोर्ट में न्याय मिलेगा a 21-year-old college student was allegedly molested by an auto rickshaw driver and dragged with a vehicle in Maharashtra Sthane. Now, a video of the incident that took place in the city around 6.45 a.m. surfaced on social media. The national president of JDU hit out at Prime Minister Modi, calling him extremely backward and a facade. Now, JDU President Lalan Singh further stated that the PM had been spreading his conservative mindset since he came to power. That speech is a treasure, sir, and I thank you for giving us the honor of hosting you for this, for sharing your extremely original and forward-looking prophetic views. We have an opportunity for a question and answer session, and I'll keep it broad. Mr. Gurumurthy, my first question to you is because what I find very refreshing and very different in your approach is that you link society, our civilizational ethos, our history, global events, geostrategy, and then link it back to pure economics. So my question to you, sir, is on a broad level, has the West undermined the impact of geopolitics? on economics or post-World War II, have they taken the geopolitical order in the world for granted? And is it that for the first time in 2021, 20, 22, post-Ukraine, post-COVID, that there has been a rude awakening for them for the first time? Have they been taken by surprise? And, and just to elaborate, because there's been this view that America understands geopolitics and there's been a certain intrinsic arrogance about the way they've dealt with their own place in the world and the rights on the uh, global assets. Did they overstep? Did they forget their own limits? Or have they been outsmarted, Mr. Guru Murthy? What do you think? You see, I believe that uh, the Western thinkers have lost the sense of civilization. The West has been living on the civilizational assets created by their forefathers without fertilizing it to grow. Without fertilizing it to grow. For example, 55% of the first marriages end in divorce in 10 years. 67% of the second marriages end in divorce. 73% of the third marriages end in divorce. Single pair, there are the Americans, 
living with a couple living together is only 28 million households out of 130 million households because they felt civilization will sustain itself civilization requires an ecosystem to survive ultra individualism has destroyed the family culture civilization and promoted only rule of law rule of law cannot be the main basis on which a society can function rule of law has to be very largely supplemented by non formal systems controlling and regulating human behavior this was gone church was doing it they destroyed the church in america when i went to address a meeting of uh, some hindu organization in boston i was uh, taken to a huge building it was a church i said where are we meeting in the church sir it's no more church sir it's a vishnu temple churches are being sold so when you think that 5 years is the limit for human existence your short term is some 5 years politics one year economics uh, quarterly results overnight interest this has destroyed you so it requires a very big thought movement i don't think that kind of thought movement can generate in an ultra liberal america with wokism on the rise i think whether they will be able to sustain the kind of democratic uh, the liberal democratic institutions and approach itself is a big question mark for me i i i also agree with you and as a result yes sir when they felt you know this uh, globalization has given them an institutional lead institutional uh, command they thought this is an undiluted advantage forever with the main enemy is finished and one enemy at their feet but that enemy had a longer plan we will buy our time and they were able to do it one point i i forgot to mention that they allowed the uh, chinese into the wto but in 2016 american trade representative and ua uk uh, eu trade representative filed an application in the wto china is not a market economy china said the very fact that you have allowed me into the wto means i am a market economy america had to threaten if you don't declare china is not a market economy we will withdraw from wto so 2019 wto declared china is not a market economy everyone knew china was not a market economy for your geopolitical interests you allowed china china has trampled you today according to me in fact i have written a whole thesis on this and put it in the vekan of the international foundation website as part of my uh, uh, random thoughts last year that america raised a frankenstein monster in china only because of the american institution was invaded by china itself correct so in your in your entire uh, introduction today when you were speaking you repeated the phrase dynamite in america two or three times and i had this whole visualization of this in my mind you said this will dynamite the american economy that will dynamite the american economy and i was thinking mr guru murthy what an opportunity for india what an opportunity for india for two reasons a we are a true democracy and and i believe that they have been lecturing us about the phrase you used backsliding of democracy and mr guru murthy i hate it i don't want to be lectured by a country where there are the capital hit rahil riots i feel there is if there is a democracy that is backsliding today it is those democracies who lecture us you saw what happened during the truckers protest in canada sir you saw the regressive verdicts by the courts in america the capitol hill riots that is a clear black sliding of democracy and i would like your thoughts on what that will give uh, what what impact that will have 
to the world whether the backsliding of the Western form of democracy is a systemic risk to the markets. Uh, does it give an opportunity to India? So my next question to you, sir, is because this change in the... I feel America is an unstable country today socially. And, and I, I, my simple question to you is, when the world's largest economy, whose currency dominates everything, everything, becomes socially unstable, what is its impact on the global economic order, in your view? See, the, what America has done in the last two, two decades is to co-opt the world economy into the American financial system. It has co-opted the world monetary order into the American monetary order. It was its strength and that is becoming the weakness also today. So, with so much dollars outside America, and America printing more dollars and America exporting more dollars to import. And with no other mechanism to control inflation, they have to do it even more. They are now caught in a situation from which it is... I am talking about economically. To get out of this, America has to hugely reduce its standard of living. Reduce its standard, standard of, living. of living. Otherwise, it's not possible. That will lead to more social disorder. One. Second, the kind of standard of living they have. For example, a country with uh, uh, 120, 30 million households has 260 million cars. So these are all unsustainable for that road and for that petrol and for... You know, this kind of thing is not sustainable by any standard. And for which the only answer you have is not that you are raising revenue, but printing dollars. This is possible, this was possible because you are the superpower to which everybody looked up to. Today you are being challenged. You are being challenged not by another country, you are being challenged by commodities. I'm, 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 going, to, I'm going to come right there, right there, but one more question on America because the context is this viewers and the Chinese economy is not as attractive as it used to be. Systemic fault lines are now coming and becoming more visible. Hugely. Hugely. The American economy is hinged on an overextension. It is fragile. It is overstretched. I believe that it's made a huge mistake in Ukraine. It's got into a war that it cannot afford. So my next... And, and therefore, I am seeing with, with our shared philosophy, Mr. Gurumurthy of Nation, first a tremendous opportunity for Bharat in all of this. But if India is to emerge as an alternative, I hate to sound cruel about it, America has to fall. I, I, I'm being a little mercenary in my thought here, sir. But can America course correct? Because you mentioned two things which struck me. One, you said America has this huge import-driven economy, their supply chains are incongruous, they're unsustainable. You also said that it's a country which is spoilt on dole. It is a state dole-dependent population. Right? You, you may, these are not things that you can course correct in a day. My, can a, 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 a challenged America course correct? Are they, are they capable of doing that? And if so, then what kind of course correction is needed for them? See, I'll make three points. <clears throat> Whatever happens to America, the worst affected country will be China. China. So they'll fall together. Serious problems because the kind of problems that China will face if the export driven economy receives a setback, I don't think the Chinese system will be able to manage. Because they have, for example, simple, they have invested about $5.4 trillion outside China. If the world economy is slowing down, that will become an NPA. So, world economy to be sustained, the same kind of uh, printing of money, the same kind of uh, uh, the perception that things are okay, everything is hunky-dory, business as usual, this cannot continue. There will be a huge restructure of the world economy if there is scaling down of the American or uh, European Union standard of living, which according to me is inevitable even on the grounds of environment, which is becoming a very important issue, in which India will sustain itself only for, for example, 
if there is scaling down of uh, standard of living the first thing that will fall is the oil prices and that's precisely what you want and india's technological uh, rise and india's capacity to have self restraint the most important thing is our people have huge self restraint our capacity to save and you are also making safe savings you know we are not going in for this risky savings so your banking we are a bank led economy which is very good i think government must understand our our uh, um, economy should understand our media should understand that a bank led economy like germany for instance if germany will survive it because it is a bank led economy in in germany many companies are delisting from stock market they are losing faith in stock market and stock market has now become such important thing in us pension system us insurance system nearly from 20 to 25% of the assets being in stock market it has become 70 to 75% what happens to the stock market will happen to the insurance companies to the pension funds so they have put all the eggs in one basket fortunately india is free from all this there is a disengagement on all these points our point is how are you going to make the external position how to handle this on which i think we have to undertake a serious review of our imports of our okay second thing we have to go for huge bilateralization of uh, trade and we have got to combine capital and current account together in dealing with the country for example we have a running current account deficit of 25 billion dollars with saudi arabia saudi arabia is going to invest in india 50 billion dollars so we will combine the current account and capital account and say that we will give you our rupee to invest why do you want us to pay in dollars Correct. you know this kind of restructuring will take place in the world part by part bit by bit we have to do it we have to because once globalization fails bilateralization is the only alternative and india must quickly step into bilateralization of trade now what do we learn from the fact that the russian economy did not collapse as the entire western media predicted in fact people hate it those whose entire thinking is western economy centric hate the fact that the I russian economy is quite has been quite resilient in its own way what does that tell us what is the learning for us of you know which is exactly the opposite of what the western media had predicted actually the unique advantage that russia had was its energy and it was able to make europe dependent on itself for its energy by using the very slogan of globalization that i am giving you pipeline i am giving you everything you come to me and they knew by making european union dependent on russia for energy is the only way russia will be able to face the challenges of america on nato so they slowly in 20 years co-opted uh, european union into the energy economy for example if european union had not been co-opted to that extent russian response in terms of commodity trade would not have been as successful as it was so it's a very peculiar position they had china has the opposite thing china will not be able to give up its exports to america and it will not be able to sustain itself without the financial link that exists between america and 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 china and china has a huge housing problem in fact i am studying it its problem is unmanageable because they are destroying the houses which they have built to create more houses because those houses are not occupied both european union america and china followed the house property inflation rate house property asset appreciation to create money to fund and china's shadow banking is as large as the american shadow banking right so the actually it is the marxist version of american capitalism so these all these nations share the same risk the financial risk we don't have that financial risk because our entire asset base according to the us uh, the credit suisse is 4.5 trillion dollars period 
whereas it is 10 times more for china yeah so we are safer because our households are least indebted our government is less indebted than most western governments particularly uh, america and england all these countries are very high their corporates are indebted the debt which the western economies carry today is unbelievably high china has more debt than america itself so these people have gone all for financialization True. but which we have been very careful about but don't you think america is in a worse situation because it is on on a form of drugs which it cannot get out of see george soros said he said in davos and he's a person to follow a little bit because he tells you about his thinking he knows about by the money. way he's incredibly interested in investing in indian media organizations by stealth uh, he said speaking about the ukraine war he said even when the fighting stops as it eventually must the situation in the world will never revert to what it was before is the insinuation that if the war ends the western economy as we know it is is certain to collapse and let me just explain this to you in the way i've been looking at it if you do a heat map of the stocks of american companies which show companies in technology in the red semiconductor technology in america in the red credit services in america in the red financials in america in the red software sector in the red only companies doing well are the defense manufacturers raytheon technologies corporation is the top performer that is why this september the national security coordinator for arms control there called the war a greatest opportunity for us it is like a person who is who is terribly sick asking for a last strong dose of chemical drugs to feel better am i am i am i over pessimistic about the american situation or is it moving in that direction because there is no parameter which is telling me that the american economy will soon not be on the ventilator actually in the last 20 years america has lost policy control over both finance and their economy and they allowed the market to take charge that has been the fall of america in alan greenspan's declaration in 2007 was precisely this we will not be able to regulate the finance let the market regulate it that is how the banks themselves began shadow banks they became investment banks so the power to control money which is the signoraj power which enables stability in the economy american system has lost it this is my that's why i said 22.5 trillion dollars being outside domesticated dollars which are beyond the control of the us government and us uh, central uh, bank it can do so much harm to america it can buy the whole of america when american asset prices collapse it is the sovereign funds which will buy them so america is in a serious problem and no policy formulation i see can work because it is the genes out of the bottle now moving around absolutely so uh, two last questions second last question you would say therefore that india as a country as a society our government who you are who you obviously you you advise them and you you praise them here our government must start thinking geopolitically and geo strategically that we must now marry our economics with an understanding of our geopolitics because eventually geopolitics matters if you've said commodities matter putin has the commodities and that's why he survived which means eventually geopolitics matters and maybe our youth our next generation should be more equipped to deal with the global geopolitical challenges and be less insular in our approach even in our foreign policy and otherwise we have already footed. done it for example if we are getting 20% or 25% discount from russia on oil iraq is offering more discount so we are also using geopolitical weapon to handle the situation in which we are oil dependent we are energy dependent so india has begun playing the global game undoubtedly lovely 
and i'll tell you i don't know how many people noticed in april 2022 when the ukraine war was speaking up and indian india has taken a position against russia uh, against america every country's leader finance minister prime minister foreign minister worth the name came to india in just one month everybody came as if it is a planned affair i don't think the media ever this print media i have not seen this in the print media i feel india has acquired a, a stable and a central position in the world because of three things one it's a democracy however much you may say it is not liberal democracy it is not that it is not that nobody can deny the fact that india is a functioning democracy second after 1989 till 1984 we did not have a stable government the governments were wobbly 25 parties 30 parties each pulling in one direction in 2014 a government came produced results repeated itself and a leader of global eminence these are all factors so this has given india a central position to deal with the world the third point is the indian economy is i am not going by the gdp i am not going by any of these things the centrality of the indian economy is that it was not it is not purely market dependent it is not government dependent it is a self dependent people's participative economy this has not been properly understood by the indian economists and indian policy makers as i just gave that one example if the indian family gets split there is no economic solution for that if the indian family sticks together that is the way india grows and i would put the i give the whole credit for this only to indian women they have held the family system together we should praise them like that instead we are transforming them into feminists of the western type so we have no civilizational approach we have no silo free approach to say these are the four points of the strength of the indian economy the indian economic textbooks are rotten the sooner they are replaced the better it is for india so we we need a total revamping of our economic thinking economic discourse then we will align indian economy to the indian people indian way indian civilization then we will understand the cultural foundations of india india is not a market economy it is a market economy working with the society the distinction is coming all of you those who are familiar with econo- econ- economics may know there is a difference between market economics and market society market society transforms even the human beings into a commodity in fact you can you can lend your forehead for uh, uh, putting somebody's brand on your forehead for one month and take 500 dollars or you can permanently have something fixed on your forehead some ford brand or something for 25000 dollars this is what is happening in the world so we are not a market society please understand market society has been a success because it has produced more money by producing more money you don't become wealthy that is what america that the wrong thought that producing more money makes a country more powerful has been the wrong message america gave it to itself and to the world you require the capacity to digest that money that is what why we ready said don't bring this money it is poison and it proved to be poison you must also know how much money you can handle how much you can digest how much you can invest how much you can spend last question sir uh, apologies for not introducing you as a journalist that is a given you are india's foremost journalist for years you've seen everything from pre emergency emergency no 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 journalists are saying sir. i am not a journalist so yeah, you must that's a, they say i am also not a journalist sir but <laughs> that's all right sir. i i uh, i i would like your views sir 
on, on the media and what it can do in nation building and what it can do towards this mission that we are all on for our country. See, it's uh, having been part of the media uh, in the most challenging and uh, in the most purposeful times in the Indian history between 1975 and the emergency uh, came until very actively till 1991. There was a purpose, there was a sense of idealism, there was a sense of commitment, there was a sense of sacrifice in being a journalist and in running a media. Once the journalists were paid like MBS, once they began acquiring properties, once they had the, the type of cars they were moving decided their status, that became the Lieutenant's gang. I know Ramnath Goenka, with whom I have moved, is one of the most powerful persons who dismissed as many as a dozen chief ministers and two prime ministers. He will feel shy to get into a car larger than Maruti 800. He said, Guru, I feel shy. He ran the most powerful newspaper. Media is a mission. We have to bring back that spirit of mission in the media. A media cannot pay like Coca-Cola. It's very clear. Like IT companies. In fact, A.M. Nayak, a good friend of mine in l and used to say, the civil engineers whom I need for this nation building construction work, I can pay them only 25,000 rupees. But my IT company pays them 100,000 rupees. The civil engineers whom I need for this work are going there. You know, this misdirection in the economy is also one of the reasons why we are suffering in different fields. But about all this, there is no discussion. Specifically coming to the media, unless the missionary spirit is restored into the media. For example, what I feel proud about you is the days when we were fighting and having two hours and three hours of sleep and going to jail. And the entire system, a strike brought down the Indian Express. Uh, all kinds of uh, 300 cases were filed against us. After that, I, fa I saw only one battle of the media against the government and that is by you. So that is why I admired you. Unless a media is willing to fight, it is no media. We are lacking that media. We need examples. And I, I suppose many of these medias are just piffles. People are already losing faith in them. It is only the number of pages. It has more radhi value than the content. I think all this will get silky because people will get bored with these things. I am sure some correction will take place. And there is already a civilizational moral movement in this country which will be the answer to this. Without a moral and civilizational movement which has been set off since 1980s in India which has brought about all these changes, this movement has to be taken forward and deepened and intellectually supported. Then you will see the kind of results that we want to see. It cannot be merely by, by giving speeches or anything. It has to awaken the soul of India. Thank you very much. We, <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you and I hope I personally and I hope we, all of us continue to receive your guidance and your, and your blessings. Very proud to have had you and I think we, I would like to stand up for a round of applause for you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Following the case of human uh, sacrifice that emerged in Elantur, the police are expected to visit the site of the incident to ascertain whether there are any more bodies at the site. The Coimbatore District Administration sealed four offices of the Popular Front of India. The police was accordingly deployed at the offices and in areas of concern during the sealing of the offices.
verebilirsiniz genç kardeşlerim. Legislature Barack Arbe, a member of the opposition Republican People's Party, smashed a smartphone with a hammer while addressing parliament, saying the clampdown on social media would make smartphone obsolete. Critics fear that as elections loom, the measure will be used to further crack down on social media and independent reporting. The 40-article legislation was approved with the vote of President Governing Party and its nationalist allies, which together hold a majority in the parliament. Agency Report, Republic TV. Today on the Bombay High Court, acquitting G. N. Sai Baba. Now, Solicitor General Tushar Mehta is reported to have maintained that the acquittal was not on the basis of merit but for lack of appropriate sanction to prosecute him under the provisions of the UAPA. ये जो फैसला आया है, ये बहुत ही दुर्दैवी है, बहुत ही निराशाजनक है, क्योंकि टेक्निकल ग्राउंड्स पर इस प्रकार से ऐसे व्यक्ति को छोड़ देना जिसके खिलाफ इतने सबूत हैं जिन्होंने एक प्रकार से ये फैसले के कारण जो हमारे पुलिस नक्सलवादियों से लड़ते हुए शहीद हुए उनके घर वालों के ऊपर इससे क्या बीतती होगी इसका विचार मैं बार बार कर रहा हूँ हम सर्वोच्च न्यायालय गए हैं सुप्रीम कोर्ट गए हैं और मेरा विश्वास है कि सुप्रीम कोर्ट में न्याय मिलेगा a 21 year old college student was allegedly molested by an auto rickshaw driver and dragged with a vehicle in Maharashtra Thane now a video of the incident that took place in the city around 6:45 am surfaced on social media Legislature Barack Arbe, a member of the opposition Republican People's Party, smashed a smartphone with a hammer while addressing Parliament, saying the clampdown on social media would make smartphone obsolete. Critics fear that as elections loom, the measure will be used to further crack down on social media and independent reporting. The 40-article legislation was approved with the vote of President Governing Party and its nationalist allies, which together hold a majority in the parliament. Agency Report, Republic TV. Today on the Bombay High Court, acquitting G. N. Sai Baba. Now, Solicitor General Tushar Mehta is reported to have maintained that the acquittal was not on the basis of merit, but for lack of appropriate sanction to prosecute him under the provisions of the UAPA. Today, there is no global commons left. Even the swift method, which is common to all, this has become a weapon in the war. Dollar reserves have become weapons in the war. Anybody can seize your dollar reserve today, if the Western countries want. So now in this world, nobody can be called upon to trust anyone, and the entire architecture we have built is based on the global institutions we have built, whether it is the WTO or whether it is the Bank of International Settlement or. the financial stability board laying down the rules for how the banks should function in different countries with the same uniform lending model all these are under stress heavily questioned heavily challenged and so we have to now look at what india went through in this period india was a docile player it had no will to power in fact nobody even bothered about india It was in 1998 when the Pokhran blast took place. The world took notice of India because the Indian began celebrating all over the world about India's rise as a nuclear power. And more than that, which is less noticed but more important, is that the India Development Bonds, which is the government of India issue, asking for five billion dollars because we were bereft of money. Uh, all the sanctions financial sanctions technological sanctions trade sanctions on india so everybody thought india would collapse in the next 3 4 months in fact i have heard finance ministry official saying this government has destroyed india i have heard this comment in my ears but when the indian development bonds was announced 
and the subscription was not 5 billion dollars 6.2 billion dollars when nobody would trust india with a dollar <laughs> that made america understand that there is something working in india you know one thing you must said about say about america they can understand the turn so they immediately felt that we have to engage india then slowly sanctions were removed you know what was the growth in that period mr sanyal will tell you in that 6 year 5 year period the growth rate was average of 5.4% or so and in that period we posted for the first time current account surplus in two consecutive years never happened between 1950 and 90 2002 except for one year during the emergency we posted current account surplus and our employment generation was 16 million in 5 years record never happened in the past never happened later afterwards you know we had a government which said we are having a 10% growth rate in fact many people say this is a golden period of the indian economy in 6 years they had an average of 10% growth rate you know what was the employment generated 2.7 million it was a jobless growth the entire growth was that money came from outside dr yv reddy said don't accept this money because this money is poison you cannot digest this money 300 billion dollars came into the stock market stock market hit the root it went to 20000 and economic times wrote india the super power stock market going up to 20000 is going to make you super power Shubham Garg's family has been granted a visa to visit Australia. Now, the Indian was repeatedly stabbed in Sydney as a result of an alleged hate crime. 1950, we are the largest economy in Asia. From 1950 to 1980, we grew at 3.5 percent a year. Population grew at 2.5 percent. Per capita income 1 percent a year because of Nehru's failed policy. Nehru made sure that we became poorer in 1980 than 1950. This is all data, not politics. 1980 to 1990, we grew at 5.5 percent, population 2.25 percent, but debt grew from 20 billion dollars in 90 in 1981 to 80 billion dollars, and we are broke by 91. In 91, because private capital was suppressed by Nehru because of his dalliance with the Soviet model and the Fabian School, and you know his disdain for business. 1991 GDP was 275 billion. 2022, we reached 3.15 trillion. We grew at 8.2 percent. year in dollar terms for 31 years is incredible in 2014 shahzad gdp was 113 lakh crores in 2022 is 236 lakh crores and this year was supposed to go to 276 lakh crores so am i optimistic i lived through the last 30 years i seen the rise of this country i seen what people can do i seen that 108 unicorns i seen a trillion dollars of value in the digital market i seen the rise of sanjeev What would you want if I'm not optimistic with all this? What do you want? Come on, give me a break. Legislature Barack Arbe, a member of the opposition Republican People's Party, smashed a smartphone with a hammer while addressing Parliament, saying the clampdown on social media would make smartphone obsolete. Critics fear that as elections loom, the measure will be used to further crack down on social media and independent reporting. The 40 article legislation was approved with the vote of President Governing Party and its nationalist allies which together hold a majority in the parliament. Agency report Republic TV. A on the Bombay High Court acquitting GN Sai Baba. Now Solicitor General Tushar Mehta is reported to have maintained that the acquittal was not on the basis of merit but for lack You know how many listed? What is the contribution of listed companies to the India's GDP? Five percent. The entire corporate sector, fifteen percent. I am talking about at that time. And this kind of misnomers, misinformation, misrepresentation about the country and its energies. This was diverting our opinion. And 
afterwards india was accepted as a power which could not be ignored in the international fora and india's stature began to rise we were part of the g20 and then we were also being thought of being invited to g7 and in 2009 one turn took place regularization of our our status as an autonomic power is a very important achievement for which i must credit dr manmohan singh despite the fact sonia gandhi opposed it the only thing on which he protested against sonia gandhi and did not give in was signing the indo us atomic uh, deal very major development afterwards we went to sleep till narendra modi arrived on the scene that was the third and the most galloping moment of the indian economy and the man's approach was very different people used to say first generation reform second generation reform third generation reform he threw all this in the dustbin his reform was how many bank accounts the indian people have do they have bank accounts i know what discussions took place the rbi would not allow more than 10 million accounts the finance ministry will not say we more than 30 million accounts not possible the prime minister said i want before march 2015 75 million accounts it happened you know what is the tally today 420 million accounts out of which 380 million accounts are operating you know what is the amount of deposit in those accounts they said where will you get the money you said you open the accounts i know how to put the money in it he had the dbt arrangement in his mind this is not the reform that world bank was talking about this is not the reform that economists were talking about this is not the reform that media was talking about this is a reform which will work in and for india you see what happened to the dbt scheme afterwards the total amount in the accounts is over 1.5 lakh crores is ordinary people's money is lying in the bank account this transformation and demonetization many people at that time criticized and even continue to criticize it but demonetization is what made the indian informal economy formal today the uh, state bank of india has come out with a report that the informal economy in india has shrunk it was almost 50% 52% it has shrunk to as low as 15 to 18% this happened only because of demonetization without demonetization gst would not have succeeded and it was such a tough decision to take up elections were coming the whole country in distress the prime minister said please give me 50 days i will set rate everything see the kind of leadership they have it's rare for adventure a fierce hunter the new breed rises above all others a new breed of suvs the advanced grand vitara rule every road Legislature Barack Arbe, a member of the opposition Republican People's Party, smashed a smartphone with a hammer while addressing Parliament, saying the clampdown on social media would make smartphone obsolete. Critics fear that as elections loom, the measure will be used to further crack down on social media and independent reporting. The 40 article legislation was approved with the vote of president governing party and its nationalist allies which together hold a majority in the parliament. Agency report Republic TV. A on the Bombay High Court acquitting GN Sai Baba. Now solicitor general Tushar Mehta is reported to have maintained that the acquittal was not on the basis of merit but for lack of appropriate sanction to prosecute him under the provisions of the UAPA. ये जो फैसला आया है ये बहुत ही दुर्दैवी है बहुत ही निराशाजनक है क्योंकि टेक्निकल ग्राउंड्स पर इस प्रकार से ऐसे व्यक्ति को छोड़ देना जिसके खिलाफ इतने सबूत हैं 
जिन्होंने एक प्रकार से ये फैसले के कारण जो हमारे पुलिस नक्सलवादियों से लड़ते हुए शहीद हुए उनके घर वालों के ऊपर इससे क्या बीतती होगी इसका विचार मैं बार बार कर रहा हूँ हम सर्वोच्च न्यायालय गए हैं सुप्रीम कोर्ट गए हैं और मेरा विश्वास है कि सुप्रीम कोर्ट में न्याय मिलेगा Legislature Barack Arbe, a member of the opposition Republican People's Party, smashed a smartphone with a hammer while addressing Parliament, saying the clampdown on social media would make smartphone obsolete. Critics fear that as elections loom, the measure will be used to further crack down on social media and independent reporting. The 40 article legislation was approved with the vote of president governing party and its nationalist allies which together hold a majority in the parliament Agency report Republic TV A on the Bombay High Court acquitting GN Sai Baba Now Solicitor General Tushar Mehta is reported to have maintained that the acquittal was not on the basis of merit but for lack of appropriate sanction to prosecute him under the provisions of the UAPA. ये जो फैसला आया है ये बहुत ही दुर्दैवी है बहुत ही निराशाजनक है क्योंकि टेक्निकल ग्राउंड्स पर इस प्रकार से ऐसे व्यक्ति को छोड़ देना जिसके खिलाफ इतने सबूत हैं जिन्होंने एक प्रकार से ये फैसले के कारण जो हमारे पुलिस नक्सलवादियों से लड़ते हुए शहीद हुए उनके घर वालों के ऊपर इससे क्या बीतती होगी इसका विचार मैं बार बार कर रहा हूँ हम सर्वोच्च न्यायालय गए हैं सुप्रीम कोर्ट गए हैं और मेरा विश्वास है कि सुप्रीम कोर्ट में न्याय मिले global common swift even the swift method which is common to all this has become a weapon in the war dollar reserves have become weapons in the war anybody can see your dollar reserve today if the western countries want so now in this world nobody can be called upon to trust anyone and the entire architecture we have built is based on the global institutions we have built whether it is the wto or whether it is the bank of international settlement or the financial stability board laying down the rules for how the banks should function in different countries with the same uniform lending model all these are under stress heavily questioned heavily challenged and so we have to now look at what india went through in this period India was a docile player it had no will to power in fact nobody even bothered about india it was in 1998 when the pokhran blast took place the world took notice of india because the indian began celebrating all over the world about india's rise as a nuclear power and more than that which is less noticed but more important is that the india development bonds which is the government of india issued asking for 5 billion dollars because we were bereft of money uh, all the sanctions financial sanctions technological sanctions trade sanctions on india so everybody thought india would collapse in the next 3 4 months in fact i have heard finance ministry official saying this government has destroyed india i have heard this comment in my ears but when the indian development bonds was announced and the subscription was not 5 billion dollars 6.2 billion dollars when nobody would trust india with a dollar that made america understand that there is something working in india you know one thing you must said about say about america they can understand the turn so they immediately felt that we have to engage india then slowly sanctions were removed you know what was the growth in that period the senior will tell you in that 6 year 5 year period the growth rate was average of 5.4% or so and in that period 
we posted for the first time current account surplus in two consecutive years never happened between 1950 and 90, 2002 except for one year during the emergency we posted current account surplus and our employment generation was 16 million in 5 years record never happened in the past never happened later afterwards you know we had a government which said we are having a 10% growth rate in fact many people say it's the golden period of the indian economy in 6 years they had an average of 10% growth rate you know what was the employment generated 2.7 million it was a jobless growth the entire growth was that money came from outside dr yv reddy said don't accept this money because this money is poison you cannot digest this money 300 billion dollars came into the stock market stock market hit the root it went to 20000 and economic times wrote india the super power stock market going up to 20000 is going to make you super power Nineteen fifty, we are the largest economy in Asia. From nineteen fifty to nineteen eighty, we grew at three point five percent a year. Population grew at two point five percent. Per capita income one percent a year because of Nehru's failed policy. Nehru made sure that we became poorer in nineteen eighty than nineteen fifty. This is all data, not politics. Nineteen eighty to nineteen ninety, we grew at five point five percent. Population two point two five percent. But debt grew from twenty billion dollars in ninety uh, in nineteen eighty one. to 80 billion dollars and we are broke by 91 in 91 because private capital was suppressed by nehru because of his dalliance with the soviet model and the fabian school and you know his disdain for business 1991 gdp was 275 billion 2022 we reached 3.15 trillion we grew at 8.2 percent a year in dollar terms for 31 years is incredible In 2014, Shahzad GDP was 113 lakh crores. In 2022, it's 236 lakh crores, and this year we're supposed to go to 276 lakh crores. So am I optimistic? I lived through the last 30 years. I seen the rise of this country. I seen what people can do. I seen that 108 unicorns. I seen a trillion dollars of value in the digital market. I seen the rise of Sanjeev. What more do you want? If I'm not optimistic with all this, what do you want? Come on, give me a break. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the United States of America has recently rolled out its national security strategy. It defines how the U.S. looks at the world, geopolitically, diplomatically, and militarily. It defines the United States of America's national security perspectives. This weekend, join me in checkmate as I take you through the steps of America's national security strategy. Legislature Barack Arbe, a member of the opposition Republican People's Party, smashed a smartphone with a hammer while addressing Parliament, saying the clampdown on social media would make smartphone obsolete. Critics fear that as elections loom, the measure will be used to further crack down on social media and independent reporting. Top headlines right now: Economic fugitive weaponizes foreign media to target Modi government with a four-page ad in Wall Street Journal. Kashmiri Pandit Puran Bhatta shot dead by Pakistan-backed terrorists in Shopia. Protests erupt across Kashmir over wave of targeted killings. Demand grows for justice. Kerala police take accused to the crime scene as probe into the cult's murder deepens. AI MIM leader Koronte abusing Hindu's police take cognizance of his rant. Two youths from Arunachal Pradesh reported missing family suspects they have crossed the LAC. Viewers here watching Republic TV, India's number one news channel. I'm Shivangi Shukla. Let's start with the first story. In another incident of the terror attack on locals in the Kashmir rally, a Kashmiri pundit was shot in Jammu and Kashmir, Shopia district. The deceased has been identified as Puran Bhatt. 
Now, the attack on the civilian was carried out after the security forces conducted two anti-terror operations in which four terrorists were neutralized. Here's a full story. A little past noon on Saturday, Puran Bhatt was shot dead by terrorists outside his house while he was heading towards his apple orchard. In the, at the time of the instance said that police deployment is there at his residence of the Kashmiri Pandit and he has also now confirmed the news that yes the police deployment is there and Sujit Kumar said that the action will not only be on police deployment who were guarding the residence of the Kashmiri Pandit my VJ if Mubashir is showing you the visuals and this is the exact spot the visuals of the, the spot that are coming in that this is the spot where he was targeted by the terrorists this uh, spot is just for not even two to three meters away from his residence where he was targeted so we can say that he was targeted in his residence kashmiri uh, kashmiri pandit ko puran ji ko mara gaya hai aur is pe aapko pata hi hai ki tff ne isko claim kiya hai lekin hamari aur se ab hamari aur se abhi abhi kuch bhi sure hum log apni aur se nahi bolenge People from across Shopian mourned the death of Kashmiri Pandit Puran Bhatt. The show of unity at his funeral was a stinging response to the terrorists. Uh, today early morning at 11.30 he got a shot here. Oh. And there, when we came here there was blood here also, here also. And by that time he was taken to hospital and we are coming to know from tv serials tv that he is he is killed he is dead hum soch rahe the thoda sa hi lagi hogi shayad bach jayega bechara but message aaya ki wo to hai nahi this is the residence where he was staying with his family this is the ancestral house he is survived by wife kids one daughter and one son the entire village is mourning the death of bablu they used to call him for family he was poor kishan but who preferred to stay back when the kashmiri pandits in 90s were migrating or when target killing started again in the kashmir valley his family in jammu is distraught over the targeted killing in kashmir the unfortunate incident that has unfolded in the south kashmir where the terrorists have targeted a kashmiri pandit a minority that was living in the kashmir valley even uh, after the exodus that has taken place in 1990 he chose not to leave the kashmir valley and was working there right now we are outside his jammu residence and the senior officials of the jammu and kashmir police uh, they are here to console the family members the divisional commissioner and other officials uh, along with the adg jammu they are here The murder of Puran Bhatt is the fifth targeted killing in the valley in the last 5 months and the anger is spilling on the streets. Kashmiri pundits blocked the Sheikhpura Budgam road and held protest rallies in Jammu demanding justice. We have to do something substantive on ground. If you cannot protect us, the government should give us arms should train us and not simply feed us to the wolves in kashmir to keep this pretense of normalcy going despite the anger over the wave of targeted killings in jammu and kashmir mehbooba mufti continues to question the forces aaj 30 35 saal ke baad usko nishana banaya gaya jabki yahan itni security hai itni army hai itne forces hain लोगों को जेलों में डाला जाता है हाइब्रिड मिलिटेंट के नाम पे लोगों को मुलाजमतों से निकाला जाता है शक की बुनियाद पे और उसके बावजूद बीजेपी नाकाम हो गई है यहाँ के जो हमारे रहे कुछ कश्मीरी पंडित बचे हुए थे उनको हिफाजत देने में Was a joint action committee staged a rally for uh, the decentralization and three capitals with the support of the YSR CP organized uh, rally from Ambedkar statue to the YSR statue. Here's the full story. Amid the ongoing roar over three capital in the state of Andhra Pradesh, now we see that a large number of people gathered 
in a massive rally which was being led by the joint action committee and also along with the YSRCP leaders many people joined the rally in support of three capital and also we have been seeing that this rally was named as Vishaka Garjana and also they have been seeing and demanding that now Vishakapatnam should be the executive capital as the Jagan Mohan Reddy led government in the state of Andhra Pradesh has the has put forth the proposal for the three capital which is Vishakapatnam as executive capital, Amravati as the legislative capital and Karnul as the judicial capital. But we also see that the opposition parties in the state of Andhra Pradesh have been demanding that this three capital should be withdrawn and also at the same time that the Telugu Desam party leaders have been stating that Jagan Mohan Reddy is putting the Vishakapatnam as executive capital only to do land grabbing. A four-page advertisement has been published in the Wall Street Journal against Indian ministers and key officers of the central government. Senior advisor to Ministry of Information and Broadcasting Kanchan Gupta has tweeted that the mastermind behind this advertisement is Ramachandra Vishwanathan. Who was the CEO of Devas? Now, Vishnu Martin was declared a fugitive economic offender in India and India's Supreme Court also ruled that Devas was involved in corruption. Here's the full story. On October 13th, this full-page advertisement was published in a US-based newspaper, Wall Street Journal. The truth about the advertisement is now becoming clear. The senior advisor to the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting, Kanchan Gupta, has revealed that the mastermind of the advertisement is Ramachandran Vishwanathan, former CEO of Devas, an economic offender in India. The owner of the country, uh, he is uh, Vishwanathan, uh, Ramachandran Vishwanathan. So the CEO of the company or the owner of the company he is a fugitive from Indian law. He has been declared a, a, a fugitive economic offender. And uh, uh, that's it. I mean, uh, uh, Devas Multimedia uh, had tried to con uh, ISRO's commercial wing, Antriksh, by entering into a fraudulent agreement. First, we have to understand who's this uh, Ramachandra Vishwanathan. He's uh, CEO of, he was CEO of uh, Devas. And uh, you know the Devas Antriksh scam and the manner in which uh, right up to the Supreme Court uh, Devas lost uh, essentially making Ramachandra Vishwanathan an economic offender and a fugitive of law insofar as India is concerned under the economic uh, fugitives uh, law that we have uh, brought in by the present government. Uh, Ramachandran has pleaded with the US government to impose visa and economic sanctions against 11 Indians, which includes ministers and government officials. American media, the Wall Street Journal in this case, before that New York Times mocking uh, India's space achievements, achievements of uh, ISRO or uh, for that matter Washington Post, which very routinely uh, provides uh, its platform uh, for anti-India sentiments to be strongly ex ex expressed uh, or uh, for, for India bashing. As the Indian economy gets stronger and with the decline of the American economy, the pattern of such an advertisement cannot be missed. See, the, what America has done in the last two, two decades is to co-opt the world economy into the American financial system. It has co-opted the world monetary order into the American monetary order. It was its strength and that is becoming the weakness also today. So with so much dollars outside America and America printing more dollars and America exporting more dollars to import and with no other mechanism to control inflation, they have to do it even more. They are now caught in a situation from which it is, I am talking about economically. Get out of this, America has to hugely reduce its standard. With the facts now out, the deep anti-India network has been exposed. Bureau Report, Republic TV. Viewers, The Art of Living along with World Forum for Ethics in Business organized a sixth World Summit on Ethics and Leadership in Sports on 13th to 14th October, where great emphasis 
It was late to how sports should be played and looked at. The Art of Living Foundation, along with World Forum for Ethics in Business, organized the 6th World Summit on Ethics and Leadership in Sports in Bengaluru. The summit at a time when India is making global progress in athletics and its performance at global events. The two-day event saw the participation of Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, Minister of Law and Justice Kiran Rijiju, 25-time international billiard and snooker world champion Pankaj Advani, among other speakers. While Sri Sri Ravi Shankar stressed on how players should play with a sense of responsibility. Sports is that some which unites people beyond language. Basha ke pare, deshon ke pare, hum sab ko jodta, koi cheez jodta hai to wo khel. Aur khel khud ko humare desh mein humne जैसे आपने बताया किरण जी ने कि सीरियसली नहीं लेते इफ यू डोंट टेक सीरियसली द गेम्स देन नो वन टेक इट एज ए करियर एंड मेंटल हेल्थ विल ओनली कीप पीपल ऑन द ट्रैक ऑफ एथिक्स एंड हियर व्हेन यू फॉलो एथिक्स यू आर टेकिंग द गेम बोथ सीरियसली एंड नॉट सो सीरियस व्हाट इज एथिक्स एथिक्स इज दैट फॉर you don't want others to do to you you should not do to others union minister kiran rijiju emphasized on the need to bring sports culture in the country our sporting history goes back to ancient time but over the years the evolvement of the society did not bring sports culture in our country to the extent we would desire it is very important to have the sports culture in any society billiard and snooker world champion pankaj advani calls for sports persons to respect the opponent i believe that fir can also stand for fairness fair play integrity and respect in the world of sport so my um, appeal to you is to uh, ignore that fir stands for first information report and uh, to uh, um believe that we actually can play sport um you know through fair play to integrity to 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 respect respect not only for our sport respect for our opponents respect for uh the audience respect for the rules the summit sought a road map to use fair and clean sports as a tool to unite people in a post pandemic world riddled by conflict economic crisis and mental health issues the summit proceedings also featured the announcement of the Ethics in Sports Awards 2022, a prize that recognizes the outstanding individuals and organizations that have demonstrated the importance of human values and ethics in life and in the sports arena. The winners of this year included FC Union Berlin for outstanding organization, Anja Hammersing Edin for promotion of mental health in sports, Kiran Rajiju for outstanding contribution to sports and Sandeep Singh for resilience in sports. Indeed, the time is ripe for a sports revolution. And more importantly, it's time we change how we play the game with ethics and leadership. Bureau Report Republic TV. Let's put our hands together. What a wonderful morning. Top national update Union Home Minister Amit Shah released a BJP selection theme song Himachal ki pukar fir BJP sarkar The theme song has been released during the poll campaign with Chief Minister Jairam Thakur After sparking a row by calling the PM duplicate JDU National President Lalan Singh has refused to apologize he further slammed the BJP MP Ravi Shankar Prasad for buttering the PM to be in his good books after getting sidelined A boat carrying Bihar CM Nitish Kumar collided with an under construction pillar of the JP Setu bridge this happened while he was inspecting the arrangements of the Chhat Ghat situated on the bank of the river Ganga all on board the boat including the CM are safe Trouble keeps mounting for TMC MLA Manik Bhattacharya as ED raided the 
residence of his close aide in connection with the SSC scam case. Patacharya himself was arrested by the central agency on October 11th. NCJFR Rukh Abdullah, PDP Chief Mehbooba Mufti and other members of the People's Alliance for the Gupkar Declaration met over the Jammu and Kashmir issue at Farooq Abdullah's residence in Srinagar. Haryana government granted 40 days parole to rape convict uh, Gurmeet Ram Rahim Singh. The self-styled government currently facing 20 years of jail time allowed to come out of the jail there in Rohtak. The Indian women's cricket team made the country proud. They were crowned the Asia Cup champions after convincingly decimating Sri Lanka in the final play there at the cricket stadium in Bangladesh. Rahul Gandhi launches a stinging attack at BJP government's centre in Karnataka during his speech. During the Bharat Jori Yatra, former Congress president raised the matter of commission for jobs under the Bumai administration. AIMIM's uh, UP President Shokat Ali sparked religious row after making hateful comments about polygamy among the Hindus. He said Hindus keep mistresses while addressing a gathering there in UP. US President Joe Biden uh, sensationally labeled Pakistan as one of the most dangerous nations in the world. He further noted that the country has nuclear weapons without any cohesion. Two Arunachal Pradesh youth have gone missing after they went out in the search of the plants which can contain medicinal properties at a place near the state's border with China. The family members of the missing youth have alleged the Chinese army role in the incident. Here is a full report. Two youths from Arunachal Pradesh have reportedly gone missing from the line of actual control. These youths from the Anjor district of Arunachal Pradesh have reportedly been missing from near the LAC area. They have been identified as Batelum Tikro and Baing So Manu. As per the details shared with the police, the youths travelled to Changlagam area in search of medicinal herbs on August 19th and haven't returned since. Although the family is desperately searching for the youths, they have failed to gather details of their whereabouts. Fellow villagers who were close to the LSE saw them last on August 24th. The brother and relative of the missing youth, the Shansa Chikro, has been fighting to find his loved ones. As Republic reports from Ground Zero, the relatives of the two missing youth spoke exclusively to Republic. 19 August 2022, my किसी मेडिसिनल हर्ब के तलाश में जाना जाता है जारी बुतिया उसके तलाश में बाहरों के तरफ निकल गए जो आज तक वापस लौट के नहीं आया The family suspects that they might have crossed the LAC and PLM may have detained them The relatives have appealed to the state and the central government to take immediate action The Indian army is also keeping a close watch keeping the lines open with the PLA if needed the family suspect that they mistakenly crossed over to the Chinese territory following which the PLA has taken them into custody. Meanwhile, the family members of Batalam Tikro has lost a missing complaint which the Anzao police and have also appealed the Indian army for intervention. They have also seek assistance from the state government and the center to ensure a safe return of the youth. With video journalist Asok, I am Anirudh Abhakat and this is Republic Media Network. Top updates, uh, viewers. In another terror attack on locals in the Kashmir rally, a Kashmiri pundit was attacked in Jammu and Kashmir, Shopia district. According to the reports, the victim succumbed to his injuries after he was shot at by the terrorists outside his residence. तो हम दौड़ते आ गए यहां पे तो यहां देखा यहां खून गिरा था यहां खून गिरा था और जब हम देखने लगे तो तब तक उसको अपना भतीजा ले गया था बाइक पे अस्पताल में तो वहां से फिर वो एम्बुलेंस में शायद शुपियान ले गए तो फैमिली क्या है इसकी फैमिली इसकी दो बच्चे हैं छोटे एक लड़की है बड़ी और एक लड़का है 
ग्लोबल कमर्शियल लॉन्च सर्विस मार्केट Aam Aadmi Party Chief Gopal Atalia made a caste slur against Prime Minister Modi. The Janata Dal United Chief now has now made a derogatory remark against the Prime Minister by calling him "Perupia" or "duplicate." Day on the Bombay High Court acquitting G N Sai Baba. Now Solicitor General Tushar Mehta is reported to have maintained that the acquittal was not on the basis of merit but for lack of appropriate sanction to prosecute him under the provisions of the UAPA. ये जो फैसला आया है ये बहुत ही दुर्दैवी है बहुत ही निराशाजनक है क्योंकि टेक्निकल ग्राउंड्स पर इस प्रकार से ऐसे व्यक्ति को छोड़ देना जिसके खिलाफ इतने सबूत हैं जिन्होंने एक प्रकार से ये फैसले के कारण जो हमारे पुलिस नक्सलवादियों से लड़ते हुए शहीद हुए उनके घर वालों के ऊपर इससे क्या बीतती होगी इसका विचार मैं बार बार कर रहा हूँ हम सर्वोच्च न्यायालय गए हैं सुप्रीम कोर्ट गए हैं और मेरा विश्वास है कि सुप्रीम कोर्ट में न्याय मिलेगा A 21-year-old college student was allegedly molested by an auto rickshaw driver and dragged with a vehicle in Maharashtra Thane. Now, a video of the incident that took place in the city around 6:45 a.m. surfaced on social media. The national president of JDU hit out at Prime Minister Modi, calling him extremely backward and a facade. Now, JDU President Lalan Singh further stated that the PM had been spreading his conservative mindset since he came to power. Legislature Barak Arbe, a member of the opposition Republican People's Party, smashed a smartphone with a hammer while addressing Parliament, saying the clampdown on social media would make smartphone obsolete. Critics fear that as elections loom, the measure will be used to further crack down on social media and independent reporting. The 40 article legislation was approved with the vote of president governing party and its nationalist allies which together hold a majority in the parliament Agency report Republic TV A on the Bombay High Court acquitting G N Sai Baba Now Solicitor General Tushar Mehta is reported to have maintained that the acquittal was not on the basis of merit but for lack of appropriate sanction to prosecute him under the provisions of the UA Massive fire breaks out at a plastic warehouse in Russia's Yekaterinburg. Cloud of black smoke surrounded Russia's plastic warehouse. This comes in the backdrop of Russia-Ukraine war which continues to escalate. Visuals on your screen shows firefighters deployed at the incident site continuously putting an effort to douse the massive fire. In what comes as a relief, no casualties have been reported at the fire site. Massive fire engulfs warehouse in Russia completely. Agency report for Republic TV. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the United States of America has recently rolled out its national security strategy. It defines how the U.S. looks at the world, geopolitically, diplomatically, and militarily. It defines the United States of America's national security perspectives. This weekend, join me in checkmate as I take you through the steps of America's national security strategy. Following 
the case of human uh, sacrifice that emerged in Elanthur, the police are expected to visit the site of the incident to ascertain whether there are any more bodies at the site. The Coimbatore District Administration sealed four offices of the Popular Front of India. The police was accordingly deployed at the offices and in areas of concern during the sealing of the offices. Legislature Barak Arbe, a member of the opposition Republican People's Party, smashed a smartphone with a hammer while addressing parliament, saying the clampdown on social media would make smartphone obsolete. Critics fear that as elections loom, the measure will be used to further crack down on social media and independent reporting. The 40-article legislation was approved with the vote of President Governing Party and its nationalist allies, which together hold a majority in the parliament. Agency Report, Republic TV. Legislature Barak Arbe, a member of the opposition Republican People's Party, smashed a smartphone with a hammer while addressing parliament, saying the clampdown on social media would make smartphone obsolete. Critics fear that as elections loom, the measure will be used to further crack down on social media and independent reporting. The 40-article legislation was approved with the vote of President Governing Party and its nationalist allies, which together hold a majority in the parliament. Agency Report, Republic TV. Today on the Bombay High Court, acquitting GN Sai Baba. Now, Solicitor General Tushar Mehta is reported to have maintained that the acquittal was not on the basis of merit but for lack of appropriate sanction to prosecute him under the provisions of the UAPA. This decision is very and very Because technical grounds, पर इस प्रकार से ऐसे व्यक्ति को छोड़ देना जिसके खिलाफ इतने सबूत है जिन्होंने एक प्रकार से ये फैसले के कारण जो हमारे पुलिस नक्सलवादियों से लड़ते हुए शहीद हुए उनके घर वालों के ऊपर इससे क्या Top headlines right now, economic uh, fugitive weaponizes foreign media to target Modi government with a four-page ad in Wall Street Journal. Kashmiri Pandit uh, Puran Bhatta shot dead by Pakistan-backed terrorists in Shopia. Protests erupt across Kashmir over a wave of targeted killings. Demand grows for justice. Kerala police take accused to the crime scene as probe into the occult murder deepens. AI MIM leader Korontev abusing Hindus police take cognizance of his rant. Two youth from Arunachal Pradesh reported missing family suspects they have crossed the LAC. Viewers, you are watching Republic TV, India's number one news channel. I'm Shivangi Shukla. Let's start with the first story. In another incident of the terror attack on locals in the Kashmir rally, a Kashmiri pundit was shot in Jammu and Kashmir Shopia district. The deceased has been identified as Puran Bhatt. Now, the attack on the civilian was carried out after the security forces conducted two anti-terror operations in which four terrorists were neutralized. Here's a full story. A little past noon on Saturday, Puran Bhatt was shot dead by terrorists outside his house while he was heading towards his apple orchard. In the, at the time of the instance said that police deployment is there at his residence of the Kashmiri Pandit and he has also now confirmed the news that yes the police deployment is there and Sujit Kumar said that the action will not only be on police deployment who were guarding the residence of the Kashmiri Pandit. My Vijay Mubashir is showing you the visuals and this is the exact spot the visuals of the, the spot that are coming in that this is the spot where he was targeted by the terrorists. This uh, spot is just for not even 
टू टू थ्री मीटर्स अवे फ्रॉम हिज रेजिडेंस वेयर ही वॉज टारगेटेड सो वी कैन से दैट ही वॉज टारगेटेड इन हिज रेजिडेंस कश्मीरी कश्मीरी पंडित को पूरन जी को मारा गया है और इस पर आपको पता ही है कि टी एफ एफ ने इसको क्लेम किया है लेकिन हमारी ओर से अब हमारी ओर से अभी अभी कुछ भी श्योर हम लोग अपनी ओर से नहीं बोलेंगे people from across shopian mourned the death of kashmiri pandit puran bhat the show of unity at his funeral was a stinging response to the terrorists and today early morning at 11:30 he got a shot here oh. and there when we came here there was blood here also here also and by that time he was taken to hospital and we are coming to know from tv serials the tv that he is he is killed he is dead hum soch rahe the thoda sa hi lagi hogi shayad bach jayega bechara but message aaya ki wo to hai nahi this is the residence where he was staying with his family this is the ancestral house he is survived by wife kids one daughter and one son the entire village is mourning the death of bablu they used to call him for family he was poor kishan but who preferred to stay back when the kashmiri pundits in 90s were migrating or when target killing started again in the kashmir valley his family in jammu is distraught over the targeted killing in kashmir the unfortunate incident that has unfolded in the south kashmir where the terrorists have targeted a kashmiri pandit a minority that was living in the kashmir valley even uh, after the exodus that has taken place in 1990 he chose not to leave the kashmir valley and was working there right now we are outside his jammu residence and the senior officials of the jammu and kashmir police uh, they are here to console the family members the divisional commissioner and other officials uh, along with the adg jammu they are here The murder of Puran Bhat is the fifth targeted killing in the valley in the last 5 months and the anger is spilling on the streets. Kashmiri pundits blocked the Sheikhpura Budgam road and held protest rallies in Jammu demanding justice. We have to do something substantive on ground. If you cannot protect us, the government should give us arms should train us and not simply feed us to the wolves in kashmir to keep this pretense of normalcy going despite the anger over the wave of targeted killings in jammu and kashmir mehbooba mufti continues to question the forces aaj 30 35 saal ke baad usko nishana banaya gaya hai jabki yahan itni security hai itni army hai itne forces hain लोगों को जेलों में डाला जाता है हाइब्रिड मिलिटेंट के नाम पे लोगों को मुलाजमतों से निकाला जाता है शक की बुनियाद पे और उसके बावजूद बीजेपी नाकाम हो गई है यहाँ के जो हमारे रहे कुछ कश्मीरी पंडित बचे हुए थे उनको हिफाजत देने में was a joint action committee state a rally for uh, the decentralization and three capitals with the support of the YSR CP organized uh, rally from Ambedkar statue to the YSR statue here's a full story Amid the ongoing roar over three capital in the state of Andhra Pradesh now we see that a large number of people gathered in a massive rally which was being led by the joint action committee and also along with the YSR CP leaders many people joined the rally in support of three capital and also we have been seeing that this rally was named as Vishaka Garjana and also they have been seeing and demanding that now vishakhapatnam should be the executive capital as the jagan mohan reddy led government in the state of andhra pradesh has the has put forth the proposal for the three capital which is vishakhapatnam as executive capital amravati as the legislative capital and karnul as the judicial capital but we also see that the opposition parties in the state of andhra pradesh have been demanding that this three capital should be withdrawn and also at the same same time that the telugu desam party leaders have been stating that jagan mohan reddy is putting the vishakhapatnam as executive capital only to do land grabbing 
A four-page advertisement has been published in the Wall Street Journal against Indian ministers and key officers of the central government. Senior advisor to Ministry of Information and Broadcasting, Kanchan Gupta, has tweeted that the mastermind behind this advertisement is Ramachandra Vishwanathan, who was the CEO of Devas. Now, Vishnamathan was declared a fugitive economic offender in India and India's Supreme Court also ruled that Devas was involved in corruption. Here's the full story. On October 13th, this full-page advertisement was published in a US-based newspaper, Wall Street Journal. The truth about the advertisement is now becoming clear. The senior advisor to the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting, Kanchan Gupta, has revealed that the mastermind of the advertisement is Ramachandran Vishwanathan, former CEO of Devas, an economic offender in India. The owner of the country, uh, he is uh, Vishwanathan, uh, Ramachandran Vishwanathan. So the CEO of the company or the owner of the company, he is a fugitive from Indian law. He has been declared a, a, a fugitive economic offender and uh, uh, that's it. I mean, uh, uh, Devas Multimedia uh, had tried to con uh, ISRO's commercial wing, Antriksh, by entering into a fraudulent agreement. First, we have to understand who's this uh, Ramachandra Vishwanathan. He's uh, a CEO of, he was CEO of uh, Devas, and uh, you know the Devas Antriksh scam and the manner in which, uh, right up to the Supreme Court, uh, Devas lost, uh, essentially making Ramachandra Vishwanathan an economic offender and a fugitive of law insofar as India is concerned under the economic uh, fugitives uh, law that we have uh, brought in by the present government. Uh. Ramachandran has pleaded with the US government to impose visa and economic sanctions against 11 Indians which includes ministers and government officials. American media, the Wall Street Journal in this case, before that New York Times mocking uh, India's space achievements, achievements of uh, ISRO or uh, for that matter Washington Post which very routinely uh, provides uh, its platform uh, for anti-India sentiments to be strongly ex ex expressed uh, or uh, for, for India bashing. As the Indian economy gets stronger and with the decline of the American economy, the pattern of such an advertisement cannot be missed. See, the, what America has done in the last two, two decades is to co-opt the world economy into the American financial system. It has co-opted the world monetary order into the American monetary order. It was its strength and that is becoming the weakness also today. So, with so much dollars outside America and America printing more dollars and America exporting more dollars to import and with no other mechanism to control inflation they have to do it even more they are now caught in a situation from which it is i am talking about economically to get out of this america has to hugely reduce its standard with the facts now out the deep anti-india network has been exposed bureau report republic tv Viewers, The Art of Living, along with World Forum for Ethics in Business, organized a sixth World Summit on Ethics and Leadership in Sports on 13 to 14 October, where great emphasis was laid to how sports should be played and looked at. The Art of Living Foundation, along with World Forum for Ethics in Business, organized the 6th World Summit on Ethics and Leadership in Sports in Bengaluru. The summit at a time when India is making global progress in athletics and its performance at global events. The two-day event saw the participation of Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, Minister of Law and Justice Kiran Rijiju, 25-time international billiard and snooker world champion Pankaj Advani, among other speakers. While Sri Sri Ravi Shankar stressed on how players should play with a sense of responsibility. Sports is that some which unites people beyond language. Bhasha ke pare, deshon ke pare, hum sab ko jodta, koi cheez 
जोड़ता है तो वो खेल और खेल खुद को हमारे देश में हमने जैसे आपने बताया किरण जी ने कि सीरियसली नहीं लेते इफ यू डोंट टेक सीरियसली द गेम्स देन नो वन टेक इट एज ए करियर एंड मेंटल हेल्थ विल ओनली की पीपल ऑन द ट्रैक ऑफ एथिक्स एंड हियर वेन यू फॉलो एथिक्स यू आर टेकिंग द गेम बोथ सीरियसली एंड नॉट सो सीरियस वॉट इज एथिक्स एथिक्स इज दैट वॉट You don't want others to do to you. You should not do to others. Union Minister Kiran Rijiju emphasized on the need to bring sports culture in the country. Our sporting history goes back to ancient time, but over the years, the evolvement of the society did not bring sports culture in our country to the extent we would desire. It is very important to have the sports culture in any society. Billiard and snooker world champion Pankaj Advani calls for sports persons to respect the opponent. I believe that FIR can also stand for fairness, fair play, integrity and respect in the world of sport. So my um, appeal to you is to uh, ignore that FIR stands for first information report and uh, to uh, um believe that we actually can play sport um you know through fair play to integrity to 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 respect respect not only for our sport respect for our opponents respect for uh the audience respect for the rules the summit sought a road map to use fair and clean sports as a tool to unite people in a post pandemic world riddled by conflict economic crisis and mental health issues The summit proceedings also featured the announcement of the Ethics in Sports Awards 2022, a prize that recognizes the outstanding individuals and organizations that have demonstrated the importance of human values and ethics in life and in the sports arena. The winners of this year included FC Union Berlin for outstanding organization, Anja Hammersing Eden for promotion of mental health in sports. Kiran Rajiju for outstanding contribution to sports and Sandeep Singh for resilience in sports indeed the time is ripe for a sports revolution and more importantly it's time we change how we play the game with ethics and leadership bureau report republic tv let's put our hands together what a wonderful morning Top National Update Union Home Minister Amit Shah released a BJP selection theme song Himachal ki pukar fir BJP sarkar The theme song has been released during the poll campaign with Chief Minister Jairam Thakur After sparking a row by calling the PM duplicate JDU National President Lalan Singh has refused to apologize he further slammed the BJP MP Ravi Shankar Prasad for buttering the PM to be in his good books after getting sidelined A boat carrying Bihar CM Nitish Kumar collided with an under construction pillar of the JP Setu bridge this happened while he was inspecting the arrangements of the Chhat Ghat situated on the bank of the river Ganga all on board the boat including the CM are safe Trouble keeps mounting for TMC MLA Manik Bhattacharya as ED raided the Residents of his close aid in connection with the SSC scam case Patacharya himself was arrested by the central agency on October 11th NCJ Farooq Abdullah PDP chief Mehbooba Mufti and other members of the People's Alliance for the Gupkar Declaration met over the Jammu and Kashmir issue at Farooq Abdullah's residence in Srinagar Haryana government granted 40 days parole to rape convict uh, Gurmeet Ram Rahim Singh the self-styled godman currently facing 20 years of jail time allowed to come out of the jail there in Rohtak The Indian women's cricket team made the country proud they were crowned the Asia Cup champions after convincingly decimating Sri Lanka in the final played there at the cricket stadium in Bangladesh Rahul Gandhi launches a stinging attack at BJP government's center in Karnataka during his speech 
During the Bharat Jodo Yatra, former Congress President raised the matter of commission for jobs under the Bumai administration. AIMIM's uh, UP President Shokat Ali sparked religious row after making hateful comments about polygamy among the Hindus. He said Hindus keep mistresses while addressing a gathering there in UP. US President Joe Biden uh, sensationally labeled Pakistan as one of the most dangerous nations in the world. He further noted that the country has nuclear weapons without any cohesion. Two Arunachal Pradesh youth have gone missing after they went out in the search of the plants which can contain medicinal properties at a place near the state's border with China. The family members of the missing youth have alleged the Chinese army role in the incident. Here is a full report. Two youths from Arunachal Pradesh have reportedly gone missing from the line of actual control. These youths from the Anjor district of Arunachal Pradesh have reportedly been missing from near the LAC area. They have been identified as Batelum Tikro and Baing So Manu. As per the details shared with the police, the youths travelled to Changlagam area in search of medicinal herbs on August 19th and haven't returned since. Although the family is desperately searching for the youths, they have failed to gather details of their whereabouts. Fellow villagers who were close to the LSE saw them last on August 24th. The brother and relative of the missing youth, the Shansa Chikro, has been fighting to find his loved ones. As Republic reports from Ground Zero, the relatives of the two missing youth spoke exclusively to Republic. 19 August 2022, my family, my family, my family, my family, किसी मेडिसिनल हर्ब के तलाश में जाना जाता है जारी बुकिया उसके तलाश में पहाड़ों के तरफ निकल गए जो आज तक वापस लौट के नहीं आया The family suspects that they might have crossed the LAC and PLM may have detained them The relatives have appealed to the state and the central government to take immediate action The Indian army is also keeping a close watch keeping the lines open with the PLA if needed the family suspect that they mistakenly crossed over to the Chinese territory following which the PLA has taken them into custody. Meanwhile, the family members of Batalam Tikro has lodged a missing complaint which the Anzao police and have also appealed the Indian army for intervention. They have also seek assistance from the state government and the center to ensure a safe return of the youth. With video journalist Asok, I am Anirudh Abhakat and this is Republic Media Network. Top updates, uh, viewers. In another terror attack on locals in the Kashmir rally, a Kashmiri pundit was attacked in Jammu and Kashmir, Shopia district. According to the reports, the victim succumbed to his injuries after he was shot at by the terrorists outside his residence. तो हम दौड़ते आ गए यहां पे तो यहां देखा यहां खून गिरा था यहां खून गिरा था और जब हम देखने लगे तो तब तक उसको अपना भतीजा ले गया था बाइक पे अस्पताल में तो वहां से फिर वो एंबुलेंस में शायद शुपियान ले गए तो फैमिली क्या है इसकी फैमिली इसकी दो बच्चे हैं छोटे एक लड़की है बड़ी और एक लड़का है उसका भाई भी इधर है उसके बच्चे भी फिफ्थ में पढ़ता है और बच्ची शायद सातवीं में पढ़ती है तो यानी घर घर में इनमें इनका सब कुछ घर में ही था इनका कोई नौकरी वोकरी नहीं है कुछ नहीं है चले हम तो आइट था यहीं पे बाग बगी चक्कर तो बेचारा घर से भी बाहर नहीं निकला इन दिनों वो अंदर ही बैठता डर डर लग रहा है बहुत डर लगता है बहुत डर लगता है ISRO's heaviest rocket uh, will launch the UK startup OneWeb's 36 broadband satellites from the spaceport in Andhra Pradesh, Sri Harikota on October 23rd, marking the launcher's entry into the global commercial launch service market. Samadhi Party Chief Gopal Italia made a caste slur against Prime Minister Modi. The Janta Dal United Chief now has now made a derogatory remark against the Prime Minister by calling him Perupia or Duplicate. 
Soon after JDU's uh, Lalan Singh made a derogatory remark against Prime Minister, BJP came down heavily on its former ally, JDU, has, and called the party chief's remark shameful and said it showcased the extreme arrogance of the feudal mindset. Chota kar karta hota to main jawab hi nahi deta. Unke wo rashtriya adhyaksh hain. It is a feudal mindset, Mr. Prakash, full of arrogance, hankar pura hai. Acha hai. देश ने बहुतों का अंकार खत्म किया है ललन बाबू जदयू का भी खत्म करेंगे The DMK today staged a protest against the parliamentary committee's recommendation to make Hindi the medium of instruction in central educational institutes the DMK's showdown came after Tamil Nadu CM and DMK chief MK Stalin wrote to the central government and warned against the imposition of the Hindi language A major crackdown against the terror supporters in Jammu and Kashmir. Jammu and Kashmir Lieutenant Governor Manoj Sinha's administration today terminated five government employees for their links with the various terrorist outfits. In a mega crackdown on West Bengal SSC recruitment scam, the Enforcement Directorate today Saturday has now raided Manik Bhattacharya's close aide Tapas Mandal's residence there in North 24 Parganas. The investigation agency has also reportedly raided Manik Bhattacharya's offices in and other areas where young college students were allegedly trained as teachers massive fire breaks out at a plastic warehouse in russia's yekaterinburg cloud of black smoke surrounded russia's plastic warehouse This comes in the backdrop of Russia-Ukraine war which continues to escalate. Visuals on your screen shows firefighters deployed at the incident site continuously putting an effort to douse the massive fire. In what comes as a relief, no casualties have been reported at the fire site. The fire engulfs warehouse in Russia completely. Agency report for Republic TV. Viewers, AI MIM leader Shaukat Ali's comment against Hindu women has drawn the ire of BJP, who has demanded answers from the party chief OAC. Drawing a comparison, Shaukat allegedly said that Hindus marry one but have three mistresses. NFIR has been registered against the leader. Here is the full story. In a fresh controversy, Asaduddin Owaisi's AIMIM UP chief Shaukat Ali made a controversial remark on Hindu marriage at a rally in UP's Sambhal. He said that even if Muslims have two marriages, they give respect to both wives in society, but Hindus marry one and have three mistresses and neither respect the wife nor the mistress. Kabhi ye log kehte hain tumhare bachche zyada hain. कभी ये लोग कहते हैं दो दो तीन तीन शादियां यकीनन हम दो शादी करते हैं तो दोनों बीवी को समाज में इज्जत देते हैं तुम एक शादी करते हो तीन रखे रखते हो किसी को नहीं बताते हो ना उसको इज्जत देते हो लेकिन हम अगर दो करते हैं तो इज्जत से करते हैं बीवी बनाते हैं उन बच्चों का नाम भी राशन कार्ड में होता है आधार कार्ड होता है Later on this Neta went on to justify his statements by saying that he did not say anything unconstitutional or related to any other religion. Ki pehli cheez to ye hai mera wo bayan dene ka maqsad to wo nahi jo log chala rahe hain. Aapko maloom hai ki aaj se 5 din pehle Delhi ke andar ek sadhu ne BSP ka program tha usme kaha ki musalmanon ko chun chun karke mara marna hai. ये चौदह शादियां करते हैं चालीस बच्चे पैदा करते हैं तो मैंने इंडिविजुअल उसको ये कहा था कि मुसलमान कोई गाजर मूली नहीं है कि आप उसको काट करके फेंक देंगे और दूसरी चीज़ मैंने उसके बयान पे ही ये बात कही थी कि जो ये कह रहे हैं कि हम आ, हम अगर दो शादी भी करते हैं तो शादियों में हम दोनों बीवी को सम्मान देते हैं दोनों के बच्चे को अपना बच्चा समझते हैं लेकिन वो लोग जो लोग एक एक से एक शादी तो करते हैं लेकिन तीन पत्नियां इनकी अलग से रहती हैं लेकिन समाज में उसको छुपाते हैं तो वो गलत है या हम गलत हैं नाउ देयर हैज बीन नो कमेंट और एक्शन अगेंस्ट शौकत अली फ्रॉम एआईएमआईएम बट पुलिस हैव रजिस्टर्ड एन एफआईआर अगेंस्ट द एआईएमआईएम लीडर फॉर हिज इनसाइटिंग कमेंट्स अगेंस्ट हिंदूज
Meanwhile, the BJP has trained its guns at AIMIM chief Asaduddin Owesi for the comments made by his party leaders. The Congress, meanwhile, has called AIMIM the B-team of the BJP and said the controversy was orchestrated. Bureau Report, Republic TV. The national president of JDU hit out at Prime Minister Modi, calling him extremely backward and a facade. Now, JDU President Lalan Singh further stated that the PM had been spreading his conservative mindset since he came to power. Shubham Garg's family has been granted a visa to visit Australia. Now, the Indian was repeatedly stabbed in Sydney as a result of an alleged hate crime. 1950, we are the largest economy in Asia. From 1950 to 1980, we grew at 3.5% a year. Population grew at 2.5%. Per capita income, 1% a year. Because of Nehru's failed policy. Nehru made sure that we became poorer in 1980 than 1950. This is all data, not politics. 1980 to 1990, we grew at 5.5%, population 2.25%, but debt grew from $20 billion in, 90, um, in 1981 to $80 billion, and we are broke by 91. In 91, because private... Massive fire breaks out at a plastic warehouse in Russia's Yekaterinburg. Cloud of black smoke surrounded Russia's plastic warehouse. This comes in the backdrop of Russia-Ukraine war which continues to escalate. Visuals on your screen shows firefighters deployed at the incident site continuously putting an effort to douse the massive fire. In what comes as a relief, no casualties have been reported at the fire site. Massive fire engulfs warehouse in Russia completely. Agency report for Republic TV. Legislature Barack Arbe, a member of the opposition Republican People's Party, smashed a smartphone with a hammer while addressing parliament, saying the clampdown on social media would make smartphone obsolete. Critics fear that as elections loom, the measure will be used to further crack down on social media and independent reporting. The 40-article legislation was approved with the vote of President Governing Party and its nationalist allies, which together hold a majority in the parliament. Agency Report, Republic TV. Today on the Bombay High Court, acquitting GN Sai Baba. Now, Solicitor General Tushar Mehta is reported to have maintained that the acquittal was not on the basis of merit but for lack of appropriate sanction to prosecute him under the provisions of the UAPA. This is a technical grounds पर इस प्रकार से ऐसे व्यक्ति को छोड़ देना जिसके खिलाफ इतने सबूत है जिन्होंने एक प्रकार से ये फैसले के कारण जो हमारे पुलिस नक्सलवादियों से लड़ते हुए शहीद हुए उनके घर वालों के ऊपर इससे क्या बीतती होगी इसका विचार Top headlines right now, Economica fugitive weaponizes foreign media to target Modi government with a four-page ad in Wall Street Journal. Kashmiri Pandit Puran Bhatta shot dead by Pakistan-backed terrorists in Shopia. Protests erupt across Kashmir over a wave of targeted killings. Demand grows for justice. Kerala police take accused to the crime scene as probe into the occult murder deepens. AIMIM leader Korontev abusing Hindu's police take cognizance of his rant. Two youths from Arunachal Pradesh reported missing family suspects they have crossed the NAC.
You are here watching Republic TV, India's number one news channel. I'm Shivangi Shukla. Let's start with the first story. In another incident of the terror attack on locals in the Kashmir rally, a Kashmiri pundit was shot in Jammu and Kashmir Shopia district. The deceased has been identified as Puran Bhatt. Now, the attack on the civilian was carried out after the security forces conducted two anti-terror operations in which four terrorists were neutralized. Here's a full story. A little past noon on Saturday, Puran Bhatt was shot dead by terrorists outside his house while he was heading towards his apple orchard. In the, at the time of the instance said that police deployment is there at his residence of the Kashmiri Pandit and he has also now confirmed the news that yes the police deployment is there and Sujit Kumar said that the action will not only be on police deployment who were guarding the residence of the Kashmiri Pandit. My Vijay Mubashir is showing you the visuals and this is the exact spot the visuals of the, the spot that are coming in that this is the spot where he was targeted by the terrorists. This uh, spot is just for not even two to three meters away from his residence where he was targeted. So we can say that he was targeted in his residence. Kashmiri, uh, Kashmiri Pandit ko Puran ji ko mara gaya hai. Aur is pe aapko pata hi hai ki TFF ne isko claim kiya hai. Lekin hamari urs. Ab hamari urs abhi abhi kuch bhi sure ham log apni urs nahi bolenge. People from across Shopian mourned the death of Kashmiri Pandit Puran Bhatt. The show of unity at his funeral was a stinging response to the terrorists. Uh, today early morning at 11.30 he got a shot here oh. and there, when we came here there was blood here also, here also. Oh. And by that time he was taken to hospital and we are coming to know from TV serials TV, that he is, he is killed, he is dead. We are thinking that he will be a little bit, 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 he will be a little bit. This is the residence where he was staying with his family, this is the ancestral house, he is survived by wife kids, one daughter and one son. The entire village is mourning the death of Bablu. They used to call him for family. He was poor Kishan but who preferred to stay back when the Kashmiri Pandits in 90s were migrating or when target killing started again in the Kashmir Valley. His family in Jammu is distraught over the targeted killing in Kashmir. The unfortunate incident that has unfolded in the South Kashmir where the terrorists have targeted a Kashmiri Pandit, a minority that was living in the Kashmir Valley even uh, after the exodus that has taken place in 1990. He chose not to leave the Kashmir Valley and was working there. Right now we are outside his Jammu residence and the senior officials of the Jammu and Kashmir police, uh, they are here to console the family members, the divisional commissioner and other officials uh, along with the ADG Jammu. They are here. The murder of Puran Bhatt is the fifth targeted killing in the valley in the last five months. And the anger is spilling on the streets. Kashmiri pundits blocked the Sheikh Pura Budgam Road and held protest rallies in Jammu demanding justice. We have to do something substantive on ground. If you cannot protect us, the government should give us arms should train us and not simply feed us to the wolves in Kashmir to keep this pretense of normalcy going. Despite the anger over the wave of targeted killings in Jammu and Kashmir, Mehbooba Mufti continues to question the forces. लोगों को जेलों में डाला जाता है हाइब्रिड मिलिटेंट के नाम पे लोगों को मुलाजमतों से निकाला जाता है शक की बुनियाद पे और उसके बावजूद बीजेपी नाकाम हो गई है यहां के जो हमारे रहे कुछ कश्मीरी पंडित बचे हुए थे उनको हिफाजत देने में With the rise in targeted killings in the valley it is now time to go all out against Pakistan backed terrorists in Kashmir Bureau Report Republic TV There was a joint action committee state a rally for uh, the decentralization and three capitals with the support of the
YSR CP organized a rally from Ambedkar statue to the YSR statue. Here's the full story. Amid the ongoing roar over three capital in the state of Andhra Pradesh, now we see that a large number of people gathered in a massive rally which was being led by the Joint Action Committee and also along with the YSRCP leaders. Many people joined the rally in support of Three Capital and also we have been seeing that this rally was named as Vishaka Garjana and also they have been seeing and demanding that now Vishakapatnam should be the executive capital as the Jagan Mohan Reddy-led government in the state of Andhra Pradesh has, the, has put forth the proposal for the three capital which is Vishakapatnam as executive capital, Amravati as the legislative capital and Karnul as the judicial capital but we also see that the opposition parties in the state of Andhra Pradesh have been demanding that this three capital should be withdrawn and also at the same same time that the Telugu Desam party leaders have been stating that Jagan Mohan Reddy is putting the Vishakapatnam as executive capital only to do land grabbing. A four-page advertisement has been published in the Wall Street Journal against Indian ministers and key officers of the central government. Senior advisor to Ministry of Information and Broadcasting Kanchan Gupta has tweeted that the mastermind behind this advertisement is Ramachandra Vishwanath. Who was the CEO of Devas? Now, Vishnu Martin was declared a fugitive economic offender in India and India's Supreme Court also ruled that Devas was involved in corruption. Here's the full story. On October 13th, this full-page advertisement was published in a US-based newspaper, Wall Street Journal. The truth about the advertisement is now becoming clear. The senior advisor to the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting, Kanchan Gupta, has revealed that the mastermind of the advertisement is Ramachandran Vishwanathan, former CEO of Devas, an economic offender in India. The owner of the country, uh, he is uh, Vishwanathan, uh, Ramachandran Vishwanathan. So the CEO of the company or the owner of the company he is a fugitive from Indian law. He has been declared a, a, a fugitive economic offender. And uh, uh, that's it. I mean, uh, uh, Devas Multimedia uh, had tried to con uh, ISRO's commercial wing, Antriksh, by entering into a fraudulent agreement. First, we have to understand who's this uh, Ramachandra Vishwanathan. He's uh, CEO of, he was CEO of uh, Devas. Uh, and uh, you know the Devas Antariksh scam and the manner in which uh, right up to the Supreme Court uh, Devas lost uh, uh, essentially making Ramachandra Vishwanathan an economic offender and a fugitive of law insofar as India is concerned under the economic uh, fugitives uh, law that we have uh, brought in by the present government. Uh, Ramachandran has pleaded with the US government to impose visa and economic sanctions against 11 Indians, which includes ministers and government officials. American media, the Wall Street Journal in this case, before that New York Times mocking uh, India's space achievements, achievements of uh, ISRO or uh, for that matter Washington Post, which very routinely uh, provides uh, its platform uh, for anti-India sentiments to be strongly ex ex expressed uh, or uh, for, for India bashing. As the Indian economy gets stronger and with the decline of the American economy, the pattern of such an advertisement cannot be missed. See, the, what America has done in the last two decades is to co-opt the world economy into the American financial system. It has co-opted the world monetary order into the American monetary order. It was its strength and that is becoming the weakness also today. So with so much dollars outside America and America printing more dollars and America exporting more dollars to import and with no other mechanism to control inflation, they have to do it even more. They are now caught in a situation from which it is, I am talking about economically. Get out of this, America has to hugely reduce its standard. With the facts now out, the deep anti-India network has been exposed. 
ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट रिपब्लिक टीवी Viewers, the art of living, along with World Forum for Ethics in Business, organized the sixth World Summit on Ethics and Leadership in Sports on 13th to 14th October, where great emphasis was laid to how sports should be played and looked at. The Art of Living Foundation, along with World Forum for Ethics in Business, organized the sixth World Summit on Ethics and Leadership in Sports in Bengaluru. The summit at a time when India is making global progress in athletics and its performance at global events. The two-day event saw the participation of Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, Minister of Law and Justice Kiran Rajiju. 25-time international billiard and snooker world champion Pankaj Advani, among other speakers. While Sri Sri Ravi Shankar stressed on how players should play with a sense of responsibility, sports is that some which unites people beyond language. Bhasha ke pare, deshon ke pare, ham sab ko jodta, koi chiz jodta hai to wo khel. Aur khel khud ko hamare desh mein hamne. जैसे आपने बताया किरण जी ने कि सीरियसली नहीं लेते इफ यू डोंट टेक सीरियसली द गेम्स देन नो वन टेक इट एज ए करियर एंड मेंटल हेल्थ विल ओनली कीप पीपल ऑन द ट्रैक ऑफ एथिक्स एंड हियर व्हेन यू फॉलो एथिक्स यू आर टेकिंग द गेम बोथ सीरियसली एंड नॉट सो सीरियस वॉट इज एथिक्स एथिक्स इज दैट फॉर You you. don't want others to do to you, you should not do to to do do should not others. Union Minister Kiran Rajiju emphasized on the need to bring sports culture in the country. Our sporting history goes back to ancient time. But over the years, the evolvement of the society did not bring sports culture in our country to the extent we would desire. It is very important to have the sports culture in any society. Billiard and snooker world champion Pankaj Advani calls for sports persons to respect the opponent. I believe that FIR can also stand for fairness, fair play, integrity and respect in the world of sport. So my um, appeal to you is to uh, ignore that FIR stands for first information report and uh, to uh, um believe that we actually can play sport um you know through fair play to integrity to to through respect respect not only for our sport respect for our opponents respect for uh the audience respect for the rules the summit sought a road map to use fair and clean sports as a tool to unite people in a post pandemic world riddled by conflict economic crisis and mental health issues The summit proceedings also featured the announcement of the Ethics in Sports Awards 2022, a prize that recognizes the outstanding individuals and organizations that have demonstrated the importance of human values and ethics in life and in the sports arena. The winners of this year included FC Union Berlin for outstanding organization, Anja Hammersing Eden for promotion of mental health in sports. Kiran Rajiju for outstanding contribution to sports and Sandeep Singh for resilience in sports Indeed the time is ripe for a sports revolution and more importantly it's time we change how we play the game with ethics and leadership Bureau Report Republic TV Let's put our hands together what a wonderful morning Top national update Union Home Minister Amit Shah released a BJP selection theme song Himachal ki pukar fir BJP sarkar The theme song has been released during the poll campaign with Chief Minister Jairam Thakur After sparking a row by calling the PM duplicate JDU National President Lalan Singh has refused to apologize he further slammed the BJP MP Ravi Shankar Prasad for buttering the PM to be in his good books after getting sidelined 
A boat carrying Bihar CM Nitish Kumar collided with an under construction pillar of the JP Setu Bridge. This happened while he was inspecting the arrangements of the Chhat Ghat situated on the bank of the river Ganga. All on board the boat, including the CM, are safe. Trouble keeps mounting for TMC MLA. Manik Bhattacharya as ED raided the residence of his close aide in connection with the SSC scam case. Bhattacharya himself was arrested by the central agency on October 11th. NCJ Farooq Abdullah, PDP Chief Mehbooba Mufti and other members of the People's Alliance for the Gupkar Declaration met over the Jammu and Kashmir issue at Farooq Abdullah's residence in Srinagar. Haryana government granted 40 days parole to rape convict uh, Gurmeet Ram Rahim Singh. self styled government currently facing 20 years of jail time allowed to come out of the jail there in Rotak. The Indian women's cricket team made the country proud. They were crowned the Asia Cup champions after convincingly decimating Sri Lanka in the final played there at the cricket stadium in Bangladesh. Rahul Gandhi launches a stinging attack at BJP government's centre in Karnataka during his speech. During the Bharat Jori Yatra, former Congress president raised the matter of commission for jobs under the Bumai administration. AIMIM's UP president Shokat Ali sparked religious row after making hateful comments about polygamy among the Hindus. He said Hindus keep mistresses while addressing a gathering there in UP. U.S. President Joe Biden sensationally labelled Pakistan as one of the most dangerous nations in the world. He further noted that the country has nuclear weapons without any cohesion. Two Arunachal Pradesh youth have gone missing after they went out in the search of the plants which can contain medicinal properties at a place near the state's border with China. The family members of the missing youth have alleged the Chinese army role in the incident. Here is a full report. Two youths from Arunachal Pradesh have reportedly gone missing from the line of actual control. These youths from the Anjao district of Arunachal Pradesh have reportedly been missing from near the LAC area. They have been identified as Batelum Tikro and Baing So Manu. As per the details shared with the police, the youths travelled to Changlagam area in search of medicinal herbs on August 19th and haven't returned since. Although the family is desperately searching for the youths, they have failed to gather details of their whereabouts. Fellow villagers who were close to the LSE saw them last on August 24th. The brother and relative of the missing youth, the Shanso Chikro, has been fighting to find his loved ones. As Republic reports from Ground Zero, the relatives of the two missing youths spoke exclusively to Republic. 19 August 2022, मेरे घर के घर के एक परिवार मेरे घर भैया वो मेरा गांव के कजन भैया दोनों किसी मेडिसिनल हर्ब के तलाश में जाना जाता है जारी बुतिया उसके तलाश में पहाड़ों के तरफ निकल गए जो आज तक वापस लौट के नहीं आया The family suspects that they might have crossed the LAC and PLA may have detained them The relatives have appealed to the state and the central government to take immediate action the Indian Army is also keeping a close watch, keeping the lines open with the PLA if needed. The family suspect that they mistakenly crossed over to the Chinese territory following which the PLA has taken them into custody. Meanwhile, the family members of Batalam Tikro has lodged a missing complaint which the Anzao police and have also appealed the Indian Army for intervention. They have also seek assistance from the state government and the center to ensure a safe return of the youth. With video journalist Asok, I am Anirudh Bhakat and this is Republic Media Network. Top updates, uh, viewers. In another terror attack on locals in the Kashmir rally, a Kashmiri pundit was attacked in Jammu and Kashmir, Chopia district. According to the reports, the victim succumbed to his injuries after he was shot at by the terrorists outside his residence. हम यहां थे बाहर में थे तो पीछे से पता चला कि किसी की किसी को गोली मारी गई तो हम दौड़ते आगे यहां पे 
तो यहाँ देखा यहाँ खून गिरा था यहाँ खून गिरा था और जब हम देखने लगे तो तब तक उसको अपना भतीजा ले गया था बाइक पे अस्पताल में तो वहाँ से फिर वो एम्बुलेंस पे शायद शुपियान ले गए तो फैमिली क्या है इसकी फैमिली इसकी दो बच्चे हैं छोटे एक लड़की है बड़ी और एक लड़का है उसका भाई भी इधर है उसके बच्चे भी फिफ्थ में पढ़ता है और बच्ची शायद सातवीं में पढ़ती है तो यानी घर घर में इनमें इनका सब कुछ घर में ही था इनका कोई नौकरी वोकरी नहीं है कुछ नहीं है चल हम तो था यहीं पे बाग बगी चक्कर बेचारा घर से भी बाहर नहीं निकला इन दिनों वो अंदर ही बैठता डर डर लग रहा है बहुत डर लगता है बहुत डर लगता है ISRO's heaviest rocket uh, will launch the UK startup OneWeb's 36 broadband satellites from the spaceport in Andhra Pradesh, Sri Harikota, on October 23rd, marking the launcher's entry into the global commercial launch service market. Assam Adi Party Chief Gopal Italia made a caste slur against Prime Minister Modi. The Janata Dal United Chief now has now made a. derogatory remark against the prime minister by calling him perupia or duplicate soon after jdu's uh, lalan singh made a derogatory remark against prime minister bjp came down heavily on its former ally jdu has and called the party chief's remark shameful and said it showcased the extreme arrogance of the feudal mindset chhota kar karta hota to main jawab hi nahi deta उनके वो राष्ट्रीय अध्यक्ष हैं इट इज ए फ्यूडल माइंड सेट मिस्टर प्रकाश फुल ऑफ एरोगेंस अहंकार पूरा है अच्छा है देश ने बहुतों का अहंकार खत्म किया है ललन बाबू जदयू का भी खत्म करेंगे The DMK today staged a protest against the parliamentary committee's recommendation to make Hindi the medium of instruction in central educational institutes. The DMK's a showdown came after Tamil Nadu CM and DMK chief MK Stalin wrote to the central government and warned against the imposition of the Hindi language. A major crackdown against the terror supporters in Jammu and Kashmir. Jammu and Kashmir Lieutenant Governor Manoj Sinha's administration today terminated five government employees for their links with the various terrorist outfits. In a mega crackdown on West Bengal SSC recruitment scam, the Enforcement Directorate today Saturday has now raided Manik Bhattacharya's close aid, Tapas Mandal's residence there in North 24 Parganas. The investigation agency has also reportedly raided Manik Bhattacharya's offices in and other areas where young college students were allegedly trained as teachers massive fire breaks out at a plastic warehouse in russia's yekaterinburg cloud of black smoke surrounded russia's plastic warehouse This comes in the backdrop of Russia-Ukraine war which continues to escalate. Visuals on your screen shows firefighters deployed at the incident site continuously putting an effort to douse the massive fire. In what comes as a relief, no casualties have been reported at the fire site. The fire engulfs warehouse in Russia completely. Agency report for Republic TV. Viewers, AI MIM leader Shaukat Ali's comment against Hindu women has drawn the ire of BJP, who has demanded answers from the party chief OAC. Drawing a comparison, Shaukat allegedly said that Hindus marry one but have three mistresses. NFIR has been registered against the leader. Here is the full story. In a fresh controversy, Asaduddin Owaisi's AIMIM UP chief Shaukat Ali made a controversial remark on Hindu marriage at a rally in UP's Sambhal. He said that even if Muslims have two marriages, they give respect to both wives in society, but Hindus marry one and have three mistresses and neither respect the wife nor the mistress. Kabhi ye log kehte hain ki tumhare bachche zyada hain. कभी ये लोग कहते हैं दो दो तीन तीन शादियां यकीनन हम दो शादी करते हैं तो दोनों बीवी को समाज में इज्जत देते हैं तुम एक शादी करते हो तीन रखे रखते हो किसी को नहीं बताते हो ना उसको इज्जत देते हो लेकिन हम अगर दो करते हैं तो इज्जत से करते हैं बीवी बनाते हैं उन बच्चों का नाम भी राशन कार्ड में होता है आधार कार्ड होता है 
Later on, this Neta went on to justify his statements by saying that he did not say anything unconstitutional or related to any other religion. The first thing is that the meaning of my statement is not what people are doing. You know that five days ago, in Delhi, a sadhu had a program for the BHP. He said that he had to kill the Muslims. He had to kill the Muslims. ये चौदह शादियां करते हैं चालीस बच्चे पैदा करते हैं तो मैंने इंडिविजुअल उसको ये कहा था कि मुसलमान कोई गाजर मूली नहीं है कि आप उसको काट करके फेंक देंगे और दूसरी चीज़ मैंने उसके बयान पे ही ये बात कही थी कि जो ये कह रहे हैं कि हम आ, हम अगर दो शादी भी करते हैं तो शादियों में हम दोनों बीवी को सम्मान देते हैं दोनों के बच्चे को अपना बच्चा समझते हैं लेकिन वो लोग जो लोग एक एक से एक शादी तो करते हैं लेकिन तीन पत्नियां इनकी अलग से रहती हैं लेकिन समाज में उसको छुपाते हैं तो वो गलत है या हम गलत हैं नाउ देर हैज बीन नो कमेंट और एक्शन अगेंस्ट शौकत अली फ्रॉम ए आई एम बट पुलिस हैव रजिस्टर्ड एन एफआईआर अगेंस्ट द ए आई एम लीडर फॉर हिज इंसाइटिंग कमेंट्स अगेंस्ट हिंदूज Meanwhile the BJP has trained its guns at AIMIM chief Asaduddin Owaisi for the comments made by his party leaders the congress meanwhile has called AIMIM the B team of the BJP and said the controversy was orchestrated bureau report republic tv Legislature Barack Arbe a member of the opposition Republican People's Party smashed a smartphone with a hammer while addressing parliament saying the clamp down on social media would make smartphone obsolete Critics fear that as elections loom the measure will be used to further crack down on social media and independent reporting The 40 article legislation was approved with the vote of president governing party and its nationalist allies which together hold a majority in the parliament Agency report Republic TV A on the Bombay High Court acquitting GN Sai Baba Now Solicitor General Tushar Mehta is reported to have maintained that the acquittal was not on the basis of merit but for lack of appropriate sanction to prosecute him under the provisions of the UAPA. ये जो फैसला आया है ये बहुत ही दुर्दैवी है बहुत ही निराशाजनक है क्योंकि टेक्निकल ग्राउंड्स पर इस प्रकार से ऐसे व्यक्ति को छोड़ देना जिसके खिलाफ इतने सबूत हैं जिन्होंने एक प्रकार से ये फैसले के कारण जो हमारे पुलिस नक्सलवादियों से लड़ते हुए शहीद हुए उनके घर वालों के ऊपर इससे क्या बीतती होगी इसका विचार मैं बार बार कर रहा हूँ हम सर्वोच्च न्यायालय गए हैं सुप्रीम कोर्ट गए हैं और मेरा विश्वास है कि सुप्रीम कोर्ट में न्याय मिलेगा A 21-year-old college student was allegedly molested by an auto rickshaw driver and dragged with a vehicle in Maharashtra Thane. Now a video of the incident that took place in the city around 6:45 a.m. surfaced on social media. The national president of JDU hit out at Prime Minister Modi calling him extremely backward and a facade. Now JDU president Lalan Singh further stated that the PM had been spreading his conservative mindset since he came to power. Top headlines right now economic uh, fugitive weaponizes foreign media to target Modi government with a four page ad in Wall Street Journal. Kashmiri Pandit uh, Puran Bhatta shot dead by Pakistan backed terrorists in Shopia. Protests erupt across Kashmir over a wave of targeted killings. Demand grows for justice. Kerala police take accused to the crime scene as probe into the cause murder deepens. AI MIM leader Korontev abusing Hindus police take cognizance of his rant. Two youths from Arunachal Pradesh reported missing. Family suspects they have crossed the LAC.
Viewers, you are watching Republic TV, India's number one news channel. I'm Shivangi Shukla. Let's start with the first story. In another incident of the terror attack on locals in the Kashmir rally, a Kashmiri pundit was shot in Jammu and Kashmir Shopia district. The deceased has been identified as Puran Bhatt. Now, the attack on the civilian was carried out after the security forces conducted two anti-terror operations in which four terrorists were neutralized. Here's a full story. A little past noon on Saturday, Puran Bhatt was shot dead by terrorists outside his house while he was heading towards his apple orchard. In the, at the time of the instance said that police deployment is there at his residence of the Kashmiri Pandit and he has also now confirmed the news that yes the police deployment is there and Sujit Kumar said that the action will not only be on police deployment who were guarding the residence of the Kashmiri Pandit. My Vijay Mubashir is showing you the visuals and this is the exact spot the visuals of the, the spot that are coming in that this is the spot where he was targeted by the terrorists. This uh, spot is just for uh, not even two to three meters away from his residence where he was targeted. So we can say that he was targeted in his residence. Kashmiri, uh, Kashmiri Pandit ko Puranji ko mara gaya hai. Aur is pe aapko pata hi hai ki TFF ne isko claim kiya hai. Lekin hamari urs. Ab hamari urs abhi abhi kuch bhi sure ham log apni urs nahi bolenge. People from across Shopian mourned the death of Kashmiri Pandit Puran Bhatt. The show of unity at his funeral was a stinging response to the terrorists. Uh, today early morning at 11.30 he got a shot here. Oh. And there, when we came here there was blood here also, here also. Oh. And by that time he was taken to hospital and we are coming to know from TV serials TV, that he is, he is killed, he is dead. We were thinking that it will be a little bit, it will be a little bit, but it will be a little bit. This is the residence where he was staying with his family, this is the ancestral house, he is survived by wife kids, one daughter and one son. The entire village is mourning the death of Bablu. They used to call him for family. He was poor Kishan, but who preferred to stay back when the Kashmiri Pandits in 90s were migrating or when target killing started again in the Kashmir Valley. His family in Jammu is distraught over the targeted killing in Kashmir. The unfortunate incident that has unfolded in the South Kashmir where the terrorists have targeted a Kashmiri Pandit, a minority that was living in the Kashmir Valley even uh, after the exodus that has taken place in 1990. He chose not to leave the Kashmir Valley and was working there. Right now we are outside his Jammu residence and the senior officials of the Jammu and Kashmir police, uh, they are here to console the family members, the divisional commissioner and other officials uh, along with the ADG Jammu. They are here. The murder of Puran Bhatt is the fifth targeted killing in the valley in the last five months. And the anger is spilling on the streets. Kashmiri pundits blocked the Sheikh Pura Budgam Road and held protest rallies in Jammu demanding justice. We have to do something substantive on ground. If you cannot protect us, the government should give us arms should train us and not simply feed us to the wolves in Kashmir to keep this pretense of normalcy going. Despite the anger over the wave of targeted killings in Jammu and Kashmir, Mehbooba Mufti continues to question the forces. लोगों को जेलों में डाला जाता है हाइब्रिड मिलिटेंट के नाम पे लोगों को मुलाजमतों से निकाला जाता है शक की बुनियाद पे और उसके बावजूद बीजेपी नाकाम हो गई यहां के जो हमारे रहे कुछ कश्मीरी पंडित बचे हुए थे उनको हिफाजत देने में With the rise in targeted killings in the valley it is now time to go all out against Pakistan backed terrorists in Kashmir Bureau Report Republic TV It was a joint action committee stage a rally for uh, the decentralization and three capitals with the support of the 
YSR CP organized a rally from Ambedkar statue to the YSR statue. Here's the full story. Amid the ongoing roar over three capital in the state of Andhra Pradesh, now we see that a large number of people gathered in a massive rally which was being led by the Joint Action Committee and also along with the YSRCP leaders. Many people joined the rally in support of Three Capital and also we have been seeing that this rally was named as Vishaka Garjana and also they have been seeing and demanding that now Vishaka Patnam should be the executive capital as the Jagan Mohan Reddy led government in the state of Andhra Pradesh has, the, has put forth the proposal for the Three Capital which is Vishaka Patnam as executive capital, Amravati as the legislative capital and Karnul as the judicial capital but we also see that the opposition parties in the state of Andhra Pradesh have been demanding that this Three Capital should be withdrawn and also at the same time that the Telugu Desam party leaders have been stating that Jagan Mohan Reddy is putting the Vishakhapatnam as executive capital only to do land grabbing. A four-page advertisement has been published in the Wall Street Journal against Indian ministers and key officers of the central government. Senior advisor to Ministry of Information and Broadcasting Kanchan Gupta has tweeted that the mastermind behind this advertisement is Ramachandra Vishwanathan. Who was the CEO of Devas? Now, Vishnu Martin was declared a fugitive economic offender in India and India's Supreme Court also ruled that Devas was involved in corruption. Here's the full story. On October 13th, this full-page advertisement was published in a US-based newspaper, Wall Street Journal. The truth about the advertisement is now becoming clear. The senior advisor to the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting, Kanchan Gupta, has revealed that the mastermind of the advertisement is Ramachandran Vishwanathan, former CEO of Devas, an economic offender in India. The owner of the country, uh, he is uh, Vishwanathan, uh, Ramachandran Vishwanathan. So the CEO of the company or the owner of the company he is a fugitive from Indian law. He has been declared a, a, a fugitive economic offender. And uh, uh, that's it. I mean, uh, uh, Devas Multimedia uh, had tried to con uh, ISRO's commercial wing, Antriksh, by entering into a fraudulent agreement. First, we have to understand who's this uh, Ramachandra Vishwanathan. He's uh, a CEO of, he was CEO of uh, Devas. Uh, and uh, you know the Devas Antriksh scam and the manner in which uh, right up to the Supreme Court uh, Devas lost uh, uh, essentially making Ramachandra Vishwanathan an economic offender and a fugitive of law insofar as India is concerned under the economic uh, fugitives uh, law that we have uh, brought in by the present government. Uh, Ramachandran has pleaded with the US government to impose visa and economic sanctions against 11 Indians, which includes ministers and government officials. American media, the Wall Street Journal in this case, before that New York Times mocking uh, India's space achievements, achievements of uh, ISRO or uh, for that matter Washington Post, which very routinely uh, provides uh, its platform uh, for anti-India sentiments to be strongly ex ex expressed uh, or uh, for, for India bashing. As the Indian economy gets stronger and with the decline of the American economy, the pattern of such an advertisement cannot be missed. See, the, what America has done in the last two, two decades is to co-opt the world economy into the American financial system. It has co-opted the world monetary order into the American monetary order. It was its strength and that is becoming the weakness also today. So with so much dollars outside America and America printing more dollars and America exporting more dollars to import and with no other mechanism to control inflation, they have to do it even more. They are now caught in a situation from which it is, I am talking about economically. Get out of this, America has to hugely reduce its standard. With the facts now out, the deep anti-India network has been exposed. 
ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट रिपब्लिक टीवी Viewers, the art of living, along with World Forum for Ethics in Business, organized the sixth World Summit on Ethics and Leadership in Sports on 13th to 14th October, where great emphasis was laid to how sports should be played and looked at. The Art of Living Foundation, along with World Forum for Ethics in Business, organized the sixth World Summit on Ethics and Leadership in Sports in Bengaluru. The summit, at a time when India is making global progress in athletics and its performance at global events, the two-day event saw the participation of Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, Minister of Law and Justice Kiran Rajiju. 25-time international billiard and snooker world champion Pankaj Advani, among other speakers. While Sri Sri Ravi Shankar stressed on how players should play with a sense of responsibility, sports is that some which unites people beyond language. Bhasha ke pare, deshon ke pare, ham sab ko jodta, koi cheez jodta hai to wo khel. Aur khel khud ko hamare desh mein hamne. जैसे आपने बताया किरण जी ने कि सीरियसली नहीं लेते इफ यू डोंट टेक सीरियसली द गेम्स देन नो वन टेक इट एज ए करियर एंड मेंटल हेल्थ विल ओनली कीप पीपल ऑन द ट्रैक ऑफ एथिक्स एंड हियर व्हेन यू फॉलो एथिक्स यू आर टेकिंग द गेम बोथ सीरियसली एंड नॉट सो सीरियस वॉट इज एथिक्स एथिक्स इज दैट फॉर You don't want others to do to you. You should not do to others. Union Minister Kiran Rajiju emphasized on the need to bring sports culture in the country. Our sporting history goes back to ancient time, but over the years, the evolvement of the society did not bring sports culture in our country to the extent we would desire. It is very important to have the sports culture in any society. Billiard and snooker world champion Pankaj Advani calls for sports persons to respect the opponent. I believe that FIR can also stand for fairness, fair play, integrity and respect in the world of sport. So my um, appeal to you is to uh, ignore that FIR stands for first information report and uh, to uh, um believe that we actually can play sport um you know through fair play through integrity through to through respect respect not only for our sport respect for our opponents respect for uh the audience respect for the rules the summit sought a road map to use fair and clean sports as a tool to unite people in a post pandemic world riddled by conflict economic crisis and mental health issues The summit proceedings also featured the announcement of the Ethics in Sports Awards 2022, a prize that recognizes the outstanding individuals and organizations that have demonstrated the importance of human values and ethics in life and in the sports arena. The winners of this year included FC Union Berlin for outstanding organization, Anja Hammersing Eden for promotion of mental health in sports. Kiran Rajiju for outstanding contribution to sports and Sandeep Singh for resilience in sports indeed the time is ripe for a sports revolution and more importantly it's time we change how we play the game with ethics and leadership bureau report republic tv let's put our hands together what a wonderful morning Top national update Union Home Minister Amit Shah released a BJP selection theme song Himachal ki pukar fir BJP sarkar The theme song has been released during the poll campaign with Chief Minister Jairam Thakur After sparking a row by calling the PM duplicate JDU National President Lalan Singh has refused to apologize he further slammed the BJP MP Ravi Shankar Prasad for buttering the PM to be in his good books after getting sidelined 
A boat carrying Bihar CM Nitish Kumar collided with an under construction pillar of the JP Setu Bridge. This happened while he was inspecting the arrangements of the Chhat Ghat situated on the bank of the river Ganga. All on board the boat, including the CM, are safe. Trouble keeps mounting for TMC MLA Manik Bhattacharya as ED raided the residence of his close aide in connection with the SSC scam case. Bhattacharya himself was arrested by the central agency on October 11th. NCJ Farooq Abdullah, PDP Chief Mehbooba Mufti and other members of the People's Alliance for the Gupkar Declaration met over the Jammu and Kashmir issue at Farooq Abdullah's residence in Srinagar. Haryana government granted 40 days parole to rape convict uh, Gurmeet Ram Rahim Singh. The self-styled government currently facing 20 years of jail time allowed to come out of the jail there in Rotak. The Indian women's cricket team made the country proud. They were crowned the Asia Cup champions after convincingly decimating Sri Lanka in the final play there at the cricket stadium in Bangladesh. Rahul Gandhi launches a stinging attack at BJP government's centre in Karnataka during his speech. During the Bharat Jora Yatra, former Congress president raised the matter of commission for jobs under the Bumai administration. AIMIM's UP president Shokat Ali sparked religious row after making hateful comments about polygamy among the Hindus. He said Hindus keep mistresses while addressing a gathering there in UP. U.S. President Joe Biden uh, sensationally labelled Pakistan as one of the most dangerous nations in the world. He further noted that the country has nuclear weapons without any cohesion. Two Arunachal Pradesh youth have gone missing after they went out in the search of the plants which can contain medicinal properties at a place near the state's border with China. The family members of the missing youth have alleged the Chinese army role in the incident. Here is a full report. Two youths from Arunachal Pradesh have reportedly gone missing from the line of actual control. These youths from the Anjaw district of Arunachal Pradesh have reportedly been missing from near the LAC area. They have been identified as Batelum Tikro and Baing So Manu. As per the details shared with the police, the youths travelled to Changlagam area in search of medicinal herbs on August 19th and haven't returned since. Although the family is desperately searching for the youths, they have failed to gather details of their whereabouts. Fellow villagers who were close to the LSE saw them last on August 24th. The brother and relative of the missing youth, the Shansa Chikro, has been fighting to find his loved ones. As Republic reports from Ground Zero, the relatives of the two missing youths spoke exclusively to Republic. 19 August 2022, ko. मेरे घर के घर के एक परिवार मेरे घर भैया वो मेरा गांव के कजन भैया दोनों किसी मेडिसिनल हर्ब के तलाश में जाना जाता है जारी बुकिया उसके तलाश में पहाड़ों के तरफ निकल गए जो आज तक वापस लौट के नहीं आया The family suspects that they might have crossed the LAC and PLM may have detained them The relatives have appealed to the state and the central government to take immediate action the Indian Army is also keeping a close watch, keeping the lines open with the PLA if needed. The family suspect that they mistakenly crossed over to the Chinese territory following which the PLA has taken them into custody. Meanwhile, the family members of Batalam Tikro has lost a missing complaint which the Anzao police and have also appealed the Indian Army for intervention. They have also seek assistance from the state government and the center to ensure a safe return of the youth. With video journalist Asok, I am Anirudh Abhakat and this is Republic Media Network. Top updates, uh, viewers, in another terror attack on locals in the Kashmir Valley, a Kashmiri pundit was attacked in Jabu and Kashmir, Shopia district. According to the reports, the victim succumbed to his injuries after he was shot at by the terrorists outside his residence. हम यहां थे बाहर में थे तो पीछे से पता चला कि किसी की किसी को गोली मारी गई तो हम दौड़ते आगे यहां पे 
तो यहाँ देखा यहाँ खून गिरा था यहाँ खून गिरा था और जब हम देखने लगे तो तब तक उसको अपना भतीजा ले गया था बाइक पे अस्पताल में तो वहाँ से फिर वो एम्बुलेंस में शायद शुपियान ले गए तो फैमिली क्या है इस फैमिली इसकी दो बच्चे हैं छोटे एक लड़की है बड़ी और एक लड़का है उसका भाई भी इधर है एक बच्चे भी फिफ्थ में पढ़ता है और बच्ची शायद छठवीं में पढ़ती है तो यानी घर घर में इनमें इनका सब कुछ घर में ही था इनका कोई नौकरी वोकरी नहीं है कुछ नहीं है चल हम तो था यहीं पर बाग बगी चक्कर बेचारा घर से भी बाहर नहीं निकला इन दिनों वो अंदर ही बैठता डर डर लग रहा है बहुत डर लगता है बहुत डर लगता है ISRO's heaviest rocket uh, will launch the UK startup OneWeb's 36 broadband satellites from the spaceport in Andhra Pradesh, Sri Harikota, on October 23rd, marking the launcher's entry into the global commercial launch service market. Assam Adi Party Chief Gopal Atalia made a caste slur against Prime Minister Modi. The Janata Dal United Chief now has now made a. derogatory remark against the prime minister by calling him perupia or duplicate soon after jdu's uh, lalan singh made a derogatory remark against prime minister bjp came down heavily on its former ally jdu has and called the party chief's remark shameful and said it showcased the extreme arrogance of the feudal mindset chhota karyakarta hota to main jawab hi nahi deta उनके वो राष्ट्रीय अध्यक्ष हैं इट इज ए फ्यूडल माइंड सेट मिस्टर प्रकाश फुल ऑफ एरोगेंस अहंकार पूरा है अच्छा है देश ने बहुतों का अहंकार खत्म किया है ललन बाबू जदयू का भी खत्म करेगी The DMK today staged a protest against the parliamentary committee's recommendation to make Hindi the medium of instruction in central educational institutes. The DMK's a showdown came after Tamil Nadu CM and DMK chief MK Stalin wrote to the central government and warned against the imposition of the Hindi language. A major crackdown against the terror supporters in Jammu and Kashmir. Jammu and Kashmir Lieutenant Governor Manoj Sinha's administration today terminated five government employees for their links with the various terrorist outfits. In a mega crackdown on West Bengal SSC recruitment scam, the Enforcement Directorate today Saturday has now raided Manik uh, Bhattacharya's close aide Tapas Mandal's residence there in North 24 Parganas. The investigation agency has also reportedly raided Manik Bhattacharya's offices in um, other areas where young college students were allegedly trained as teachers. Massive fire breaks out at a plastic warehouse in Russia's Yekaterinburg. Cloud of black smoke surrounded Russia's plastic warehouse. This comes in the backdrop of Russia-Ukraine war which continues to escalate. Visuals on your screen shows firefighters deployed at the incident site continuously putting an effort to douse the massive fire. In what comes as a relief, no casualties have been reported at the fire site. Massive fire engulfs warehouse in Russia completely. Agency report for Republic TV. Viewers, AI MIM leader Shaukat Ali's comment against Hindu women has drawn the ire of BJP, who has demanded answers from the party chief OAC. Drawing a comparison, Shaukat allegedly said that Hindus marry one but have three mistresses. An FIR has been registered against the leader. Here is the full story. In a fresh controversy, Asaduddin OAC's AI MIM UP chief Shaukat Ali made a controversial remark. on hindu marriage at a rally in up's sambhal he said that even if muslims have two marriages they give respect to both wives in society but hindus marry one and have three mistresses and neither respect the wife nor the mistress kabhi ye log kehte hain tumhare bachche zyada hain kabhi ye log kehte hain do do teen teen shaadiyan yakeenan hum do shaadi karte hain to dono biwi ko samaj mein izzat dete hain tum ek shaadi kar लेकिन हम अगर दो करते हैं तो इज्जत से करते हैं बीवी बनाते हैं उन बच्चों का नाम भी राशन कार्ड में होता है आधार कार्ड होता है 
Later on, this Neta went on to justify his statements by saying that he did not say anything unconstitutional or related to any other religion. आपको मालूम है कि आज से पांच दिन पहले दिल्ली के अंदर एक साधु ने बीएसपी का प्रोग्राम था उसमें कहा कि मुसलमानों को चुन चुन करके मारा मारना है ये चौदह शादियां करते हैं चालीस बच्चे पैदा करते हैं तो मैंने इंडिविजुअल उसको ये कहा था कि मुसलमान कोई गाजर मूली नहीं है कि आप उसको काट करके फेंक देंगे और दूसरी चीज़ मैंने उसके बयान पर ही ये बात कही थी कि जो ये कह रहे हैं कि हम हम अगर दो शादी भी करते हैं तो शादियों में हम दोनों बीवी को सम्मान देते हैं दोनों के बच्चे को अपना बच्चा समझते हैं लेकिन वो लोग जो लोग एक एक से एक शादी तो करते हैं लेकिन तीन पत्नियां इनकी अलग से रहती हैं लेकिन समाज में उसको छुपाते हैं तो वो गलत है या हम गलत हैं नाउ देर हैज बीन नो कमेंट और एक्शन अगेंस्ट शौकत अली फ्रॉम ए आई but police have registered an fir against the aimim leader for his inciting comments against hindus meanwhile the bjp has trained its guns at aimim chief asaduddin owaisi for the comments made by his party leaders the congress meanwhile has called aimim the b team of the bjp and said the controversy was orchestrated bureau report republic tv Legislature Barack Arbe, a member of the opposition Republican People's Party, smashed a smartphone with a hammer while addressing Parliament, saying the clampdown on social media would make smartphone obsolete. Critics fear that as elections loom, the measure will be used to further crack down on social media and independent reporting. The 40 article legislation was approved with the vote of president governing party and its nationalist allies which together hold a majority in the parliament. Agency report Republic TV. A on the Bombay High Court acquitting GN Sai Baba. Now Solicitor General Tushar Mehta is reported to have maintained that the acquittal was not on the basis of merit but for lack of appropriate sanction to prosecute him under the provisions of the UAPA. ये जो फैसला आया है ये बहुत ही दुर्दैवी है बहुत ही निराशाजनक है क्योंकि टेक्निकल ग्राउंड्स पर इस प्रकार से ऐसे व्यक्ति को छोड़ देना जिसके खिलाफ इतने सबूत हैं जिन्होंने एक प्रकार से ये फैसले के कारण जो हमारे पुलिस नक्सलवादियों से लड़ते हुए शहीद हुए उनके घर वालों के ऊपर इससे क्या बीतती होगी इसका विचार मैं बार बार कर रहा हूँ हम सर्वोच्च न्यायालय गए हैं सुप्रीम कोर्ट गए हैं और मेरा विश्वास है कि सुप्रीम कोर्ट में न्याय मिलेगा A 21-year-old college student was allegedly molested by an auto rickshaw driver and dragged with a vehicle in Maharashtra Thane. Now, a video of the incident that took place in the city around 6:45 a.m. surfaced on social media. The national president of JDU hit out at Prime Minister Modi, calling him extremely backward and a facade. Now, JDU President Lalan Singh further stated that the PM had been spreading his conservative mindset since he came to power. Shubham Garg's family has been granted a visa to visit Australia. Now, the Indian was repeatedly stabbed in Sydney as a result of an alleged hate crime. Following the case of human uh, top headlines right now, economic uh, fugitive weaponizes foreign media to target Modi government with a four-page ad in Wall Street Journal. Kashmiri Pandit uh, Puran Bhatta shot dead by Pakistan-backed terrorists in Shopia. Protests erupt across Kashmir over a wave of targeted killings. Demand grows for justice. Kerala police take accused to the crime scene as probe into the uncle's murder deepens. AI MIM leader Korontev abusing Hindus police take cognizance of his rant. 
Two youths from Arunachal Pradesh reported missing. Family suspects they have crossed the NAC. Viewers, you are watching Republic TV, India's number one news channel. I'm Shivangi Shukla. Let's start with the first story. In another incident of the terror attack on locals in the Kashmir rally, a Kashmiri pundit was shot in Jammu and Kashmir Shopia district. The deceased has been identified as Puran Bhatt. Now, the attack on the civilian was carried out after the security forces conducted two anti-terror operations in which four terrorists were neutralized. Here's a full story. A little past noon on Saturday, Puran Bhatt was shot dead by terrorists outside his house while he was heading towards his apple orchard. In the, at the time of the instance said that police deployment is there at his residence of the Kashmiri Pandit and he has also now confirmed the news that yes, the police deployment is there and Sujit Kumar said that the action will not only be on police deployment who were guarding the residence of the Kashmiri Pandit. My Vijay Mubashir is showing you the visuals and this is the exact spot, the visuals of the, the spot that are coming in that this is the spot where he was targeted by the terrorists. This uh, spot is just for uh, not even two to three meters away from his residence where he was targeted. So we can say that he was targeted in his residence. Kashmiri, uh, Kashmiri Pandit ko Puranji ko mara gaya hai. Aur is pe aapko pata hi hai ki TFF ne isko claim kiya hai. Lekin hamari urs. Ab hamari urs abhi abhi kuch bhi sure ham log apni urs nahi bolenge. People from across Shopian mourned the death of Kashmiri Pandit Puran Bhatt. The show of unity at his funeral was a stinging response to the terrorists. Uh, today early morning at 11.30 he got a shot here. Oh. And there, when we came here there was blood here also, here also. Oh. And by that time he was taken to hospital and we are coming to know from TV serials the TV that he is he is killed he is dead hum soch rahe the thoda sa hi lagi hogi shayad bach jayega bechara but message aaya ki wo to hai nahi this is the residence where he was staying with his family this is the ancestral house he is survived by wife kids one daughter and one son the entire village is mourning the death of bablu they used to call him for family he was poor kishan but who preferred to stay back when the kashmiri pundits in 90s were migrating or when target killing started again in the kashmir valley his family in jammu is distraught over the targeted killing in kashmir the unfortunate incident that has unfolded in the South Kashmir where the terrorists have targeted a Kashmiri Pandit, a minority that was living in the Kashmir Valley even uh, after the exodus that has taken place in 1990. He chose not to leave the Kashmir Valley and was working there. Right now we are outside his Jammu residence and the senior officials of the Jammu and Kashmir police, uh, they are here to console the family members, the divisional commissioner and other officials uh, along with the ADG Jammu. They are here. The murder of Puran Bhatt is the fifth targeted killing in the valley in the last five months. And the anger is spilling on the streets. Kashmiri pundits blocked the Sheikh Pura Budgam Road and held protest rallies in Jammu demanding justice. We have to do something substantive on ground. If you cannot protect us, the government should give us arms should train us and not simply feed us to the wolves in Kashmir to keep this pretense of normalcy going. Despite the anger over the wave of targeted killings in Jammu and Kashmir, Mehbooba Mufti continues to question the forces. लोगों को जेलों में डाला जाता है हाइब्रिड मिलिटेंट के नाम पे लोगों को मुलाजमतों से निकाला जाता है शक की बुनियाद पे और उसके बावजूद बीजेपी नाकाम हो गई यहां के जो हमारे रहे कुछ कश्मीरी पंडित बचे हुए थे उनको हिफाजत देने में With the rise in targeted killings in the valley it is now time to go all out against Pakistan backed terrorists in Kashmir Bureau Report Republic TV
with us. A joint action committee staged a rally for uh, the decentralization and three capitals with the support of the YSR CP organized uh, rally from Ambedkar statue to the YSR statue. Here's the full story. Amid the ongoing roar over three capital in the state of Andhra Pradesh, now we see that a large number of people gathered in a massive rally which was being led by the Joint Action Committee and also along with the YSRCP leaders. Many people joined the rally in support of three capital and also we have been seeing that this rally was named as Vishaka Garjana and also, they have been seeing and demanding that now Vishakapatnam should be the executive capital as the Jagan Mohan Reddy-led government in the state of Andhra Pradesh has, the, has put forth the proposal for the three capital, which is Vishakapatnam as executive capital, Amravati as the legislative capital and Karnul as the judicial capital. But we also see that the opposition parties in the state of Andhra Pradesh have been demanding that this three capital should be withdrawn and also at the same same time that the Telugu Desam party leaders have been stating that Jagan Mohan Reddy is putting the Vishakapatnam as executive capital only to do land grabbing. A four-page advertisement has been published in the Wall Street Journal against Indian ministers and key officers of the central government. Senior advisor to Ministry of Information and Broadcasting Kanchan Gupta has tweeted that the mastermind behind this advertisement is Ramachandra Vishwanathan. Who was the CEO of Devas? Now, Vishnamathan was declared a fugitive economic offender in India and India's Supreme Court also ruled that Devas was involved in corruption. Here's the full story. On October 13th, this full-page advertisement was published in a US-based newspaper, Wall Street Journal. The truth about the advertisement is now becoming clear. The senior advisor to the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting, Kanchan Gupta, has revealed that the mastermind of the advertisement is Ramachandran Vishwanathan, former CEO of Devas, an economic offender in India. The owner of the country, uh, he is uh, Vishwanathan, uh, Ramachandran Vishwanathan. So the CEO of the company or the owner of the company he is a fugitive from Indian law. He has been declared a, a, a fugitive economic offender. And uh, uh, that's it. I mean, uh, uh, Devas Multimedia uh, had tried to con uh, ISRO's commercial wing, Antriksh, by entering into a fraudulent agreement. First, we have to understand who's this uh, Ramachandra Vishwanathan. He's uh, CEO of, he was CEO of uh, Devas. And uh, you know the Devas Antriksh scam and the manner in which uh, right up to the Supreme Court uh, Devas lost uh, essentially making Ramachandra Vishwanathan an economic offender and a fugitive of law insofar as India is concerned under the economic uh, fugitives uh, law that we have uh, brought in by the present government. Uh, Ramachandran has pleaded with the US government to impose visa and economic sanctions against 11 Indians, which includes ministers and government officials. American media, the Wall Street Journal in this case, before that New York Times mocking uh, India's space achievements, achievements of uh, ISRO, or uh, for that matter Washington Post, which very routinely uh, provides uh, its platform uh, for anti-India sentiments to be strongly ex ex expressed uh, or uh, for, for India bashing. As the Indian economy gets stronger and with the decline of the American economy, the pattern of such an advertisement cannot be missed. See, the, what America has done in the last two, two decades is to co-opt the world economy into the American financial system. It has co-opted the world monetary order into the American monetary order. It was its strength and that is becoming the weakness also today. So with so much dollars outside America and America printing more dollars and America exporting more dollars to import and with no other mechanism to control inflation, they have to do it even more. They are now caught in a situation from which it is, I am talking about economically. Get out of this, America has to hugely reduce its standard. 
With the facts now out, the deep anti-India network has been exposed. Bureau Report, Republic TV. Viewers, the art of living along with World Forum for Ethics in Business organized a sixth World Summit on Ethics and Leadership in Sports on 13 to 14 October, where great emphasis was laid to how sports should be played and looked at. The Art of Living Foundation, along with World Forum for Ethics in Business, organized the 6th World Summit on Ethics and Leadership in Sports in Bengaluru. The summit at a time when India is making global progress in athletics and its performance at global events. The two-day event saw the participation of Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, Minister of Law and Justice Kiran Rijiju, 25-time international billiard and snooker world champion Pankaj Advani, among other speakers. While Sri Sri Ravi Shankar stressed on how players should play with a sense of responsibility. Sports is that some which unites people beyond language. Basha ke pare, deshon ke pare, hum sab ko jodta, koi cheez jodta hai to wo khel. Aur khel khud ko humare desh mein humne जैसे आपने बताया किरण जी ने कि सीरियसली नहीं लेते इफ यू डोंट टेक सीरियसली द गेम्स देन नो वन टेक इट एज ए करियर एंड मेंटल हेल्थ विल ओनली कीप पीपल ऑन द ट्रैक ऑफ एथिक्स एंड हियर व्हेन यू फॉलो एथिक्स यू आर टेकिंग द गेम बोथ सीरियसली एंड नॉट सो सीरियस वॉट इज एथिक्स एथिक्स इज दैट फॉर you don't want others to do to you you should not do to others union minister kiran rijiju emphasized on the need to bring sports culture in the country our sporting history goes back to ancient time but over the years the evolvement of the society did not bring sports culture in our country to the extent we would desire it is very important to have the sports culture in any society. Billiard and snooker world champion Pankaj Advani calls for sports persons to respect the opponent. I believe that FIR can also stand for fairness, fair play, integrity and respect in the world of sport. So my um, appeal to you is to uh, ignore that FIR stands for first information report and uh, to uh, um, believe that we actually can play sport um, you know through fair play through integrity through, through respect respect not only for our sport respect for our opponents respect for uh, the audience respect for the rules the summit sought a road map to use fair and clean sports as a tool to unite people in a post-pandemic world riddled by conflict economic crisis and mental health issues the summit proceedings also featured the announcement of the Ethics in Sports Awards 2022, a prize that recognizes the outstanding individuals and organizations that have demonstrated the importance of human values and ethics in life and in the sports arena. The winners of this year included FC Union Berlin for Outstanding Organization, Anja Hammersing Edin for Promotion of Mental Health in Sports, Kiran Rajiju for outstanding contribution to sports and Sandeep Singh for resilience in sports. Indeed, the time is ripe for a sports revolution. And more importantly, it's time we change how we play the game with ethics and leadership. Bureau Report, Republic TV. Let's put our hands together. What a wonderful morning. Top National Update, Union Home Minister Amit Shah released a BJP selection theme song, Himachal Ki Pukar, Fir BJP Sarkar. The theme song has been released during the poll campaign with Chief Minister Jairam Thakur. After sparking a row by calling the PM duplicated, JDU National President Lalan Singh has refused to apologize. He further slammed the BJP MP Ravi Shankar Prasad for buttering the PM to be in his good books after getting sidelined.
A boat carrying Bihar CM Nitish Kumar collided with an under construction pillar of the JP Setu Bridge. This happened while he was inspecting the arrangements of the Chhat Ghat situated on the bank of the river Ganga. All on board the boat, including the CM, are safe. Trouble keeps mounting for TMC MLA. Manik Bhattacharya as ED raided the residence of his close aide in connection with the SSC scam case. Bhattacharya himself was arrested by the central agency on October 11th. NCJ Farooq Abdullah, PDP Chief Mehbooba Mufti and other members of the People's Alliance for the Gupkar Declaration met over the Jammu and Kashmir issue at Farooq Abdullah's residence in Srinagar. Haryana government granted 40 days parole to rape convict uh, Gurmeet Ram Rahim Singh. Self-styled government currently facing 20 years of jail time allowed to come out of the jail there in Rotak. The Indian women's cricket team made the country proud. They were crowned the Asia Cup champions after convincingly decimating Sri Lanka in the final play there at the cricket stadium in Bangladesh. Rahul Gandhi launches a stinging attack at BJP government's centre in Karnataka during his speech. During the Bharat Jori Yatra, former Congress president raised the matter of commission for jobs under the Bumai administration. AIMIM's UP president Shokat Ali sparked religious row after making hateful comments about polygamy among the Hindus. He said Hindus keep mistresses while addressing a gathering there in UP. U.S. President Joe Biden uh, sensationally labelled Pakistan as one of the most dangerous nations in the world. He further noted that the country has nuclear weapons without any cohesion. Two Arunachal Pradesh youth have gone missing after they went out in the search of the plants which can contain medicinal properties at a place near the state's border with China. The family members of the missing youth have alleged the Chinese army role in the incident. Here is a full report. Two youths from Arunachal Pradesh have reportedly gone missing from the line of actual control. These youths from the Anjaw district of Arunachal Pradesh have reportedly been missing from near the LAC area. They have been identified as Batelum Tikro and Baing So Manu. As per the details shared with the police, the youths travelled to Changlagam area in search of medicinal herbs on August 19th and haven't returned since. Although the family is desperately searching for the youths, they have failed to gather details of their whereabouts. Fellow villagers who were close to the LSE saw them last on August 24th. The brother and relative of the missing youth, the Shansa Chikro, has been fighting to find his loved ones. As Republic reports from Ground Zero, the relatives of the two missing youth spoke exclusively to Republic. 19 August 2022, ko. मेरे घर के घर के एक परिवार मेरे घर भैया वो मेरा गांव के कजन भैया दोनों किसी मेडिसिनल हर्ब के तलाश में जाना जाता है जारी बुकिया उसके तलाश में पहाड़ों के तरफ निकल गए जो आज तक वापस लौट के नहीं आया The family suspects that they might have crossed the LAC and PLM may have detained them The relatives have appealed to the state and the central government to take immediate action the Indian Army is also keeping a close watch, keeping the lines open with the PLA if needed. The family suspect that they mistakenly crossed over to the Chinese territory following which the PLA has taken them into custody. Meanwhile, the family members of Batalam Tikro has lost a missing complaint which the Anzao police and have also appealed the Indian Army for intervention. They have also seek assistance from the state government and the center to ensure a safe return of the youth. With video journalist Asok, I am Anirudh Abhakat and this is Republic Media Network. Top updates, uh, viewers, in another terror attack on locals in the Kashmir Valley, a Kashmiri pundit was attacked in Jabu and Kashmir, Shopia district. According to the reports, the victim succumbed to his injuries after he was shot at by the terrorists outside his residence. हम यहां थे बाग में थे तो पीछे से पता चला कि किसी की किसी को गोली मारी गई तो हम दौड़ते आगे यहां पे 
तो यहाँ देखा यहाँ खून गिरा था यहाँ खून गिरा था और जब हम देखने लगे तो तब तक उसको अपना भतीजा ले गया था बाइक पे अस्पताल में तो वहाँ से फिर वो एम्बुलेंस में शायद शुपियान ले गए तो फैमिली क्या है इस फैमिली इसकी दो बच्चे हैं छोटे एक लड़की है बड़ी और एक लड़का है उसका भाई भी इधर है एक बच्चे भी फिफ्थ में पढ़ता है और बच्ची शायद छठवीं में पढ़ती है तो यानी घर घर में इनमें इनका सब कुछ घर में ही था इनका कोई नौकरी वोकरी नहीं है कुछ नहीं है चल हम तो था यहीं पर बाग बगी चक्कर बेचारा घर से भी बाहर नहीं निकला इन दिनों वो अंदर ही बैठता डर डर लग रहा है बहुत डर लगता है बहुत डर लगता है ISRO's heaviest rocket uh, will launch the UK startup OneWeb's 36 broadband satellites from the spaceport in Andhra Pradesh, Sri Harikota, on October 23rd, marking the launcher's entry into the global commercial launch service market. Assam Adi Party Chief Gopal Atalia made a caste slur against Prime Minister Modi. The Janata Dal United Chief now has now made a. derogatory remark against the prime minister by calling him perupia or duplicate soon after jdu's uh, lalan singh made a derogatory remark against prime minister bjp came down heavily on its former ally jdu has and called the party chief's remark shameful and said it showcased the extreme arrogance of the feudal mindset chhota karyakarta hota to main jawab hi nahi deta उनके वो राष्ट्रीय अध्यक्ष हैं इट इज ए फ्यूडल माइंड सेट मिस्टर प्रकाश फुल ऑफ एरोगेंस अहंकार पूरा है अच्छा है देश ने बहुतों का अहंकार खत्म किया है ललन बाबू जदयू का भी खत्म करेंगे The DMK today staged a protest against the parliamentary committee's recommendation to make Hindi the medium of instruction in central educational institutes. The DMK's a showdown came after Tamil Nadu CM and DMK chief MK Stalin wrote to the central government and warned against the imposition of the Hindi language. A major crackdown against the terror supporters in Jammu and Kashmir. Jammu and Kashmir Lieutenant Governor Manoj Sinha's administration today terminated five government employees for their links with the various terrorist outfits. In a mega crackdown on West Bengal SSC recruitment scam, the Enforcement Directorate today Saturday has now raided Manik uh, Bhattacharya's close aid, Tapas Mandal's residence there in North 24 Parganas. The investigation agency has also reportedly raided Manik Bhattacharya's offices in um, other areas where young college students were allegedly trained as teachers. Massive fire breaks out at a plastic warehouse in Russia's Yekaterinburg. Cloud of black smoke surrounded Russia's plastic warehouse. This comes in the backdrop of Russia-Ukraine war which continues to escalate. Visuals on your screen shows firefighters deployed at the incident site continuously putting an effort to douse the massive fire. In what comes as a relief, no casualties have been reported at the fire site. Massive fire engulfs warehouse in Russia completely. Agency report for Republic TV. Viewers, AI MIM leader Shaukat Ali's comment against Hindu women has drawn the ire of BJP, who has demanded answers from the party chief OAC. Drawing a comparison, Shaukat allegedly said that Hindus marry one but have three mistresses. An FIR has been registered against the leader. Here is the full story. In a fresh controversy, Asaduddin OAC's AI MIM UP chief Shaukat Ali made a controversial remark. on hindu marriage at a rally in up's sambhal he said that even if muslims have two marriages they give respect to both wives in society but hindus marry one and have three mistresses and neither respect the wife nor the mistress kabhi ye log kehte hain tumhare bachche zyada hain kabhi ye log kehte hain do do teen teen shaadiyan yakeenan hum do shaadi karte hain to dono biwi ko samaj mein izzat dete hain tum ek shaadi kar लेकिन हम अगर दो करते हैं तो इज्जत से करते हैं बीवी बनाते हैं उन बच्चों का नाम भी राशन कार्ड में होता है आधार कार्ड होता है 
Later on, this Neta went on to justify his statements by saying that he did not say anything unconstitutional or related to any other religion. आपको मालूम है कि आज से पांच दिन पहले दिल्ली के अंदर एक साधु ने बीएचपी का प्रोग्राम था उसमें कहा कि मुसलमानों को चुन चुन करके मारा मारना है ये चौदह शादियां करते हैं चालीस बच्चे पैदा करते हैं तो मैंने इंडिविजुअल उसको ये कहा था कि मुसलमान कोई गाजर मूली नहीं है कि आप उसको काट करके फेंक देंगे और दूसरी चीज़ मैंने उसके बयान पर ही ये बात कही थी कि जो ये कह रहे हैं कि हम हम अगर दो शादी भी करते हैं तो शादियों में हम दोनों बीवी को सम्मान देते हैं दोनों के बच्चे को अपना बच्चा समझते हैं लेकिन वो लोग जो लोग एक एक से एक शादी तो करते हैं लेकिन तीन पत्नियां इनकी अलग से रहती हैं लेकिन समाज में उसको छुपाते हैं तो वो गलत है या हम गलत हैं नाउ देर हैज बीन नो कमेंट और एक्शन अगेंस्ट शौकत अली फ्रॉम ए आई but police have registered an fir against the aimim leader for his inciting comments against hindus meanwhile the bjp has trained its guns at aimim chief asaduddin owaisi for the comments made by his party leaders the congress meanwhile has called aimim the b team of the bjp and said the controversy was orchestrated bureau report republic tv 1950 we are the largest economy in asia from 1950 to 1980 we grew at 3.5% a year population grew at 2.5% per capita income 1% a year because of nehru's failed policy nehru made sure that we became poorer in 1980 than 1950 this all data not politics 1980 to 1990 we grew at 5.5% population 2.25% but debt grew from 20 billion dollars in 90 in 1981 to 80 billion dollars and we are broke by 91 in 91 because private capital was suppressed by nehru because of his dalliance with the soviet model and the fabian school and you know his disdain for business 1991 gdp was 275 billion 2022 we reached 3.15 trillion we grew at 8.2 percent a year in dollar terms for 31 years is incredible In 2014, Shahzad GDP was 113 lakh crores. In 2022, it's 236 lakh crores, and this year we're supposed to go to 276 lakh crores. So am I optimistic? I lived through the last 30 years. I've seen the rise of this country. I've seen what people can do. I've seen that 108 unicorns. I've seen a trillion dollars of value in the digital market. I've seen the rise of Sanjeev. What more do you want? If I'm not optimistic with all this, what do you want? Come on, give me a break. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the United States of America has recently rolled out its national security strategy. It defines how the U.S. looks at the world, geopolitically, diplomatically, and militarily. It defines the United States of America's national security perspectives. This weekend, join me in checkmate as I take you through the steps of America's national security strategy. Following the case of human uh, sacrifice that emerged in Elanthur, the police are expected to visit the site of the incident to ascertain whether there are any more bodies at the site. Legislature Barack Arbe, a member of the opposition Republican People's Party, smashed a smartphone with a hammer while addressing Parliament, saying the clampdown on social media would make smartphone obsolete. Critics fear that as elections loom, the measure will be used to further crack down on social media and independent reporting. The 40 article legislation was approved with the vote of president governing party and its nationalist allies which together hold a majority in the parliament. Agency report Republic TV. Day on the Bombay High Court acquitting GN Sai Baba. Now Solicitor General Tushar Mehta is reported to have maintained that the acquittal was not on the basis of merit. On the 12th of October, the United States of America unveiled its national security policy, and this was done by President Joe Biden. 
Now, needless to say, this has the approval of the Congress and it is now the functional national security policy of the government of the United States of America. This broadly covers geopolitics. It covers national security, it, uh, covers areas of uh, foreign affairs for the United States of America. And there are five takeaways from this policy that I'm going to speak about today. Now, this essentially defines what America's threat perceptions are. What does America think about the way the world is going? What does it think about China? You know, what does it think about uh, about about the Ukraine-Russia war that is going on? Where does it place the energy crisis that Europe is uh, currently, you know, it's unfolding in Europe? What are America's national security priorities? And this document is the document that points out to, uh, to every sensitivity that the American policymakers have in this regard. And I'm going to start off with this national security strategy was supposed to be unveiled some time back, but because of the Russia-Ukraine war, it got a little bit delayed. Now, this is what America says about China. Now, China is mentioned first and it says the national security Strategy labeled China as the most consequential geopolitical challenge, proclaiming that US is in the middle of a strategic competition to shape the future of the international order. The PRC, the People's Republic of China, is the only competitive with both the intent to reshape the international order and increasingly the economic, diplomatic, military and technological power to do it. Now, uh, obviously, uh, America has a certain history with, with China. And this history starts off 20, 30 years ago when China actually kick-started its uh, economic reform movement. And then we see uh, the unfolding of the economic miracle that is China. We see double-digit growths for years and years, for decades, 9, 10, 11%. And China's economy supercharged a lot because of state controls. But what happened was that as China grew in economic stature, China started having military ambitions. Also, the fact that, uh, you know, I'd like to uh, quote Pakistan's former Chief of Army Staff, General Ashfaq Parvez Kayani. General Kayani made a statement that is outright brilliant in its simplicity. He said uh, that if you have the capability, intentions can change overnight. So ladies and gentlemen, essentially what has happened is China had started 30 years back, 40 years back, building up its capability. It always had the intent, but it did not have the capability. China focused on simply one thing, and that is a supercharged economy. It wanted to first become an economic superpower, and that is what China focused on. So China liberalized its economy, it got foreign investment, it created the world's largest and greatest manufacturing hub, which even till today supplies to all of the world. I mean, China is the world's back office as far as manufacturing is concerned. For all practical purposes, everything, almost everything is made in China. And this is what China focused on. So, till the time China was developing its economy, China did not do anything militarily. Even recently, the problems we've been having with China in, in Doklam or uh, the eastern part of Ladakh, specifically Galwan, etc. And now all along the line of actual control, 3,500 kilometers odd, uh, which, which includes Arunachal Pradesh, which will next year, and this is a prediction that I'm willing to make out, I'm willing to stick my neck out and say this, that is going to happen in Uttarakhand, it's going to happen in Himachal as well. Uh, China is not going to go away so easily. And all this comes from economic might. China started purchasing weapons off the shelf, mostly from Russia. It started reverse engineering technology that it had stolen from the United States of America and China armed its military. And then the Chinese uh, gave birth to a concept of wolf warriors. And this is what the diplomats were called, wolf warriors. China started using its checkbook as a weapon. It weaponized trade. Now, trade has been weaponized for a long, long time now. In India's history, you know, the East India Company was one of the first instances that India saw of weaponized trade. But China has been doing it for a long time and China started doing this, making investments in countries that were small. And I've heard a Chinese analyst whose name I can't remember calling them bite-sized 
and that is what he called these countries bite sized countries like pakistan countries like sri lanka countries like like laos countries like uh, uh, nepal and so many countries in the african continent countries where china could invest in latin america where china could invest and then china could wring their arms because it knew very well that the people could not return that kind of money even today china will give loans only to that country which can never pay back chinese loans because china does not want the money in return what it wants is the country's sovereignty this obviously is a uh, disconcerting for the rest of the world and it says so they said that beijing is planning to expand its sphere of influence in the asia pacific and becoming world's leading power now this further goes on to say that uh, you know ever since the americans started speaking publicly about taiwan the relationship between america and china uh was always strained it was never a happy relationship not 10 years back not 20 years back but there was an uneasy partnership or i should say an uneasy coexistence but after nancy pelosi landed in taiwan everything changed under the one china plan taiwan is part of china that is what china says and which is why there are very very few countries in the world which would go and actually start challenging china and saying that no we don't we don't we don't believe that taiwan or tibet or any other country like that is not part of china because china carries the diplomatic and economic heft in the world but having said that china is the only country which has a border with 12 countries and a territorial dispute with 23 countries china has disputes with countries with which it does not even have a border two borders removed China has a dispute. As I said, this is disconcerting as far as the world is concerned. Now, coming back to Taiwan, China promised war. That war did not happen because China cannot afford a war right now. The Belt and Road Initiative of China is taking a hammering. The flagship venture, the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, today as we speak, is submerged underwater. The CPEC is pretty much underwater, with almost, almost. Uh, 40 million people in Pakistan displaced people hungry and most of it along the route of the China Pakistan economic corridor and now reading from this report uh the national security policy says that or the national security strategy as they like to call it have said that uh, the two countries have clashed over trade and Beijing claims to the South China Sea and Washington's deepening alliances in the region now Washington's deepening alliances in the region now one of the countries is India India is part of quad which China does not trust for obvious reasons China thinks uh the quad is focused on China and China is probably correct because yes India has had a problem now a lot of people uh, especially in Pakistan and other countries have said that maybe just maybe India is dancing to America's tune the communists in India have been saying this for a few years now that india has gone firmly into the american camp which is why india is responding to china diplomatically and militarily but if i may correct my friends my left leaning friends a little bit india has been facing off against china even before 1962 our problems with china are not new the 3500 odd kilometers line of actual control still remains undemarcated india has approached china many a time and asked them to sit across the table and finalize the line of actual control and make it an international border or something which has the sanctity of an international border china does not agree obviously china covets ladakh china covets arunachal pradesh china covets territory that india which is which is pretty much india's so this is the basic problem with china as far as india is concerned the indo pacific that this national security strategy mentions now as far as china's national security policy is concerned and this is directly related to how america is responding uh somebody said that china has two mad dogs pakistan and north korea and china has used these two junior partners in threatening the world with nuclear war and again as i said disconcerting for the rest of the world and the rest of the world led by america is now responding you know aukus which is an armed group which is a military pact and quad with china thinks is a military pact india is holding back india does not want to militarize the quad but the fact of the matter is uh quad has immense potential to be destructive 
and it can be turned military with a flip of the switch. Uh, so, here we have uh, the national security strategy saying that the US will make investments to strengthen innovation at home while working with allies and common cause to compete responsibly with China. Uh, what has actually spooked America very lately is 5G. Apart from the fact that all the technology China owns is stolen 90% from America and 10% from Europe and America allowed its own laws, the loopholes in its own laws to benefit China. The fact of the matter is that China is now becoming self-sustaining and America does not like this. 5G was a big wake-up call for America when they realized that China has gone 5G with stolen technology and America is still playing catch-up to China. Now, China understands that 5G is going to be a game-changer. India entered the fray late, but now that India is there, let us see what unfolds in the future or what the future holds for us. Another thing, uh, you know, uh, the Chinese foreign minister responding responding to uh, this national security strategy said, it is neither popular nor constructive to hold on to the Cold War zero-sum mentality and play up geopolitical conflicts and major power competition. China, while, uh, and uh, viewers, this is something that I need to explain to you in a little bit of a detail. You know, China, while being extremely aggressive diplomatically, sometimes militarily and always economically, China maintains the facade of a peace-loving nation. China will say the right things, mostly. China will mostly say the right things. China will make the right noises. But at the same time, you know, China was talking about peace in 1962. It was China that was saying Hindi, Chini, bye bye when they invaded India. And this is exactly what China tried to do in Galwan, except that it was a different India. And the Chinese were given a run for their money. But this is what China does. And this is exactly what, uh, you know, Mao Ning who is a Chinese foreign ministry spokesperson. He says, neither popular nor constructive, and I'm repeating this, neither popular nor constructive to hold on to the Cold War zero-sum mentality. This is what China accuses America of, holding on to Cold War zero-sum mentality, the Cold War between the USSR and uh, America, its allies on one side and America's allies on the other. Now, as far as Russia is concerned, uh, the national security policy clearly says immediate and persistent threat to international peace and stability through its policies that culminated in the invasion of Ukraine. And, uh, you know, uh, it all also says that uh, Ukraine was preceded by Russian military intervention to back the Syrian government, the annexation of Crimea and interference in the international affairs of other countries, including the US. So here, uh, you know, the US elections, uh, the FBI, they floated a report saying that uh, Russia was responsible for trying to meddle through social media in US elections. They have done so in Crimea, they have done so in Syria, they have done so all over the world, backing authoritarian regimes and uh, causing war. So, this latest war by Moscow on Ukraine is not something that the world had anticipated and, you know, truth be told, uh, even I was taken unawares. I think this invasion happened on the 23rd or 24th of February this year and till the last moment I was saying that uh, this is Putin saber rattling and it's not going to happen. I was convinced that Russia will not invade and when Russia invaded I was convinced that this war is going to last you know uh, for three four days or maximum a week ten days because because there is no competition between Russia and and uh, and Ukraine. I mean Ukraine is a tiny puny country in front of Russia but apparently as they say it is, it is not uh, the size of the dog in the fight. It is the size of the fight in the dog that matters. And uh, Ukraine has shown tremendous willpower, supported by Western powers, of course. Joe Biden is clearly saying that if Iran does not come to its senses, America will use other means. And when they say other means, it, it, I gather it means hard power kinetic power against Iran. Airstrikes, uh, I don't know if America has the appetite for a ground invasion, but America has air assets enough to cripple Iran if it so desires. Today on the Bombay High Court acquitting GN Sai Baba. 
Now, Solicitor General Tushar Mehta is reported to have maintained that the acquittal was not on the basis of merit but for lack of appropriate sanction to prosecute him under the provisions of the UAPA. ये जो फैसला आया है ये बहुत ही दुर्दैवी है बहुत ही निराशाजनक है क्योंकि टेक्निकल ग्राउंड्स पर इस प्रकार से ऐसे व्यक्ति को छोड़ देना जिसके खिलाफ इतने सबूत है जिन्होंने एक प्रकार से ये फैसले के कारण जो हमारे पुलिस नक्सलवादियों से लड़ते हुए शहीद हुए उनके घर वालों के ऊपर इससे क्या बीतती होगी इसका विचार मैं बार बार कर रहा हूँ हम सर्वोच्च न्यायालय गए हैं सुप्रीम कोर्ट गए हैं और मेरा विश्वास है कि सुप्रीम कोर्ट में न्याय मिलेगा A 21-year-old college student was allegedly molested by an auto rickshaw driver and dragged with a vehicle in Maharashtra Thane. Now, a video of the incident that took place in the city around 6:45 a.m. surfaced on social media. The national president of JDU hit out at Prime Minister Modi, calling him extremely backward and a facade. Now, JDU President Lalan Singh further stated that the PM had been spreading his conservative mindset since he came to power. <laughs> Now, the national security strategy also said that. you know that paper says uh, for all practical purposes that the invasion of ukraine proved to be a strategic miscalculation for russia the united states will not allow russia or any power to achieve its objectives through using or threatening to use nuclear weapons now this is something that uh, that america wants and america has been pressurizing india uh, the recent recent comments by the german foreign minister regarding kashmir point in that direction you know because people want india to take uh, an active active anti russia stance which india will not prime minister modi did tell putin on his face that you know this is not an era of a war but so far india has maintained a neutral stance and this has uh, caused pressure for india not just now it has been causing pressure for india for for decades for decades india was one of the leaders of the non aligned meet and uh, a group of countries that said that we are neither aligned at the peak of the cold war neither with russia nor with the united states of america the west block or the east block for that matter india has remained neutral all throughout and this is something that that america does not want and there is there is a certain uh, there is a certain theory that america has behind it and i've i've spoken to a few american uh, think tank members and they say that if india seeks to be a global power india has to take a stand and uh, flex its muscles and india has a lot of muscles diplomatic economic and military and they said that india must flex its muscles India says we believe in the concept of Vasudev Kutumbakam that the whole world is a family, and and uh, it is wrong for India to interfere in anybody's matters. However, if it causes grief to the world, if it causes war, and if it causes upheaval in the world, then India will step in and try to uh, counsel both the parties because India has a great relationship both with Ukraine and with uh, Russia. Now the third uh, point was Iran, and. the national security strategy said that smaller autocratic powers are acting aggressively in ways that compromise global stability most notably iran interferes in the internal affairs of neighbors proliferates missiles and drones through proxies is plotting to harm americans including former officials and is advancing nuclear program beyond any credible civilian need uh, <clears throat> now obviously tehran has always uh, denied wanting a nuclear weapon but the fact of the matter is the iranians want a nuclear weapon the iranians fund the hamas they fund the hezbollah uh, the iranians have a pathological hatred for israel and uh, many a time uh, very senior people in in the iranian administration over a period of decades after 1979 have promised to wipe out israel from the face of the earth and throw the jews into the sea this is normal sunday morning talk in iran kill the jews throw the jews into the sea that's how the iranians like to speak uh, there was a time when iran was a responsible power but now uh with with iran continuously getting unsettled after the hijab problem and more than 150 people having died in iran iran is on tender hooks and america understands that iran is taking forward its nuclear uh weapons plan 
planning to become a nuclear power at a very very rapid rate iran knows that having a nuclear weapon is the final guarantee of peace and stability of non interference by the americans because once you have nuclear weapons nobody can do anything you cannot lose a war technically speaking i mean a limited conflict like karkil sure that can happen but complete dismemberment of a country extremely unlikely and the nuclear weapon is that final trump card that gives you that gives you that power you know to cock a snook at the world and tell them that we are not scared of you this is what iran uh you know wants to do would like to do spread its power give missiles to uh to terrorist outfits mostly russian technology mostly chinese technology give it to other people and hence exercise heft through terrorist proxies and through black marketing of oil because iran has sanctions and iran is not allowed to sell oil outside so iran does this it it funds its terrorist activities through the black marketing of oil uh now america understands that iran could be a danger after killing of general qasem soleimani of the of the uh, you know revolutionary guard of iran you know the crack commando troops iran responded with scud missiles on on us bases uh, i don't think there was any extensive damage or many lives were lost at all if at all but the fact of the matter is iran today may not have the capability but they have the intent they are trying to build up capability to harm the united states of america hence the worry in the us they said that the us will pursue diplomacy to make sure that iran never gets a nuclear weapon referring to the efforts to restore the 2015 multilateral agreement that saw tehran scale back its nuclear program in exchange for sanction relief you know and again quote unquote the us is postured and prepared to use other means to counter iran if diplomacy fails so here joe biden is clearly saying that if iran does not come to its senses america will use other means and when they say other means it it i gather it means hard power kinetic power against iran air strikes uh, i don't know if america has the appetite for a ground invasion but america has air assets enough to cripple iran if it so desires uh, the us can cripple iran because uh, nato will support and israel is always there israel is itching it's practically itching it's just being held back by the united states of america if the us were to tell israel that all bets are off and we are going after iran let me tell you ladies and gentlemen israel will happily join in the hunt Now this policy also says that in the Middle East we have worked to enhance deterrence towards Iran de-escalate regional conflicts deepen integration among a diverse set of partners in the region and bolster energy stability Now apart from this I mentioned Israel and uh, you know the national security strategy unveiled by Joe Biden actually uh, you know says that uh, we reaffirm our commitment to the state of Israel and uh, the new newly emerging alliance between israel and arab countries namely the united arab emirates this is something that uh, you know america says is very happy with and it it totally and uh, absolutely supports and endorses we will seek to extend and deepen israel's growing ties to the neighbors and other arab states including uh, through the abraham accords you know the abraham accords the abrahamic religions uh, judaism christianity and islam so three uh, followers of three religions you know uh, followers of uh, of Judaism that is Israel Christianity uh you know America and other European powers and Islam of course of course the Middle East and uh, the Gulf countries etc so uh, they they were signatories to the Abrahamic records and this is what America is alluding to saying that all the countries of the Abrahamic records we want them to get along uh and uh, there are only one or two muslim states that have now taken a very very aggressive stand uh, against israel one is of course iran because of ideology and pakistan i don't know why because i have asked a lot of pakistanis and they don't know why none of them have been to israel i mean a very very rare pakistani 1 in 10 million or i would even i would even say 1 in 100 million maybe would have ever been to israel but the narrative because of palestine and because of Jew hatred is so strong in Pakistan that no Pakistani government 
will ever dare even publicly say that you know we would like to evaluate if we can have good relations with israel and it has nothing to do with palestine palestine is the cover story palestine is just the cover story there is its pathological hatred of the jew that is what it is you know i've been uh, saying it and a lot, lot of people say that no it has nothing to do with religion it has everything to do with geopolitics and i respectfully disagree uh, the problem that pakistan and even iran have with have with uh, israel has nothing to do with geopolitics because you know uh, pakistan has fought four wars with india it has a festering dispute called kashmir with india it has a huge history an acrimonious history with india and the pakistanis the population included don't hate india as much as they hate israel a land that they've never seen they have no connection with and this is the truth this is something that that the world is dealing with now the national security strategy also said that washington is committed to the two state solution we will also continue to promote a viable two state solution that preserves israel's future as a jewish and democratic state while meeting palestinian aspirations for a secure and viable state of their own so this is this is uh, you know uh, pretty much what the national security strategy says and uh, it also says that despite growing competition between countries the us must maintain and increase international cooperation on shared challenges and uh, you know this is uh, in a nutshell what this entire national security strategy of the united states of america this this will be the blueprint uh, you know uh, which will decide how america over a period of years actually uh, sort of plays out the game whether it's in afghanistan whether it's regard to pakistan though it does not mention pakistan at all it mentions india and calls india a, a, a partner a valuable partner uh, india has been mentioned i think seven or eight times in this entire document and uh, but the national security goals are those that actually trouble the united states of america hence the mention of iran of russia of china and of israel because they feel that israel is also under threat and israel is a close friend uh thank you ladies and gentlemen thank you for watching this episode of checkmate and i'll see you again next week till then have a great weekend Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the United States of America has recently rolled out its national security strategy. It defines how the US looks at the world, geopolitically, diplomatically and militarily. It defines the United States of America's national security perspectives. This weekend, join me in Checkmate as I take you through the steps of America's national security strategy. Following the case of human uh, sacrifice that emerged in Elanthur, the police are expected to visit the site of the incident to ascertain whether there are any more bodies at the site. The Coimbatore District Administration sealed four offices of the Popular Front of India. The police was accordingly deployed at the offices and in areas of concern during the sealing of the offices. Legislature Barack Arbe, a member of the opposition Republican People's Party, smashed a smartphone with a hammer while addressing Parliament, saying the clampdown on social media would make smartphone obsolete. Critics fear that as elections loom, the measure will be used to further crack down on social media and independent reporting. The 40-article legislation was approved with the vote of President Governing Party and its nationalist allies, which together hold a majority in the Parliament. Agency Report, Republic TV. Day on the Bombay High Court, acquitting G N Sai Baba. Now, Solicitor General Tushar Mehta is reported to have maintained that the acquittal was not on the basis of merit, but for lack of appropriate sanction to prosecute him under the provisions of the UAPA. ये जो फैसला आया है, ये बहुत ही दुर्दैवी है, बहुत ही निराशाजनक है, क्योंकि टेक्निकल ग्राउंड्स पर इस प्रकार से ऐसे व्यक्ति को छोड़ देना
Top headlines right now. Economica fugitive weaponizes foreign media to target Modi government with a full page ad in Wall Street Journal. Kashmiri Pandit Puran Bhatta shot dead by Pakistan backed terrorists in Shopia. Protests erupt across Kashmir over a wave of targeted killings. Demand grows for justice. Kerala police take accused to the crime scene as probe into the occult murder deepens. AI MIM leader Korontev abusing Hindus police take cognizance of his rant. Two youth from Arunachal Pradesh reported missing family suspects they have crossed the NAC. Viewers, you are watching Republic TV, India's number one news channel. I'm Shivangi Shukla. Let's start with the first story. In another incident of the terror attack on locals in the Kashmir rally, a Kashmiri pundit was shot in Jammu and Kashmir Shopia district. The deceased has been identified as Puran Bhatt. Now, the attack on the civilian was carried out after the security forces conducted two anti-terror operations in which four terrorists were neutralized. Here's a full story. A little past noon on Saturday, Puran Bhatt was shot dead by terrorists outside his house while he was heading towards his apple orchard. In the, at the time of the instance said that police deployment is there at his residence of the Kashmiri Pandit and he has also now confirmed the news that yes the police deployment is there and Sujit Kumar said that the action will not only be on police deployment who were guarding the residence of the Kashmiri Pandit. My Vijay Mubashir is showing you the visuals and this is the exact spot the visuals of the, the spot that are coming in that this is the spot where he was targeted by the terrorists. This uh, spot is just for not even two to three meters away from his residence where he was targeted. So we can say that he was targeted in his residence. Kashmiri, uh, Kashmiri Pandit ko Puran ji ko mara gaya hai. Aur is pe aapko pata hi hai ki TFF ne isko claim kiya hai. Lekin hamari urs. Ab hamari urs abhi abhi kuch bhi shor ham log apni urs nahi bolenge. People from across Shopian mourned the death of Kashmiri Pandit Puran Bhatt. The show of unity at his funeral was a stinging response to the terrorists. Uh, today early morning at 11.30 he got a shot here. Oh. And there, when we came here there was blood here also, here also. Oh. And by that time he was taken to hospital and we are coming to know from TV serials TV, that he is, he is killed, he is dead. We were thinking that it will be a little bit, it will be a little bit, it will be a little bit, it will be a little bit. This is the residence where he was staying with his family, this is the ancestral house, he is survived by wife kids, one daughter and one son. The entire village is mourning the death of Bablu. They used to call him for family. He was poor Kishan, but who preferred to stay back when the Kashmiri Pandits in 90s were migrating or when target killing started again in the Kashmir Valley. His family in Jammu is distraught over the targeted killing in Kashmir. The unfortunate incident that has unfolded in the South Kashmir where the terrorists have targeted a Kashmiri Pandit, a minority that was living in the Kashmir Valley even uh, after the exodus that has taken place in 1990. He chose not to leave the Kashmir Valley and was working there. Right now we are outside his Jammu residence and the senior officials of the Jammu and Kashmir police, uh, they are here to console the family members, the divisional commissioner and other officials uh, along with the ADG Jammu. They are here. The murder of Puran Bhatt is the fifth targeted killing in the valley in the last five months. And the anger is spilling on the streets. Kashmiri pundits blocked the Sheikh Pura Budgam Road and held protest rallies in Jammu demanding justice. We have to do something substantive on ground. If you cannot protect us, the government should give us arms should train us and not simply feed us to the wolves in Kashmir to keep this pretense of normalcy going.
Despite the anger over the wave of targeted killings in Jammu and Kashmir, Mehbooba Mufti continues to question the forces. उसको निशाना बनाया गया जबकि यहाँ इतनी सिक्योरिटी है इतनी आर्मी है इतने फोर्सेस हैं लोगों को जेलों में डाला जाता है हाइब्रिड मिलिटेंट के नाम पे लोगों को मुलाजमतों से निकाला जाता है शक की बुनियाद पे और उसके बावजूद बीजेपी नाकाम हो गई है यहाँ के जो हमारे रहे कुछ कश्मीरी पंडित बचे हुए थे उनको हिफाजत देने में With the rise in targeted killings in the valley it is now time to go all out against Pakistan backed terrorists in Kashmir Bureau report Republic TV We have a joint action committee stage a rally for uh, the decentralization and three capitals with the support of the YSR CP organized uh, rally from Ambedkar statue to the YSR statue here is a full story Amid the ongoing roar over three capital in the state of Andhra Pradesh, now we see that a large number of people gathered in a massive rally, which was being led by the Joint Action Committee and also along with the YSRCP leaders. Many people joined the rally in support of three capital, and also we have been seeing that this rally was named as Vishaka Garjana and. Also, they have been seeing and demanding that now Vishakhapatnam should be the executive capital, as the Jagan Mohan Reddy-led government in the state of Andhra Pradesh has the, has put forth the proposal for the three capital, which is Vishakhapatnam as executive capital, Amravati as the legislative capital, and Karnool as the judicial capital. But we also see that the opposition parties in the state of Andhra Pradesh have been demanding that this three capital should be withdrawn, and also at the same. same time that the telugu desam party leaders have been stating that jagan mohan reddy is putting the vishakhapatnam as executive capital only to do land grabbing a four page advertisement has been published in the wall street journal against indian ministers and key officers of the central government senior advisor to ministry of information and broadcasting kanchan gupta has tweeted that the mastermind behind this advertisement is ramachandra vishwanath Who was the CEO of Devas? Now, Vishnu Martin was declared a fugitive economic offender in India, and India Supreme Court also ruled that Devas was involved in corruption. Here's the full story. On October 13th, this full-page advertisement was published in a U.S.-based newspaper, Wall Street Journal. The truth about the advertisement is now becoming clear. The senior advisor to the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting Kanchan Gupta has revealed that the mastermind of the advertisement is Ramachandran Vishwanathan, former CEO of Devas, an economic offender in India. The owner of the country uh, he is uh, Vishwanathan uh, Ramachandran Vishwanathan. So the, the CEO of the company or, or the owner of the company He is a fugitive from Indian law. He has been declared a, a, a fugitive economic offender, and uh, uh, that's it. I mean, uh, uh, Devas Multimedia uh, had tried to con uh, ISRO's commercial wing Antrix by entering into a fraudulent agreement. First, we have to understand who is this uh, Ramachandra Vishwanathan. He is uh, CEO of. He was CEO of uh, Devas. Uh, and uh, you know the devas antariksh scam and the manner in which uh, right up to the supreme court uh, devas lost uh, uh, essentially making ramachandra vishwanathan an economic offender and a fugitive of law in so far as india is concerned under the economic uh, fugitives uh, law that we have uh, brought in by the present government uh, Ramachandran has pleaded with the US government to impose visa and economic sanctions against 11 Indians which includes ministers and government officials. American media, the Wall Street Journal in this case, before that New York Times mocking uh, India's space achievements, achievements of uh, ISRO or uh, for that matter Washington Post which very routinely uh, provides uh, its platform uh, for uh, anti india sentiments to be strongly ex ex expressed uh, or uh, for for india bashing as the indian economy gets stronger and with the decline of the american economy the pattern of such an advertisement cannot be missed
see the what america has done in the last two decades is to co-opt the world economy into the american financial system it has co-opted the world monetary order into the american monetary order it was its strength and that is becoming the weakness also today so with so much dollars outside america and america printing more dollars and america exporting more dollars to import and with no other mechanism to control inflation they have to do it even more they are now caught in a situation from which it is i am talking about economically to get out of this america has to hugely reduce its debt level with the facts now out the deep anti india network has been exposed bureau report republic tv We was the art of living along with World Forum for Ethics in Business organized a 6th World Summit on Ethics and Leadership in Sports on 13th to 14th October where great emphasis was laid to how sport should be played and looked at. The Art of Living Foundation along with World Forum for Ethics in Business organized the 6th World Summit on Ethics and Leadership in Sports in Bengaluru. The summit at a time when India is making global progress in athletics and its performance at global events. The two-day event saw the participation of Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, Minister of Law and Justice Kiran Rijiju, 25-time international billiard and snooker world champion Pankaj Advani among other speakers. While Sri Sri Ravi Shankar stressed on how players should play with a sense of responsibility, sports is that some which unites people beyond language. Bhasha ke pare, deshon ke pare, ham sab ko jodta, koi chiz jodta hai to wo khel. Aur khel khud ko hamare desh mein humne जैसे आपने बताया किरण जी ने कि सीरियसली नहीं लेते इफ यू डोंट टेक सीरियसली द गेम्स देन नो वन टेक इट एज ए करियर एंड मेंटल हेल्थ विल ओनली कीप पीपल ऑन द ट्रैक ऑफ एथिक्स एंड हियर व्हेन यू फॉलो एथिक्स यू आर टेकिंग द गेम बोथ सीरियसली एंड नॉट सो सीरियस वॉट इज एथिक्स एथिक्स इज दैट फॉर you don't want others to do to you you should not do to other union minister kiran rijiju emphasized on the need to bring sports culture in the country our sporting history goes back to ancient time but over the years the evolvement of the society did not bring sports culture in our country to the extent we would desire It is very important to have the sports culture in any society. Billiard and snooker world champion Pankaj Advani calls for sports persons to respect the opponent. I believe that FIR can also stand for fairness, fair play, integrity and respect in the world of sport. So my um appeal to you is to uh, ignore that FIR stands for first information report and uh, to uh um believe that we actually can play sport um you know through fair play to integrity to to through respect respect not only for our sport respect for our opponents respect for uh the audience respect for the rules the summit sought a road map to use fair and clean sports as a tool to unite people in a post pandemic world riddled by conflict economic crisis and mental health issues The summit proceedings also featured the announcement of the Ethics in Sports Awards 2022, a prize that recognizes the outstanding individuals and organizations that have demonstrated the importance of human values and ethics in life and in the sports arena. The winners of this year included FC Union Berlin for outstanding organization, Anja Hammersing Eden for promotion of mental health in sports, Kiran Rajiju for outstanding contribution to sports and Sandeep Singh for resilience in sports Indeed the time is ripe for a sports revolution 
and more importantly, it's time we change how we play the game. With ethics and leadership. Bureau Report, Republic TV. Let's put our hands together. What a wonderful morning. Top national update, Union Home Minister Amit Shah released a BJP selection theme song, Himachal Ki Pukar, Fir BJP Sarkar. The theme song has been released during the poll campaign with Chief Minister Jairam Thakur. After sparking a row by calling the PM duplicated, JDU National President Lalan Singh has refused to apologize. He further slammed the BJP MP Ravi Shankar Prasad for buttering the PM to be in his good books after getting sidelined. A boat carrying Bihar CM Nitish Kumar collided with an under construction pillar of the JP Setu Bridge. This happened while he was inspecting the arrangements of the Chhat Ghat situated on the bank of the river Ganga. All on board the boat, including the CM, are safe. Trouble keeps mounting for TMC MLA. Manik Bhattacharya as ED raided the Residents of his close aid in connection with the SSC scam case. Patacharya himself was arrested by the central agency on October 11th. NCJ Farooq Abdullah, PDP Chief Mehbooba Mufti and other members of the People's Alliance for the Gupkar Declaration met over the Jammu and Kashmir issue at Farooq Abdullah's residence in Srinagar. Haryana government granted 40 days parole to rape convict uh, Gurmeet Ram Rahim Singh. self styled government currently facing 20 years of jail time allowed to come out of the jail there in Rotak. The Indian women's cricket team made the country proud. They were crowned the Asia Cup champions after convincingly decimating Sri Lanka in the final played there at the cricket stadium in Bangladesh. Rahul Gandhi launches a stinging attack at BJP government's centre in Karnataka during his speech. During the Bharat Jori Yatra, former Congress president raised the matter of commission for jobs under the Bumai administration. AIMIM's UP president Shaukat Ali sparked religious row after making hateful comments about polygamy among the Hindus. He said Hindus keep mistresses while addressing a gathering there in UP. U.S. President Joe Biden sensationally labelled Pakistan as one of the most dangerous nations in the world. He further noted that the country has nuclear weapons without any cohesion. Two Arunachal Pradesh youth have gone missing after they went out in the search of the plants which can contain medicinal properties at a place near the state's border with China. The family members of the missing youth have alleged the Chinese army role in the incident. Here is a full report. Two youths from Arunachal Pradesh have reportedly gone missing from the line of actual control. These youths from the Anjao district of Arunachal Pradesh have reportedly been missing from near the LAC area. They have been identified as Batelum Tikro and Baing So Manu. As per the details shared with the police, the youths travelled to Changlagam area in search of medicinal herbs on August 19th and haven't returned since. Although the family is desperately searching for the youths, they have failed to gather details of their whereabouts. Fellow villagers who were close to the LSE saw them last on August 24th. The brother and relative of the missing youth, the Shanso Chikro, has been fighting to find his loved ones. As Republic reports from Ground Zero, the relatives of the two missing youths spoke exclusively to Republic. 19 August 2022. मेरे घर के घर के एक परिवार मेरे घर भैया वो मेरा गांव के कजन भैया दोनों किसी मेडिसिनल हर्ब के तलाश में जाना जाता है जारी बुतिया उसके तलाश में पहाड़ों के तरफ निकल गए जो आज तक वापस लौट के नहीं आया The family suspects that they might have crossed the LAC and PLM may have detained them The relatives have appealed to the state and the central government to take immediate action the Indian Army is also keeping a close watch, keeping the lines open with the PLA if needed. The family suspect that they mistakenly crossed over to the Chinese territory following which the PLA has taken them into custody. Meanwhile, the family members of Batalam Tikro 
has lodged a missing complaint with the Anzao police and have also appealed the Indian Army for intervention. They have also seek assistance from the state government and the center to ensure a safe return of the youth. With video journalist Asok, I am Anirudh Bhakat and this is Republic Media Network. Top updates, uh, viewers. In another terror attack on locals in the Kashmir Valley, a Kashmiri pundit was attacked in Jammu and Kashmir, Shopia district. According to the reports, the victim succumbed to his injuries after he was shot at by the terrorists outside his residence. हम यहाँ थे बाहर में थे तो पीछे से पता चला कि किसी की किसी को गोली मारी गई तो हम दौड़ते आ गए यहाँ पे तो यहाँ देखा यहाँ खून गिरा था यहाँ खून गिरा था और जब हम देखने लगे तो तब तक उसको अपना भतीजा ले गया था बाइक पे अस्पताल में तो वहाँ से फिर वो एम्बुलेंस पे शायद शुपियान ले गए तो फैमिली क्या है इस फैमिली इसकी दो बच्चे हैं छोटे एक लड़की है बड़ी और एक लड़का है उसका भाई भी इधर है उसके बच्चे भी फिफ्थ में पढ़ता है और बच्ची शायद सातवीं में पढ़ती है तो यानी घर घर में इनमें इनका सब कुछ घर में ही था इनका कोई नौकरी वोकरी नहीं है कुछ नहीं है चल हम तो था यहीं पे बाग बगी चक्कर बेचारा घर से भी बाहर नहीं निकला इन दिनों वो अंदर ही बैठता डर डर लग रहा है बहुत डर लगता है बहुत डर लगता है ISRO's heaviest rocket uh, will launch the UK startup OneWeb's 36 broadband satellites from the spaceport in Andhra Pradesh, Sri Harikota on October 23rd, marking the launcher's entry into the global commercial launch service market. Samadhi Party Chief Gopal Italia made a cast slur against Prime Minister Modi. The Janta Dal United Chief now has now made a derogatory remark against the Prime Minister by calling him Perupia or Duplicate. Soon after, JDU's uh, Lalan Singh made a derogatory remark against Prime Minister. BJP came down heavily on its former ally, JDU, has, and called the party chief's remark shameful and said it showcased the extreme arrogance of the feudal mindset. उनके वो राष्ट्रीय अध्यक्ष हैं। It is a feudal mindset, Mr. Prakash, full of arrogance, अहंकार पूरा है। अच्छा है। देश ने बहुतों का अहंकार खत्म किया है। ललन बाबू जदयू का भी खत्म करेंगे। The DMK today staged a protest against the parliamentary committee's recommendation to make Hindi the medium of instruction in central educational institutes. The DMK's showdown came after Tamil Nadu CM. And DMK chief MK Stalin wrote to the central government and warned against the imposition of the Hindi language. A major crackdown against the terror supporters in Jammu and Kashmir. Jammu and Kashmir Lieutenant Governor Manoj Sinha's administration today terminated five government employees for their links with the various terrorist outfits. In a mega crackdown on West Bengal SSC recruitment scam, the Enforcement Directorate today, Saturday, has now raided. Manik Bhattacharya's close aide, Tapas Mandal's residence there in North 24 Parganas. The investigation agency has also reportedly raided Manik Bhattacharya's offices in other areas where young college students were allegedly trained as teachers. Massive fire breaks out at a plastic warehouse in Russia's Yekaterinburg. Cloud of black smoke surrounded Russia's plastic warehouse. This comes in the backdrop of Russia Ukraine war, which continues to escalate. Visuals on your screen show as firefighters deployed at the incident site, continuously putting an effort to douse the massive fire. In what comes as a relief, no casualties have been reported at the fire site. Massive fire engulfs warehouse in Russia completely. Agency report for Republic TV. Viewers, AI MIM leader Shokat Ali's comment against Hindu women has drawn the ire of BJP who has demanded answers from the party chief OAC. Drawing a comparison, Shokat allegedly said that Hindus marry one but have three mistresses. NFIR has been registered against the leader. Here's the full story. 
In a fresh controversy, Asaduddin Oasis AIMIM UP chief Shokat Ali made a controversial remark on Hindu marriage at a rally in UP's Sambhal. He said that even if Muslims have two marriages, they give respect to both wives in society. But Hindus marry one and have three mistresses and neither respect the wife nor the mistress. Later on, this Neta went on to justify his statements by saying that he did not say anything unconstitutional or related to any other religion. आपको मालूम है कि आज से पांच दिन पहले दिल्ली के अंदर एक साधु ने बीएचपी का प्रोग्राम था उसमें कहा कि मुसलमानों को चुन चुन करके मारा मारना है ये चौदह शादियां करते हैं चालीस बच्चे पैदा करते हैं तो मैंने इंडिविजुअल उसको ये कहा था कि मुसलमान कोई गाजर मूली नहीं है कि आप उसको काट करके फेंक देंगे और दूसरी चीज़ मैंने उसके बयान पर ही ये बात कही थी कि जो ये कह रहे हैं कि हम हम अगर दो शादी भी करते हैं तो शादियों में हम दोनों बीवी को सम्मान देते हैं दोनों के बच्चे को अपना बच्चा समझते हैं लेकिन वो लोग जो लोग एक एक से एक शादी तो करते हैं लेकिन तीन पत्नियां इनकी अलग से रहती हैं लेकिन समाज में उसको छुपाते हैं तो वो गलत है या हम गलत हैं नाउ देर हैज बीन नो कमेंट और एक्शन अगेंस्ट शौकत अली फ्रॉम ए आई but police have registered an FIR against the AIMIM leader for his inciting comments against Hindus. Meanwhile, the BJP has trained its guns at AIMIM chief Asaduddin Owaisi for the comments made by his party leaders. The Congress, meanwhile, has called AIMIM the B-team of the BJP and said the controversy was orchestrated. Bureau Report, Republic TV. The national president of JDU hit out at Prime Minister Modi, calling him extremely backward and a facade. Now, JDU president Lalan Singh further stated that the PM had been spreading his conservative mindset since he came to power. Legislature Barak Arbe, a member of the opposition Republican People's Party, smashed a smartphone with a hammer while addressing Parliament, saying the clampdown on social media would make smartphone obsolete. Critics fear that as elections loom, the measure will be used to further crack down on social media and independent reporting. The 40 article legislation was approved with the vote of President Governing Party and its nationalist allies which together hold a majority in the parliament. Agency Report, Republic TV. Today on the Bombay High Court acquitting G.N. Sai Baba. Now Solicitor General Tushar Mehta is reported to have maintained that the acquittal was not on the basis of merit but for lack of appropriate sanction to prosecute him under the provisions of the UAPA. ये जो फैसला आया है ये बहुत ही दुर्दैवी है बहुत ही निराशाजनक है क्योंकि टेक्निकल ग्राउंड्स पर इस प्रकार से ऐसे व्यक्ति को छोड़ देना जिसके खिलाफ इतने सबूत हैं जिन्होंने एक प्रकार से ये फैसले के कारण जो हमारे पुलिस नक्सलवादियों से लड़ते हुए शहीद हुए उनके घर वालों के ऊपर इससे क्या बीतती होगी इसका विचार मैं बार बार कर रहा हूँ हम सर्वोच्च न्यायालय गए हैं सुप्रीम कोर्ट गए हैं और मेरा विश्वास है कि सुप्रीम कोर्ट में न्याय मिलेगा a 21 year old college student was allegedly molested by an auto rickshaw driver and dragged with a vehicle in Maharashtra Thane now a video of the incident that took place in the city around 6:45 am surfaced on social media The national president of JDU hit out at Prime Minister Modi calling him extremely backward and of a facade
Top headlines right now, economic uh, fugitive weaponizes foreign media to target Modi government with a full page ad in Wall Street Journal. Kashmiri Pandit uh, Puran Bhatta shot dead by Pakistan backed terrorists in Shopia. Protests erupt across Kashmir over a wave of targeted killings. Demand grows for justice. Kerala police take accused to the crime scene as probe into the occult murder deepens. AI MIM leader Koron Tape abusing Hindus police take cognizance of his rant. Two youths from Arunachal Pradesh reported missing family suspects they have crossed the LAC. Viewers, you are watching Republic TV, India's number one news channel. I'm Shivangi Shokla. Let's start with the first story. In another incident of the terror attack on locals in the Kashmir rally, a Kashmiri pundit was shot in Jammu and Kashmir Shopia district. The deceased has been identified as Puran Bhatt. Now, the attack on the civilian was carried out after the security forces conducted two anti-terror operations in which four terrorists were neutralized. Here's a full story. A little past noon on Saturday, Puran Bhatt was shot dead by terrorists outside his house while he was heading towards his apple orchard. In the, at the time of the instance said that police deployment is there at his residence of the Kashmiri Pandit and he has also now confirmed the news that yes, the police deployment is there and Sujit Kumar said that the action will not only be on police deployment who were guarding the residence of the Kashmiri Pandit. My VJ Mubashir is showing you the visuals and this is the exact spot, the visuals of the, the spot that are coming in that this is the spot where he was targeted by the terrorists. This uh, spot is just for not even two to three meters away from his residence where he was targeted so we can say that he was targeted in his residence kashmiri uh, kashmiri pandit ko puran ji ko mara gaya hai aur is pe aapko pata hi hai ki tff ne isko claim kiya hai lekin hamari aur se ab hamari aur se abhi abhi kuch bhi sure hum log apni aur se nahi bolenge People from across Shopian mourned the death of Kashmiri Pandit Puran Bhatt. The show of unity at his funeral was a stinging response to the terrorists. Uh, today early morning at 11.30 he got a shot here. Oh. And there, when we came here there was blood here also, here also. Oh. And by that time he was taken to hospital and we are coming to know from TV serials, TV, that he is, he is killed, he is dead. We were thinking that it will be a little bit, maybe it will be a little bit, maybe it will be a little bit, maybe it will this is the residence where he was staying with his family, this is the ancestral house, he is survived by wife kids, one daughter and one son. The entire village is mourning the death of Bablu. They used to call him for family. He was poor Kishan, but who preferred to stay back when the Kashmiri Pandits in 90s were migrating or when target killing started again in the Kashmir Valley. His family in Jammu is distraught over the targeted killing in Kashmir. The unfortunate incident that has unfolded in the South Kashmir where the terrorists have targeted a Kashmiri Pandit, a minority that was living in the Kashmir Valley even uh, after the exodus that has taken place in 1990. He chose not to leave the Kashmir Valley and was working there. Right now we are outside his Jammu residence and the senior officials of the Jammu and Kashmir police, uh, they are here to console the family members, the divisional commissioner and other officials uh, along with the ADG Jammu. They are here. The murder of Puran Bhatt is the fifth targeted killing in the valley in the last five months. And the anger is spilling on the streets. Kashmiri pundits blocked the Sheikhpura Budgam Road and held protest rallies in Jammu demanding justice. We have to do something substantive on ground. If you cannot protect us, the government should give us arms should train us and not simply feed us to the wolves in Kashmir to keep this pretense of normalcy going.
Despite the anger over the wave of targeted killings in Jammu and Kashmir, Mehbooba Mufti continues to question the forces. लोगों को जेलों में डाला जाता है हाइब्रिड मिलिटेंट के नाम पे लोगों को मुलाजमतों से निकाला जाता है शक की बुनियाद पे और उसके बावजूद बीजेपी नाकाम हो गई है यहां के जो हमारे रहे कुछ कश्मीरी पंडित बचे हुए थे उनको हिफाजत देने में विद राइज इन टारगेटेड किलिंग्स इन द वैली इट इज नाउ टाइम टू गो ऑल आउट अगेंस्ट पाकिस्तान बैक टेररिस्ट इन कश्मीर ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट रिपब्लिक टीवी It was a joint action committee stage a rally for uh, the decentralization and three capitals with the support of the YSR CP organized uh, rally from Ambedkar statue to the YSR statue. Here's a full story. Amid the ongoing roar over three capital in the state of Andhra Pradesh, now we see that a large number of people gathered in a massive rally which was being led by the Joint Action Committee and also along with the YSRCP leaders. Many people joined the rally in support of three capital and also we have been seeing that this rally was named as Vishaka Garjana and also they have been seeing and demanding that now Vishakhapatnam should be the executive capital as the Jagan Mohan Reddy led government in the state of Andhra Pradesh has the has put forth the proposal for the three capital which is Vishakhapatnam as executive capital Amravati as the legislative capital and Karnul as the judicial capital but we also see that the opposition parties in the state of Andhra Pradesh have been demanding that this three capital should be withdrawn and also at the same time that the Telugu Desam party leaders have been stating that Jagan Mohan Reddy is putting the Vishakhapatnam as executive capital only to do land grabbing. A four-page advertisement has been published in the Wall Street Journal against Indian ministers and key officers of the central government. Senior advisor to Ministry of Information and Broadcasting Kanchan Gupta has tweeted that the mastermind behind this advertisement is Ramachandra Vishwanathan. Who was the CEO of Devas? Now, Vishnu Martin was declared a fugitive economic offender in India and India's Supreme Court also ruled that Devas was involved in corruption. Here's the full story. On October 13th, this full-page advertisement was published in a US-based newspaper, Wall Street Journal. The truth about the advertisement is now becoming clear. The senior advisor to the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting, Kanchan Gupta, has revealed that the mastermind of the advertisement is Ramachandran Vishwanathan, former CEO of Devas, an economic offender in India. The owner of the country, uh, he is uh, Vishwanathan, uh, Ramachandran Vishwanathan. So the CEO of the company or the owner of the company he is a fugitive from Indian law. He has been declared a, a, a fugitive economic offender. And uh, uh, that's it. I mean, uh, uh, Devas Multimedia uh, had tried to con uh, ISRO's commercial wing, Antriksh, by entering into a fraudulent agreement. First, we have to understand who's this uh, Ramachandra Vishwanathan. He's uh, CEO of, he was CEO of uh, Devas. And uh, you know the Devas Antriksh scam and the manner in which uh, right up to the Supreme Court uh, Devas lost uh, essentially making Ramachandra Vishwanathan an economic offender and a fugitive of law insofar as India is concerned under the economic uh, fugitives uh, law that we have uh, brought in by the present government. Uh, Ramachandran has pleaded with the US government to impose visa and economic sanctions against 11 Indians, which includes ministers and government officials. American media, the Wall Street Journal in this case, before that New York Times mocking uh, India's space achievements, achievements of uh, ISRO, or uh, for that matter Washington Post, which very routinely uh, provides uh, its platform uh, for anti-India sentiments to be strongly ex ex expressed uh, or uh, for, for India bashing. As the Indian economy gets stronger and with the decline of the American economy, the pattern of such an advertisement cannot be missed.
see the what america has done in the last two, two decades is to co-opt the world economy into the financial system it has co-opted the world monetary order into the american monetary order it was its strength and that is becoming the weakness also today so with so much dollars outside america and america printing more dollars and america exporting more dollars to import and with no other mechanism to control inflation they have to do it even more they are now caught in a situation from which it is i am talking about economically to get out of this america has to hugely reduce its standard with the facts now out the deep anti india network has been exposed bureau report republic tv Viewers, the Art of Living, along with World Forum for Ethics in Business, organized a sixth World Summit on Ethics and Leadership in Sports on 13th to 14th October, where great emphasis was laid to how sports should be played and looked at. The Art of Living Foundation, along with World Forum for Ethics in Business, organized the 6th World Summit on Ethics and Leadership in Sports in Bengaluru. The summit at a time when India is making global progress in athletics and its performance at global events. The two-day event saw the participation of Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, Minister of Law and Justice Kiran Rijiju, 25-time international billiard and snooker world champion Pankaj Advani, among other speakers. While Sri Sri Ravi Shankar stressed on how players should play with a sense of responsibility. Sports is that some which unites people beyond language. Bhasha ke pare, deshon ke pare, hum sab ko jodta, koi cheez jodta hai to wo khel. Aur khel khud ko humare desh mein humne जैसे आपने बताया किरण जी ने कि सीरियसली नहीं लेते इफ यू डोंट टेक सीरियसली द गेम्स देन नो वन टेक इट एज ए करियर एंड मेंटल हेल्थ विल ओनली कीप पीपल ऑन द ट्रैक ऑफ एथिक्स एंड हियर व्हेन यू फॉलो एथिक्स यू आर टेकिंग द गेम बोथ सीरियसली एंड नॉट सो सीरियस व्हाट इज एथिक्स एथिक्स इज दैट फॉर you don't want others to do to you you should not do to others union minister kiran rijiju emphasized on the need to bring sports culture in the country our sporting history goes back to ancient time but over the years the evolvement of the society did not bring sports culture in our country to the extent we would desire It is very important to have the sports culture in any society. Billiard and snooker world champion Pankaj Advani called for sports persons to respect the opponent. I believe that FIR can also stand for fairness, fair play, integrity and respect in the world of sport. So my um appeal to you is to uh, ignore that FIR stands for first information report and uh, to uh um believe that we actually can play sport um you know to fair play to integrity to 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 respect respect not only for our sport respect for our opponents respect for uh the audience respect for the rules the summit sought a road map to use fair and clean sports as a tool to unite people in a post pandemic world riddled by conflict economic crisis and mental health issues The summit proceedings also featured the announcement of the Ethics in Sports Awards 2022, a prize that recognizes the outstanding individuals and organizations that have demonstrated the importance of human values and ethics in life and in the sports arena. The winners of this year included FC Union Berlin for outstanding organization, Anja Hammersing Eden for promotion of mental health in sports, Kiran Rajiju for outstanding contribution to sports and Sandeep Singh for resilience in sports Indeed the time is ripe for a sports revolution 
and more importantly, it's time we change how we play the game. With ethics and leadership. Bureau Report, Republic TV. Let's put our hands together. What a wonderful morning. Top National Update, Union Home Minister Amit Shah released the BJP selection theme song, Himachal Ki Pukar, Fir BJP Sarkar. The theme song has been released during the poll campaign with Chief Minister Jairam Thakur. After sparking a row by calling the PM duplicated, JDU National President Lalan Singh has refused to apologize. He further slammed the BJP MP Ravi Shankar Prasad for buttering the PM to be in his good books after getting sidelined. A boat carrying Bihar, CM Nitish Kumar collided with an under-construction pillar of the JP Setu Bridge. This happened while he was inspecting the arrangements of the Chhat Ghat situated on the bank of the river Ganga. All on board the boat, including the CM, are safe. Trouble keeps mounting for TMC MLA. Manik Bhattacharya as ED raided the residence of his close aide in connection with the SSC scam case. Bhattacharya himself was arrested by the central agency on October 11th. NCJ Farooq Abdullah, PDP Chief Mehbooba Mufti and other members of the People's Alliance for the Gupkar Declaration met over the Jammu and Kashmir issue at Farooq Abdullah's residence in Srinagar. Haryana government granted 40 days parole to rape convict Gurmeet Ram Rahim Singh. The self-styled government currently facing 20 years of jail time allowed to come out of the jail there in Rohtak. The Indian women's cricket team made the country proud. They were crowned the Asia Cup champions after convincingly decimating Sri Lanka in the final played there at the cricket stadium in Bangladesh. Rahul Gandhi launches a stinging attack at BJP government's centre in Karnataka during his speech. During the Bharat Jori Yatra, former Congress president raised the matter of commission for jobs under the Bumai administration. AIMIM's uh, UP President Shokat Ali sparked religious row after making hateful comments about polygamy among the Hindus. He said Hindus keep mistresses while addressing a gathering there in UP. US President Joe Biden uh, sensationally labeled Pakistan as one of the most dangerous nations in the world. He further noted that the country has nuclear weapons without any cohesion. Two Arunachal Pradesh youth have gone missing after they went out in the search of the plants which can contain medicinal properties at a place near the state's border with China. The family members of the missing youth have alleged the Chinese army role in the incident. Here is a full report. Two youths from Arunachal Pradesh have reportedly gone missing from the line of actual control. These youths from the Anjor district of Arunachal Pradesh have reportedly been missing from near the LAC area. They have been identified as Batelum Tikro and Baing So Manu. As per the details shared with the police, the youths travelled to Changlagam area in search of medicinal herbs on August 19th and haven't returned since. Although the family is desperately searching for the youths, they have failed to gather details of their whereabouts. Fellow villagers who were close to the LSE saw them last on August 24th. The brother and relative of the missing youth, the Shansa Chikro, has been fighting to find his loved ones. As Republic reports from Ground Zero, the relatives of the two missing youths spoke exclusively to Republic. 19 किसी मेडिसिनल हर्ब के तलाश में जाना जाता है जारी बुतिया के तलाश में बाहरों के तरफ निकल गए जो आज तक वापस लौट के नहीं आया। The family suspects that they might have crossed the LAC and PLM may have detained them. The relatives have appealed to the state and the central government to take immediate action. The Indian Army is also keeping a close watch, keeping the lines open with the PLA if needed. The family suspect that they mistakenly crossed over to the Chinese territory following which the PLA has taken them into custody. Meanwhile, the family members of Batalam Tikro 
has lodged a missing complaint which the Anzao police and have also appealed the Indian Army for intervention. They have also seek assistance from the state government and the center to ensure a safe return of the youth. With video journalist Asok, I am Anirudh Abhakat and this is Republic Media Network. Top updates uh, viewers in another terror attack on locals in the Kashmir Valley. A Kashmiri pundit was attacked in Jammu and Kashmir, Shopia district. According to the reports, the victim succumbed to his injuries after he was shot at by the terrorists outside his residence. हम यहाँ थे बाग में थे तो पीछे से पता चला कि किसी की किसी को गोली मारी गई तो हम दौड़ते आ गए यहाँ पे तो यहाँ देखा यहाँ खून गिरा था यहाँ खून गिरा था और जब हम देखने लगे तो तब तक उसको अपना भतीजा ले गया था भाई पे अस्पताल में तो वहाँ से फिर वो एम्बुलेंस पे शायद शुपियान ले गए तो फैमिली क्या है इस फैमिली इसकी दो बच्चे हैं छोटे एक लड़की है बड़ी और एक लड़का है उसका भाई भी इधर है उसके बच्चे भी फिफ्थ में पढ़ता है और भाई बच्ची शायद सातवीं में पढ़ती है तो यानी घर में घर में इनमें इनका सब कुछ घर में ही था इनका कोई नौकरी वोकरी नहीं है कुछ नहीं है चल हम तो था यहीं पे बाग बगी चक्कर बेचारा घर से भी बाहर नहीं निकला इन दिनों वो अंदर ही बैठता डर डर लग रहा है बहुत डर लगता है बहुत डर लगता है ISRO's heaviest rocket uh, will launch the UK startup OneWeb's 36 broadband satellites from the spaceport in Andhra Pradesh, Sri Harikota, on October 23rd, marking the launcher's entry into the global commercial launch service market. Samadhi Party Chief Gopal Italia made a caste slur against Prime Minister Modi. The Janta Dal United Chief now has now made a derogatory remark against the Prime Minister by calling him Perupia or Duplicate. Soon after JDU's uh, Lalan Singh made a derogatory remark against Prime Minister, BJP came down heavily on its former ally JDU has, and called the party chief's remark shameful and said it showcased the extreme arrogance of the feudal mindset. उनके वो राष्ट्रीय अध्यक्ष हैं। It is a feudal mindset, Mr. Prakash, full of arrogance, अहंकार पूरा है। अच्छा है। देश ने बहुतों का अहंकार खत्म किया है। ललन बाबू जदयू का भी खत्म करेंगे। The DMK today staged a protest against the Parliamentary Committee's recommendation to make Hindi the medium of instruction in central educational institutes. The DMK's showdown came after Tamil Nadu CM. And DMK chief MK Stalin wrote to the central government and warned against the imposition of the Hindi language. A major crackdown against the terror supporters in Jammu and Kashmir. Jammu and Kashmir Lieutenant Governor Manoj Sinha's administration today terminated five government employees for their links with the various terrorist outfits. In a mega crackdown on West Bengal SSC recruitment scam, the Enforcement Directorate today, Saturday, has now raided. Manik uh, Bhattacharya's close aide, Tapas Mandal's residence there in North 24 Parganas. The investigation agency has also reportedly raided Manik Bhattacharya's offices in um, other areas where young college students were allegedly trained as teachers. Massive fire breaks out at a plastic warehouse in Russia's Yekaterinburg. Cloud of black smoke surrounded Russia's plastic warehouse. This comes in the backdrop of Russia Ukraine war, which continues to escalate. Visuals on your screen show as firefighters deployed at the incident site, continuously putting an effort to douse the massive fire. In what comes as a relief, no casualties have been reported at the fire site. Massive fire engulfs warehouse in Russia completely. Agency report for Republic TV. Viewers, AI MIM leader Shokat Ali's comment against Hindu women has drawn the ire of BJP who has demanded answers from the party chief OAC. Drawing a comparison, Shokat allegedly said that Hindus marry one but have three mistresses. NFIR has been registered against the leader. Here's the full story. 
Amid a fresh controversy, Asaduddin Owaisi's AIMIM UP chief Shokat Ali made a controversial remark on Hindu marriage at a rally in UP's Sambhal. He said that even if Muslims have two marriages, they give respect to both wives and society. But Hindus marry one and have three mistresses and neither respect the wife nor the mistress. Later on, this Neta went on to justify his statements by saying that he did not say anything unconstitutional or related to any other religion. आपको मालूम है कि आज से पांच दिन पहले दिल्ली के अंदर एक साधु ने बीएचपी का प्रोग्राम था उसमें कहा कि मुसलमानों को चुन चुन करके मारा मारना है ये चौदह शादियां करते हैं चालीस बच्चे पैदा करते हैं तो मैंने इंडिविजुअल उसको ये कहा था कि मुसलमान कोई गाजर मूली नहीं है कि आप उसको काट करके फेंक देंगे और दूसरी चीज मैंने उसके बयान पे ही ये बात कही थी कि जो ये कह रहे हैं कि हम हम अगर दो शादी भी करते हैं तो शादियों में हम दोनों बीवी को सम्मान देते हैं दोनों के बच्चे को अपना बच्चा समझते हैं लेकिन वो लोग जो लोग एक एक से एक शादी तो करते हैं लेकिन तीन पत्नियां इनकी अलग से रहती हैं लेकिन समाज में उसको छुपाते हैं तो वो गलत है या हम गलत है नाउ देयर हैज बीन नो कमेंट और एक्शन अगेंस्ट शौकत अली फ्रॉम ए आई एम but police have registered an FIR against the AIMIM leader for his inciting comments against Hindus. Meanwhile, the BJP has trained its guns at AIMIM chief Asaduddin Owaisi for the comments made by his party leaders. The Congress, meanwhile, has called AIMIM the B-team of the BJP and said the controversy was orchestrated. Bureau Report, Republic TV. Following the case of human uh, sacrifice that emerged in Elanthur, the police are expected to visit the site of the incident to ascertain whether there are any more bodies at the site. The Coimbatore District Administration sealed four offices of the Popular Front of India. The police was accordingly deployed at the offices and in areas of concern during the sealing of the offices. Legislature Barak Arbe, a member of the opposition Republican People's Party, smashed a smartphone with a hammer while addressing parliament, saying the clampdown on social media would make smartphone obsolete. Critics fear that as elections loom, the measure will be used to further crack down on social media and independent reporting. The 40 article legislation was approved with the vote of President Governing Party and its nationalist allies which together hold a majority in the parliament. Agency Report, Republic TV. Today on the Bombay High Court acquitting GN Sai Baba. Now Solicitor General Tushar Mehta is reported to have maintained that the acquittal was not on the basis of merit but for lack of appropriate sanction to prosecute him under the provisions of the UAPA. ये जो फैसला आया है ये बहुत ही दुर्दैवी है बहुत ही निराशाजनक है क्योंकि टेक्निकल ग्राउंड्स पर इस प्रकार से ऐसे व्यक्ति को छोड़ देना जिसके खिलाफ इतने सबूत हैं जिन्होंने एक प्रकार से ये फैसले के कारण जो हमारे पुलिस नक्सलवादियों से लड़ते हुए शहीद हुए उनके घर वालों के ऊपर इससे क्या बीतती होगी इसका विचार मैं बार बार कर रहा हूँ हम सर्वोच्च न्यायालय गए हैं सुप्रीम कोर्ट गए हैं और मेरा विश्वास है कि सुप्रीम कोर्ट में न्याय मिलेगा Top headlines right now, economic uh, fugitive weaponizes foreign media to target Modi government with a full page ad in Wall Street Journal.
कश्मीरी पंडित पूरन भाटा शॉट डेड बाय पाकिस्तान बैक टेररिस्ट इन शोपिया प्रोटेस्ट रात अक्रॉस कश्मीर ओवर वेव ऑफ टारगेटेड किलिंग्स डिमांड रोज फॉर जस्टिस केरला पुलिस टेक अक्यूज टू द क्राइम सीन एस प्रोबेंट द कॉल्स मर्डर डिपेंस AIMIM leader Koronte abusing Hindu's police take cognizance of his rant. Two youths from Arunachal Pradesh reported missing family suspects they have crossed the LAC. Viewers here watching Republic TV India's number 1 news channel I'm Shivangi Shukla let's start with the first story. In another incident of the terror attack on locals in the Kashmir rally a Kashmiri pundit was shot in Jammu and Kashmir Shopia district the deceased has been identified as Puran Bhatt now the attack on the civilian was carried out after the security forces conducted two anti terror operations in which four terrorists were neutralized here's a full story a little past noon on saturday Puran Bhatt was shot dead by terrorists outside his house while he was heading towards his apple orchard. In the at the time of the instance said that police deployment is there at his residence of the Kashmiri Pandit and he has also now confirmed the news that yes the police deployment is there and Sujit Kumar said that the action will not only be on police deployment who were guarding the residence of the Kashmiri Pandit my VJ for Mubashir is showing you the visuals and this is the exact spot the visuals of the the spot that are coming in that this is the spot where he was targeted by the terrorists this uh, spot is just for uh, not even 2 to 3 meters away from his residence where he was targeted so we can say that he was targeted in his residence kashmiri uh, kashmiri pandit ko puran ji ko mara gaya hai aur is pe aapko pata hi hai ki tff ne isko claim kiya hai lekin hamari aur se ab hamari aur se abhi abhi kuch bhi sure hum log apni aur se nahi bolenge people from across shopian mourned the death of kashmiri pandit puran bhat the show of unity at his funeral was a stinging response to the terrorists and today early morning at 11:30 he got a shot here oh. and there when we came here there was blood here also here also Oh. and by that time he was taken to hospital and we are coming to know from tv serials the tv that he is he is killed he is dead hum soch rahe the thoda sa hi lagi hogi shayad bach jayega bechara but message aaya ki wo to hai nahi this is the residence where he was staying with his family this is the ancestral house he is survived by wife kids one daughter and one son the entire village is mourning the death of bablu they used to call him for family he was poor kishan but who prefer to stay back when the kashmiri pandits in 90s were migrating or when target killing started again in the kashmir valley his family in jammu is distraught over the targeted killing in kashmir the unfortunate incident that has unfolded in the south kashmir where the terrorists have targeted a kashmiri pandit a minority that was living in the kashmir valley even uh, after the exodus that has taken place in 1990 he chose not to leave the kashmir valley and was working there right now we are outside his jammu residence and the senior officials of the jammu and kashmir police uh, they are here to console the family members the divisional commissioner and other officials uh, along with the adg jammu they are here The murder of Puran Bhatt is the fifth targeted killing in the valley in the last 5 months and the anger is spilling on the streets. Kashmiri pundits blocked the Sheikhpura Budgam road and held protest rallies in Jammu demanding justice. We have to do something substantive on ground. If you cannot protect us, the government should give us arms should train us and not simply feed us to the wolves in kashmir to keep this pretense of normalcy going despite the anger over the wave of targeted killings in jammu and kashmir mehbooba mufti continues to question the forces aaj 30 35 saal ke baad 
उसको निशाना बनाया गया जबकि यहाँ इतनी सिक्योरिटी है इतनी आर्मी है इतनी फोर्सेज हैं लोगों को जेलों में डाला जाता है हाइब्रिड मिलिटेंट के नाम पे लोगों को मुलाजमतों से निकाला जाता है शक की बुनियाद पे और उसके बावजूद बीजेपी नाकाम हो गई है यहाँ के जो हमारे रहे कुछ कश्मीरी पंडित बचे हुए थे उनको हिफाजत देने में With the rise in targeted killings in the valley, it is now time to go all out against Pakistan-backed terrorists in Kashmir. Bureau Report, Republic TV. We have a joint action committee stage a rally for uh, the decentralisation and three capitals with the support of the YSR CP organised uh, rally from Ambedkar statue to the YSR statue. Here is the full story. Amid the ongoing roar over three capital in the state of Andhra Pradesh, now we see that a large number of people gathered in a massive rally, which was being led by the Joint Action Committee and also along with the YSR CP leaders. Many people joined the rally in support of three capital, and also we have been seeing that this rally was named as Vishaka Garjana and. Also, they have been seeing and demanding that now Vishakhapatnam should be the executive capital, as the Jagan Mohan Reddy-led government in the state of Andhra Pradesh has the, has put forth the proposal for the three capital, which is Vishakhapatnam as executive capital, Amravati as the legislative capital, and Karnul as the judicial capital. But we also see that the opposition parties in the state of Andhra Pradesh have been demanding that this three capital should be withdrawn, and also at the same. same time that the telugu desam party leaders have been stating that jagan mohan reddy is putting the vishakhapatnam as executive capital only to do land grabbing a four page advertisement has been published in the wall street journal against indian ministers and key officers of the central government senior advisor to ministry of information and broadcasting kanchan gupta has tweeted that the mastermind behind this advertisement is ramachandra vishwanath who was the ceo of devas now vishnu martin was declared a fugitive economic offender in india and india supreme court also ruled that devas was involved in corruption here's the full story on october 13th this full page advertisement was published in a us based newspaper wall street journal the truth about the advertisement is now becoming clear The senior advisor to the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting Kanchan Gupta has revealed that the mastermind of the advertisement is Ramachandran Vishwanathan, former CEO of Devas, an economic offender in India. The owner of the country uh, he is uh, Vishwanathan uh, Ramachandran Vishwanathan. So the CEO of the company or the owner of the company He is a fugitive from Indian law. He has been declared a, a, a fugitive economic offender, and uh, uh, that's it. I mean, uh, uh, Devas Multimedia uh, had tried to con uh, ISRO's commercial wing, Antrix, by entering into a fraudulent agreement. First, we have to understand who's this uh, Ramachandra Vishwanathan. He's uh, CEO of. He was CEO of uh, Devas. Uh, and uh, you know the devas antriksh scam and the manner in which uh, right up to the supreme court uh, devas lost uh, essentially making ramachandra vishwanathan an economic offender and a fugitive of law in so far as india is concerned under the economic uh, fugitives uh, law that we have uh, brought in by the present government uh, ramachandra has pleaded with the us government to impose visa and economic sanctions against 11 indians which includes ministers and government officials american media the wall street journal in this case before that new york times mocking uh, india's space achievements achievements of uh, isro or uh, for that matter washington post which very routinely uh, provides uh, its platform uh, for anti india sentiments to be strongly ex ex expressed uh, or uh, for for india bashing as the indian economy gets stronger and with the decline of the american economy the pattern of such an advertisement cannot be missed see the, what america has done in the last two, two decades is to co-opt the world economy into the american financial system it has co-opted the 
world monetary order into the american monetary order it was its strength and that is becoming the weakness also today so with so much dollars outside america and america printing more dollars and america exporting more dollars to import and with no other mechanism to control inflation they have to do it even more they are now caught in a situation from which it is i am talking about economically to get out of this america has to hugely reduce its standard of with the facts now out the deep anti india network has been exposed bureau report republic tv We was the art of living along with World Forum for Ethics in Business organized a 6th World Summit on Ethics and Leadership in Sports on 13th to 14th October where great emphasis was laid to how sports should be played and looked at. The Art of Living Foundation along with World Forum for Ethics in Business organized the 6th World Summit on Ethics and Leadership in Sports in Bengaluru. The summit at a time when India is making global progress in athletics and its performance at global events. The two-day event saw the participation of Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, Minister of Law and Justice Kiran Rijiju, 25-time international billiard and snooker world champion Pankaj Advani among other speakers. While Shri Shri Ravi Shankar stressed on how players should play with a sense of responsibility, sports is that some which unites people beyond language. Bhasha ke pare, deshon ke pare, ham sab ko jodta, koi cheez jodta hai to wo khel. Aur khel khud ko humare desh mein humne जैसे आपने बताया किरण जी ने कि सीरियसली नहीं लेते इफ यू डोंट टेक सीरियसली द गेम्स देन नो वन टेक इट एज ए करियर एंड मेंटल हेल्थ विल ओनली कीप पीपल ऑन द ट्रैक ऑफ एथिक्स एंड हियर व्हेन यू फॉलो एथिक्स यू आर टेकिंग द गेम बोथ सीरियसली एंड नॉट सो सीरियस वॉट इज एथिक्स एथिक्स इज दैट फॉर you don't want others to do to you you should not do to others union minister kiran rijiju emphasized on the need to bring sports culture in the country our sporting history goes back to ancient time but over the years the evolvement of the society did not bring sports culture in our country to the extent we would desire It is very important to have the sports culture in any society. Billiard and snooker world champion Pankaj Advani calls for sports persons to respect the opponent. I believe that FIR can also stand for fairness, fair play, integrity and respect in the world of sport. So my um appeal to you is to uh, ignore that FIR stands for first information report and uh, to uh um believe that we actually can play sport um you know through fair play through integrity through, through through respect respect not only for our sport respect for our opponents respect for uh the audience respect for the rules the summit sought a road map to use fair and clean sports as a tool to unite people in a post pandemic world riddled by conflict economic crisis and mental health issues The summit proceedings also featured the announcement of the Ethics in Sports Awards 2022, a prize that recognizes the outstanding individuals and organizations that have demonstrated the importance of human values and ethics in life and in the sports arena. The winners of this year included FC Union Berlin for outstanding organization, Anja Hammersing Eden for promotion of mental health in sports, Kiran Rajiju for outstanding contribution to sports and Sandeep Singh for resilience in sports indeed the time is ripe for a sports revolution and more importantly it's time we change how we play the game with ethics and leadership bureau report republic tv let's put our hands together what a wonderful morning
टॉप नेशनल अपडेट यूनियन होम मिनिस्टर अमित शाह रिलीज बीजेपी सिलेक्शन थीम सॉन्ग हिमाचल की पुकार फिर बीजेपी सरकार थीम सॉन्ग हैज बीन रिलीज ड्यूरिंग द पोल कैंपेन विद चीफ मिनिस्टर जयराम ठाकुर After sparking a row by calling the PM duplicate, JDU National President Lalan Singh has refused to apologize. He further slammed the BJP MP Ravi Shankar Prasad for buttering the PM to be in his good books after getting sidelined. A boat carrying Bihar CM Nitish Kumar collided with an under construction pillar of the JP Setu Bridge. This happened while he was inspecting the arrangements of the Chhat Ghat situated on the bank of the river Ganga. All on board the boat, including the CM, are safe. Trouble keeps mounting for TMC MLA Manik Bhattacharya as ED raided the residence of his close aide in connection with the SSC scam case. Bhattacharya himself was arrested by the central agency on October 11th. NCJ Farooq Abdullah, PDP Chief Mehbooba Mufti, and other members of the People's Alliance for the Gupkar Declaration met over the Jammu and Kashmir issue at Farooq Abdullah's residence in Srinagar. Haryana government granted 40 days parole to rape convict Gurmeet Ram Rahim Singh. Self-styled godman currently facing 20 years of jail time allowed to come out of the jail there in Rohtak. The Indian women's cricket team made the country proud. They were crowned the Asia Cup champions after convincingly decimating Sri Lanka in the final played there at the cricket stadium in Bangladesh. Rahul Gandhi launches a stinging attack at BJP government's center in Karnataka during his speech during the Bharat Jodo Yatra. Former Congress president raised the matter of commission for jobs under the Bombay administration. AIMIM's uh, UP president Shaukat Ali sparked religious row after making hateful comments about polygamy among the Hindus. He said Hindus keep mistresses while addressing a gathering there in UP. US President Joe Biden uh, sensationally labeled Pakistan as one of the most dangerous nations in the world. He further noted that the country has nuclear weapons without any cohesion. Two Arunachal Pradesh youth have gone missing after they went out in the search of the plants which can contain medicinal properties at a place near the state's border with China. The family members of the missing youth have alleged the Chinese army role in the incident. Here is a full report. Two youths from Arunachal Pradesh have reportedly gone missing from the line of actual control. These youths from the Anjore district of Arunachal Pradesh have reportedly been missing from near the LAC area. They have been identified as Batelum Tikro and Bhaiang So Manu. As per the details shared with the police, the youths travelled to Changlagam area in search of medicinal herbs on August 19th and haven't returned since. Although the family is desperately searching for the youths, they have failed to gather details of their whereabouts. Fellow villagers who were close to the LSE saw them last on August 24th. The brother and relative of the missing youth, the Shansa Chikro, has been fighting to find his loved ones. As Republic reports from Ground Zero, the relatives of the two missing youth spoke exclusively to Republic. 19 of August 2022, को मेरे घर के घर के एक परिवार, मेरे घर के भैया और मेरा गांव के कजन भैया दोनों किसी मेडिसिनल हार्ट के तलाश में जाना जाता है जारी बुतिया के तलाश में पहाड़ों के तरफ निकल गए जो आज तक वापस लौट के नहीं आया। The family suspects that they might have crossed the LAC and PLM may have detained them. The relatives have appealed to the state and the central government to take immediate action. The Indian Army is also keeping a close watch, keeping the lines open with the PLA if needed. The family suspect that they mistakenly crossed over to the Chinese territory, following which the PLA has taken them into custody. Meanwhile, the family members of Batelam Tikro has lodged a missing complaint, which the Anzao police and have also appealed the Indian Army for intervention. They have also seek assistance from the state government and the centre to ensure a safe return of. 
the youth. With video journalist Asok, I am Anirudh Abhakat and this is Republic Media Network. Top updates are uh, viewers in another terror attack on locals in the Kashmir Valley. A Kashmiri pundit was attacked in Jammu and Kashmir, Shopia district. According to the reports, the victim succumbed to his injuries after he was shot at by the terrorists outside his residence. हम यहाँ थे बाहर में थे तो पीछे से पता चला कि किसी की किसी को गोली मारी गई तो हम दौड़ते आ गए यहाँ पे तो यहाँ देखा यहाँ खून गिरा था यहाँ खून गिरा था और जब हम देखने लगे तो तब तक उसको अपना भतीजा ले गया था बाइक पे अस्पताल में तो वहाँ से फिर वो एम्बुलेंस में शायद शुपियान ले गए तो फैमिली क्या है इस फैमिली इसकी दो बच्चे हैं छोटे एक लड़की है बड़ी और एक लड़का है उसका भाई भी इधर है एक बच्चे भी फिफ्थ में पढ़ता है और बच्ची शायद छठवीं में पढ़ती है तो यानी घर घर में इनमें इनका सब कुछ घर में ही था इनका कोई नौकरी वोकरी नहीं है कुछ नहीं है चल हम तो था यहीं पर बाग बगी चक्कर बेचारा घर से भी बाहर नहीं निकला इन दिनों वो अंदर ही बैठता डर डर लग रहा है बहुत डर लगता है बहुत डर लगता है ISRO's heaviest rocket uh, will launch the UK startup OneWeb's 36 broadband satellites from the spaceport in Andhra Pradesh, Sri Harikota, on October 23rd, marking the launcher's entry into the global commercial launch service market. Samadhi Party Chief Gopal Italia made a caste slur against Prime Minister Modi. The Janata Dal United Chief now has now made a derogatory remark against the prime minister by calling him perupia or duplicate soon after jdu's uh, lalan singh made a derogatory remark against prime minister bjp came down heavily on its former ally jdu has and called the party chief's remark shameful and said it showcased the extreme arrogance of the feudal mindset chhota karyakarta hota to main jawab hi nahi deta उनके वो राष्ट्रीय अध्यक्ष हैं इट इज ए फ्यूडल माइंड सेट मिस्टर प्रकाश फुल ऑफ एरोगेंस अहंकार पूरा है अच्छा है देश ने बहुतों का अहंकार खत्म किया है ललन बाबू जदयू का भी खत्म करेंगे The DMK today staged a protest against the parliamentary committee's recommendation to make Hindi the medium of instruction in central educational institutes. The DMK's a showdown came after Tamil Nadu CM And DMK chief MK Stalin wrote to the central government and warned against the imposition of the Hindi language. A major crackdown against the terror supporters in Jammu and Kashmir. Jammu and Kashmir Lieutenant Governor Manoj Sinha's administration today terminated five government employees for their links with the various terrorist outfits. In a mega crackdown on West Bengal SSC recruitment scam, the Enforcement Directorate today Saturday has now raided Manik uh, Bhattacharya's close aid, Tapas Mandal's residence there in North 24 Parganas. The investigation agency has also reportedly raided Manik Bhattacharya's offices in um, other areas where young college students were allegedly trained as teachers. Massive fire breaks out at a plastic warehouse in Russia's Yekaterinburg. Cloud of black smoke surrounded Russia's plastic warehouse. This comes in the backdrop of Russia-Ukraine war which continues to escalate. Visuals on your screen shows firefighters deployed at the incident site continuously putting an effort to douse the massive fire. In what comes as a relief, no casualties have been reported at the fire site. Massive fire engulfs warehouse in Russia completely. Agency report for Republic TV. Viewers, AI MIM leader Shaukat Ali's comment against Hindu women has drawn the ire of BJP, who has demanded answers from the party chief OAC. Drawing a comparison, Shaukat allegedly said that Hindus marry one but have three mistresses. An FIR has been registered against the leader. Here is the full story. In a fresh controversy, Asaduddin OAC's AI MIM UP chief Shaukat Ali made a controversial remark. on hindu marriage at a rally in up's sambhal he said that even if muslims have two marriages they give respect to both wives in society 
but Hindus marry one and have three mistresses and neither respect the wife nor the mistress. Later on, this Neta went on to justify his statements by saying that he did not say anything unconstitutional or related to any other religion. आपको मालूम है कि आज से पांच दिन पहले दिल्ली के अंदर एक साधु ने बीएचपी का प्रोग्राम था उसमें कहा कि मुसलमानों को चुन चुन करके मारा मारना है ये चौदह शादियां करते हैं चालीस बच्चे पैदा करते हैं तो मैंने इंडिविजुअल उसको ये कहा था कि मुसलमान कोई गाजर मूली नहीं है कि आप उसको काट करके फेंक देंगे और दूसरी चीज़ मैंने उसके बयान पर ही ये बात कही थी कि जो ये कह रहे हैं कि हम हम अगर दो शादी भी करते हैं तो शादियों में हम दोनों बीवी को सम्मान देते हैं दोनों के बच्चे को अपना बच्चा समझते हैं लेकिन वो लोग जो लोग एक एक से एक शादी तो करते हैं लेकिन तीन पत्नियां इनकी अलग से रहती हैं लेकिन समाज में उसको छुपाते हैं तो वो गलत है या हम गलत हैं नाउ देर हैज बीन नो कमेंट और एक्शन अगेंस्ट शौकत अली फ्रॉम ए आई but police have registered an fir against the aimim leader for his inciting comments against hindus meanwhile the bjp has trained its guns at aimim chief asaduddin owaisi for the comments made by his party leaders the congress meanwhile has called aimim the b team of the bjp and said the controversy was orchestrated bureau report republic tv Shubham Garg's family has been granted a visa to visit Australia. Now, the Indian was repeatedly stabbed in Sydney as a result of an alleged hate crime. 1950, we are the largest economy in Asia. From 1950 to 1980, we grew at 3.5 percent a year. Population grew at 2.5 percent. Per capita income one percent a year because of Nehru's failed policy. Nehru made sure that we became poorer in 1980 than 1950. This is all data, not politics. 1980 to 1990, we grew at 5.5 percent, population 2.25 percent, but debt grew from 20 billion dollars in 90 in 1981 to 80 billion dollars, and we are broke by 91. In 91, because private capital was suppressed by Nehru because of his dalliance with the Soviet model and the Fabian School, and you know his disdain for business. 1991 GDP was 275 billion. 2022, we reached 3.15 trillion. We grew at 8.2 percent. A year in dollar terms for 31 years is incredible. In 2014, Shahzad GDP was 113 lakh crores. In 2022, it was 236 lakh crores, and this year we're supposed to go to 276 lakh crores. So am I optimistic? I lived through the last 30 years. I seen the rise of this country. I seen what people can do. I seen that 108 unicorns. I seen a trillion dollars of value in the digital market. I seen the rise of Sanjeev. What would you want? If I'm not optimistic with all this, what do you want? Come on, give me a break. Legislature Barack Arbe, a member of the opposition Republican People's Party, smashed a smartphone with a hammer while addressing Parliament, saying the clampdown on social media would make smartphone obsolete. Critics fear that as elections loom, the measure will be used to further crack down on social media and independent reporting. The 40 article legislation was approved with the vote of president governing party and its nationalist allies which together hold a majority in the parliament. Agency report Republic TV. Day on the Bombay High Court acquitting GN Sai Baba. Now Solicitor General Tushar Mehta is reported to have maintained that the acquittal was not on the basis of merit but for lack of Top headlines right now: Economic fugitive weaponizes foreign media to target Modi government with a four-page ad in Wall Street Journal. Kashmiri Pandit Puran Bhatta shot dead by Pakistan-backed terrorists in Shopia. 
Protests erupt across Kashmir over a wave of targeted killings. Demand grows for justice. Kerala police take accused to the crime scene as probe into the occult murder deepens. AI MIM leader Koron Tape abusing Hindus police take cognizance of his rant. Two youths from Arunachal Pradesh reported missing family suspects they have crossed the NAC. Viewers, you are watching Republic TV, India's number one news channel. I'm Shivangi Shokla. Let's start with the first story. In another incident of the terror attack on locals in the Kashmir rally, a Kashmiri pundit was shot in Jammu and Kashmir Shopia district. The deceased has been identified as Puran Bhatt. Now, the attack on the civilian was carried out after the security forces conducted two anti-terror operations in which four terrorists were neutralized. Here's a full story. A little past noon on Saturday, Puran Bhatt was shot dead by terrorists outside his house while he was heading towards his apple orchard. In the, at the time of the instance said that police deployment is there at his residence of the Kashmiri Pandit and he has also now confirmed the news that yes the police deployment is there and Sujit Kumar said that the action will not only be on police deployment who were guarding the residence of the Kashmiri Pandit my VJ if your mobile share is showing you the visuals and this is the exact spot the visuals of the, the spot that are coming in that this is the spot where he was targeted by the terrorists this uh, spot is just for not even two to three meters away from his residence where he was targeted so we can say that he was targeted in his residence kashmiri uh, kashmiri pandit ko puran ji ko mara gaya hai aur is pe aapko pata hi hai ki tff ne isko claim kiya hai lekin hamari aur se ab hamari aur se abhi abhi kuch bhi sure hum log apni aur se nahi bolenge People from across Shopian mourned the death of Kashmiri Pandit Puran Bhatt. The show of unity at his funeral was a stinging response to the terrorists. Uh, today early morning at 11.30 he got a shot here. Oh. And there, when we came here there was blood here also, here also. Oh. And by that time he was taken to hospital and we are coming to know from TV serials TV that he is he is killed he is dead hum soch rahe the thoda sa hi lagi hogi shayad bach jayega bechara but message aaya ki wo to hai nahi this is the residence where he was staying with his family this is the ancestral house he is survived by wife kids one daughter and one son the entire village is mourning the death of bablu they used to call him for family he was poor kishan but who preferred to stay back when the kashmiri pandits in 90s were migrating or when target killing started again in the kashmir valley his family in jammu is distraught over the targeted killing in kashmir the unfortunate incident that has unfolded in the south kashmir where the terrorists have targeted a kashmiri pandit a minority that was living in the kashmir valley even uh, after the exodus that has taken place in 1990 he chose not to leave the kashmir valley and was working there right now we are outside his jammu residence and the senior officials of the jammu and kashmir police uh, they are here to console the family members the divisional commissioner and other officials uh, along with the adg jammu they are here The murder of Puran Bhatt is the fifth targeted killing in the valley in the last 5 months and the anger is spilling on the streets. Kashmiri pundits blocked the Sheikhpura Budgam road and held protest rallies in Jammu demanding justice. We have to do something substantive on ground. If you cannot protect us, the government should give us arms should train us and not simply feed us to the wolves in kashmir to keep this pretense of normalcy going despite the anger over the wave of targeted killings in jammu and kashmir mehbooba mufti continues to question the forces aaj 30 35 saal ke baad usko nishana banaya gaya jabki yahan itni security hai itni army hai itne forces hain लोगों को जेलों में डाला जाता है हाइब्रिड मिलिटेंट के नाम पे 
लोगों को मुलाजमतों से निकाला जाता है शक की बुनियाद पे और उसके बावजूद बीजेपी नाकाम हो गई है यहाँ के जो हमारे रहे कुछ कश्मीरी पंडित बचे हुए थे उनको हिफाजत देने में With the rise in targeted killings in the valley, it is now time to go all out against Pakistan-backed terrorists in Kashmir. Bureau Report, Republic TV. There was a joint action committee staged a rally for uh, the decentralisation and three capitals with the support of the YSR CP organised uh, rally from Ambedkar statue to the YSR statue. Here is the full story. Amid the ongoing roar over three capital in the state of Andhra Pradesh, now we see that a large number of people gathered in a massive rally, which was being led by the Joint Action Committee and also along with the YSRCP leaders. Many people joined the rally in support of three capital, and also we have been seeing that this rally was named as Vishaka Garjana and. Also, they have been seeing and demanding that now Vishakhapatnam should be the executive capital, as the Jagan Mohan Reddy-led government in the state of Andhra Pradesh has the, has put forth the proposal for the three capital, which is Vishakhapatnam as executive capital, Amravati as the legislative capital, and Karnul as the judicial capital. But we also see that the opposition parties in the state of Andhra Pradesh have been demanding that this three capital should be withdrawn, and also at the same. Same time that the Telugu Desam Party leaders have been stating that Jagan Mohan Reddy is putting the Vishakhapatnam as executive capital only to do land grabbing. A four-page advertisement has been published in the Wall Street Journal against Indian ministers and key officers of the central government. Senior advisor to Ministry of Information and Broadcasting, Kanchan Gupta, has tweeted that the mastermind behind this advertisement is Rama Chandra Vishwanathan. Who was the CEO of Devas? Now, Vishnu Martin was declared a fugitive economic offender in India, and India's Supreme Court also ruled that Devas was involved in corruption. Here's the full story. On October 13th, this full-page advertisement was published in a U.S.-based newspaper, Wall Street Journal. The truth about the advertisement is now becoming clear. The senior advisor to the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting, Kanchan Gupta, has revealed that the mastermind of the advertisement is Ramachandran Vishwanathan, former CEO of Devas, an economic offender in India. The owner of the country, uh, he is uh, Vishwanathan uh, Ramachandran Vishwanathan. So the CEO of the company or the owner of the company. He is a fugitive from Indian law. He has been declared a, a, a fugitive economic offender, and uh, uh, that's it. I mean, uh, uh, Devas Multimedia uh, had tried to con uh, Isro's commercial wing Antrix by entering into a fraudulent agreement. First, we have to understand who's this uh, Ramachandra Vishwanathan. He's uh, CEO of. He was CEO of uh, Devas. Uh, and uh, you know the Devas Antriksh scam and the manner in which uh, right up to the Supreme Court uh, Devas lost uh, essentially making Ramachandra Vishwanathan an economic offender and a fugitive of law insofar as India is concerned under the economic uh, fugitives uh, law that we have uh, brought in by the present government. Uh, Ramachandran has pleaded with the US government to impose visa and economic sanctions against 11 Indians, which includes ministers and government officials. American media, the Wall Street Journal in this case, before that New York Times mocking uh, India's space achievements, achievements of uh, ISRO or uh, for that matter Washington Post, which very routinely uh, provides uh, its platform uh, for anti-India sentiments to be strongly ex ex expressed uh, or uh, for, for India bashing. As the Indian economy gets stronger and with the decline of the American economy, the pattern of such an advertisement cannot be missed. See, the, what America has done in the last two, two decades is to co-opt the world economy into the American financial system. It has co-opted the world monetary order into the American monetary order. It was its strength and that is becoming the weakness also today. 
so with so much dollars outside america and america printing more dollars and america exporting more dollars to import and with no other mechanism to control inflation they have to do it even more they are now caught in a situation from which it is i am talking about economically to get out of this america has to hugely reduce its standard of living with the facts now out the deep anti india network has been exposed bureau report republic tv We was the art of living along with World Forum for Ethics and Business organized a 6th World Summit on Ethics and Leadership in Sports on 13th to 14th October where great emphasis was laid to how sports should be played and looked at. The Art of Living Foundation along with World Forum for Ethics in Business organized the 6th World Summit on Ethics and Leadership in Sports in Bengaluru. The summit at a time when India is making global progress in athletics and its performance at global events. The two-day event saw the participation of Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, Minister of Law and Justice Kiran Rijiju, 25-time international billiard and snooker world champion Pankaj Advani among other speakers. While Sri Sri Ravi Shankar stressed on how players should play with a sense of responsibility, sports is that some which unites people beyond language. Bhasha ke pare, deshon ke pare, ham sab ko jodta, koi cheez jodta hai to wo khel. Aur khel khud ko humare desh mein humne जैसे आपने बताया किरण जी ने कि सीरियसली नहीं लेते इफ यू डोंट टेक सीरियसली द गेम्स देन नो वन टेक इट एज ए करियर एंड मेंटल हेल्थ विल ओनली कीप पीपल ऑन द ट्रैक ऑफ एथिक्स एंड हियर व्हेन यू फॉलो एथिक्स यू आर टेकिंग द गेम बोथ सीरियसली एंड नॉट सो सीरियस व्हाट इज एथिक्स एथिक्स इज दैट फॉर you don't want others to do to you you should not do to others union minister kiran rijiju emphasized on the need to bring sports culture in the country our sporting history goes back to ancient time but over the years the evolvement of the society did not bring sports culture in our country to the extent we would desire It is very important to have the sports culture in any society. Billiard and snooker world champion Pankaj Advani called for sports persons to respect the opponent. I believe that FIR can also stand for fairness, fair play, integrity and respect in the world of sport. So my um appeal to you is to uh, ignore that FIR stands for first information report and uh, to uh um believe that we actually can play sport um you know to fair play to integrity to res- to to respect respect not only for our sport respect for our opponents respect for uh the audience respect for the rules the summit sought a road map to use fair and clean sports as a tool to unite people in a post pandemic world riddled by conflict economic crisis and mental health issues The summit proceedings also featured the announcement of the Ethics in Sports Awards 2022, a prize that recognizes the outstanding individuals and organizations that have demonstrated the importance of human values and ethics in life and in the sports arena. The winners of this year included FC Union Berlin for outstanding organization, Anja Hammersing Eden for promotion of mental health in sports, Kiran Rajiju for outstanding contribution to sports and Sandeep Singh for resilience in sports indeed the time is ripe for a sports revolution and more importantly it's time we change how we play the game with ethics and leadership bureau report republic tv let's put our hands together what a wonderful morning
टॉप नेशनल अपडेट यूनियन होम मिनिस्टर अमित शाह रिलीज द बीजेपी सिलेक्शन थीम सॉन्ग हिमाचल की पुकार फिर बीजेपी सरकार थीम सॉन्ग हैज बीन रिलीज ड्यूरिंग द पोल कैंपेन विद चीफ मिनिस्टर जयराम ठाकुर After sparking a row by calling the PM duplicate, JDU National President Lalan Singh has refused to apologize. He further slammed the BJP MP Ravi Shankar Prasad for buttering the PM to be in his good books after getting sidelined. A boat carrying Bihar CM Nitish Kumar collided with an under construction pillar of the JP Setu Bridge. This happened while he was inspecting the arrangements of the Chhat Ghat situated on the bank of the river Ganga. All on board the boat, including the CM, are safe. Trouble keeps mounting for TMC MLA Manik Bhattacharya as ED raided the residence of his close aide in connection with the SSC scam case. Bhattacharya himself was arrested by the central agency on October 11th. NCJ Farooq Abdullah, PDP Chief Mehbooba Mufti, and other members of the People's Alliance for the Gupkar Declaration met over the Jammu and Kashmir issue at Farooq Abdullah's residence in Srinagar. Haryana government granted 40 days parole to rape convict Gurmeet Ram Rahim Singh. The self-styled government currently facing 20 years of jail time allowed to come out of the jail there in Rohtak. The Indian women's cricket team made the country proud. They were crowned the Asia Cup champions after convincingly decimating Sri Lanka in the final played there at the cricket stadium in Bangladesh. Rahul Gandhi launches a stinging attack at BJP government's center in Karnataka during his speech during the Bharat Jodo Yatra. Former Congress president raised the matter of commission for jobs under the Bombay administration. AIMIM's uh, UP President Shaukat Ali sparked religious row after making hateful comments about polygamy among the Hindus. He said Hindus keep mistresses while addressing a gathering there in UP. US President Joe Biden uh, sensationally labeled Pakistan as one of the most dangerous nations in the world. He further noted that the country has nuclear weapons without any cohesion. Two Arunachal Pradesh youth have gone missing after they went out in the search of the plants which can contain medicinal properties at a place near the state's border with China. The family members of the missing youth have alleged the Chinese army role in the incident. Here is a full report. Two youths from Arunachal Pradesh have reportedly gone missing from the line of actual control. These youths from the Anjao district of Arunachal Pradesh have reportedly been missing from near the LAC area. They have been identified as Batelum Tikro and Baing So Manu. As per the details shared with the police, the youths travelled to Changlagam area in search of medicinal herbs on August 19th and haven't returned since. Although the family is desperately searching for the youths, they have failed to gather details of their whereabouts. Fellow villagers who were close to the LSE saw them last on August 24th. The brother and relative of the missing youth, the Shansa Chikro, has been fighting to find his loved ones. As Republic reports from Ground Zero, the relatives of the two missing youths spoke exclusively to Republic. 19 of August 2022 को मेरे घर के घर के एक परिवार, मेरे घर के भैया और मेरा गांव के कजन भैया दोनों किसी मेडिसिनल हर्ब के तलाश में जाना जाता है जारी बुटिया उसके तलाश में बाहरों के तरफ निकल गए जो आज तक वापस लौट के नहीं आया द फैमिली सस्पेक्ट्स दैट दे माइट हैव क्रॉस द एलएसी एंड पीएलएम मे हैव डिटेन्ड देम द रिलेटिव्स हैव अपील टू द स्टेट एंड द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट टू टेक इमीडिएट एक्शन द इंडियन आर्मी इज आल्सो कीपिंग अ क्लोज वॉच कीपिंग द लाइंस ओपन विद द पीएलए इफ नीडेड The family suspect that they mistakenly crossed over to the Chinese territory, following which the PLA has taken them into custody. Meanwhile, the family members of Batelam Tikro has lodged a missing complaint with the Anzao police and have also appealed the Indian Army for intervention. They have also seek assistance from the state government and the centre to ensure a safe return of. 
the youth. With video journalist Asok, I am Anirudh Abhakat and this is Republic Media Network. Top updates, uh, viewers, in another terror attack on locals in the Kashmir Valley, a Kashmiri pundit was attacked in Jammu and Kashmir, Shopia district. According to the reports, the victim succumbed to his injuries after he was shot at by the terrorists outside his residence. हम यहाँ थे बाग में थे तो पीछे से पता चला कि किसी की किसी को गोली मारी गई तो हम दौड़ते आ गए यहाँ पे तो यहाँ देखा यहाँ खून गिरा था यहाँ खून गिरा था और जब हम देखने लगे तो तब तक उसको अपना भतीजा ले गया था भाई पे अस्पताल में तो वहाँ से फिर वो एम्बुलेंस पे शायद शुपियान ले गए तो फैमिली क्या है इस फैमिली इसकी दो बच्चे हैं छोटे एक लड़की है बड़ी और एक लड़का है उसका भाई भी इधर है एक बच्चे फिफ्थ में पढ़ता है और बच्ची शायद सातवीं में पढ़ती है तो यानी घर घर में इनमें इनका सब कुछ घर में ही था इनका कोई नौकरी वोकरी नहीं है कुछ नहीं है चल हम तो था यहीं पे बाग बगी चक्कर बेचारा घर से भी बाहर नहीं निकला इन दिनों वो अंदर ही बैठता डर डर लग रहा है बहुत डर लगता है बहुत डर लगता है ISRO's heaviest rocket uh, will launch the UK startup OneWeb's 36 broadband satellites from the spaceport in Andhra Pradesh, Sri Harikota, on October 23rd, marking the launcher's entry into the global commercial launch service market. Samadhi Party Chief Gopal Italia made a caste slur against Prime Minister Modi. The Janta Dal United Chief now has now made a derogatory remark against the Prime Minister by calling him Perupia or Duplicate. Soon after JDU's uh, Lalan Singh made a derogatory remark against Prime Minister, BJP came down heavily on its former ally JDU has, and called the party chief's remark shameful and said it showcased the extreme arrogance of the feudal mindset. उनके वो राष्ट्रीय अध्यक्ष हैं। It is a feudal mindset, Mr. Prakash, full of arrogance, अहंकार पूरा है। अच्छा है। देश ने बहुतों का अहंकार खत्म किया है। ललन बाबू जदयू का भी खत्म करेंगे। The DMK today staged a protest against the Parliamentary Committee's recommendation to make Hindi the medium of instruction in central educational institutes. The DMK's showdown came after Tamil Nadu CM. And DMK chief MK Stalin wrote to the central government and warned against the imposition of the Hindi language. A major crackdown against the terror supporters in Jammu and Kashmir. Jammu and Kashmir Lieutenant Governor Manoj Sinha's administration today terminated five government employees for their links with the various terrorist outfits. In a mega crackdown on West Bengal SSC recruitment scam, the Enforcement Directorate today, Saturday, has now raided. Manik uh, Bhattacharya's close aide, Tapas Mandal's residence there in North 24 Parganas. The investigation agency has also reportedly raided Manik Bhattacharya's offices in um, other areas where young college students were allegedly trained as teachers. Massive fire breaks out at a plastic warehouse in Russia's Yekaterinburg. Cloud of black smoke surrounded Russia's plastic warehouse. This comes in the backdrop of Russia Ukraine war, which continues to escalate. Visuals on your screen show as firefighters deployed at the incident site, continuously putting an effort to douse the massive fire. In what comes as a relief, no casualties have been reported at the fire site. Massive fire engulfs warehouse in Russia completely. Agency report for Republic TV. Viewers, AI MIM leader Shokat Ali's comment against Hindu women has drawn the ire of BJP who has demanded answers from the party chief OAC. Drawing a comparison, Shokat allegedly said that Hindus marry one but have three mistresses. NFIR has been registered against the leader. Here's the full story. In a fresh controversy, Asaduddin OAC's AI MIM UP chief Shokat Ali made a controversial remark on Hindu marriage at a rally in UP's Sambhal. He said that even if Muslims have two marriages, they give respect to both wives in society. 
but Hindus marry one and have three mistresses and neither respect the wife nor the mistress. Later on, this Neta went on to justify his statements by saying that he did not say anything unconstitutional or related to any other religion. आपको मालूम है कि आज से पांच दिन पहले दिल्ली के अंदर एक साधु ने बीएसपी का प्रोग्राम था उसमें कहा कि मुसलमानों को चुन चुन करके मारा मारना है ये चौदह शादियां करते हैं चालीस बच्चे पैदा करते हैं तो मैंने इंडिविजुअल उसको ये कहा था कि मुसलमान कोई गाजर मूली नहीं है कि आप उसको काट करके फेंक देंगे और दूसरी चीज मैंने उसके बयान पर ही ये बात कही थी कि जो ये कह रहे हैं कि हम हम अगर दो शादी भी करते हैं तो शादियों में हम दोनों बीवी को सम्मान देते हैं दोनों के बच्चे को अपना बच्चा समझते हैं लेकिन वो लोग जो लोग एक एक से एक शादी तो करते हैं लेकिन तीन पत्नियां इनकी अलग से रहती हैं लेकिन समाज में उसको छुपाते हैं तो वो गलत है या हम गलत हैं नाउ देर हैज बीन नो कमेंट और एक्शन अगेंस्ट शौकत अली फ्रॉम ए आई but police have registered an fir against the aimim leader for his inciting comments against hindus meanwhile the bjp has trained its guns at aimim chief asaduddin owaisi for the comments made by his party leaders the congress meanwhile has called aimim the b team of the bjp and said the controversy was orchestrated bureau report republic tv Legislature Barack Arbe, a member of the opposition Republican People's Party, smashed a smartphone with a hammer while addressing Parliament, saying the clampdown on social media would make smartphone obsolete. Critics fear that as elections loom, the measure will be used to further crack down on social media and independent reporting. The 40 article legislation was approved with the vote of president governing party and its nationalist allies which together hold a majority in the parliament. Agency report Republic TV. A on the Bombay High Court acquitting GN Sai Baba. Now Solicitor General Tushar Mehta is reported to have maintained that the acquittal was not on the basis of merit but for lack of appropriate sanction to prosecute him under the provisions of the UAPA. ये जो फैसला आया है ये बहुत ही दुर्दैवी है बहुत ही निराशाजनक है क्योंकि टेक्निकल ग्राउंड्स पर इस प्रकार से ऐसे व्यक्ति को छोड़ देना जिसके खिलाफ इतने सबूत हैं जिन्होंने एक प्रकार से ये फैसले के कारण जो हमारे पुलिस नक्सलवादियों से लड़ते हुए शहीद हुए उनके घर वालों के ऊपर इससे क्या बीतती होगी इसका विचार मैं बार बार कर रहा हूँ हम सर्वोच्च न्यायालय गए हैं सुप्रीम कोर्ट गए हैं और मेरा विश्वास है कि सुप्रीम कोर्ट में न्याय मिलेगा A 21-year-old college student was allegedly molested by an auto rickshaw driver and dragged with a vehicle in Maharashtra Thane. Now a video of the incident that took place in the city around 6:45 a.m. surfaced on social media. The national president of JDU hit out at Prime Minister Modi calling him extremely backward and a facade. Now JDU president Lalan Singh further stated that the PM had been spreading his conservative mindset since he came to power. Shubham Garg's family has been granted a visa to visit Australia. Now the Indian was repeatedly stabbed in Sydney as a result of an alleged hate crime. 1950 we are the largest economy in asia from 1950 to 1980 we grew at 3 top headline
Israel's Retina Economica fugitive weaponizes foreign media to target Modi government with a full page ad in Wall Street Journal. Kashmiri Pandit Puran Bhatta shot dead by Pakistan backed terrorists in Shopia. Protests erupt across Kashmir over a wave of targeted killings. Demand grows for justice. Kerala police take accused to the crime scene as probe into the occult murder deepens. AI MIM leader Korontev abusing Hindus police take cognizance of his rant. Two youth from Arunachal Pradesh reported missing family suspects they have crossed the LAC. Viewers, you are watching Republic TV, India's number one news channel. I'm Shivangi Shukla. Let's start with the first story. In another incident of the terror attack on locals in the Kashmir rally, a Kashmiri pundit was shot in Jammu and Kashmir Shopia district. The deceased has been identified as Puran Bhatt. Now, the attack on the civilian was carried out after the security forces conducted two anti-terror operations in which four terrorists were neutralized. Here's a full story. A little past noon on Saturday, Puran Bhatt was shot dead by terrorists outside his house while he was heading towards his apple orchard. In the, at the time of the instance said that police deployment is there at his residence of the Kashmiri Pandit and he has also now confirmed the news that yes, the police deployment is there and Sujit Kumar said that the action will not only be on police deployment who were guarding the residence of the Kashmiri Pandit. My Vijay Mubashir is showing you the visuals and this is the exact spot, the visuals of the, the spot that are coming in that this is the spot where he was targeted by the terrorists. This uh, spot is just for not even two to three meters away from his residence where he was targeted so we can say that he was targeted in his residence kashmiri uh, kashmiri pandit ko puran ji ko mara gaya hai aur is pe aapko pata hi hai ki tff ne isko claim kiya hai lekin hamari aur se ab hamari aur se abhi abhi kuch bhi sure hum log apni aur se nahi bolenge People from across Shopian mourned the death of Kashmiri Pandit Puran Bhatt. The show of unity at his funeral was a stinging response to the terrorists. Uh, today early morning at 11.30 he got a shot here. Oh. And there, when we came here there was blood here also, here also. Oh. And by that time he was taken to hospital and we are coming to know from TV serials, TV, that he is, he is killed, he is dead. We were thinking that it will be a little bit, it will be a little bit, it will be a little bit. This is the residence where he was staying with his family, this is the ancestral house, he is survived by wife kids, one daughter and one son. The entire village is mourning the death of Bablu. They used to call him for family. He was poor Kishan, but who preferred to stay back when the Kashmiri Pandits in 90s were migrating or when target killing started again in the Kashmir Valley. His family in Jammu is distraught over the targeted killing in Kashmir. The unfortunate incident that has unfolded in the South Kashmir where the terrorists have targeted a Kashmiri Pandit, a minority that was living in the Kashmir Valley even uh, after the exodus that has taken place in 1990. He chose not to leave the Kashmir Valley and was working there. Right now we are outside his Jammu residence and the senior officials of the Jammu and Kashmir police, uh, they are here to console the family members, the divisional commissioner and other officials uh, along with the ADG Jammu. They are here. The murder of Puran Bhatt is the fifth targeted killing in the valley in the last five months. And the anger is spilling on the streets. Kashmiri pundits blocked the Sheikh Pura Budgam Road and held protest rallies in Jammu demanding justice. We have to do something substantive on ground. If you cannot protect us, the government should give us arms should train us and not simply feed us to the wolves in Kashmir to keep this pretense of normalcy going.
despite the anger over the wave of targeted killings in Jammu and Kashmir. Mehbooba Mufti continues to question the forces. लोगों को जेलों में डाला जाता है हाइब्रिड मिलिटेंट के नाम पे लोगों को मुलाजमतों से निकाला जाता है शक की बुनियाद पे और उसके बावजूद बीजेपी नाकाम हो गई यहां के जो हमारे रहे कुछ कश्मीरी पंडित बचे हुए थे उनको हिफाजत देने में विद द राइज इन टारगेटेड किलिंग्स इन द वैली इट इज नाउ टाइम टू गो ऑल आउट अगेंस्ट पाकिस्तान बैक टेररिस्ट इन कश्मीर ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट रिपब्लिक टीवी It was a joint action committee stage a rally for uh, the decentralization and three capitals with the support of the YSR CP organized uh, rally from Ambedkar statue to the YSR statue. Here's the full story. Amid the ongoing roar over three capital in the state of Andhra Pradesh, now we see that a large number of people gathered in a massive rally, which was being led by the Joint Action Committee and also along with the YSR CP leaders. Many people joined the rally in support of three capital, and also we have been seeing that this rally was named as Vishaka Garjana and. Also, they have been seeing and demanding that now Vishakhapatnam should be the executive capital, as the Jagan Mohan Reddy-led government in the state of Andhra Pradesh has the, has put forth the proposal for the three capital, which is Vishakhapatnam as executive capital, Amravati as the legislative capital, and Karnul as the judicial capital. But we also see that the opposition parties in the state of Andhra Pradesh have been demanding that this three capital should be withdrawn, and also at the same. Same time that the Telugu Desam Party leaders have been stating that Jagan Mohan Reddy is putting the Vishakhapatnam as executive capital only to do land grabbing. A four-page advertisement has been published in the Wall Street Journal against Indian ministers and key officers of the central government. Senior advisor to Ministry of Information and Broadcasting Kanchan Gupta has tweeted that the mastermind behind this advertisement is Rama Chandra Vishwanathan. Who was the CEO of Devas? Now, Vishnu Martin was declared a fugitive economic offender in India, and India's Supreme Court also ruled that Devas was involved in corruption. Here's the full story. On October 13th, this full-page advertisement was published in a U.S.-based newspaper, Wall Street Journal. The truth about the advertisement is now becoming clear. The senior advisor to the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting, Kanchan Gupta, has revealed that the mastermind of the advertisement is Ramachandran Vishwanathan, former CEO of Devas, an economic offender in India. The owner of the country, uh, he is uh, Vishwanathan uh, Ramachandran Vishwanathan. So the CEO of the company or the owner of the company. He is a fugitive from Indian law. He has been declared a, a, a fugitive economic offender, and uh, uh, that's it. I mean, uh, uh, Devas Multimedia uh, had tried to con uh, Isro's commercial wing Antrik by entering into a fraudulent agreement. First, we have to understand who's this uh, Ramachandra Vishwanathan. He's uh, CEO of. He was CEO of uh, Devas. Uh, and uh, you know the Devas Antriksh scam and the manner in which uh, right up to the Supreme Court uh, Devas lost uh, uh, essentially making Ramachandra Vishwanathan an economic offender and a fugitive of law insofar as India is concerned under the economic uh, fugitives uh, law that we have uh, brought in by the present government. Uh, Ramachandran has pleaded with the U.S. government to impose visa and economic sanctions against 11 Indians, which includes ministers and government officials. American media, the Wall Street Journal in this case, before that New York Times mocking uh, India's space achievements, achievements of uh, ISRO, or uh, for that matter Washington Post, which very routinely uh, provides uh, its platform uh, for anti-India sentiments to be strongly ex ex expressed uh, or uh, for, for India bashing. As the Indian economy gets stronger and with the decline of the American economy, the pattern of such an advertisement cannot be missed.
see the what america has done in the last two decades is to co-opt the world economy into the financial system it has co-opted the world monetary order into the american monetary order it was its strength and that is becoming the weakness also today so with so much dollars outside america and america printing more dollars and america exporting more dollars to import and with no other mechanism to control inflation they have to do it even more they are now caught in a situation from which it is i am talking about economically to get out of this america has to hugely reduce its standard of with the facts now out the deep anti india network has been exposed bureau report republic tv We was the art of living along with World Forum for Ethics in Business organized a 6th World Summit on Ethics and Leadership in Sports on 13th to 14th October where great emphasis was laid to how sports should be played and looked at. The Art of Living Foundation along with World Forum for Ethics in Business organized the 6th World Summit on Ethics and Leadership in Sports in Bengaluru. The summit at a time when India is making global progress in athletics and its performance at global events. The two-day event saw the participation of Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, Minister of Law and Justice Kiran Rijiju, 25-time international billiard and snooker world champion Pankaj Advani among other speakers. While Sri Sri Ravi Shankar stressed on how players should play with a sense of responsibility, sports is that some which unites people beyond language. Bhasha ke pare, deshon ke pare, ham sab ko jodta, koi cheez jodta hai to wo khel. Aur khel khud ko hamare desh mein hamne जैसे आपने बताया किरण जी ने कि सीरियसली नहीं लेते इफ यू डोंट टेक सीरियसली द गेम्स देन नो वन टेक इट एज ए करियर एंड मेंटल हेल्थ विल ओनली कीप पीपल ऑन द ट्रैक ऑफ एथिक्स एंड हियर व्हेन यू फॉलो एथिक्स यू आर टेकिंग द गेम बोथ सीरियसली एंड नॉट सो सीरियस वॉट इज एथिक्स एथिक्स इज दैट फॉर you don't want others to do to you you should not do to others union minister kiran rijiju emphasized on the need to bring sports culture in the country our sporting history goes back to ancient time but over the years the evolvement of the society did not bring sports culture in our country to the extent we would desire It is very important to have the sports culture in any society. Billiard and snooker world champion Pankaj Advani calls for sports persons to respect the opponent. I believe that FIR can also stand for fairness, fair play, integrity and respect in the world of sport. So my um appeal to you is to uh, ignore that FIR stands for first information report and uh, to uh, um believe that we actually can play sport um you know through fair play through integrity through, through through respect respect not only for our sport respect for our opponents respect for uh the audience respect for the rules the summit sought a road map to use fair and clean sports as a tool to unite people in a post pandemic world riddled by conflict economic crisis and mental health issues The summit proceedings also featured the announcement of the Ethics in Sports Awards 2022, a prize that recognizes the outstanding individuals and organizations that have demonstrated the importance of human values and ethics in life and in the sports arena. The winners of this year included FC Union Berlin for outstanding organization, Anja Hammersing Eden for promotion of mental health in sports, Kiran Rajiju for outstanding contribution to sports and Sandeep Singh for resilience in sports indeed the time is ripe for a sports revolution 
and more importantly, it's time we change how we play the game. With ethics and leadership. Bureau Report, Republic TV. Let's put our hands together. What a wonderful morning. Top National Update, Union Home Minister Amit Shah released the BJP selection theme song, Himachal Ki Pukar, Fir BJP Sarkar. The theme song has been released during the poll campaign with Chief Minister Jairam Thakur. After sparking a row by calling the PM duplicated, JDU National President Lalan Singh has refused to apologize. He further slammed the BJP MP Ravi Shankar Prasad for buttering the PM to be in his good books after getting sidelined. A boat carrying Bihar CM Nitish Kumar collided with an under construction pillar of the JP Setu Bridge. This happened while he was inspecting the arrangements of the Chhat Ghat situated on the bank of the river Ganga. All on board the boat, including the CM, are safe. Trouble keeps mounting for TMC MLA. Manik Bhattacharya as ED raided the residence of his close aide in connection with the SSC scam case. Bhattacharya himself was arrested by the central agency on October 11th. NCJ Farooq Abdullah, PDP Chief Mehbooba Mufti and other members of the People's Alliance for the Gupkar Declaration met over the Jammu and Kashmir issue at Farooq Abdullah's residence in Srinagar. Haryana government granted 40 days parole to rape convict Gurmeet Ram Rahim Singh. Self-styled government currently facing 20 years of jail time allowed to come out of the jail there in Rotak. The Indian women's cricket team made the country proud. They were crowned the Asia Cup champions after convincingly decimating Sri Lanka in the final play there at the cricket stadium in Bangladesh. Rahul Gandhi launches a stinging attack at BJP government's centre in Karnataka during his speech. During the Bharat Jori Yatra, former Congress president raised the matter of commission for jobs under the Bumai administration. AIMIM's uh, UP President Shokat Ali sparked religious row after making hateful comments about polygamy among the Hindus. He said Hindus keep mistresses while addressing a gathering there in UP. US President Joe Biden uh, sensationally labeled Pakistan as one of the most dangerous nations in the world. He further noted that the country has nuclear weapons without any cohesion. Two Arunachal Pradesh youth have gone missing after they went out in the search of the plants which can contain medicinal properties at a place near the state's border with China. The family members of the missing youth have alleged the Chinese army role in the incident. Here is a full report. Two youths from Arunachal Pradesh have reportedly gone missing from the line of actual control. These youths from the Anjaw district of Arunachal Pradesh have reportedly been missing from near the LAC area. They have been identified as Batelum Tikro and Baing So Manu. As per the details shared with the police, the youths travelled to Changlagam area in search of medicinal herbs on August 19th and haven't returned since. Although the family is desperately searching for the youths, they have failed to gather details of their whereabouts. Fellow villagers who were close to the LSE saw them last on August 24th. The brother and relative of the missing youth, the Shansa Chikro, has been fighting to find his loved ones. As Republic reports from Ground Zero, the relatives of the two missing youth spoke exclusively to Republic. 19 August 2022, my किसी मेडिसिनल हर्ब के तलाश में जाना जाता है जारी बुतिया के तलाश में पहाड़ों के तरफ निकल गए जो आज तक वापस लौट के नहीं आया The family suspects that they might have crossed the LAC and PLM may have detained them The relatives have appealed to the state and the central government to take immediate action The Indian army is also keeping a close watch keeping the lines open with the PLA if needed the family suspect that they mistakenly crossed over to the Chinese territory following which the PLA has taken them into custody. Meanwhile, the family members of Batalam Tikro 
has lost a missing complaint which the Anzao police and have also appealed the Indian Army for intervention. They have also seek assistance from the state government and the center to ensure a safe return of the youth. With video journalist Asok, I am Anirudh Bhakat and this is Republic Media Network. Top updates are uh, viewers in another terror attack on locals in the Kashmir Valley. A Kashmiri pundit was attacked in Jammu and Kashmir, Shopia district. According to the reports, the victim succumbed to his injuries after he was shot at by the terrorists outside his residence. हम यहाँ थे बाद में थे तो पीछे से पता चला कि किसी की किसी को गोली मारी गई तो हम दौड़ते आ गए यहाँ पे तो यहाँ देखा यहाँ खून गिरा था यहाँ खून गिरा था और जब हम देखने लगे तो तब तक उसको अपना भतीजा ले गया था बाइक पे अस्पताल में तो वहाँ से फिर वो एम्बुलेंस में शायद शुपियान ले गए तो फैमिली क्या है इस फैमिली इसकी दो बच्चे हैं छोटे एक लड़की है बड़ी और एक लड़का है उसका भाई भी इधर है एक बच्चे भी फिफ्थ में पढ़ता है और बच्ची शायद छठवीं में पढ़ती है तो यानी घर घर में इनमें इनका सब कुछ घर में ही था इनका कोई नौकरी वोकरी नहीं है कुछ नहीं है चल हम तो आइट था यहीं पर बाग बगी चक्कर बेचारा घर से भी बाहर नहीं निकला इन दिनों वो अंदर ही बैठता डर डर लग रहा है बहुत डर लग रहा है बहुत डर लगता है ISRO's heaviest rocket uh, will launch the UK startup OneWeb's 36 broadband satellites from the spaceport in Andhra Pradesh, Sri Harikota, on October 23rd, marking the launcher's entry into the global commercial launch service market. Samadhi Party Chief Gopal Italia made a caste slur against Prime Minister Modi. The Janata Dal United Chief now has now made a derogatory remark against the prime minister by calling him perupia or duplicate soon after jdu's uh, lalan singh made a derogatory remark against prime minister bjp came down heavily on its former ally jdu has and called the party chief's remark shameful and said it showcased the extreme arrogance of the feudal mindset chhota karyakarta hota to main jawab hi nahi deta उनके वो राष्ट्रीय अध्यक्ष हैं इट इज ए फ्यूडल माइंड सेट मिस्टर प्रकाश फुल ऑफ एरोगेंस अहंकार पूरा है अच्छा है देश ने बहुतों का अहंकार खत्म किया है ललन बाबू जदयू का भी खत्म करेंगे The DMK today staged a protest against the parliamentary committee's recommendation to make Hindi the medium of instruction in central educational institutes. The DMK's a showdown came after Tamil Nadu CM and DMK chief MK Stalin wrote to the central government and warned against the imposition of the Hindi language. A major crackdown against the terror supporters in Jammu and Kashmir. Jammu and Kashmir Lieutenant Governor Manoj Sinha's administration today terminated five government employees for their links with the various terrorist outfits. In a mega crackdown on West Bengal SSC recruitment scam, the Enforcement Directorate today Saturday has now raided Manik uh, Bhattacharya's close aid, Tapas Mandal's residence there in North 24 Parganas. The investigation agency has also reportedly raided Manik Bhattacharya's offices in um, other areas where young college students were allegedly trained as teachers. Massive fire breaks out at a plastic warehouse in Russia's Yekaterinburg. Cloud of black smoke surrounded Russia's plastic warehouse. This comes in the backdrop of Russia-Ukraine war which continues to escalate. Visuals on your screen shows firefighters deployed at the incident site continuously putting an effort to douse the massive fire. In what comes as a relief, no casualties have been reported at the fire site. Massive fire engulfs warehouse in Russia completely. Agency report for Republic TV. Viewers, AI MIM leader Shaukat Ali's comment against Hindu women has drawn the ire of BJP, who has demanded answers from the party chief OAC. Drawing a comparison, Shaukat allegedly said that Hindus marry one but have three mistresses. NFIR has been registered against the leader. Here is the full story. 
In a fresh controversy, Asaduddin Oasis AIMIM UP chief Shokat Ali made a controversial remark on Hindu marriage at a rally in UP's Sambhal. He said that even if Muslims have two marriages, they give respect to both wives in society. But Hindus marry one and have three mistresses and neither respect the wife nor the mistress. Later on, this Neta went on to justify his statements by saying that he did not say anything unconstitutional or related to any other religion. आपको मालूम है कि आज से पांच दिन पहले दिल्ली के अंदर एक साधु ने बीएचपी का प्रोग्राम था उसमें कहा कि मुसलमानों को चुन चुन करके मारा मारना है ये चौदह शादियां करते हैं चालीस बच्चे पैदा करते हैं तो मैंने इंडिविजुअल उसको ये कहा था कि मुसलमान कोई गाजर मूली नहीं है कि आप उसको काट करके फेंक देंगे और दूसरी चीज़ मैंने उसके बयान पर ही ये बात कही थी कि जो ये कह रहे हैं कि हम हम अगर दो शादी भी करते हैं तो शादियों में हम दोनों बीवी को सम्मान देते हैं दोनों के बच्चे को अपना बच्चा समझते हैं लेकिन वो लोग जो लोग एक एक से एक शादी तो करते हैं लेकिन तीन पत्नियां इनकी अलग से रहती हैं लेकिन समाज में उसको छुपाते हैं तो वो गलत है या हम गलत हैं नाउ देर हैज बीन नो कमेंट और एक्शन अगेंस्ट शौकत अली फ्रॉम ए आई but police have registered an FIR against the AIMIM leader for his inciting comments against Hindus. Meanwhile, the BJP has trained its guns at AIMIM chief Asaduddin Owaisi for the comments made by his party leaders. The Congress, meanwhile, has called AIMIM the B-team of the BJP and said the controversy was orchestrated. Bureau Report, Republic TV. Day on the Bombay High Court acquitting G. N. Sai Baba. Now, Solicitor General Tushar Mehta is reported to have maintained that the acquittal was not on the basis of merit but for lack of appropriate sanction to prosecute him under the provisions of the UAPA. ये जो फैसला आया है, ये बहुत ही दुर्दैवी है, बहुत ही निराशाजनक है, क्योंकि टेक्निकल ग्राउंड्स पर इस प्रकार से ऐसे व्यक्ति को छोड़ देना जिसके खिलाफ इतने सबूत हैं जिन्होंने एक प्रकार से ये फैसले के कारण जो हमारे पुलिस नक्सलवादियों से लड़ते हुए शहीद हुए उनके घर वालों के ऊपर इससे क्या बीतती होगी इसका विचार मैं बार बार कर रहा हूँ हम सर्वोच्च न्यायालय गए हैं सुप्रीम कोर्ट गए हैं और मेरा विश्वास है कि सुप्रीम कोर्ट में न्याय मिलेगा A 21-year-old college student was allegedly molested by an auto rickshaw driver and dragged with a vehicle in Maharashtra Thane. Now, a video of the incident that took place in the city around 6:45 a.m. surfaced on social media. The national president of JDU hit out at Prime Minister Modi, calling him extremely backward and a facade. Now, JDU President Lalan Singh further stated that the PM had been spreading his conservative mindset since he came to power. Shubham Garg's family has been granted a visa to visit Australia. Now, the Indian was repeatedly stabbed in Sydney as a result of an alleged hate crime. 1950, we are the largest economy in Asia. From 1950 to 1980, we grew at 3.5 percent a year. Population grew at 2.5 percent. Per capita income 1 percent a year because of Nehru's failed policy. Nehru made sure that we became poorer in 1980 than 1950. This is all data, not politics. 1980 to 1990, we grew at 5.5 percent. Population 2.25 percent. But debt grew from 20 billion dollars in 90 in 1981. to 80 billion dollars and we are broke by 91 
Top headlines right now, economic uh, fugitive weaponizes foreign media to target Modi government with a full page ad in Wall Street Journal. Kashmiri Pandit uh, Puran Bhatta shot dead by Pakistan-backed terrorists in Shopia. Protests erupt across Kashmir over a wave of targeted killings. Demand grows for justice. Kerala police take accused to the crime scene as probe into the occult murder deepens. AIMIM leader Koron Tev abusing Hindus police take cognizance of his rant. Two youth from Arunachal Pradesh reported missing. Family suspects they have crossed the NAC. Viewers, you are watching Republic TV, India's number one news channel. I'm Shivangi Shokla. Let's start with the first story. In another incident of the terror attack on locals in the Kashmir Rally, a Kashmiri pundit was shot in Jammu and Kashmir Shopia district. The deceased has been identified as Puran Bhatt. Now, the attack on the civilian was carried out after the security forces conducted two anti-terror operations in which four terrorists were neutralized. Here's a full story. A little past noon on Saturday, Puran Bhatt was shot dead by terrorists outside his house while he was heading towards his apple orchard. In the, at the time of the instance said that police deployment is there at his residence of the Kashmiri Pandit and he has also now confirmed the news that yes, the police deployment is there and Sujit Kumar said that the action will not only be on police deployment who were guarding the residence of the Kashmiri Pandit. My VJ Mubashir is showing you the visuals and this is the exact spot, the visuals of the, the spot that are coming in that this is the spot where he was targeted by the terrorists. This uh, spot is just for not even two to three meters away from his residence where he was targeted. So we can say that he was targeted in his residence. Kashmiri, uh, Kashmiri Pandit ko Puranji ko mara gaya hai. Aur is pe aapko pata hi hai ki TFF ne isko claim kiya hai. Lekin hamari urs. Ab hamari urs abhi abhi kuch bhi shor ham log apni urs nahi bolenge. People from across Shopian mourned the death of Kashmiri Pandit Puran Bhatt. The show of unity at his funeral was a stinging response to the terrorists. Uh, today early morning at 11.30 he got a shot here. Oh. And there, when we came here there was blood here also, here also. And by that time he was taken to hospital and we are coming to know from TV serials TV, that he is, he is killed, he is dead. We were thinking that he would be a little bit, 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 he would be a little bit. This is the residence where he was staying with his family, this is the ancestral house, he is survived by wife kids, one daughter and one son. The entire village is mourning the death of Bablu. They used to call him for family. He was poor Kishan, but who preferred to stay back when the Kashmiri Pandits in 90s were migrating or when target killing started again in the Kashmir Valley. His family in Jammu is distraught over the targeted killing in Kashmir. The unfortunate incident that has unfolded in the South Kashmir where the terrorists have targeted a Kashmiri Pandit, a minority that was living in the Kashmir Valley even uh, after the exodus that has taken place in 1990. He chose not to leave the Kashmir Valley and was working there. Right now we are outside his Jammu residence and the senior officials of the Jammu and Kashmir police, uh, they are here to console the family members, the divisional commissioner and other officials uh, along with the ADG Jammu. They are here. The murder of Puran Bhatt is the fifth targeted killing in the valley in the last five months. And the anger is spilling on the streets. Kashmiri pundits blocked the Sheikhpura Budgam Road and held protest rallies in Jammu demanding justice. We have to do something substantive on ground. If you cannot protect us, the government should give us arms should train us and not simply feed us to the wolves in Kashmir to keep this pretense of normalcy going. 
despite the anger over the wave of targeted killings in Jammu and Kashmir. Mehbooba Mufti continues to question the forces. लोगों को जेलों में डाला जाता है हाइब्रिड मिलिटेंट के नाम पे लोगों को मुलाजमतों से निकाला जाता है शक की बुनियाद पे और उसके बावजूद बीजेपी नाकाम हो गई है यहां के जो हमारे रहे कुछ कश्मीरी पंडित बचे हुए थे उनको हिफाजत देने में विद द राइज इन टारगेटेड किलिंग्स इन द वैली इट इज नाउ टाइम टू गो ऑल आउट अगेंस्ट पाकिस्तान बैक टेररिस्ट इन कश्मीर ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट रिपब्लिक टीवी It was a joint action committee stage a rally for uh, the decentralization and three capitals with the support of the YSR CP organized uh, rally from Ambedkar statue to the YSR statue. Here's the full story. Amid the ongoing roar over three capital in the state of Andhra Pradesh, now we see that a large number of people gathered in a massive rally, which was being led by the Joint Action Committee and also along with the YSR CP leaders. Many people joined the rally in support of Three Capital, and also we have been seeing that this rally was named as Vishaka Garjana and. Also, they have been seeing and demanding that now Vishakhapatnam should be the executive capital, as the Jagan Mohan Reddy-led government in the state of Andhra Pradesh has the, has put forth the proposal for the three capital, which is Vishakhapatnam as executive capital, Amravati as the legislative capital, and Karnul as the judicial capital. But we also see that the opposition parties in the state of Andhra Pradesh have been demanding that this three capital should be withdrawn, and also at the same. Same time that the Telugu Desam Party leaders have been stating that Jagan Mohan Reddy is putting the Vishakhapatnam as executive capital only to do land grabbing. A four-page advertisement has been published in the Wall Street Journal against Indian ministers and key officers of the central government. Senior advisor to Ministry of Information and Broadcasting Kanchan Gupta has tweeted that the mastermind behind this advertisement is Ramachandra Vishwanath. Who was the CEO of Devas? Now, Vishnu Martin was declared a fugitive economic offender in India, and India's Supreme Court also ruled that Devas was involved in corruption. Here's the full story. On October 13th, this full-page advertisement was published in a U.S.-based newspaper, Wall Street Journal. The truth about the advertisement is now becoming clear. The senior advisor to the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting, Kanchan Gupta, has revealed that the mastermind of the advertisement is Ramachandran Vishwanathan, former CEO of Devas, an economic offender in India. The owner of the country, uh, he is uh, Vishwanathan uh, Ramachandran Vishwanathan. So the, the CEO of the company or the owner of the company. He is a fugitive from Indian law. He has been declared a, a, a fugitive economic offender, and uh, uh, that's it. I mean, uh, uh, Devas Multimedia uh, had tried to con uh, Isro's commercial wing Antrix by entering into a fraudulent agreement. First, we have to understand who's this uh, Ramachandra Vishwanathan. He's uh, CEO of. He was CEO of uh, Devas. Uh, and uh, you know the Devas Antariksh scam and the manner in which uh, right up to the Supreme Court uh, Devas lost uh, essentially making Ramachandra Vishwanathan an economic offender and a fugitive of law insofar as India is concerned under the economic uh, fugitives uh, law that we have uh, brought in by the present government. Uh, Ramachandran has pleaded with the U.S. government to impose visa and economic sanctions against 11 Indians, which includes ministers and government officials. American media, the Wall Street Journal in this case, before that New York Times mocking uh, India's space achievements, achievements of uh, ISRO or uh, for that matter Washington Post, which very routinely uh, provides uh, its platform uh, for anti-India sentiments to be strongly ex ex expressed uh, or uh, for, for India bashing. As the Indian economy gets stronger and with the decline of the American economy, the pattern of such an advertisement cannot be missed. 
see the what america has done in the last two, two decades is to co-opt the world economy into the american system it has co-opted the world monetary order into the american monetary order it was its strength and that is becoming the weakness also today so with so much dollars outside america and america printing more dollars and america exporting more dollars to import and with no other mechanism to control inflation they have to do it even more they are now caught in a situation from which it is i am talking about economically to get out of this america has to hugely reduce its standard of living with the facts now out the deep anti india network has been exposed bureau report republic tv We was the art of living along with World Forum for Ethics and Business organized a 6th World Summit on Ethics and Leadership in Sports on 13th to 14th October where great emphasis was laid to how sports should be played and looked at. The Art of Living Foundation along with World Forum for Ethics in Business organized the 6th World Summit on Ethics and Leadership in Sports in Bengaluru. The summit at a time when India is making global progress in athletics and its performance at global events. The two-day event saw the participation of Shri Shri Ravi Shankar, Minister of Law and Justice Kiran Rijiju, 25-time international billiard and snooker world champion Pankaj Advani among other speakers. While Shri Shri Ravi Shankar stressed on how players should play with a sense of responsibility, sports is that some which unites people beyond language. Bhasha ke pare, deshon ke pare, ham sab ko jodta, koi cheez jodta hai to wo khel. Aur khel kud ko humare desh mein humne जैसे आपने बताया किरण जी ने कि सीरियसली नहीं लेते इफ यू डोंट टेक सीरियसली द गेम्स देन नो वन टेक इट एज ए करियर एंड मेंटल हेल्थ विल ओनली कीप पीपल ऑन द ट्रैक ऑफ एथिक्स एंड हियर व्हेन यू फॉलो एथिक्स यू आर टेकिंग द गेम बोथ सीरियसली एंड नॉट सो सीरियस वॉट इज एथिक्स एथिक्स इज दैट फॉर you don't want others to do to you you should not do to others union minister kiran rijiju emphasized on the need to bring sports culture in the country our sporting history goes back to ancient time but over the years the evolution of the society did not bring sports culture in our country to the extent we would desire It is very important to have the sports culture in any society. Billiard and snooker world champion Pankaj Advani calls for sports persons to respect the opponent. I believe that FIR can also stand for fairness, fair play, integrity and respect in the world of sport. So my um appeal to you is to uh, ignore that FIR stands for first information report and uh, to uh, um believe that we actually can play sport um you know through fair play to integrity to to through respect respect not only for our sport respect for our opponents respect for uh the audience respect for the rules the summit sought a road map to use fair and clean sports as a tool to unite people in a post pandemic world riddled by conflict economic crisis and mental health issues The summit proceedings also featured the announcement of the Ethics in Sports Awards 2022, a prize that recognizes the outstanding individuals and organizations that have demonstrated the importance of human values and ethics in life and in the sports arena. The winners of this year included FC Union Berlin for outstanding organization, Anja Hammersing Eden for promotion of mental health in sports. Kiran Rajiju for outstanding contribution to sports and Sandeep Singh for resilience in sports Indeed the time is ripe for a sports revolution 
and more importantly, it's time we change how we play the game. With ethics and leadership. Bureau Report, Republic TV. Let's put our hands together. What a wonderful morning. Top national update, Union Home Minister Amit Shah released the BJP selection theme song, Himachal Ki Pukar, Fir BJP Sarkar. The theme song has been released during the poll campaign with Chief Minister Jairam Thakur. After sparking a row by calling the PM duplicate, JDU National President Lalan Singh has refused to apologize. He further slammed the BJP MP Ravi Shankar Prasad for buttering the PM to be in his good books after getting sidelined. A boat carrying Bihar CM Nitish Kumar collided with an under construction pillar of the JP Setu Bridge. This happened while he was inspecting the arrangements of the Chhat Ghat situated on the bank of the river Ganga. All on board the boat, including the CM, are safe. Trouble keeps mounting for TMC MLA. Manik Bhattacharya as ED raided the Residents of his close aid in connection with the SSC scam case. Patacharya himself was arrested by the Central Agency on October 11th. NCJ Farooq Abdullah, PDP Chief Mehbooba Mufti and other members of the People's Alliance for the Gupkar Declaration met over the Jammu and Kashmir issue at Farooq Abdullah's residence in Srinagar. Haryana government granted 40 days parole to rape convict uh, Gurmeet Ram Rahim Singh. Self-styled godman currently facing 20 years of jail time allowed to come out of the jail there in Rotak. The Indian women's cricket team made the country proud. They were crowned the Asia Cup champions after convincingly decimating Sri Lanka in the final played there at the cricket stadium in Bangladesh. Rahul Gandhi launches a stinging attack at BJP government's centre in Karnataka during his speech. During the Bharat Jori Yatra, former Congress president raised the matter of commission for jobs under the Bumai administration. AIMIM's UP president Shokat Ali sparked religious row after making hateful comments about polygamy among the Hindus. He said Hindus keep mistresses while addressing a gathering there in UP. U.S. President Joe Biden sensationally labeled Pakistan as one of the most dangerous nations in the world. He further noted that the country has nuclear weapons without any cohesion. Two Arunachal Pradesh youth have gone missing after they went out in the search of the plants which can contain medicinal properties at a place near the state's border with China. The family members of the missing youth have alleged the Chinese army role in the incident. Here is a full report. Two youths from Arunachal Pradesh have reportedly gone missing from the line of actual control. These youths from the Anjao district of Arunachal Pradesh have reportedly been missing from near the LAC area. They have been identified as Batelum Tikro and Baing So Manu. As per the details shared with the police, the youth travelled to Changlagam area in search of medicinal herbs on August 19th and haven't returned since. Although the family is desperately searching for the youths, they have failed to gather details of their whereabouts. Fellow villagers who were close to the LSE saw them last on August 24th. The brother and relative of the missing youth, the Shanso Chikro, has been fighting to find his loved ones. As Republic reports from Ground Zero, the relatives of the two missing youths spoke exclusively to Republic. 19 August 2022, मेरे घर के घर के एक परिवार मेरे घर भैया वो मेरा गांव के कजन भैया दोनों किसी मेडिसिनल हर्ब के तलाश में जाना जाता है जारी बुकिया के तलाश में बाहरों के तरफ निकल गए जो आज तक वापस लौट के नहीं आया The family suspects that they might have crossed the LAC and PLM may have detained them The relatives have appealed to the state and the central government to take immediate action the Indian Army is also keeping a close watch, keeping the lines open with the PLA if needed. The family suspect that they mistakenly crossed over to the Chinese territory following which the PLA has taken them into custody. Meanwhile, the family members of Batalam Tikro 
has lodged a missing complaint with the Anzao police and have also appealed the Indian Army for intervention. They have also seek assistance from the state government and the center to ensure a safe return of the youth. With video journalist Asok, I am Anirudh Bhakat and this is Republic Media Network. Top updates, uh, viewers, in another terror attack on locals in the Kashmir Valley, a Kashmiri pundit was attacked in Jammu and Kashmir, Shopia district. According to the reports, the victim succumbed to his injuries after he was shot at by the terrorists outside his residence. हम यहाँ थे बाहर में थे तो पीछे से पता चला कि किसी की किसी को गोली मारी गई तो हम दौड़ते आ गए यहाँ पे तो यहाँ देखा यहाँ खून गिरा था यहाँ खून गिरा था और जब हम देखने लगे तो तब तक उसको अपना भतीजा ले गया था बाइक पे अस्पताल में तो वहाँ से फिर वो एम्बुलेंस पे शायद शुपियान ले गए तो फैमिली क्या है इस फैमिली इसकी दो बच्चे हैं छोटे एक लड़की है बड़ी और एक लड़का है उसका भाई भी इधर है उसके बच्चे भी फिफ्थ में पढ़ता है और बच्ची शायद सातवीं में पढ़ती है तो यानी घर घर में इनमें इनका सब कुछ घर में ही था इनका कोई नौकरी वोकरी नहीं है कुछ नहीं है चल हम तो आइट था यहीं पे बाग बगी चक्कर बेचारा घर से भी बाहर नहीं निकला इन दिनों वो अंदर ही बैठता डर डर लग रहा है बहुत डर लगता है बहुत डर लगता है ISRO's heaviest rocket uh, will launch the UK startup OneWeb's 36 broadband satellites from the spaceport in Andhra Pradesh, Sri Harikota on October 23rd, marking the launcher's entry into the global commercial launch service market. Samadhi Party Chief Gopal Italia made a cast slur against Prime Minister Modi. The Janta Dal United Chief now has now made a derogatory remark against the Prime Minister by calling him Perupia or Duplicate. Soon after, JDU's uh, Lalan Singh made a derogatory remark against Prime Minister. BJP came down heavily on its former ally, JDU, has, and called the party chief's remark shameful and said it showcased the extreme arrogance of the feudal mindset. उनके वो राष्ट्रीय अध्यक्ष हैं। It is a feudal mindset, Mr. Prakash, full of arrogance, अहंकार पूरा है। अच्छा है। देश ने बहुतों का अहंकार खत्म किया है। ललन बाबू जदयू का भी खत्म करेंगे। The DMK today staged a protest against the Parliamentary Committee's recommendation to make Hindi the medium of instruction in central educational institutes. The DMK's showdown came after Tamil Nadu CM. And DMK chief MK Stalin wrote to the central government and warned against the imposition of the Hindi language. A major crackdown against the terror supporters in Jammu and Kashmir. Jammu and Kashmir Lieutenant Governor Manoj Sinha's administration today terminated five government employees for their links with the various terrorist outfits. In a mega crackdown on West Bengal SSC recruitment scam, the Enforcement Directorate today, Saturday, has now raided. Manik Bhattacharya's close aide, Tapas Mandal's residence there in North 24 Parganas. The investigation agency has also reportedly raided Manik Bhattacharya's offices in other areas where young college students were allegedly trained as teachers. Massive fire breaks out at a plastic warehouse in Russia's Yekaterinburg. Cloud of black smoke surrounded Russia's plastic warehouse. This comes in the backdrop of Russia Ukraine war, which continues to escalate. Visuals on your screen show as firefighters deployed at the incident site, continuously putting an effort to douse the massive fire. In what comes as a relief, no casualties have been reported at the fire site. Massive fire engulfs warehouse in Russia completely. Agency report for Republic TV. Viewers, AI MIM leader Shokat Ali's comment against Hindu women has drawn the ire of BJP who has demanded answers from the party chief OAC. Drawing a comparison, Shokat allegedly said that Hindus marry one but have three mistresses. NFIR has been registered against the leader. Here's the full story.
In a fresh controversy, Asaduddin Oasis AIMIM UP chief Shokat Ali made a controversial remark on Hindu marriage at a rally in UP's Sambhal. He said that even if Muslims have two marriages, they give respect to both wives in society. But Hindus marry one and have three mistresses and neither respect the wife nor the mistress. Later on, this Neta went on to justify his statements by saying that he did not say anything unconstitutional or related to any other religion. आपको मालूम है कि आज से पांच दिन पहले दिल्ली के अंदर एक साधु ने बीएसपी का प्रोग्राम था उसमें कहा कि मुसलमानों को चुन चुन करके मारा मारना है ये चौदह शादियां करते हैं चालीस बच्चे पैदा करते हैं तो मैंने इंडिविजुअल उसको ये कहा था कि मुसलमान कोई गाजर मूली नहीं है कि आप उसको काट करके फेंक देंगे और दूसरी चीज मैंने उसके बयान में ही ये बात कही थी कि जो ये कह रहे हैं कि हम हम अगर दो शादी भी करते हैं तो शादियों में हम दोनों बीवी को सम्मान देते हैं दोनों के बच्चे को अपना बच्चा समझते हैं लेकिन वो लोग जो लोग एक एक से एक शादी तो करते हैं लेकिन तीन पत्नियां इनकी अलग से रहती हैं लेकिन समाज में उसको छुपाते हैं तो वो गलत है या हम गलत हैं नाउ देयर हैज बीन नो कमेंट और एक्शन अगेंस्ट शौकत अली फ्रॉम ए आई but police have registered an FIR against the AIMIM leader for his inciting comments against Hindus. Meanwhile, the BJP has trained its guns at AIMIM chief Asaduddin Owaisi for the comments made by his party leaders. The Congress, meanwhile, has called AIMIM the B-team of the BJP and said the controversy was orchestrated. Bureau Report, Republic TV. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the United States of America has recently rolled out its national security strategy. It defines how the US looks at the world, geopolitically, diplomatically and militarily. It defines the United States of America's national security perspectives. This weekend, join me in Checkmate as I take you through the steps of America's national security strategy. Following the case of human uh, sacrifice that emerged in Elanthur, the police are expected to visit the site of the incident to ascertain whether there are any more bodies at the site. The Coimbatore District Administration sealed four offices of the Popular Front of India. The police was accordingly deployed at the offices and in areas of concern during the sealing of the offices. Legislature Barak Arbe, a member of the opposition Republican People's Party, smashed a smartphone with a hammer while addressing parliament, saying the clampdown on social media would make smartphone obsolete. Critics fear that as elections loom, the measure will be used to further crack down on social media and independent reporting. The 40 article legislation was approved with the vote of President Governing Party and its nationalist allies which together hold a majority in the parliament. Agency Report, Republic TV. Today on the Bombay High Court acquitting GN Sai Baba. Now Solicitor General Tushar Mehta is reported to have maintained that the acquittal was not on the basis of merit but for lack of appropriate sanction to prosecute him under the provisions of the UAPA. ये जो फैसला आया है ये बहुत ही दुर्दैवी है बहुत ही निराशाजनक है क्योंकि टेक्निकल ग्राउंड्स पर इस प्रकार से ऐसे व्यक्ति को छोड़ देना जिसके खिलाफ इतने सबूत हैं जिन्होंने एक प्रकार से ये फैसले के कारण जो हमारे पुलिस नक्सलवादियों से लड़ते हुए शहीद हुए 
उनके घर वालों के ऊपर इससे क्या बीतती होगी इसका विचार मैं बार बार कर रहा हूँ Top headlines right now: Economic uh, fugitive weaponizes foreign media to target Modi government with a four-page ad in Wall Street Journal. Kashmiri Pandit uh, Puran Bhatta shot dead by Pakistan-backed terrorists in Shopia. Protests erupt across Kashmir over wave of targeted killings. Demand grows for justice. Kerala police take accused to the crime scene as probe into the cult's murder deepens. AI MIM leader Korontev abusing Hindus police take cognizance of his rant. Two youths from Arunachal Pradesh reported missing family suspects they have crossed the NAC. Viewers here watching Republic TV India's number 1 news channel. I'm Shivangi Shukla. Let's start with the first story. In another incident of the terror attack on locals in the Kashmir rally a Kashmiri pundit was shot in Jammu and Kashmir Shopian district the deceased has been identified as Puran Bhatt now the attack on the civilian was carried out after the security forces conducted two anti terror operations in which four terrorists were neutralized here's a full story a little past noon on saturday Puran Bhatt was shot dead by terrorists outside his house while he was heading towards his apple orchard. In the at the time of the instance said that police deployment is there at his residence of the Kashmiri Pandit and he has also now confirmed the news that yes the police deployment is there and Sujit Kumar said that the action will not only be on police deployment who were guarding the residence of the Kashmiri Pandit my VJ for Mubashir is showing you the visuals and this is the exact spot the visuals of the the spot that are coming in that this is the spot where he was targeted by the terrorists this uh, spot is just for not even 2 to 3 meters away from his residence where he was targeted so we can say that he was targeted in his residence kashmiri uh, kashmiri pandit ko puran ji ko mara gaya hai aur is pe aapko pata hi hai ki tff ne isko claim kiya hai lekin hamari aur se ab hamari aur se abhi abhi kuch bhi sure hum log apni aur se nahi bolenge people from across shopian mourned the death of kashmiri pandit puran bhat the show of unity at his funeral was a stinging response to the terrorists uh, today early morning at 11:30 he got a shot here oh. and there we, when we came here there was blood here also here also Oh. and by that time he was taken to hospital and we are coming to know from tv serials the tv that he is he is killed he is dead hum soch rahe the thoda sa hi lagi hogi shayad bach jayega bechara but message aaya ki wo to hai nahi this is the residence where he was staying with his family this is the ancestral house he is survived by wife kids one daughter and one son the entire village is mourning the death of bablu they used to call him for family he was poorn kishan but who preferred to stay back when the kashmiri pandits in 90s were migrating or when target killing started again in the kashmir valley his family in jammu is distraught over the targeted killing in kashmir the unfortunate incident that has unfolded in the south kashmir where the terrorists have targeted a kashmiri pandit a minority that was living in the kashmir valley even uh, after the exodus that has taken place in 1990 he chose not to leave the kashmir valley and was working there right now we are outside his jammu residence and the senior officials of the jammu and kashmir police uh, they are here to console the family members the divisional commissioner and other officials uh, along with the adg jammu they are here The murder of Puran Bhatt is the fifth targeted killing in the valley in the last 5 months and the anger is spilling on the streets. Kashmiri pundits blocked the Sheikhpura Budgam road and held protest rallies in Jammu demanding justice. We have to do something substantive on ground. If you cannot protect us the government should give us 
arms should train us and not simply feed us to the wolves in Kashmir to keep this pretense of normalcy going. Despite the anger over the wave of targeted killings in Jammu and Kashmir, Mehbooba Mufti continues to question the forces. उसको निशाना बनाया गया जबकि यहां इतनी सिक्योरिटी है इतनी आर्मी है इतने फोर्सेस हैं लोगों को जेलों में डाला जाता है हाइब्रिड मिलिटेंट के नाम पे लोगों को मुलाजिमतों से निकाला जाता है शक की बुनियाद पे और उसके बावजूद बीजेपी नाकाम हो गई यहां के जो हमारे रहे कुछ कश्मीरी पंडित बचे हुए थे उनको हिफाजत देने में विद द राइज इन टारगेटेड किलिंग्स इन द वैली it is now time to go all out against Pakistan backed terrorists in Kashmir. Bureau Report, Republic TV. We have a joint action committee stage a rally for uh, the decentralization and three capitals with the support of the YSRCP organized uh, rally from Ambedkar statue to the YSR statue. Here's the full story. Amid the ongoing roar over three capital in the state of Andhra Pradesh, now we see that a large number of people gathered in a massive rally which was being led by the Joint Action Committee and also along with the YSRCP leaders. Many people joined the rally in support of three capital and also we have been seeing that this rally was named as Vishaka Garjana and also, they have been seeing and demanding that now Vishakapatnam should be the executive capital as the Jagan Mohan Reddy-led government in the state of Andhra Pradesh has, the, has put forth the proposal for the three capital, which is Vishakapatnam as executive capital, Amravati as the legislative capital and Karnul as the judicial capital. But we also see that the opposition parties in the state of Andhra Pradesh have been demanding that this three capital should be withdrawn and also at the same same time that the Telugu Desam party leaders have been stating that Jagan Mohan Reddy is putting the Vishakapatnam as executive capital only to do land grabbing. A four-page advertisement has been published in the Wall Street Journal against Indian ministers and key officers of the central government. Senior advisor to Ministry of Information and Broadcasting, Kanchan Gupta, has tweeted that the mastermind behind this advertisement is Ramachandra Vishwanathan. Who was the CEO of Devas? Now, Vishnu Martin was declared a fugitive economic offender in India, and India's Supreme Court also ruled that Devas was involved in corruption. Here's the full story. On October 13th, this full page advertisement was published in a US based newspaper, Wall Street Journal. The truth about the advertisement is now becoming clear. The senior advisor to the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting, Kanchan Gupta, has revealed that the mastermind of the advertisement is Ramachandran Vishwanathan, former CEO of Devas, an economic offender in India. The owner of the country, uh, he is uh, Vishwanathan, uh, Ramachandran Vishwanathan. So the CEO of the company or the owner of the company he is a fugitive from Indian law. He has been declared a, a, a fugitive economic offender. And uh, uh, that's it. I mean, uh, uh, Devas Multimedia uh, had tried to con uh, ISRO's commercial wing, Antriksh, by entering into a fraudulent agreement. First, we have to understand who's this uh, Ramachandra Vishwanathan. He's uh, CEO of, he was CEO of uh, Devas. Uh, and uh, you know the Devas Antariksh scam and the manner in which uh, right up to the Supreme Court uh, Devas lost uh, uh, essentially making Ramachandra Vishwanathan an economic offender and a fugitive of law insofar as India is concerned under the economic uh, fugitives uh, law that we have uh, brought in by the present government. Uh, Ramachandran has pleaded with the US government to impose visa and economic sanctions against 11 Indians, which includes ministers and government officials. American media, the Wall Street Journal in this case, before that New York Times mocking uh, India's space achievements, achievements of uh, ISRO or uh, for that matter Washington Post, which very routinely uh, provides uh, its platform uh, for anti-India sentiments to be strongly ex ex expressed uh, 
or for, for India bashing. As the Indian economy gets stronger and with the decline of the American economy, the pattern of such an advertisement cannot be missed. See, the, what America has done in the last two decades is to co-opt the world economy into the American financial system. It has co-opted the world monetary order into the American monetary order. It was its strength and that is becoming the weakness also today. So, with so much dollars outside America and America printing more dollars and America exporting more dollars to import and with no other mechanism to control inflation, they have to do it even more. They are now caught in a situation from which it is, I am talking about economically. To get out of this, America has to hugely reduce its standard. With the facts now out, the deep anti-India network has been exposed. Bureau Report, Republic TV. Viewers, the Art of Living, along with World Forum for Ethics in Business, organized a sixth World Summit on Ethics and Leadership in Sports on 13 to 14 October, where great emphasis was laid to how sports should be played and looked at. The Art of Living Foundation, along with World Forum for Ethics in Business, organized the 6th World Summit on Ethics and Leadership in Sports in Bengaluru. The summit at a time when India is making global progress in athletics and its performance at global events. The two-day event saw the participation of Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, Minister of Law and Justice Kiran Rijiju, 25-time international billiard and snooker world champion Pankaj Advani, among other speakers. While Sri Sri Ravi Shankar stressed on how players should play with a sense of responsibility. Sports is that some which unites people beyond language. Basha ke pare, deshon ke pare, hum sab ko jodta, koi cheez jodta hai to wo khel. Aur khel khud ko humare desh mein humne जैसे आपने बताया किरण जी ने कि सीरियसली नहीं लेते इफ यू डोंट टेक सीरियसली द गेम्स देन नो वन टेक इट एज ए करियर एंड मेंटल हेल्थ विल ओनली कीप पीपल ऑन द ट्रैक ऑफ एथिक्स एंड हियर व्हेन यू फॉलो एथिक्स यू आर टेकिंग द गेम बोथ सीरियसली एंड नॉट सो सीरियस व्हाट इज एथिक्स एथिक्स इज दैट फॉर you don't want others to do to you you should not do to others union minister kiran rijiju emphasized on the need to bring sports culture in the country our sporting history goes back to ancient time but over the years the evolvement of the society did not bring sports culture in our country to the extent we would desire it is very important to have the sports culture in any society. Billiard and snooker world champion Pankaj Advani calls for sports persons to respect the opponent. I believe that FIR can also stand for fairness, fair play, integrity and respect in the world of sport. So my um, appeal to you is to uh, ignore that FIR stands for first information report and uh, to uh, um, believe that we actually can play sport um, you know through fair play to integrity through, through respect respect not only for our sport respect for our opponents respect for uh, the audience respect for the rules the summit sought a road map to use fair and clean sports as a tool to unite people in a post-pandemic world riddled by conflict economic crisis and mental health issues the summit proceedings also featured the announcement of the Ethics in Sports Awards 2022, a prize that recognizes the outstanding individuals and organizations that have demonstrated the importance of human values and ethics in life and in the sports arena. The winners of this year included FC Union Berlin for Outstanding Organization, Anja Hammersing Edin for Promotion of Mental Health in Sports, Kiran Rajiju 
for outstanding contribution to sports and Sandeep Singh for resilience in sports. Indeed, the time is ripe for a sports revolution. And more importantly, it's time we change how we play the game. With ethics and leadership. Bureau Report, Republic TV. Let's put our hands together. What a wonderful morning. Top National Update, Union Home Minister Amit Shah released a BJP selection theme song, Himachal Ki Pukar, Fir BJP Sarkar. The theme song has been released during the poll campaign with Chief Minister Jairam Thakur. After sparking a row by calling the PM duplicated, JDU National President Lalan Singh has refused to apologize. He further slammed the BJP MP Ravi Shankar Prasad for buttering the PM to be in his good books after getting sidelined. A boat carrying Bihar CM Nitish Kumar collided with an under construction pillar of the JP Setu Bridge. This happened while he was inspecting the arrangements of the Chhat Ghat situated on the bank of the river Ganga. All on board the boat, including the CM, are safe. Trouble keeps mounting for TMC MLA. Manik Bhattacharya as ED raided the Residents of his close aid in connection with the SSC scam case. Patacharya himself was arrested by the Central Agency on October 11th. NCJ Farooq Abdullah, PDP Chief Mehbooba Mufti and other members of the People's Alliance for the Gupkar Declaration met over the Jammu and Kashmir issue at Farooq Abdullah's residence in Srinagar. Haryana government granted 40 days parole to rape convict uh, Gurmeet Ram Rahim Singh. self styled government currently facing 20 years of jail time allowed to come out of the jail there in Rotak. The Indian women's cricket team made the country proud. They were crowned the Asia Cup champions after convincingly decimating Sri Lanka in the final played there at the cricket stadium in Bangladesh. Rahul Gandhi launches a stinging attack at BJP government's centre in Karnataka during his speech. During the Bharat Jori Yatra, former Congress president raised the matter of commission for jobs under the Bumai administration. AIMIM's UP president Shokat Ali sparked religious row after making hateful comments about polygamy among the Hindus. He said Hindus keep mistresses while addressing a gathering there in UP. U.S. President Joe Biden sensationally labelled Pakistan as one of the most dangerous nations in the world. He further noted that the country has nuclear weapons without any cohesion. Two Arunachal Pradesh youth have gone missing after they went out in the search of the plants which can contain medicinal properties at a place near the state's border with China. The family members of the missing youth have alleged the Chinese army role in the incident. Here is a full report. Two youths from Arunachal Pradesh have reportedly gone missing from the line of actual control. These youths from the Anjao district of Arunachal Pradesh have reportedly been missing from near the LAC area. They have been identified as Batelum Tikro and Baing So Manu. As per the details shared with the police, the youths travelled to Changlagam area in search of medicinal herbs on August 19th and haven't returned since. Although the family is desperately searching for the youths, they have failed to gather details of their whereabouts. Fellow villagers who were close to the LSE saw them last on August 24th. The brother and relative of the missing youth, the Shanso Chikro, has been fighting to find his loved ones. As Republic reports from Ground Zero, the relatives of the two missing youths spoke exclusively to Republic. 19 August 2022. मेरे घर के घर के एक परिवार मेरे घर भैया वो मेरा गांव के कजन भैया दोनों किसी मेडिसिनल हर्ब के तलाश में जाना जाता है जारी बुकिया के तलाश में पहाड़ों के तरफ निकल गए जो आज तक वापस लौट के नहीं आया The family suspects that they might have crossed the LAC and PLM may have detained them The relatives have appealed to the state and the central government to take immediate action the Indian Army is also keeping a close watch, keeping the lines open with the PLA if needed. The family suspect that 
they mistakenly crossed over to the Chinese territory, following which the PLA has taken them into custody. Meanwhile, the family members of Batalam Tikro has lodged a missing complaint, which the Anzao police and have also appealed the Indian Army for intervention. They have also seek assistance from the state government and the center to ensure a safe return of the youth. With video journalist Asok, I am Anirudh Bhakat and this is Republic Media Network. Top updates, uh, viewers. In another terror attack on locals in the Kashmir Valley, a Kashmiri pundit was attacked in Jammu and Kashmir, Shopia district. According to the reports, the victim succumbed to his injuries after he was shot at by the terrorists outside his residence. हम यहाँ थे बाहर में थे तो पीछे से पता चला कि किसी की किसी को गोली मारी गई तो हम दौड़ते आ गए यहाँ पे तो यहाँ देखा यहाँ खून गिरा था यहाँ खून गिरा था और जब हम देखने लगे तो तब तक उसको अपना भतीजा ले गया था बाइक पे अस्पताल में तो वहाँ से फिर वो एम्बुलेंस में शायद शुपियान ले गए तो फैमिली क्या है इस फैमिली इसकी दो बच्चे हैं छोटे एक लड़की है बड़ी और एक लड़का है उसका भाई भी इधर है उसके बच्चे भी फिफ्थ में पढ़ता है और बच्ची शायद सातवीं में पढ़ती है तो यानी घर घर में इनमें इनका सब कुछ घर में ही था इनका कोई नौकरी वोकरी नहीं है कुछ नहीं है चल हम तो आइट था यहीं पर बाग बगी चक्कर बेचारा घर से भी बाहर नहीं निकला इन दिनों से वो अंदर ही बैठता डर डर लग रहा है बहुत डर लगता है बहुत डर लगता है ISRO's heaviest rocket uh, will launch the UK startup OneWeb's 36 broadband satellites from the spaceport in Andhra Pradesh, Sri Harikota, on October 23rd, marking the launcher's entry into the global commercial launch service market. Samadhi Party Chief Gopal Italia made a cast slur against Prime Minister Modi. The Janta Dal United Chief now has now made a derogatory remark against the Prime Minister by calling him Perupia or Duplicate. Soon after, JDU's uh, Lalan Singh made a derogatory remark against Prime Minister. BJP came down heavily on its former ally, JDU, has, and called the party chief's remark shameful and said it showcased the extreme arrogance of the feudal mindset. उनके वो राष्ट्रीय अध्यक्ष हैं। It is a feudal mindset, Mr. Prakash, full of arrogance, अहंकार पूरा है। अच्छा है। देश ने बहुतों का अहंकार खत्म किया है। ललन बाबू जदयू का भी खत्म करेंगे। The DMK today staged a protest against the parliamentary committee's recommendation to make Hindi the medium of instruction in central educational institutes. The DMK's showdown came after Tamil Nadu CM. And DMK chief MK Stalin wrote to the central government and warned against the imposition of the Hindi language. A major crackdown against the terror supporters in Jammu and Kashmir. Jammu and Kashmir Lieutenant Governor Manoj Sinha's administration today terminated five government employees for their links with the various terrorist outfits. In a mega crackdown on West Bengal SSC recruitment scam, the Enforcement Directorate today, Saturday, has now raided. Manik Bhattacharya's close aide, Tapas Mandal's residence there in North 24 Parganas. The investigation agency has also reportedly raided Manik Bhattacharya's offices in other areas where young college students were allegedly trained as teachers. Massive fire breaks out at a plastic warehouse in Russia's Yekaterinburg. Cloud of black smoke surrounded Russia's plastic warehouse. This comes in the backdrop of Russia Ukraine war, which continues to escalate. Visuals on your screen show as firefighters deployed at the incident site, continuously putting an effort to douse the massive fire. In what comes as a relief, no casualties have been reported at the fire site. Massive fire engulfs warehouse in Russia completely. Agency report for Republic TV.
Viewers, AI MIM leader Shokat Ali's comment against Hindu women has drawn the ire of BJP, who has demanded answers from the party chief OAC. Drawing a comparison, Shokat allegedly said that Hindus marry one but have three mistresses. NFIR has been registered against the leader. Here's the full story. In a fresh controversy, Asaduddin OAC's AI MIM UP chief Shokat Ali made a controversial remark on Hindu marriage at a rally in UP's Sambhal. He said that even if Muslims have two marriages, they give respect to both wives in society. But Hindus marry one and have three mistresses and neither respect the wife nor the mistress. <laughs> Later on, this Neta went on to justify his statements by saying that he did not say anything unconstitutional or related to any other religion. कि पहली चीज तो ये है मेरा वो बयान देने का मकसद वो नहीं जो लोग चला रहे हैं आपको मालूम है कि आज से पांच दिन पहले दिल्ली के अंदर एक साधु ने बीएचपी का प्रोग्राम था उसमें कहा कि मुसलमानों को चुन चुन करके मारा मारना है ये चौदह शादियां करते हैं चालीस बच्चे पैदा करते हैं तो मैंने इंडिविजुअल उसको ये कहा था कि मुसलमान कोई गाजर मूली नहीं है कि आप उसको काट करके फेंक देंगे और दूसरी चीज मैंने उसके बयान पे ही ये बात कही थी कि जो ये कह रहे हैं कि हम आ, हम अगर दो शादी भी करते हैं तो शादियों में हम दोनों बीवी को सम्मान देते हैं दोनों के बच्चे को अपना बच्चा समझते हैं लेकिन वो लोग जो लोग एक एक से एक शादी तो करते हैं लेकिन तीन पत्नियां इनकी अलग से रहती हैं लेकिन समाज में उसको छुपाते हैं तो वो गलत है या हम गलत हैं now there has been no comment or action against Shokat Ali from AIMIM, but police have registered an FIR against the AIMIM leader for his inciting comments against Hindus. Meanwhile, the BJP has trained its guns at AIMIM chief Asaduddin Owesi for the comments made by his party leaders. The Congress, meanwhile, has called AIMIM the B-team of the BJP and said the controversy was orchestrated. Bureau Report, Republic TV. The national president of JDU hit out at Prime Minister Modi, calling him extremely backward and a facade. Now, JDU President Lalan Singh further stated that the PM had been spreading his conservative mindset since he came to power. Shubham Garg's family has been granted a visa to visit Australia. Now, the Indian was repeatedly stabbed in Sydney as a result of an alleged hate crime. 1950, we are the largest economy in Asia. From 1950 to 1980, we grew at 3.5% a year. Population grew at 2.5%. Per capita income, 1% a year. Because of Nehru's failed policy. Nehru made sure that we became poorer in 1980 than 1950. This is all data, not politics. 1980 to 1990, we grew at 5.5%, population 2.25%, but debt grew from $20 billion in, 90, um, in, in 1981 to $80 billion, and we are broke by 91. In 91, because private capital was suppressed by Nehru because of his dalliance with the Soviet model and the Fabian school, and you know his disdain for business. 1991, GDP was $275 billion. 2022, we reached $3.15 trillion. We grew at 8.2% year in dollar terms for 31 years is incredible in 2014 shazad gdp was 113 lakh crores in 2022 is 236 lakh crores and this year we're supposed to go to 276 lakh crores so am i optimistic i lived through the last 30 years i've seen the rise of this country i've seen what people can do i've seen that 108 unicorns i've seen a trillion dollars of value in the digital market i've seen the rise of sanjeev what would you want? If I'm not optimistic with all this, what do you want? Come on, give me a break. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the United States of America has recently rolled out its national security strategy. It defines how the U.S. looks at the world, geopolitically, diplomatically and militarily. It defines the United States of America's 
national security perspectives. This weekend, join me in Checkmate as I take you through the steps of America's national security strategy. Top headlines right now, Economica Fugitive weaponizes foreign media to target Modi government with a full page ad in Wall Street Journal. Kashmiri Pandit Puran Bhatta shot dead by Pakistan backed terrorists in Shopia. Protests erupt across Kashmir over a wave of targeted killings. Demand grows for justice. Kerala police take accused to the crime scene as probe into the occult murder deepens. AIMIM leader Koron Tev abusing Hindu's police take cognizance of his rant. Two youth from Arunachal Pradesh reported missing family suspects they have crossed the LAC. Viewers here watching Republic TV, India's number one news channel. I'm Shivangi Shokla. Let's start with the first story. In another incident of the terror attack on locals in the Kashmir rally, a Kashmiri pundit was shot in Jammu and Kashmir Shopia district. The deceased has been identified as Puran Bhatt. Now, the attack on the civilian was carried out after the security forces conducted two anti-terror operations in which four terrorists were neutralized. Here's a full story. A little past noon on Saturday, Puran Bhatt was shot dead by terrorists outside his house while he was heading towards his apple orchard. In the, at the time of the instance said that police deployment is there at his residence of the Kashmiri Pandit and he has also now confirmed the news that yes the police deployment is there and Sujit Kumar said that the action will not only be on police deployment who were guarding the residence of the Kashmiri Pandit. My VJ Mubashir is showing you the visuals and this is the exact spot the visuals of the, the spot that are coming in that this is the spot where he was targeted by the terrorists. This uh, spot is just for not even two to three meters away from his residence where he was targeted. So we can say that he was targeted in his residence. Kashmiri, uh, Kashmiri Pandit ko Puranji ko mara gaya hai. Aur is pe aapko pata hi hai ki TFF ne isko claim kiya hai. Lekin hamari or se. Ab hamari or se abhi abhi kuch bhi shor ham log apni or se nahi bolenge. People from across Shopian mourned the death of Kashmiri Pandit Puran Bhatt. The show of unity at his funeral was a stinging response to the terrorists. Uh, today early morning at 11.30 he got a shot here oh. and there, when we came here there was blood here also, here also. And by that time he was taken to hospital and we are coming to know from TV serials TV, that he is, he is killed, he is dead. We were thinking that he would be a little bit, 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 he would be a little bit. This is the residence where he was staying with his family, this is the ancestral house, he is survived by wife kids, one daughter and one son. The entire village is mourning the death of Bablu. They used to call him for family. He was poor Kishan, but who preferred to stay back when the Kashmiri Pandits in 90s were migrating or when target killing started again in the Kashmir Valley. His family in Jammu is distraught over the targeted killing in Kashmir. The unfortunate incident that has unfolded in the South Kashmir where the terrorists have targeted a Kashmiri Pandit, a minority that was living in the Kashmir Valley even uh, after the exodus that has taken place in 1990. He chose not to leave the Kashmir Valley and was working there. Right now we are outside his Jammu residence and the senior officials of the Jammu and Kashmir police, uh, they are here to console the family members, the divisional commissioner and other officials uh, along with the ADG Jammu. They are here. The murder of Puran Bhatt is the fifth targeted killing in the valley in the last five months. And the anger is spilling on the streets. Kashmiri pundits blocked the Sheikhpura Budgam Road and held protest rallies in Jammu demanding justice. We have to do something substantive on ground. 
if you cannot protect us the government should give us arms should train us and not simply feed us to the wolves in kashmir to keep this pretense of normalcy going despite the anger over the wave of targeted killings in jammu and kashmir mehbooba mufti continues to question the forces aaj 30 35 saal ke baad usko nishana banaya gaya jabki yahan itni security hai itni army hai itne forces hain लोगों को जेलों में डाला जाता है हाइब्रिड मिलिटेंट के नाम पे लोगों को मुलाजमतों से निकाला जाता है शक की बुनियाद पे और उसके बावजूद बीजेपी नाकाम हो गई है यहाँ के जो हमारे रहे कुछ कश्मीरी पंडित बचे हुए थे उनको हिफाजत देने में There was a joint action committee stage a rally for uh, the decentralization and three capitals with the support of the YSR CP organized uh, rally from Ambedkar statue to the YSR statue here's a full story Amid the ongoing roar over three capital in the state of Andhra Pradesh now we see that a large number of people gathered in a massive rally which was being led by the joint action committee and also along with the YSR CP leaders many people joined the rally in support of three capital and also we have been seeing that this rally was named as Vishaka Garjana and also they have been seeing and demanding that now vishakhapatnam should be the executive capital as the jagan mohan reddy led government in the state of andhra pradesh has the, has put forth the proposal for the three capital which is vishakhapatnam as executive capital amravati as the legislative capital and karnul as the judicial capital but we also see that the opposition parties in the state of andhra pradesh have been demanding that this three capital should be withdrawn and also at the same time that the telugu desam party leaders have been stating that jagan mohan reddy is putting the vishakhapatnam as executive capital only to do land grabbing a four page advertisement has been published in the wall street journal against indian ministers and key officers of the central government senior advisor to ministry of information and broadcasting kanchan gupta has tweeted that the mastermind behind this advertisement is ramachandra vishwanath who was the ceo of devas Now, Vishnu Mathur was declared a fugitive economic offender in India, and India Supreme Court also ruled that Devas was involved in corruption. Here is the full story. On October 13th, this full-page advertisement was published in a U.S.-based newspaper, Wall Street Journal. The truth about the advertisement is now becoming clear. The senior advisor to the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting, Kanchan Gupta. has revealed that the mastermind of the advertisement is Ramachandran Vishwanathan former CEO of Devas an economic offender in India the owner of the country uh, he is uh, Vishwanathan uh, Ramachandran Vishwanathan so the, the CEO of the company or, or the owner of the company he is a fugitive from Indian law he has been declared a, a, a fugitive economic offender and uh, uh, that's it i mean uh, uh, devas multimedia uh, had tried to con uh, isro's commercial wing antrix by entering into a fraudulent agreement first we have to understand who's this uh, ramachandra vishwanathan he's uh, ceo of he was ceo of uh, devas uh, and uh, you know the devas antrix scam and the manner in which uh, right up to the supreme court uh, they was lost uh, essentially making ramachandra vishwanathan an economic offender and a fugitive of law in so far as india is concerned under the economic uh, fugitives uh, law that we have uh, brought in by the present government uh, ramachandran has pleaded with the us government to impose visa and economic sanctions against 11 indians which includes ministers and government officials American media the Wall Street Journal in this case before that New York Times mocking uh, India's space achievements achievements of uh, ISRO or uh, for that matter Washington Post which very routinely uh, provides its platform uh, for 
anti india sentiments to be strongly ex ex expressed uh, or uh, for for india bashing as the indian economy gets stronger and with the decline of the american economy the pattern of such an advertisement cannot be missed see the, what america has done in the last two, two decades is to co-opt the world economy into the system it has co-opted the world monetary order into the american monetary order it was its strength and that is becoming the weakness also today so with so much dollars outside america and america printing more dollars and america exporting more dollars to import and with no other mechanism to control inflation they have to do it even more they are now caught in a situation from which it is i am talking about economically to get out of this america has to hugely reduce its standard of with the facts now out the deep anti india network has been exposed bureau report republic tv We was the art of living along with World Forum for Ethics in Business organized the 6th World Summit on Ethics and Leadership in Sports on 13th to 14th October where great emphasis was laid to how sports should be played and looked at. The Art of Living Foundation along with World Forum for Ethics in Business organized the 6th World Summit on Ethics and Leadership in Sports in Bengaluru. The summit at a time when India is making global progress in athletics and its performance at global events. The two-day event saw the participation of Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, Minister of Law and Justice Kiran Rijiju, 25-time international billiard and snooker world champion Pankaj Advani among other speakers. While Sri Sri Ravi Shankar stressed on how players should play with a sense of responsibility. Sports is that some which unites people beyond language. Basha ke pare, deshon ke pare, ham sab ko jodta, koi cheez jodta hai to wo khel. Aur khel khud ko humare desh mein humne जैसे आपने बताया किरण जी ने कि सीरियसली नहीं लेते इफ यू डोंट टेक सीरियसली द गेम्स देन नो वन टेक इट एज ए करियर एंड मेंटल हेल्थ विल ओनली कीप पीपल ऑन द ट्रैक ऑफ एथिक्स एंड हियर व्हेन यू फॉलो एथिक्स यू आर टेकिंग द गेम बोथ सीरियसली एंड नॉट सो सीरियस वॉट इज एथिक्स एथिक्स इज दैट फॉर you don't want others to do to you you should not do to others union minister kiran rijiju emphasized on the need to bring sports culture in the country our sporting history goes back to ancient time but over the years the evolution of the society did not bring sports culture in our country to the extent we would desire It is very important to have the sports culture in any society. Billiard and snooker world champion Pankaj Advani called for sports persons to respect the opponent. I believe that FIR can also stand for fairness, fair play, integrity and respect in the world of sport. So my um appeal to you is to uh, ignore that FIR stands for first information report and uh, to uh, um believe that we actually can play sport um you know through fair play to integrity to to through respect respect not only for our sport respect for our opponents respect for uh the audience respect for the rules the summit sought a road map to use fair and clean sports as a tool to unite people in a post pandemic world riddled by conflict economic crisis and mental health issues The summit proceedings also featured the announcement of the Ethics in Sports Awards 2022, a prize that recognizes the outstanding individuals and organizations that have demonstrated the importance of human values and ethics in life and in the sports arena. The winners of this year included FC Union Berlin for outstanding organization, Anja Hammersing Eden for promotion of mental health in sports. 
Kiran Rajiju for outstanding contribution to sports and Sandeep Singh for resilience in sports. Indeed, the time is ripe for a sports revolution. And more importantly, it's time we change how we play the game. With ethics and leadership. Bureau Report, Republic TV. Let's put our hands together. What a wonderful morning. Top national update, Union Home Minister Amit Shah released the BJP selection theme song, Himachal Ki Pukar, Fir BJP Sarkar. The theme song has been released during the poll campaign with Chief Minister Jairam Thakur. After sparking a row by calling the PM duplicate, JDU National President Lalan Singh has refused to apologize. He further slammed the BJP MP Ravi Shankar Prasad for buttering the PM to be in his good books after getting sidelined. A boat carrying Bihar CM Nitish Kumar collided with an under construction pillar of the JP Setu Bridge. This happened while he was inspecting the arrangements of the Chhat Ghat situated on the bank of the river Ganga. All on board the boat, including the CM, are safe. Trouble keeps mounting for TMC MLA. Manik Bhattacharya as ED raided the Residents of his close aid in connection with the SSC scam case. Patacharya himself was arrested by the Central Agency on October 11th. NCJ Farooq Abdullah, PDP Chief Mehbooba Mufti and other members of the People's Alliance for the Gupkar Declaration met over the Jammu and Kashmir issue at Farooq Abdullah's residence in Srinagar. Haryana government granted 40 days parole to rape convict uh, Gurmeet Ram Rahim Singh. The self-styled godman currently facing 20 years of jail time allowed to come out of the jail there in Rotak. The Indian women's cricket team made the country proud. They were crowned the Asia Cup champions after convincingly decimating Sri Lanka in the final played there at the cricket stadium in Bangladesh. Rahul Gandhi launches a stinging attack at BJP government's centre in Karnataka during his speech. During the Bharat Jori Yatra, former Congress president raised the matter of commission for jobs under the Bumai administration. AIMIM's UP president Shokat Ali sparked religious row after making hateful comments about polygamy among the Hindus. He said Hindus keep mistresses while addressing a gathering there in UP. U.S. President Joe Biden uh, sensationally labeled Pakistan as one of the most dangerous nations in the world. He further noted that the country has nuclear weapons without any cohesion. Two Arunachal Pradesh youth have gone missing after they went out in the search of the plants which can contain medicinal properties at a place near the state's border with China. The family members of the missing youth have alleged the Chinese army role in the incident. Here is a full report. Two youths from Arunachal Pradesh have reportedly gone missing from the line of actual control. These youths from the Anjao district of Arunachal Pradesh have reportedly been missing from near the LAC area. They have been identified as Batelum Tikro and Baing So Manu. As per the details shared with the police, the youth travelled to Changlagam area in search of medicinal herbs on August 19th and haven't returned since. Although the family is desperately searching for the youths, they have failed to gather details of their whereabouts. Fellow villagers who were close to the LSE saw them last on August 24th. The brother and relative of the missing youth, the Shanso Chikro, has been fighting to find his loved ones. As Republic reports from Ground Zero, the relatives of the two missing youths spoke exclusively to Republic. 19 August 2022, मेरे घर के घर के एक परिवार मेरे घर भैया वो मेरा गांव के कजन भैया दोनों किसी मेडिसिनल हर्ब के तलाश में जाना जाता है जारी बुकिया के तलाश में पहाड़ों के तरफ निकल गए जो आज तक वापस लौट के नहीं आया The family suspects that they might have crossed the LAC and PLM may have detained them The relatives have appealed to the state and the central government to take immediate action the Indian Army is also keeping a close watch, keeping the lines open with the PLA if needed. 
the family suspect that they mistakenly crossed over to the Sinai territory following which the PLA has taken them into custody. Meanwhile, the family members of Batalam Tikro has lost a missing complaint which the Anzao police and have also appealed the Indian army for intervention. They have also seek assistance from the state government and the center to ensure a safe return of the youth. With video journalist Asok, I am Anirudh Bhakat and this is Republic Media Network. Top updates, uh, viewers. In another terror attack on locals in the Kashmir Valley, a Kashmiri pundit was attacked in Jabu and Kashmir, Shopia district. According to the reports, the victim succumbed to his injuries after he was shot at by the terrorists outside his residence. हम यहाँ थे बाग में थे तो पीछे से पता चला कि किसी की किसी को गोली मारी गई तो हम दौड़ते आ गए यहाँ पे तो यहाँ देखा यहाँ खून गिरा था यहाँ खून गिरा था और जब हम देखने लगे तो तब तक उसको अपना बतीजा ले गया था बाइक पे अस्पताल में तो वहाँ से फिर वो एम्बुलेंस पे शायद शुपियान ले गए तो फैमिली क्या है इस फैमिली इसकी दो बच्चे हैं छोटे एक लड़की है बड़ी और एक लड़का है उसका भाई भी इधर है उसके बच्चे भी फिफ्थ में पढ़ता है और बच्ची शायद सातवीं में पढ़ती है तो यानी घर घर में इनमें इनका सब कुछ घर में ही था इनका कोई नौकरी वोकरी नहीं है कुछ नहीं है सेल फोन का एड था यहीं पे बाग बगी चक्कर बेचारा घर से भी बाहर नहीं निकला इन दिनों वो अंदर ही बैठता डर डर लग रहा है बहुत डर लगता है बहुत डर लगता है ISRO's heaviest rocket uh, will launch the UK startup OneWeb's 36 broadband satellites from the spaceport in Andhra Pradesh, Sri Harikota on October 23rd, marking the launcher's entry into the global commercial launch service market. Samadhi Party Chief Gopal Italia made a cast slur against Prime Minister Modi. The Janta Dal United Chief now has now made a derogatory remark against the Prime Minister by calling him Perupia or Duplicate. Soon after, JDU's uh, Lalan Singh made a derogatory remark against Prime Minister. BJP came down heavily on its former ally, JDU, has, and called the party chief's remark shameful and said it showcased the extreme arrogance of the feudal mindset. उनके वो राष्ट्रीय अध्यक्ष हैं। It is a feudal mindset, Mr. Prakash, full of arrogance, अहंकार पूरा है। अच्छा है। देश ने बहुतों का अहंकार खत्म किया है। ललन बाबू जदयू का भी खत्म करेंगे। The DMK today staged a protest against the Parliamentary Committee's recommendation to make Hindi the medium of instruction in central educational institutes. The DMK's showdown came after Tamil Nadu CM. And DMK chief MK Stalin wrote to the central government and warned against the imposition of the Hindi language. A major crackdown against the terror supporters in Jammu and Kashmir. Jammu and Kashmir Lieutenant Governor Manoj Sinha's administration today terminated five government employees for their links with the various terrorist outfits. In a mega crackdown on West Bengal SSC recruitment scam, the Enforcement Directorate today, Saturday, has now raided. Manik Bhattacharya's close aide, Tapas Mandal's residence there in North 24 Parganas. The investigation agency has also reportedly raided Manik Bhattacharya's offices in other areas where young college students were allegedly trained as teachers. Massive fire breaks out at a plastic warehouse in Russia's Yekaterinburg. Cloud of black smoke surrounded Russia's plastic warehouse. This comes in the backdrop of Russia Ukraine war, which continues to escalate. Visuals on your screen show as firefighters deployed at the incident site, continuously putting an effort to douse the massive fire. In what comes as a relief, no casualties have been reported at the fire site. Massive fire engulfs warehouse in Russia completely. Agency report for Republic TV. 
Viewers, AI MIM leader Shokat Ali's comment against Hindu women has drawn the ire of BJP, who has demanded answers from the party chief OAC. Drawing a comparison, Shokat allegedly said that Hindus marry one but have three mistresses. NFIR has been registered against the leader. Here's the full story. In a fresh controversy, Asaduddin OAC's AI MIM UP chief Shokat Ali made a controversial remark on Hindu marriage at a rally in UP's Sambhal. He said that even if Muslims have two marriages, they give respect to both wives in society. But Hindus marry one and have three mistresses and neither respect the wife nor the mistress. <laughs> Later on, this Neta went on to justify his statements by saying that he did not say anything unconstitutional or related to any other religion. कि पहली चीज तो ये है मेरा वो बयान देने का मकसद तो वो नहीं जो लोग चला रहे हैं आपको मालूम है कि आज से पांच दिन पहले दिल्ली के अंदर एक साधु ने बीएचपी का प्रोग्राम था उसमें कहा कि मुसलमानों को चुन चुन करके मारा मारना है ये चौदह शादियां करते हैं चालीस बच्चे पैदा करते हैं तो मैंने इंडिविजुअल उसको ये कहा था कि मुसलमान कोई गाजर मूली नहीं है कि आप उसको काट करके फेंक देंगे और दूसरी चीज मैंने उसके बयान पे ही ये बात कही थी कि जो ये कह रहे हैं कि हम आ, हम अगर दो शादी भी करते हैं तो शादियों में हम दोनों बीवी को सम्मान देते हैं दोनों के बच्चे को अपना बच्चा समझते हैं लेकिन वो लोग जो लोग एक एक से एक शादी तो करते हैं लेकिन तीन पत्नियां इनकी अलग से रहती हैं लेकिन समाज में उसको छुपाते हैं तो वो गलत है या हम गलत हैं now there has been no comment or action against Shokat Ali from AIMIM, but police have registered an FIR against the AIMIM leader for his inciting comments against Hindus. Meanwhile, the BJP has trained its guns at AIMIM chief Asaduddin Owesi for the comments made by his party leaders. The Congress, meanwhile, has called AIMIM the B team of the BJP and said the controversy was orchestrated. Bureau Report, Republic TV. Shubham Garg's family has been granted a visa to visit Australia. Now, the Indian was repeatedly stabbed in Sydney as a result of an alleged hate crime. 1950, we are the largest economy in Asia. From 1950 to 1980, we grew at 3.5% a year. Population grew at 2.5%. Per capita income, 1% a year. Because of Nehru's failed policy. Nehru made sure that we became poorer in 1980 than 1950. This is all data, not politics. 1980 to 1990, we grew at 5.5%, population 2.25%, but debt grew from $20 billion in, 90, um, in, in 1981 to $80 billion, and we are broke by 91. In 91, because private capital was suppressed by Nehru because of his dalliance with the Soviet model and the Fabian school, and you know his disdain for business. 1991, GDP was $275 billion. 2022, we reached $3.15 trillion. We grew at 8.2% year in dollar terms for 31 years is incredible in 2014 shahzad gdp was 113 lakh crores in 2022 is 236 lakh crores and this year was supposed to go to 276 lakh crores so am i optimistic i lived to the last 30 years i seen the rise of this country i seen what people can do i seen that 108 unicorns i seen a trillion dollars of value in the digital market i seen the rise of sanjeev what would you want? If I'm not optimistic with all this, what do you want? Come on, give me a break. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the United States of America has recently rolled out its national security strategy. It defines how the U.S. looks at the world, geopolitically, diplomatically, and militarily. It defines the United States of America's national security perspectives. This weekend, join me in Checkmate as I take you through the steps of America's national security strategy.
Following the case of human uh, sacrifice that emerged in Elanthur, the police are expected to visit the site of the incident to ascertain whether there are any more bodies at the site. The Coimbatore District Administration sealed four offices of the Popular Front of India. The police was accordingly deployed at the offices and in areas of concern during the sealing of the offices. I want to ask the panelists here that do you think India is still the bright spot or do you think that the financial storm is about to hit us as well? India has been a free market economy throughout the history. That's why we are the richest country in the world. 1991 GDP was 275 billion. 2022 we reached 3.15 trillion. We grew at 8.2 percent a year for 31 years. I seen the rise of this country. I seen a trillion dollars of value in the digital market. Uh, there are ups and downs. Yes, some may not survive, but but the ones who are fit will survive and do well. When I look back on what I see today, there has been a huge change in the business environment, in the companies, in the economy, in the rate of growth, in how fast we are progressing. If you look at the change, it's been brought by new companies, new initiatives, and very often by startups. So actually, the startups of today will be the giant company of tomorrow. Top headline this morning, economic fugitive weaponizes foreign media to target Prime Minister Modi and government with a full page ad in Wall Street Journal. After the speculation on the Ganguly's exit from the BCCI, Saurabh Ganguly will contest in Cricket Association of Bengal election. DCGI's reply to the WHO on the cough syrup by Maiden Pharma issue stated that so far the results they've received are inadequate, inadequate to determine the etiology. Jan Sena party workers heckled YSR Congress party ministers when they reached Vishakhapatnam. AIMIM UP chief Shaukat Ali makes a controversial remark on Hindu marriage and says that Muslims respect their wives but Hindus have three mistresses. Sunday morning, I'm Samiksha Srivastava, straight up starting with our top story. OVC's AIMIM UP chief Shaukha Ali made a controversial remark on Hindu marriage at a rally in UP. Uh, the AIMIM leader said that even if Muslims have two marriages, they give respect to both the wives in society, whereas Hindus marry once and have mistresses, uh, three mistresses, and neither respect uh, and neither do they give respect to their wives, nor wife, nor their mistresses. In a fresh controversy, Asaduddin Oasis AIMIM UP chief Shokat Ali made a controversial remark on Hindu marriage at a rally in UP's Sambhal. He said that even if Muslims have two marriages, they give respect to both wives in society, but Hindus marry one and have three mistresses and neither respect the wife nor the mistress. <laughs> Later on, this Neta went on to justify his statements by saying that he did not say anything unconstitutional or related to any other religion. आपको मालूम है कि आज से 5 दिन पहले दिल्ली के अंदर एक साधु ने वीएचपी का प्रोग्राम था उसमें कहा कि मुसलमानों को चुन-चुन करके मारा मारना है ये 14 शादियां करते हैं 40 बच्चे पैदा करते हैं तो मैंने इंडिविजुअल उसको ये कहा था कि मुसलमान कोई गाजर मूली नहीं है कि आप उसको काट करके फेंक देंगे और दूसरी चीज मैंने उसके बयान में ही ये बात कही थी कि जो ये कह रहे हैं कि हम हम अगर दो शादी भी करते हैं तो शादियों में हम दोनों बीवी को सम्मान देते हैं 
दोनों के बच्चे को अपना बच्चा समझते हैं लेकिन वो लोग जो लोग एक एक से एक शादी तो करते हैं लेकिन तीन पत्नियां इनकी अलग से रहती हैं लेकिन समाज में उसको छुपाते हैं तो वो गलत है या हम गलत है Now there has been no comment or action against Shaukat Ali from AIMIM but police have registered an FIR against the AIMIM leader for his inciting comments against Hindus Meanwhile the BJP has trained its guns at AIMIM chief Asaduddin Owaisi for the comments made by his party leaders The Congress meanwhile has called AIMIM the B team of the BJP and said the controversy was orchestrated Bureau report Republic TV Now senior advisor to the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting Kanchan Gupta has revealed the mastermind of the advertisement is Rama Chandran uh, Vishwanath the former CEO of Devas uh, Devas an economic offender in India On October 13th this full page advertisement was published in a US based newspaper Wall Street Journal The truth about the advertisement is now becoming clear The senior advisor to the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting Kanchan Gupta has revealed that the mastermind of the advertisement is Ramachandran Vishwanathan former CEO of Devas an economic offender in India The owner of the country uh, he is uh, Vishwanathan uh, Ramachandran Vishwanathan So the, the CEO of the company or, or the owner of the company he is a fugitive from Indian law he has been declared a, a, a fugitive economic offender and uh, uh, that's it I mean uh, uh, Devas Multimedia uh, had tried to con uh, Isro's commercial wing Ant- Antrix by entering into a fraudulent agreement First, we have to understand who's this uh, Ramachandra Vishwanathan. He's uh, CEO of, he was CEO of uh, Devas, and uh, you know the Devas Antriksh scam, and the manner in which, uh, right up to the Supreme Court, uh, Devas lost, uh, essentially making Ramachandra Vishwanathan an economic offender and a fugitive of law, in so far as India is concerned, under the Economic uh, Fugitives uh, Law that we have. Uh, brought in by the present government uh, Ramachandran has pleaded with the US government to impose visa and economic sanctions against 11 Indians which includes ministers and government officials American media the Wall Street Journal in this case before that New York Times mocking uh, India's space achievements achievements of uh, ISRO or uh, for that matter Washington Post which very routinely Uh, provides uh, its platform uh, for anti india sentiments to be strongly ex- ex- expressed uh, or uh, for for india bashing as the indian economy gets stronger and with the decline of the american economy the pattern of such an advertisement cannot be missed see the, what america has done in the last two, two decades is to co-opt the world economy into the american financial system it has co-opted the world monetary order into the american monetary order it was its strength and that is becoming the weakness also today so with so much dollars outside america and america printing more dollars and america exporting more dollars to import and with no other mechanism to control inflation they have to do it even more they are now caught in a situation from which it is i am talking about economically get out of this america has to hugely reduce its standard with the facts now out the deep anti india network has been exposed bureau report republic tv now after the shocking incident of a 23 year old iit student being found dead coming to light the parents of the deceased have demanded the west bengal chief minister mamta banerjee to deliver justice as of now the body has been sent for post mortem as a shattered parents claim a conspiracy behind their son's death faiz ahmed a 23 year old mechanical engineering student at the iit kharagpur was found dead inside his hostel room 
The incident came to light after his friends informed the college authorities after getting no response from him for two days. The Assam Chief Minister Himanta Biswa Sarma extended his condolences to the bereaved family of the deceased. The family members broke down while talking to the media. His father, Salim Ahmed, refused to believe that the dead body was of his son and alleged that there was a bigger conspiracy behind his death. Questioning the authorities, he threatened to commit suicide. He claimed if West Bengal Chief Minister Momata Banerjee failed to provide justice, she must step down. The parents are also demanding a DNA test as they find the dead body unidentifiable and have refused to cremate it. DNA test hona chahiye iska plus iska khadak puse iska action liya jaye main west bengal ka cm didi se kehta hu didi hum log assam se padhaya padhne ke liye bachcha bheja hai agar yahi harkat raha na to assam se koi bachcha nahi aayega west bengal aur west bengal ka bhi aadmi guwahati cross nahi kar sakta hai hum bata dete hain hamara dua mera ek ladka tha ye padhne ke liye wahan bhi nahi jata aaj hamara sath aisa ho gaya mera ladke ko maar dala faiz's mother revealed that the last conversation with him happened on the night of October 11. According to her, there were no signs of him being under any mental pressure. She revealed that Fires had plans of studying further and working in the Indian Embassy. She questioned the state of the body and refused to believe it was her son. आप लोग बोलिए डॉक्टर को बुलाइए आप लोग क्यों नहीं खुलवा रहे डॉक्टर को बुलाइए और पूछिए तीन दिन चार दिन में डेड बॉडी ऐसे गलता है क्या गलता है क्या एकदम सूरा सर गया चार दिन में ऐसे डेड बॉडी मोकेज में रखने वाला डेड बॉडी ऐसे कैसे सर गया चार दिन The inconsolable family members were seen completely devastated by the incident A relative of Fires fell unconscious while trying to cope with the loss Parents want a DNA test, though the, uh, the the IIT authority, the DN, and the agricultural department faculty have come. And on the other hand, the students, two senior students, also have arrived here, and they have said they have done all the uh, formalities, and they have uh, said that they, uh, they 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 will send the body to the Assam as soon as possible. While the cause of the death is yet to be ascertained, the post mortem is expected to bring more clarity. Meanwhile, the kin of the deceased are demanding the authorities take responsibility and make sure they deliver justice for their son. Bureau Report, Republic TV. Now, in the DCGI's reply to the WHO on the cough syrup by Maiden Pharma issue, the DCGI has stated that expert committee in its first meeting on the WHO claims over Maiden Pharmaceuticals that has examined that clinical features and treatments received by the children as shared by the WHO so far are inadequate to determine the etiology. On World Health Organization claims that made-in pharma manufactured cough syrup might have caused the deaths of several children in Gambia. Meanwhile, DCGI said the details shared by WHO so far are inadequate to determine the etiology. DCGI further told WHO that the expert committee in its first meeting on WHO's claims over maiden pharmaceuticals have examined that clinical features and treatment received by the children as shared by the WHO so far are inadequate to determine the etiology. Meanwhile, Gambia's government said that the number of child deaths from acute kidney injury thought to be linked to Indian made cough syrup has risen to 70 from a previous toll of 69. Bureau Report, Republic TV. Now, supporters of the Jan Sena Party chief and actor Pawan Kalyan raised slogans outside Andhra Pradesh Vishakhapatnam Airport. On Saturday, they protested against Vaisa Congress Party leaders uh, Raja and Jogi Ramesh. 
and also spoke up against the proposal of three capitals for the state and was soon dispersed by the police. Supporters of Jan Sena Party chief and actor Pawan Kalyan raised slogans outside Andhra Pradesh's Vishakhapatnam airport on Saturday. The Jan Sena Party workers who had gathered in large numbers outside the Vishakhapatnam airport to receive their party chief attacked the cars of the state minister Roja and Jogi Ramesh and TTD chairman YV Subareddy. The unruly Jan Sena supporters resorted to stone pelting in which Minister Roja's aide sustained injuries. The party workers smashed the windows of YSRCP leaders' vehicles and shouted slogans against the state government's three capital proposal. State Minister Jogi Ramesh has truly condemned the unruly behaviour of the Jan Sena party workers. Meanwhile, Union Minister of State for External Affairs V. Murli Dharan said that BJP is committed to the development of Amravati as the capital of Andhra Pradesh. Earlier, when YSRCP-led Andhra Pradesh government came to power in 2019, it had dropped the plan to develop Amravati as the capital city and decided to have three capitals, Amravati, Vishakhapatnam and Kurnool. However, last month, a three-member division bench of the High Court, headed by Chief Justice Prashant Kumar Mishra, ruled that Andhra government does not have the legislative competence to pass any resolution or law for change of capital or bifurcation or trifurcation the capital city. Bureau Report, Republic TV. A very short break on the other side, a day after US President Pakistan most dangerous calls Pakistan uh, the most dangerous nation, Pakistan Foreign Minister uh, issued summons to the US Ambassador. the faster rollout of 5G made possible. We have a leadership which believes in performance, which believes in delivery. Earliest possible is a few months. Actually happened uh, one day. 5G is projected to be 100 times faster than 4G. 6G will be 100 times faster than 5G. What is the future looking like? Now in 6G, Prime Minister has given us the lead that we have to be the leader. We have a clear roadmap laid out for taking the lead. Now the lead is not just in rolling out our love. The lead is in technology. by asking you to demystify the importance of G20 in branding India both as a political and economic superpower. We demonstrated to the world that the digital public infrastructure, all the innovations have come from an emerging market and not from an advanced market. There has been a radical transformation. The story of India has just begun. This is not just the decade of India, but this is going to be India's century in the coming year. Say that do you think India is still the bright spot or do you think that the financial storm is about to hit us as well? In India has been a free market economy throughout our history, that's why we are the richest country in the world. 1991 GDP was 275 billion, 2022 we reached 3.15 trillion. We grew at 8.2 percent a year for 31 years. I've seen the rise of this country, I've seen a trillion dollars of value in the digital market. Well, there are ups and downs, yes, some may not survive, but, but the ones who are fit will survive and do well. When I look back on what I see today, there's been a huge change in the business environment, the companies, in the economy, in the rate of growth, in how fast we are progressing. If you look at the change, it's been brought by new companies, new initiatives, and very often by startups. So actually the startups of today will be the giant companies of tomorrow.
for becoming a super power would you say that we really need to have that stupid faith as you call it that we will achieve while we remain extremely optimistic about the future as a country it's also probably wise to you know look at the short term problems and plan accordingly as well we are the only population scale country with open digital platforms with 600 million smartphones 1.4 billion people with unique identification it's an extremely interesting place to invest and we couldn't be happier that india is finally the top 3 in the world when it comes to innovation um, i think the way that we have come up is that we believe what has got us here today is not going to take us to where we want to go so innovation i think it is critical to remain a market leader from a innovation and opportunity point of view it's like a green field but if you really want to have impact then uh, you know india is a huge huge growth story when it comes to the banking sector 2047 Uh, there's going to be a lot of contribution of banking how can banks ensure india's emission superpower is on agenda in terms of where we are positioned now i think we are at a very fortuitous time if there was one sector which performed well during covid and also is now poised to outperform it is banks as we move again in terms of a next phase of development the banks are well poised to play a very important role Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the United States of America has recently rolled out its national security strategy. It defines how the U.S. looks at the world, geopolitically, diplomatically, and militarily. It defines the United States of America's national security perspectives. This weekend, join me in checkmate as I take you through the steps of America's national security strategy. the faster roll out of 5G made possible we have a leadership which believes in performance which believes in delivery earliest possible is a few months actually happen in one day 5G is projected to be 100 times faster than 4G 6G will be 100 times faster than 5G what is the future looking like now in 6G prime minister has given us the lead that we have to be the leader we have a clear road map laid out for taking the lead now the lead is not just in rolling out our love the lead is in technology by asking you to demystify the importance of G20 in branding India both as a political and economic superpower we demonstrated to the world that the digital public infrastructure all the innovations have come from an emerging market and not from an advanced market there has been a radical transformation the story of india has just begun this is not just the decade of india but this is going to be india's century in the coming years panelists said that do you think india is still the bright spot or do you think that the financial storm is about to hit us as well in india has been a free market economy throughout the history that's why we are the richest country in the world 1991 gdp was 275 billion 2022 we reached 3.15 trillion we grew at 8.2 percent a year for 31 years i seen the rise of this country i seen a trillion dollars of value in the digital market uh, there are ups and downs yes some may not survive but but the ones who are fit will survive and do it when i look back what i see today there's been a huge change in the business environment in the companies in the economy in the rate of growth in how fast we are progressing look at the change it's been brought by new companies new initiatives and very often by startups so Welcome back. Now Australia is battling its worst flood situation in the southeast. Hundreds of people have been rescued from flood waters, while emergency warnings have also been declared in parts of three states. Australia has been gripped by massive floods in the last few days. Hundreds of people rescued from flood waters as emergency warnings remain in parts of three states in southeast Australia. In order to control the situation, the officials have been consistently issuing warnings, mainly in parts of the state of Victoria with Rochester, 
one of the towns currently hit hardest by the flooding. We're seeing this time and time again. The last number I had this morning was 355 rescues across the state since this event happened. 160 of those in Rochester over, overnight. Uh, so I can't be stronger, firmer in relation to, and I don't know why it is, you know, people are afraid of fire. They should be equally afraid of water. Water kills. The state emergency service is trying hard to rescue people from the worst hit areas while issuing warnings consistently. We're gonna help them all fill up all the bags so we can keep safe. Not only the emergency services, even the residents are helping people rescue from inundated areas. Meanwhile, houses are submerged in water. Really concerned. Uh, some of these people have lived in the community for a long time and uh, the floods have just gone through and devastated everything that they've got. So far, one person has died in the hardest hit town due to the flood waters. It was announced on Saturday that a man's body was found dead in flood waters in Rochester, close to 200 kilometres north of Melbourne. We of course send our deepest sympathies to his family and friends. Rochester is a proud local community, a very tight local community, uh, and uh, they'll all be, uh, I know, uh, uh, saddened to hear of one of their number passing away. I just make the point, we'll stand with that family and all families affected by this, uh, but it just brings home for all of us that this is serious, this is potentially very, very dangerous. However, this is not the first time that Australia is witnessing the flood fury. The country witnessed the flood disaster in March, which was caused by heavy storms in Queensland and New South Wales. At that time, at least 20 people were reported dead. Agency Report, Republic TV. Slipping into a very short break on the other side will get you the latest outgoing BCCI president Saurabh Ganguly is planning to contest the elections to the Cricket Association of Bengal announcing his plans. Ganguly says he will file nominations for the president's post on October the 22nd. I want to ask the panelists here that do you think India is still the bright spot or do you think that the financial storm is about to hit us as well? In India has been a free market economy throughout our history. That's why we are the richest country in the world. 1991 GDP was 275 billion. 2022 we reached 3.15 trillion. We grew at 8.2 percent a year for 31 years. I've seen the rise of this country. I've seen a trillion dollars of value in the digital market. So there are ups and downs. Yes, some may not survive, but, but the ones who are fit will survive and do well. When I look back on what I see today, there's been a huge change in the business environment, in the companies, in the economy, in the rate of growth, in how fast we are progressing. If you look at the change, it's been brought by new companies, new initiatives, and very often by startups. So actually, the startups of today will be the giant companies of tomorrow. For becoming a super power, would you say that we really need to have that stupid faith, as you call it, that we will achieve? While we remain extremely optimistic about the future as a country, it's also probably wise to you know, look at the short-term problems and plan accordingly as well. We are the only population-scale country with open digital platforms, with 600 million smartphones, 1.4 billion people with unique identification. It's an extremely interesting place to invest and we couldn't be happier that India is finally the top three in the world. When it comes to innovation, um, I think the way that we have come up is that we believe what has got us here today is not going to take us to where we want to go. So innovation, I think it is critical to remain a market leader. From an innovation and opportunity point of view, it's like a green field. But if you really want to have impact, then uh, you know India is a huge, huge growth story. When it comes to the banking sector, 2047, uh, there's going to be a lot of contribution of banking. How can banks ensure India's emission superpower is on agenda? In terms of where we are positioned now, I think we are at a very fortuitous time. If there was one sector which 
performed well during COVID and also is now poised to outperform its banks. As we move again in terms of our next phase of development, the banks are well poised to play a very important role. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the United States of America has recently rolled out its national security strategy. It defines how the US looks at the world, geopolitically, diplomatically and militarily. It defines the United States of America's national security perspectives. This weekend, join me in Checkmate as I take you through the steps of America's national security strategy. the faster rollout of 5G made possible. We have a leadership which believes in performance, which believes in delivery. Earliest possible is a few months. It actually happened in one day. 5G is projected to be 100 times faster than 4G. 6G will be 100 times faster than 5G. What is the future looking like? Now in 6G, Prime Minister has given us the lead that we have to be the leader. We have a clear roadmap laid out for taking the lead. Now the lead is not just in rolling out our love. The lead is in technology. by asking you to demystify the importance of G20 in branding India both as a political and economic superpower. We've demonstrated to the world that the digital public infrastructure, all the innovations have come from an emerging market and not from an advanced market. There has been a radical transformation. The story of India has just begun. This is not just the decade of India, but this is going to be India's century in the coming years. Analysts say that do you think India is still the bright spot or do you think that the financial storm is about to hit us as well? In India has been a free market economy throughout our history, that's why we are the richest country in the world. 1991 GDP was 275 billion, 2022 we reached 3.15 trillion. We grew at 8.2% a year for 31 years. I've seen the rise of this country. I've seen a trillion dollars of value in the digital market. Uh, there are ups and downs. Yes, some may not survive, but, but the ones who are fit will survive and do well. When I look back on what I see today, there's been a huge change in the business environment, in the companies, in the economy, in the rate of growth, in how fast we are progressing. Look at the change has been brought by new companies, new initiatives, and very often by startups. So actually, the startups of today will be the giant company of tomorrow. Let's get started with super fast 50. A Kashmiri Pandit was shot dead by terrorists in the Shopian district of Jammu and Kashmir. Puran Bhatt was attacked near his house and the Kashmiri Pandit succumbed to his injuries when he was rushed to the hospital following the death of the Pandit. Massive protests uh, erupted across the valley demanding justice for Puran Bhatt. After the speculation on Saurabh Ganguly's exit from the BCCI, Saurabh Ganguly will now contest in Cricket Association of the Bengal election. After Gujarat, Samadmi Party Chief Gopal Italia made a caste slur against the Prime Minister. The Janta Dal Chief Lalan Singh has now made derogatory remarks against the Prime Minister by calling him Bhairupya and a duplicate. Soon after JDU's uh, Lalan Singh made derogatory remarks against the Prime Minister, BJP came down heavily on its former ally JDU and called the party chief's remark shameful and said it showcased the extreme arrogance of the feudal mindset. After sparking row by calling the Prime Minister a duplicate, the JDU National President Lalan Singh has refused to apologise. He further slammed the BJP MP Ravi Shankar Prasad for what he says buttering the Prime Minister to be in the good books of the Prime Minister after getting sidelined. A boat ca carrying uh, Bihar Chief Minister Nitish Kumar collided with an under construction pillar of JP Setu Bridge. This happened while he was inspecting the arrangements of the Chhat Ghat situated on the banks of River Ganga, all on board the boat, including the Chief Minister, are safe. 
The DMK uh, staged a protest against a parliamentary committee's recommendation to make Hindi the medium of instruction in central education institutes. The DMK's showdown came after Tamil Nadu Chief Minister and DMK Chief MK Stalin wrote to the central government and warned against the imposition of the Hindi language. Asaduddin OVC's AIMIM UP Chief Shaukar Tali made a controversial remark on Hindu marriage at a rally in UP, saying that even if Muslims have two marriages, they give respect to both the wives in society, whereas Hindus marry one but keep three mistresses and neither respect uh, is given by them to their wife or the mistress. A special investigation team has now been formed by the Kerala police to conduct a detailed probe into the human sacrifice case of the two women in Kerala. The police has been suspected, suspecting few other murders as the accused Mohammad Shafi is not cooperating with the investigation team. In a mega crackdown on West Bengal SSC recruitment scam, the Enforcement Directorate on Saturday raided Manik Bhattacharya's close aide Tapas Mandal's residence in North Four Parganas. The investigation agency has also reportedly raided Manik Bhattacharya's offices in Mossi Bhattan area, where young college students were allegedly trained as teachers. Trouble uh, also mounting there for the TMC MLA Manik Bhattacharya as the ED conducted raids at Barasat residence of his close aide in connection with the SSC scam. Bhattacharya himself was arrested by the central agencies on 11th of October. The Supreme Court will deliver an order on 17th of October. Uh, on the plea of the former chairman of the West Bengal Board of Primary Education and the TMC leader Manik Bhattacharya challenging Calcutta High Court's order in connection with the alleged irregularities in primary teachers' appointments. According to sources, a bench of justices will deliver its order on the plea by Manik Bhattacharya challenging the Calcutta High Court order. In the DCGI's reply to the WHO on the cough syrup by Maiden Pharma issue, the DCGI has stated that the expert committee in its first meeting on the WHO's claims over maiden pharmaceuticals has examined that clinical features and treatment received by the children as shared by the WHO so far are inadequate to determine the etiology. Two Arunachal Pradesh youth from the state's uh, Anjor district have not returned home since August this year when they had set out in search of medicinal plants near the state's border with China. The superintendent of police of the district said that both had left the Changla Gam uh, in the Anjwa district along the Indochina border on 19th of August. The SP further stated that the Indian Army has been contacted and a search and rescue operation is also underway. Union Home Minister Amit Shah has released the BJP's election theme song, Himachal Ki Pukar Fir BJP Sarkar, the theme song, has been released during the poll campaign with the Chief Minister Jairam Thakur at Sirmor. NC Chief Farooq Abdullah, PDP Chief Mehbooba Mufti and other members of the Gupkar Alliance met over JNK issues at Farooq Abdullah's residence in Srinagar. In a major crackdown on terror supporters in Jammu and Kashmir, JNK Lieutenant Governor Manoj Sinha's administration terminated five government employees for their links with various terror outfits. The Haryana government has granted 40 days parole to rape convict Gurmeet Ram Rahim Singh, the self-styled Godwin, currently facing 20 years of jail time allowed to come out of the jail in Rohtak. Mother Dairy hiked its prices of full cream milk and cow milk by 2 rupees per litre across the Delhi NCR, citing uh, rising input prices. A Mother Dairy spokesperson said that the decision was taken because of the constant surge in price of raw materials over the past two months. A spokesperson further added that the price hike will be effective starting 16th of October. A full-fledged Korean uh, cultural festival, Rangde Korea, has been commenced on where the K-pop boy group uh, Kingdom and the girl group Bugabu stole the audience's heart. The two-day festival was started with lightning of the lamp by the ambassador of the Republic of Korea to India and the chief guest Sri Kumar Tuveen, Director General. And uh, in more news uh, coming in,
Prime Minister Modi paid tributes to former President APJ Abdul Kalam with him stating that the former president was greatly admired for his contribution to our nation as a scientist and as a president who struck a chord with every section of the society. A 23-year-old man working at a chicken stall was arrested by the Yashwantpur police under the Karnataka Protection of Rights to Freedom of Religion Act for reportedly luring and marrying a 19-year-old girl. The arrest makes it the first arrest under the newly passed law notified on the 30th of September. An improvised explosive device was reported at the Bandipura in Jammu and Kashmir leading to bomb disposal squad of Jammu and Kashmir army being called in to defuse the explosive. The anti-corruption police in Tamil Nadu conducted searches across various government offices across the state. A total amount of 1.12 crore of unaccounted cash has been seized, out of which 75 lakh rupees has been from the guest house of Tiruvaru Highways Department. DMK Youth Wing Secretary and the Chief Minister MK Stalin's son uh, Yudhanidhi Stalin along with other party workers participated in a protest against the Parliamentary Committee's recommendation to make Hindi, Hindi the medium of uh, instruction in a central education institute. Prime Minister Modi chaired a meet of the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research Society in the national capital. External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jay Shankar is on a two-day visit to Egypt. During the visit, the, EA, the External Affairs Minister discussed a range of bilateral, regional and international issues of mutual interest with his Egyptian counterpart. Incessant rains uh, at, uh, in Bengaluru uh, continue to expose the present condition of the infrastructure in Bengo Bengaluru. A road was near the main gate of uh, the Surjan Das Road caved in as a result of the constant downpour. The cave-in further led to traffic stall, uh, traffic snarls towards Marathali as commuters were asked to take alternate routes if possible. A major fire broke out at an auto parts manufacturing unit at Bilaspur industrial area in Gurugram. At least 24 fire tenders were deployed at the spot to tend to the flames. Union Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman attended the plenary meeting of the International Monetary and Financial Committee at IMF headquarters. The Finance Ministry at the Economy stated that the Finance Minister stated that the country is expected to grow at a projected rate of 7% for financial year 2022-2023. And from the world of sports, uh, Donna maintained control of a rivalry with Ariana Sabalenka by a hard-fought quarter-final triumph at the San Diego Open. Former top 20 player Vekic defeated number 3 seed in 2 hours and 37 minutes to reach a first semi-final of the year. Jessica Pegula defeated fellow American Madison Keys to reach the semi-finals of the San Diego Open on Friday. Sebastian Corda dominated the third set of his quarter-final meeting with Andy Murray to reach the last four of the Gajan Open. On Friday, Murray, who sits one place behind Corda in the world rankings at number 48, raised his game after losing the first set and broke serve twice in a row on the way to taking the second by 6-1. Joe's Ramirez hustled to reach the third base leading off the 10th innings with pop-up that dropped in left field 200 feet from the plate. Oscar Gonzalez drove him in with the tie-breaking run on an even shorter opposite field flare to right, then scored on Josh Neller double the only hard-hit ball of the innings. Just six days on from breaking the hour record, Filippo Ghana won the men's individual pursuit final of the track cycling world championship in a new world record time on Friday. Ghana beat Italy teammate Jonathan Milan in the first final crossing the line in 3 minutes 59 seconds. China's ruling Communist Party is holding its twice a decade national conference starting Today, at the Congress session, President Xi Jinping is expected to receive a third five-year term as the uncontested head of the party, government and military of the world's second largest economy. Peruvian archaeologists have discovered what they believe to be a colonial-era cemetery following 
Found in a secluded area of a large park in capital Lima, the Park of Legends is a home to a zoo, a botanical garden and archaeological site and is known for being one of the most populous playgrounds among children in the country. An explosion inside a coal mine in northern Turkey has killed at least 22 people. The rescuers worked through the night trying to bring dozens of others trapped to the surface. The explosion occurred at the state-owned TTK Amasara mine in the town of Emsra in the Black Sea coastal province of Baten. After a deadly mudslide in Venezuela, some residents of Las the Jarius are scrambling to survive in the devastated town. Heavy machinery was also seen in the streets, removing debris. After the mudslide, a large part of uh, the area remains without electricity and people have no choice whatsoever but to go over 40 kilometers to another city to buy goods. German Chancellor Olaf Schloff speaking at the Congress of the Party of European Socialists in Berlin called for reforms of the European Union to make it fit for the admission of new countries as well as more military autonomy of the 27 country pact. And uh, in more news coming in, a major uh, police investigation has been launched in Paris after the body of a 12-year-old girl was found in a trunk. The remains were found in the courtyard of a building. Reportedly, four people have been arrested in this case. Police intensified demonstrations along main streets and universities in cities across Iran as human rights monitors reported hundreds dead, including children, as the nationwide movement entered a fifth week. Pakistan's new finance minister estimated that it could take close to three years for the South Asian country to recover from the devastating floods that killed more than 1,700 people and displaced another 7.9 million. Hundreds of people rescued from flood waters as emergency warnings remain in parts of three states in Southeast Australia. The warnings continue mainly in parts of state of Victoria with Rochester, one of the towns currently hit hardest by the flooding. President Joe Biden, meanwhile, highlighted his administration's efforts to lower prescription drug costs as part of his three-state Western tour this week as he confronted a sobering inflation report in the waning weeks before midterm elections. Farmers in central Somalia have now joined the fight in an ongoing operation against Islamic extremist group Al-Shabaab, which opposes the federal government and the presence of peacekeepers and other foreigners on Somali territory that has ceased the territory in the country. A key IMF committee urged Russia to reverse course and stop the war in Ukraine. A judge in Malta sentenced two brothers to 40 years in prison each after they abruptly reversed course and pleaded guilty to the car bomb murder of an anti-corruption journalist which had shocked Europe and triggered angry protests in Malta. A man drowned and three are reports, uh, uh, there are reports of missing people as storm battered the country causing uh, rivers to overflow and flooding locations across Greece's biggest island. Residents in Ukrainian city of Zaporizhia woke to a sound of Russian bombardments. A parking lot in the city bore the final brunt of Russian strike with cars destroyed and nearby buildings damaged as well. For becoming a super power, would you say that we really need to have that stupid faith, as you call it, that we will achieve? While we remain extremely optimistic about the future as a country, it's also probably wise to you know, look at the short-term problems and plan accordingly as well. We are the only population-scale country with open digital platforms, with 600 million smartphones, 1.4 billion people with unique identification. It's an extremely interesting place to invest and we couldn't be happier that India is finally the top three in the world. When it comes to innovation, um, I think the way that we have come up is that we believe what has got us here today is not going to take us to where we want to go. So innovation, I think it is critical to remain a market leader. From an innovation and opportunity point of view, it's like a green field. But if you really want to have impact, then uh, you know India is a huge, huge growth story. to the banking sector 2047 uh, there's going to be a lot of contribution of banking how can banks ensure 
India as a mission superpower is on the agenda. In terms of where we are positioned now, I think we are at a very fortuitous time. If there was one sector which performed well during COVID and also is now poised to outperform, it is banks. As we move again in terms of our next phase of development, the banks are well poised to play a very important role. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the United States of America has recently rolled out its national security strategy. It defines how the US looks at the world, geopolitically, diplomatically and militarily. It defines the United States of America's national security perspectives. This weekend, join me in Checkmate as I take you through the steps of America's national security strategy. the faster rollout of 5G made possible. We have a leadership which believes in performance, which believes in delivery. Earliest possible is a few months. Actually happened in one day. 5G is projected to be 100 times faster than 4G. 6G will be 100 times faster than 5G. What is the future looking like? Now in 6G, Prime Minister has given us the lead that we have to be the leader. We have a clear roadmap laid out for taking the lead. Now the lead is not just in rolling out our love. The lead is in technology. by asking you to demystify the importance of G20 in branding India both as a political and economic superpower. We've demonstrated to the world that the digital public infrastructure, all the innovations have come from an emerging market and not from an advanced market. There has been a radical transformation. The story of India has just begun. This is not just the decade of India, but this is going to be India's century in the coming years. Here that do you think India is still the bright spot or do you think that the financial storm is about to hit us as well? In India has been a free market economy throughout our history. That's why we are the richest country in the world. 1991 GDP was 275 billion. 2022 we reached 3.15 trillion. We grew at 8.2 percent a year for 31 years. I seen the rise of this country. I seen a trillion dollars of value in the digital market. Uh, there are ups and downs. Yes, some may not survive, but but the ones who are fit will survive and do well. When I look back on what I see today, there's been a huge change in the business environment, in the companies, in the economy, in the rate of growth, in how fast we are progressing. If you look at the change, it's been brought by new companies, new innovation, and very often by startups. So actually, the startups of today will be the giant company of tomorrow. For becoming a super power, would you say that we really need to have that stupid faith, as you call it, that we will achieve? While we remain extremely optimistic about the future as a country, it's also probably wise to you know, look at the short-term problems and plan accordingly as well. We are the only population-scale country with open digital platforms, with 600 million smartphones, 1.4 billion people with unique identification. It's an extremely interesting place to invest and we couldn't be happier that India is finally the top three in the world. When it comes to innovation, um, I think the way that we have come up is that we believe what has got us here today is not going to take us to where we want to go. So innovation, I think it is critical to remain a market leader. From an innovation and opportunity point of view, it's like a green field. But if you really want to have impact, then uh, you know India is a huge, huge growth story. When it comes to the banking sector, 2047, uh, there's going to be a lot of contribution of banking. How can banks ensure India's emission superpower is on agenda? In terms of where we are positioned now, I think we are at a very fortuitous time. If there was one sector which performed well during COVID and also is now poised to outperform, it is banks. As we move again in terms of our next phase of development, the banks are well poised to play a very important role. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the United States of America has recently rolled out its national security strategy. It defines how the U.S. 
looks at the world, geopolitically, diplomatically, and militarily. It defines the United States of America's national security perspectives. This weekend, join me in Checkmate as I take you through the steps of America's national security strategy. Welcome back. Now, Australia is battling its worst flood situation in the southeast. Hundreds of people have been rescued from flood waters, while emergency warnings have also been declared in parts of three states. Australia has been gripped by massive floods in the last few days. Hundreds of people rescued from flood waters as emergency warnings remain in parts of three states in southeast Australia. In order to control the situation, the officials have been consistently issuing warnings, mainly in parts of the state of Victoria with Rochester, one of the towns currently hit hardest by the flooding. We're seeing this time and time again. The last number I had this morning was 355 rescues across the state since this event happened. 160 of those in Rochester over, overnight. Uh, so I can't be stronger, firmer in relation to, and I don't know why it is, you know, people are afraid of fire, they should be equally afraid of water. Water kills. The state emergency service is trying hard to rescue people from the worst hit areas while issuing warnings consistently. We're gonna help them all fill up all the bags so we can keep safe. Not only the emergency services, even the residents are helping people rescue from inundated areas. Meanwhile, houses are submerged in water. Really concerned. Uh, some of these people have lived in the community for a long time and uh, the floods have just gone through and devastated everything that they've got. So far, one person has died in the hardest hit town due to the flood waters. It was announced on Saturday that a man's body was found dead in flood waters in Rochester, close to 200 kilometres north of Melbourne. We of course send our deepest sympathies to his family and friends. Rochester is a proud local community, a very tight local community, uh, and uh, they'll all be, uh, I know, uh, uh, saddened to hear of one of their number passing away. I just make the point, we'll stand with that family and all families affected by this, uh, but it just brings home for all of us that this is serious, this is potentially very, very dangerous. However, this is not the first time that Australia is witnessing the flood fury. The country witnessed the flood disaster in March, which was caused by heavy storms in Queensland and New South Wales. At that time, at least 20 people were reported dead. Agency Report, Republic TV. Slipping into a very short break, on the other side, we'll get you the latest outgoing BCCI President Saurabh Ganguly is planning to contest the elections to the Cricket Association of Bengal, announcing his plans. Ganguly says he will file nominations for the President's post on October the 22nd. Amity has been ranked India's number one private university for the 10th year by India Today. A testimony to Amity's world-class education whilst imbibing values and sanskars in students. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the United States of America has recently rolled out its national security strategy. It defines how the US looks at the world, geopolitically, diplomatically and militarily. It defines the United States of America's national security perspectives. This weekend, join me in Checkmate as I take you through the steps of America's national security strategy. How is the faster rollout of 5G made possible? 
we have a leadership which believes in performance, which believes in delivery. Earliest possible is a few months. Actually, happened in one day. 5G is projected to be 100 times faster than 4G. 6G will be 100 times faster than 5G. What is the future looking like? Now in 6G, Prime Minister has given us the lead that we have to be the leader. We have a clear roadmap laid out for taking the lead. Now the lead is not just in rolling out our love. The lead is in technology. by asking you to demystify the importance of G2. Top headlines this morning, economic fugitive weaponizes foreign media to target Modi government with a full page ad in Wall Street Journal. After the speculation on Ganguly's exit from the BCCI, sort of Ganguly to contest in Cricket Association of Bengal election. DCGI's reply to the WHO on the cough syrup by the maiden pharma issue states that so far the results that have they have received are in inadequate to determine the etiology. Jan Sena party workers heckled YSR Congress party ministers as they arrived in Vishakhapatnam. AIMI and UP chief Shaukat Ali makes a controversial remark on Hindu marriage and says that Muslims respect their wives whereas Hindus have three mistresses. Tuning in this Sunday morning, I'm Samiksha Srivastava. Lots lined up for you in this edition. Straight up, starting with the top story in another incident of terror attack on locals in Kashmir Valley. A Kashmiri Pandit was shot at in Jammu and uh, in JNK Shopian district. The deceased has been identified as Puran Kishan Bhatt. Notably, the attack on the civilian was carried out after the security forces conducted two anti terror operations in which four terrorists were neutralized. A little past noon on Saturday, Puran Bhatt was shot dead by terrorists outside his house while he was heading towards his apple orchard. In the, at the time of the instance said that police deployment is there at his residence of the Kashmiri Pandit and he has also now confirmed the news that yes, the police deployment is there and Sujit Kumar said that the action will not only be on police deployment who were guarding the residence of the Kashmiri Pandit. My Vijay Mubashir is showing you the visuals and this is the exact spot, the visuals of the, the spot that are coming in that this is the spot where he was targeted by the terrorists. This uh, spot is just for not even two to three meters away from his residence where he was targeted. So we can say that he was targeted in his residence. Kashmiri, uh, Kashmiri Pandit ko Puranji ko mara gaya hai. Aur is pe aapko pata hi hai ki TFF ne isko claim kiya hai. Lekin hamari urs. Ab hamari urs abhi abhi kuch bhi sure ham log apni urs nahi bolenge. from across Shopian mourned the death of Kashmiri Pandit Puran Bhatt. The show of unity at his funeral was a stinging response to the terrorists. Uh, today early morning at 11.30 he got a shot here oh. and there, we, when we came here there was blood here also, here also. Oh. And by that time he was taken to hospital. And we are coming to know from TV serials, TV, that he is, he is killed, he is dead. We were thinking that it will be a little bit, it will be a little bit, it will be a little bit, it will be a little bit. This is the residence where he was staying with his family, this is the ancestral house. He is survived by wife, kids, one daughter and one son. The entire village is mourning the death of Bablu. They used to call him for family. He was poor Kishan, but who preferred to stay back when the Kashmiri Pandits in 90s were migrating or when target killing started again in the Kashmir Valley. His family in Jammu isn't distraught 
over the targeted killing in Kashmir. The unfortunate incident that has unfolded in the South Kashmir where the terrorists have targeted a Kashmiri Pandit, a minority that was living in the Kashmir Valley even uh, after the exodus that has taken place in 1990. He chose not to leave the Kashmir Valley and was working there. Right now we are outside his Jammu residence and the senior officials of the Jammu and Kashmir police, uh, they are here to console the family members, the divisional commissioner and other officials uh, along with the ADG Jammu. They are here. The murder of Puran Bhatt is the fifth targeted killing in the valley in the last five months. Body of Puran Bhatt reached his Jammu residence. And the anger is spilling on the streets. Kashmiri pundits blocked the Sheikhpura Badgam road and held protest rallies in Jammu demanding justice. We have to do something substantive on ground. If you cannot protect us, the government should give us arms should train us and not simply feed us to the wolves in Kashmir to keep this pretense of normalcy going. Despite the anger over the wave of targeted killings in Jammu and Kashmir, Mehbooba Mufti continues to question the forces. लोगों को जेलों में डाला जाता है हाइब्रिड मिलिटेंट के नाम पे लोगों को मुलाजमतों से निकाला जाता है शक की बुनियाद पे और उसके बावजूद बीजेपी नाकाम हो गई है यहां के जो हमारे रहे कुछ कश्मीरी पंडित बचे हुए थे उनको हिफाजत देने में विद अ राइस इन टारगेटेड किलिंग्स इन द वैली इट्स नाउ टाइम टू गो ऑल आउट अगेंस्ट द पाकिस्तान बैक टेररिस्ट इन कश्मीर ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट रिपब्लिक टीवी Moving on then, uh, OAC's AIMIM UP uh, Chief Shaukat Ali has made a controversial remark on Hindu marriage. At a rally he was addressing in UP, the AIMIM leader said that even if Muslims have two marriages, they gave respect to both the wives in society, whereas Hindus marry one and have three mistresses and neither respect uh, is given to the wife nor the mistress. In a fresh controversy, Asaduddin OAC's AIMIM UP Chief Shokat Ali made a controversial remark on Hindu marriage at a rally in UP's Sambhal. He said that even if Muslims have two marriages, they give respect to both wives in society. But Hindus marry one and have three mistresses and neither respect the wife nor the mistress. <laughs> लेकिन हम अगर दो करते हैं तो इज्जत से करते हैं बीवी बनाते हैं उन बच्चों का नाम भी राशन कार्ड में होता है आधार कार्ड होता है लेटर ऑन दिस नेता वेंट ऑन टू जस्टिफाई हिज स्टेटमेंट्स बाय सेइंग दैट ही डिड नॉट से एनीथिंग अनकॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल और रिलेटेड टू एनी अदर रिलीजन कि पहली चीज तो ये है मेरा वो बयान देने का मकसद वो नहीं जो लोग चला रहे हैं आपको मालूम है कि आज से पांच दिन पहले दिल्ली के अंदर एक साधु ने बीएचपी का प्रोग्राम था उसमें कहा कि मुसलमानों को चुन चुन करके मारना मारना है ये चौदह शादियां करते हैं चालीस बच्चे पैदा करते हैं तो मैंने इंडिविजुअल उसको ये कहा था कि मुसलमान कोई गाजर मूली नहीं है कि आप उसको काट करके फेंक देंगे और दूसरी चीज मैंने उसके बयान में ही ये बात कही थी कि जो ये कह रहे हैं कि हम आ, हम अगर दो शादी भी करते हैं तो शादियों में हम दोनों बीवी को सम्मान देते हैं दोनों के बच्चे को अपना बच्चा समझते हैं लेकिन वो लोग जो लोग एक एक से एक शादी तो करते हैं लेकिन तीन पत्नियां इनकी अलग से रहती हैं लेकिन समाज में उसको छुपाते हैं तो वो गलत है या हम गलत है नाउ देयर हैज बीन नो कमेंट और एक्शन अगेंस्ट शौकत अली फ्रॉम ए आई but police have registered an FIR against the AIMIM leader for his inciting comments against Hindus. Meanwhile, the BJP has trained its guns at AIMIM chief Asaduddin Owaisi for the comments made by his party leaders. The Congress, meanwhile, has called AIMIM the B-team of the BJP and said the controversy was orchestrated. Bureau Report, Republic TV.
Roundup of news and brief trouble mounting for the TMC MLA Manik Bhattacharya as ED raided the Barasat residence of its close aide in connection with the SSC scam case. Bhattacharya himself was arrested earlier by the central agency. Supreme Court to deliver order on 17th of October uh, tomorrow on the plea of the former chairman of the West Bengal Board of Primary Education and TMC Congre uh, TMC uh, leader Manik Bhattacharya challenging Calcutta High Court's order in connection with the alleged irregularities in the primary teacher's appointment. According to sources, a bench of justices to deliver its order on the plea filed and uh, in the DCGI's reply to the WHO on the cough syrup by maiden pharma issue, DCGI has stated that the expert committee in its first meeting on WHO's claims over maiden pharmaceuticals that has examined clinical features and treatment received by the children as shared by the WHO so far are inadequate to determine the etiology. And uh, in more news coming into Arunachal Pradesh, youths, uh, youth from the state's Anjwao district have not returned home from uh, since August this year when they had set out in search of medicinal plants near the state's uh, border. The superintendent of police meanwhile said that both had left the area along the Indochina border on 19th of August and that the Indian Army has been contacted and search and rescue operation is also underway. Union Home Minister Amit Shah has released the BJP's election theme song. The theme song has been released during the poll campaign with Chief Minister Jairam Thakur at Sanmore. Now, the outgoing BCCI uh, President Saurav Gangli is planning to contest uh, the elections to the Cricket Association of Bengal, announcing his plans. Saurav Gangli said that he will file his nominations for the President's post in October, uh, which is uh, the 10, 22nd of October. Following the controversy surrounding his exit from BCCI, Saurav Ganguly has revealed that he will be returning to Cricket Association of Bengal and contest elections for the post of President. A role he held from 2015 till 2019 before he took over as the BCCI chief. Saurav Ganguly is set to make way for Roger Binney, who is the front runner for the post of BCCI president. While speculations were arrived that her would take the post of IPL chairman or be nominated to ICC. Ganguly has now made it clear he is heading back to his home state as Saga over his next innings continues. Bureau Report, Republic TV. Now, a special investigation team has been formed by the Kerala police to conduct a detailed investigation into the human sacrifice case of two women in Palana Samitha. The police, as per reports, is not ruling out more such murders in what could have been a human sacrifice case. Here's more on what has transpired so far. A special investigation team investigates the crime spot where the bodies of the victims of the human sacrifice were found. Rosalind and Padmam were victims of human sacrifice at this house in Patanamita in Kerala. The front yard of the house. Now what is uh, peculiar about this particular area, as you can see on the left hand side, this is where, uh, where Padma, part of Padma's uh, remains was found. Now the police is also investigating whether there could be any more areas in the vicinity where uh, some other bodies could be uh, uh, discovered. The reason why is that uh, the main accused, Mohammed Shafi, is refusing to divulge any information whatsoever in this case. And that is why the police is uh, uh, to clear out any uh, any suspective activity. Uh, they are scanning, as you can see, uh, as you can see here, uh, the cadaver dogs are being used. These are uh, German shepherds, which are used, which has got a very, 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 very high uh, 
level uh, of sniffing. Uh, the cadaver dogs are, it can sniff to the depth of at least 15 feet uh, to, f to find the remains to find the remains of uh, human corpse. That's the speciality of these highly trained dogs. Now, two dogs have been brought in over here. Republic was live as the accused were brought to the crime scene. There are more gory details emerging and possibility of more murders isn't ruled out. And uh, what we get to understand is that the, uh, the canine unit is scanning the entire premises to, uh, as part of the investigation earlier, uh, the uh, investigation team has come, the special investigation team is over here. They are scanning the dogs at the same time, even the accused has been brought in over here and uh, uh, for uh, uh, taking evidence as well. As you can clearly see, the DYSP uh, 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 Nandakumar, S. Nandakumar, as well as the CA from RN Mola is also here. And the top uh, police officials are also here. They are scanning this premises because this is one area which is away from the public limelight. That is why, uh, as you can see around me, this entire area, the, uh, you can see uh, this away from the public limelight. and. Uh, any, any discreet activity can happen in this particular area of the house. This is the front portion of the house and uh, that is why uh, the police has brought these dogs to sniff out. Meanwhile, the National Human Rights Commission has issued notices to Kerala government seeking an action taken report in connection with the human sacrifice incident. The rights panel has issued notices to the Chief Secretary and the Director General of Police of Kerala calling in the matter in the four weeks including the status of the investigation and compensation, if any, paid to the victims' families. The investigation continues. Bureau Report, Republic TV. A very short break on the other side. Uh, all the latest as outgoing BCCI President Saurabh Ganguly plans to contest the elections to the Cricket Association of Bengal. the faster rollout of 5G made possible. We have a leadership which believes in performance, which believes in delivery. Earliest possible is a few months. It actually happened in one day. 5G is projected to be 100 times faster than 4G. 6G will be 100 times faster than 5G. What is the future looking like? Now in 6G, Prime Minister has given us the lead that we have to be the leader. We have a clear roadmap laid out for taking the lead. Now the lead is not just in rolling out our love. The lead is in technology. by asking you to demystify the importance of G20 in branding India both as a political and economic superpower. We've demonstrated to the world that the digital public infrastructure, all the innovations have come from an emerging market and not from an advanced market. There has been a radical transformation. The story of India has just begun. This is not just the decade of India, but this is going to be India's century in the coming years. Here that do you think India is still the bright spot or do you think that the financial storm is about to hit us as well? In India has been a free market economy throughout the history. That's why we are the richest country in the world. 1991 GDP was 275 billion. 2022 we reached 3.15 trillion. We grew at 8.2 percent a year for 31 years. I seen the rise of this country. I seen a trillion dollars of value in the digital market. Uh, there are ups and downs. Yes, some may not survive, but but the ones who are fit will survive and do well. When I look back on what I see today, there's been a huge change in the business environment, in the companies, in the economy, in the rate of growth, in how fast we are progressing. If you look at the change, it's been brought by new companies, new initiatives, and very often by startups. So actually, the startups of today will be the giant company of tomorrow.
for becoming a super power would you say that we really need to have that stupid faith as you call it that we will achieve while we remain extremely optimistic about the future as a country it's also probably wise to you know look at the short term problems and plan accordingly as well we are the only population scale country with open digital platforms with 600 million smartphones 1.4 billion people with unique identification it's an extremely interesting place to invest and we couldn't be happier that india is finally the top 3 in the world when it comes to innovation um, i think the way that we have come up is that we believe what has got us here today is not going to take us to where we want to go so innovation i think it is critical to remain a market leader from a innovation and opportunity point of view it's like a green field but if you really want to have impact then uh, you know india is a huge huge growth story Welcome back on to some international news the Belarusian defense ministry has announced that the first batch of russian troops who are part of regional grouping of soldiers have arrived to the republic of belarus The Belarusian Defense Ministry shared footage of what it said were the first Eklions with Russian troops who are part of the regional grouping of soldiers arriving to the Republic of Belarus. At the same time clearing the speculations over why the troops have arrived, the ministry said that their mission was exclusively to strengthen the protection and defense of the border. Мы прибыли на белорусскую землю. Честно скажу, встреча была неожиданно, очень теплая. Ну, очень очень приятно. Мы приехали в Республику Беларусь оказать помощь братскому белорусскому народу, готовы выполнить любые задачи, которые получим от командования. То есть у нас настроение у всех боевое, дух боевой, готовы выполнить любые задачи. Images from the footage that has been shared by the ministry showed soldiers were received a warm welcome by women wearing traditional costumes. With the Russian troops arriving the Belarus speculations are rife whether the latter could join Russia in its war against Ukraine. This was done after Belarusian leader Alexander claimed that Ukraine was plotting to attack his country and announced a joint force with Moscow. Lukashenko is an ally of Russian President Vladimir Putin and it was earlier reported that Putin directed that the territory to be used by Moscow's troops to launch a military operation against Kyiv in February. With the first batch of Russian troops arriving in Belarus, it remains to be seen if it will join the war against Ukraine. Agency report, Republic TV. A very short break. Lots on the other side. Special investigation team formed by Kerala police to conduct a detailed probe into the human sacrifice case. by asking you to demystify the importance of G20 in branding India both as a political and economic superpower we demonstrated to the world that the digital public infrastructure all the innovations have come from an emerging market and not from an advanced market there has been a radical transformation the story of india has just begun this is not just the decade of india but this is going to be india's century in the coming years panelists said that do you think india is still the bright spot or do you think that the financial storm is about to hit us as well in india has been a free market economy throughout the history that's why we are the richest country in the world 1991 gdp was 275 billion 2022 we reached 3.15 trillion 
We grew at 8.2% a year for 31 years. I've seen the rise of this country. I've seen a trillion dollars of value in the digital market. Uh, there are ups and downs. Yes, some may not survive. But, but the ones who are fit will survive and do well. When I look back on what I see today, there's been a huge change in the business environment, in the companies, in the economy, in the rate of growth, in how fast we are progressing. If you look at the change, it's been brought by new companies, new initiatives, and very often by startups. So actually, the startups of today will be the giant company of tomorrow. For becoming a super power, would you say that we really need to have that stupid faith, as you call it, that we will achieve? While we remain extremely optimistic about the future as a country, it's also probably wise to you know, look at the short-term problems and plan accordingly as well. We are the only population-scale country with open digital platforms, with 600 million smartphones, 1.4 billion people with unique identification. It's an extremely interesting place to invest and we couldn't be happier that India is finally the top three in the world. When it comes to innovation, um, I think the way that we have come up is that we believe what has got us here today is not going to take us to where we want to go. So innovation, I think it is critical to remain a market leader. From an innovation and opportunity point of view, it's like a green field. But if you really want to have impact, then uh, you know India is a huge, huge growth story. When it comes to the banking sector, 2047, uh, there's going to be a lot of contribution of banking. How can banks ensure India's emission superpower is on agenda? In terms of where we are positioned now, I think we are at a very fortuitous time. If there was one sector which performed well during COVID and also is now poised to outperform, it is banks. As we move again in terms of our next phase of development, the banks are well poised to play a very important role. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the United States of America has recently rolled out its national security strategy. It defines how the US looks at the world, geopolitically, diplomatically and militarily. It defines the United States of America's national security perspectives. This weekend, join me in Checkmate as I take you through the steps of America's national security strategy. Amity has been ranked India's number one private university for the 10th year by India Today. A testimony to Amity's world-class education whilst imbibing values and sanskars in students. I want to ask the panelists here that do you think India is still the bright spot or do you think that the financial storm is about to hit us as well? In India has been a free market economy throughout the history. That's why we are the richest country in the world. 1991 GDP was 275 billion. 2022 we reached 3.15 trillion. We grew at 8.2% a year for 31 years. I've seen the rise of this country. I've seen a trillion dollars of value in the digital market. Uh, there are ups and downs. Yes, some may not survive, but, but the ones who are fit will survive and do well. When I look back on what I see today, there's been a huge change in the business environment, in the companies, in the economy, in the rate of growth, in how fast we are progressing. If you look at the change, it's been brought by new companies, new initiatives, and very often by startups. So actually, the startups of today will be the giant company of tomorrow.
For becoming a super power, would you say that we really need to have that stupid faith, as you call it, that we will achieve? While we remain extremely optimistic about the future as a country, it's also probably wise to you know, look at the short-term problems and plan accordingly as well. We are the only population-scale country with open digital platforms, with 600 million smartphones, 1.4 billion people with unique identification. It's an extremely interesting place to invest and we couldn't be happier that India is finally the top three in the world. When it comes to innovation, um, I think the way that we have come up is that we believe what has got us here today is not going to take us to where we want to go. So innovation, I think it is critical to remain a market leader. From an innovation and opportunity point of view, it's like a green field. But if you really want to have impact, then uh, you know India is a huge, huge growth story. When it comes to the banking sector, 2047, uh, there's going to be a lot of contribution of banking. How can banks ensure India's emission superpower is on agenda? In terms of where we are positioned now, I think we are at a very fortuitous time. If there was one sector which performed well during COVID and also is now poised to outperform, it is banks. As we move again in terms of our next phase of development, the banks are well poised to play a very important role. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the United States of America has recently rolled out its national security strategy. It defines how the US looks at the world, geopolitically, diplomatically and militarily. It defines the United States of America's national security perspectives. This weekend, join me in Checkmate as I take you through the steps of America's national security strategy. the faster rollout of 5G made possible. We have a leadership which believes in performance, which believes in delivery. Earliest possible is a few months. Actually happened in one day. 5G is projected to be 100 times faster than 4G. 6G will be 100 times faster than 5G. What is the future looking like? Now in 6G, Prime Minister has given us the lead that we have to be the leader. We have a clear roadmap laid out for taking the lead. Now the lead is not just in rolling out our love. The lead is in technology. by asking you to demystify the importance of G20 in branding India both as a political and economic superpower. We demonstrated to the world that the digital public infrastructure, all the innovations have come from an emerging market and not from an advanced market. There has been a radical transformation. The story of India has just begun. This is not just the decade of India, but this is going to be India's century in the coming years. Here that do you think India is still the bright spot or do you think that the financial storm is about to hit us as well? In India has been a free market economy throughout our history. That's why we are the richest country in the world. 1991 GDP was 275 billion. 2022 we reached 3.15 trillion. We grew at 8.2 percent a year for 31 years. I seen the rise of this country. I seen a trillion dollars of value in the digital market. Uh, there are ups and downs. Yes, some may not survive, but but the ones who are fit will survive and do well. When I look back on what I see today, there's been a huge change in the business environment. A day after US President Joe Biden calls Pakistan most dangerous nation, Pak Foreign Minister Bilawal Bhutto Zardari issues summons to US Ambassador. Russia-Ukraine war continues to escalate. Chief spokesperson of Russian Defense Ministry states Ukrainian advances swiftly, countered by Russian forces. In one of the deadliest blasts after 2014, over 40 people lose their lives following an explosion in a coal mine in Turkey. In letter to North Korea's Kim, China's Xi calls for communication, unity and cooperation. 
Another setback to former Pak Prime Minister Imran Khan. District Court in Islamabad extends the physical remand of Azam Khan Swati for a day over a controversial tweet. Hello and welcome to this edition of World This Morning. I'm Rukma in our top story from across the globe a day after US President Joe Biden calls out Pakistan as the most dangerous nation. Pakistan Foreign Minister Bilawal Bhutto Zardari issues a summons to the US ambassador. Here's more. After US President Joe Biden called Pakistan one of the most dangerous nations in the world with nuclear weapons without any coercion, Pakistan has now summoned the US ambassador and issued a demark on the statement by the President of the United States. Biden made the comments during a reception of the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee. Pakistan's Prime Minister of Foreign Affairs, Bilawal Bhutto Zardari, said that because of the failure of Imran Khan's policy, they are trying to rectify and strengthen relationship with the US. Bilawal asserted that he did not think the decision to summon Ambassador Donald Bloom will negatively affect Islamabad's relations with Washington, D.C. Meanwhile, former Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan condemned Joe Biden's remarks saying that the US president had reached an unwarranted conclusion on Pakistan's nuclear capability. Agency Report, Republic TV. Australia is battling its worst flood situation in the southeast. Hundreds of people have been rescued from flood waters, while emergency warnings have been declared in parts of three states. Here are the details. Australia has been gripped by massive floods in the last few days. Hundreds of people rescued from flood waters as emergency warnings remain in parts of three states in southeast Australia. In order to control the situation, the officials have been consistently issuing warnings, mainly in parts of the state of Victoria with Rochester, one of the towns currently hit hardest by the flooding. We're seeing this time and time again. The, the last number I had this morning was um, 355 um, rescues across the state since this, where this event happened. 160 of those in Rochester over, overnight. Uh, so I can't be stronger, firmer in relation to, and I don't know why it is, you know, people are afraid of fire. They should be equally afraid of water. Water kills. The state emergency services trying hard to rescue people from the worst hit areas while issuing warnings consistently. We're going to help them all fill up all the bags so we can keep safe. Not only the emergency services, even the residents are helping people rescue from inundated areas. Meanwhile, houses are submerged in water. Really concerned. Uh, some of these people have lived in the community for a long time and uh, the floods have just gone through and devastated everything that they've got. So far, one person has died in the hardest hit town due to the flood waters. It was announced on Saturday that a man's body was found dead in flood waters in Rochester, close to 200 kilometres north of Melbourne. We, of course, send our deepest sympathies to his family and friends. Rochester is a proud local community, a very tight local community, uh, and uh, they'll all be, uh, I know, uh, uh, saddened to hear of one of their number passing away. I just make the point, we'll stand with that family and all families affected by this, uh, but it just brings home for all of us that this is serious, this is potentially very, very dangerous. However, this is not the first time that Australia is witnessing the flood fury. The country witnessed the flood disaster in March, which was caused by heavy storms in Queensland and New South Wales. At that time, at least 20 people were reported dead. Agency Report, Republic TV.
In another setback for former Prime Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan, a district court in Islamabad has extended the physical remand of Azam Khan Swati for a day over a controversial tweet that he made against the Pakistani army chief. A district court in Islamabad on Saturday extended the physical remand of Pakistani Senator Azam Khan Swati for one more day in a case related to a controversial tweet. The court had rejected a demand by Pakistan's Federal Investigation Agency for an eight-day extension in remand of Swati. Azam Swati's lawyer said he was arrested stripped and tortured for tweeting about the country's army chief. Our accused Azram Sarwati has been produced before the Honorable Magistrate regarding his further remand. Basically, prosecution demanded an extension in remand. Their plea was that they still have to recover the Twitter account as well as they have to recover the specific mobile from which this tweet was made. On the other hand, from accused side, it was clearly stated that as a tweet has already been admitted, so there is no need for further extension of remand. And on that, judge has concluded the proceeding. The FIA has accused Azam Swati of a mischievous act of subversion to create a rift in the armed forces and to harm the state of Pakistan. Swati is reportedly the third senior leader of Khan's Tehreek e Insaf party to be arrested by the FIA. Agency report, Republic TV. And breaking news now, coming in from Turkey, we get you the visuals of a skyscraper in Istanbul catching fire. The fire broke out in the 24-storey building in Istanbul's Kadikoy district. There are a large number of firefighters on the site fighting the fire. Some And uh, you're watching the visuals of the 24-storey building in Istanbul in Turkey, which caught fire. And... And these are the visuals uh, as uh, we are showing you from uh, Istanbul in Turkey of uh, the massive fire that broke out in the 24-storey building. And uh, videos uh, are emerging of the high-rise block of flats in Istanbul completely engulfed in flames. The blaze can be seen, as you can see, ripping through the 24-storey building, sending smoke billowing across the sky. Multiple videos have been shared on Twitter tonight, showing the column fire consuming most floors of the skyscraper. It was said to be unfolding in the Flutep area of uh, Flikirtape area of Istanbul. Videos also showed swarms of emergency response vehicles surrounding the burning tower and crowds gathering to watch. The local media has reported that the fire broke out on the building's lower floors and quickly reached the top floor. And time now for a short break, but coming up uh, on the other side here on World This Morning, Chief Spokesperson of Russian Defense Ministry states Ukrainian advances swiftly countered by Russian forces. Also coming up, the Belarusian Defense Ministry has announced that the first batch of Russian troops who are part of the regional grouping of soldiers have arrived in the Republic of Belarus. MIT has been ranked India's number one private university for the 10th year by India Today. A testimony to Amity's world-class education whilst imbibing values and sanskars in students.
For becoming a super power, would you say that we really need to have that stupid faith, as you call it, that we will achieve? While we remain extremely optimistic about the future as a country, it's also probably wise to you know, look at the short-term problems and plan accordingly as well. We are the only population-scale country with open digital platforms, with 600 million smartphones, 1.4 billion people with unique identification. It's an extremely interesting place to invest and we couldn't be happier that India is finally the top three in the world. When it comes to innovation, um, I think the way that we have come up is that we believe what has got us here today is not going to take us to where we want to go. So innovation, I think it is critical to remain a market leader. From an innovation and opportunity point of view, it's like a green field. But if you really want to have impact, then uh, you know India is a huge, huge growth story. to the banking sector 2047 uh, there's going to be a lot of contribution of banking how can banks ensure india's emission superpower is on agenda in terms of where we are positioned now i think we are at a very fortuitous time if there was one sector which performed well during covid and also is now poised to outperform it is banks as we move again in terms of our next phase of development the banks are well poised to play a very important role Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the United States of America has recently rolled out its national security strategy. It defines how the US looks at the world, geopolitically, diplomatically and militarily. It defines the United States of America's national security perspectives. This weekend, join me in Checkmate as I take you through the steps of America's national security strategy. the faster rollout of 5G made possible. We have a leadership which believes in performance, which believes in delivery. Earliest possible is a few months. It actually happened in one day. 5G is projected to be 100 times faster than 4G. 6G will be 100 times faster than 5G. What is the future looking like? Now in 6G, Prime Minister has given us the lead that we have to be the leader. We have a clear roadmap laid out for taking the lead. Now the lead is not just in rolling out our love. The lead is in technology. asking you to demystify the importance of G20 in branding India both as a political and economic superpower. We've demonstrated to the world that the digital public infrastructure, all the innovations have come from an emerging market and not from an advanced market. There has been a radical transformation. The story of India has just begun. This is not just the decade of India, but this is going to be India's century in the coming years. Here that do you think India is still the bright spot or do you think that the financial storm is about to hit us as well? Nice weather. Get on the bobber. 42 bobber. Why do they call it a bobber? But does it matter? What matters is where are those birds off to? Southern hemisphere. Left. Right. Airplane mode. Rocket mode. Exit. Have second thoughts. Take a chance. Worth it. Totally worth it. And we are now getting you visuals of China's Xi Jinping arriving on stage for the opening of the Communist Party Congress in Beijing. Xi Jinping is attending the opening session of the 20th National Congress of the Communist Party of China at the Great Hall of the People in Beijing. Comrades. 
Ten years have passed since the party 18th National Congress. The past decade marked three major events of great immediate importance and profound historical significance for the cause of the party and the people. We embrace the scenery of the Communist Party of China. We ushered in a new era of socialism with Chinese characteristics, and we eradicated absolute poverty and finished building a moderately prosperous society in all respects, thus completing the first centenary goal. These were historical feats, feats accomplished by the Communist Party of China and the Chinese people striving in unity, feats that will be forever recorded in the Chinese nation's history, and feats that will be profoundly influenced the world. A decade ago, this was the situation we faced. Great achievements had been secured in reform and opening up, and socialism mobilization, and notable advances had been made in the great new projects of party building. All this had created solid foundations, favorable and these are visuals uh, of the week-long uh, key China Communist Party Congress uh, underway. President Xi Jinping addressing uh, the Congress, and it's widely expected to he's uh, widely expected to get endorsed for a record third five-year term, breaking the over three-decade norm for top leaders to step down after a ten-year tenure. And you were just watching as uh, Xi Jinping was addressing the Congress. And now news of uh, the tragedy in a Turkish mine as 41 people, according to latest reports, have died following the explosion in the coal mine in the northern part of the country. According to sources, emergency crews worked through the night, digging through rock to try to reach survivors. A detailed report. A coal mine explosion was reported from northern Turkey that killed 41. Turkish President Erdogan arrived at the scene of the mine explosion and said that the body of one missing miner had been found and also asserted that an investigation would reveal those responsible for the explosion. Elbette bu patlamanın nasıl yaşandığı varsa sorumlularının kimler olduğu yürütülecek idari ve adli soruşturmayla ortaya çıkacaktır. Bu soruşturmalara çok yönlü olarak zaten başlanmıştır. Şu andaki önceliğimiz According to sources, 110 miners were working several hundred meters below ground when the explosion took place. Sources further said that almost a dozen miners were injured and hospitalized with five in serious condition while 58 others managed to get out of the mine on their own. Meanwhile, Turkish President Erdogan also joined the funeral prayers at a village where three other miners were also being mourned. Artık madenlerimizde hiçbir eksik, hiçbir gereksiz risk görmek istemiyoruz. The mine belongs to the state-owned Turkish hard coal enterprises. Turkey also witnessed its deadliest coal mining disaster in 2014 when 301 people died after a blast in the western town of Soma. Agency Report, Republic TV. The Belarusian Defense Ministry has announced that the first batch of Russian troops who are part of the regional grouping of soldiers have arrived in the Republic of Belarus, raising a number of speculations. Here are the details.
the Belarusian defense ministry shared footage of what it said were the first Ekleons with Russian troops who are part of the regional grouping of soldiers arriving to the Republic of Belarus. At the same time, clearing the speculations over why the troops have arrived, the ministry said that their mission was exclusively to strengthen the protection and defense of the border. Мы прибыли на белорусскую землю. Честно скажу, встреча была неожиданно, очень теплая, ну, очень, очень приятно. Мы приехали в Республику Беларусь оказать помощь братскому белорусскому народу, готовы выполнить любые задачи, которые получим от командования. То есть у нас настроение у всех боевое, дух боевой, готовы выполнить любые задачи. Images from the footage that has been shared by the ministry showed soldiers were received a warm welcome by women wearing traditional costumes. With the Russian troops arriving the Belarus, speculations are rife whether the latter could join Russia in its war against Ukraine. This was done after Belarusian leader Alexander claimed that Ukraine was plotting to attack his country and announced a joint force with Moscow. Lukashenko is an ally of Russian President Vladimir Putin and it was earlier reported that Putin directed that the territory to be used by Moscow's troops to launch a military operation against Kyiv in February. With the first batch of Russian troops arriving in Belarus, it remains to be seen if it will join the war against Ukraine. Agency Report, Republic TV. And time now for a short break, but coming up on the other side in the Morning Express, final rights of Kashmiri Pandit Puran Bhatt, who was assassinated in Shopia to be carried out today. When it comes to the banking sector, 2047, uh, there's going to be a lot of contribution of banking. How can banks ensure India's emission superpower is on agenda? In terms of where we are positioned now, I think we are at a very fortuitous time. If there was one sector which performed well during COVID and also is now poised to outperform, it is banks. As we move again in terms of our next phase of development, the banks are well poised to play a very important role. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the United States of America has recently rolled out its national security strategy. It defines how the US looks at the world, geopolitically, diplomatically and militarily. It defines the United States of America's national security perspectives. This weekend, join me in Checkmate as I take you through the steps of America's national security strategy. the faster rollout of 5G made possible. We have a leadership which believes in performance, which believes in delivery. Earliest possible is a few months. It actually happened in one day. 5G is projected to be 100 times faster than 4G. 6G will be 100 times faster than 5G. What is the future looking like? Now in 6G, Prime Minister has given us the lead that we have to be the leader. We have a clear roadmap laid out for taking the lead. Now the lead is not just in rolling out our love. The lead is in technology. by asking you to demystify the importance of G20 in branding India both as a political and economic superpower. We've demonstrated to the world that the digital public infrastructure, all the innovations have come from an emerging market and not from an advanced market. There has been a radical transformation. The story of India has just begun. This is not just the decade of India, but this is going to be India's century in the coming years.
to ask the panelists here that do you think India is still the bright spot or do you think that the financial storm is about to hit us as well? In India has been a free market economy throughout our history. That's why we are the richest country in the world. 1991 GDP was 275 billion. 2022 we reached 3.15 trillion. We grew at 8.2 percent a year for 31 years. I seen the rise of this country. I seen a trillion dollars of value in the digital market. Uh, there are ups and downs. Yes, some may not survive, but but the ones who are fit will survive and do well. When I look back on what I see today, there's been a huge change in the business environment, in the companies, in the economy, in the rate of growth, in how fast we are progressing. The change has been brought by new companies, new initiatives, and very often by startups. So actually, the startups of today. Will be the giant company of tomorrow. For becoming a super power, would you say that we really need to have that stupid faith, as you call it, that we will achieve? While we remain extremely optimistic about the future as a country, it's also probably wise to you know look at the short-term problems and plan accordingly as well. We are the only population-scale country. With open digital platforms, with 600 million smartphones, 1.4 billion people with unique identification, it's an extremely interesting. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the United States of America has recently rolled out its national security strategy. It defines how the U.S. looks at the world, geopolitically, diplomatically, and militarily. It defines the United States of America's. National security perspectives. This weekend, join me in checkmate as I take you through the steps of America's national security strategy. Top headlines this morning: Economic fugitive Veep weaponizes foreign media to target Modi government with a full-page ad in Wall Street Journal. After speculation on Ganguly's exit from the BCCI, Saurav Ganguly to contest in Cricket Association of Bengal election. D DCGI's reply to WHO on the cough syrup by Maiden Pharma issue states that so far the results they've received are inadequate to determine the etiology. Jan Sena party workers heckle uh, YSR Congress party ministers as they arrive in Visakhapatnam. AIMM UP chief Shaukat Ali makes controversial remark on Hindu marriage and says that Muslims respect their wives but Hindus have three mistresses. Tuning in this Sunday morning, I'm Samiksha Shrivastava. Now, in another incident of terror attack on locals in the Kashmir Valley, a Kashmiri pundit was shot in JNK's Shopian district. The deceased has been identified as Puran Kishan Bhat. Notably, the attack on the civilian was carried out after the security forces conducted two anti-terror operations in which four terrorists were neutralized. A little past noon on Saturday. Puran Bhat was shot dead by terrorists outside his house while he was heading towards his apple orchard. In the at the time of the incident, said their police deployment is there at his residence of the Kashmiri Pandit, and he has also now confirmed the news that yes, the police deployment is there. And Sujit Kumar said that the action will not only be on police deployment who were guarding the residence of the Kashmiri Pandit. My VJ, if your mobile share is showing you the visuals, and this is the exact spot, the visuals of the the spot that are coming in. That this is the spot where he was targeted by the terrorists. This uh, spot is just for. Uh, not even two to three meters away from his residence where he was targeted so we can say that he was targeted in his residence kashmiri uh, kashmiri pandit ko puran ji ko mara gaya hai aur is pe aapko pata hi hai ki tff ne isko claim kiya hai lekin hamari aur se ab hamari aur se abhi abhi kuch bhi sure hum log apni aur se nahi bolenge People from across Shopian mourned the death of Kashmiri Pandit Puran Bhatt. 
the show of unity at his funeral was a stinging response to the terrorists. Uh, today early morning at 11:30 he got a shot here oh. and there we, when we came here there was blood here also here also oh. and by that time he was taken to hospital and we are coming to know from tv serials the tv that he is he is killed he is dead hum soch rahe the thoda sa hi lagi hogi shayad bach jayega bechara but message aaya ki wo to hai nahi This is the residence where he was staying with his family this is the ancestral house he is survived by wife kids one daughter and one son the entire village is mourning the death of bablu they used to call him for family he was poor kishan but who preferred to stay back when the kashmiri pundits in 90s were migrating or when target killing started again in the kashmir valley his family in jammu is in distraught over the targeted killing in kashmir the unfortunate incident that has unfolded in the south kashmir where the terrorists have targeted a kashmiri pandit a minority that was living in the kashmir valley even uh, after the exodus that has taken place in 1990 he chose not to leave the kashmir valley and was working there right now we are outside his jammu residence and the senior officials of the jammu and kashmir police uh, they are here to console the family members the divisional commissioner and other officials uh, along with the adg jammu they are here The murder of Puran Bhat is the fifth targeted killing in the valley in the last 5 months. Body of Puran Bhat reached his Jammu residence and the anger is spilling on the streets. Kashmiri pundits blocked the Sheikhpura Badgam road and held protest rallies in Jammu demanding justice. We have to do something substantive on ground. If you cannot protect us, the government should give us arms should train us and not simply feed us to the wolves in kashmir to keep this pretense of normalcy going despite the anger over the wave of targeted killings in jammu and kashmir mehbooba mufti continues to question the forces aaj 30 35 saal ke baad usko nishana banaya gaya jabki yahan itni security hai itni army hai itne forces hain लोगों को जेलों में डाला जाता है हाइब्रिड मिलिटेंट के नाम पे लोगों को मुलाजमतों से निकाला जाता है शक की बुनियाद पे और उसके बावजूद बीजेपी नाकाम हो गई है यहाँ के जो हमारे रहे कुछ कश्मीरी पंडित बचे हुए थे उनको हिफाजत देने में विद राइस इन टारगेटेड किलिंग्स इन द वैली इट्स नाउ टाइम टू गो ऑल आउट अगेंस्ट द पाकिस्तान बैक टेररिस्ट इन कश्मीर ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट रिपब्लिक टी and uh, gursimran is reporting live from uh, from puran bhat's uh, residence gursimran a uh, fifth targeted killing in uh, last 5 months Abs- absolutely shocking talk to us more about what are the demands of the family and uh, how is the mood like uh, what are the people saying in the area give us more details as to the demands of uh, the locals oh, see the, the the all all the people here are in grief they don't know how to react right now we are outside the residence of uh, Poon Krishan Bhatt. We are joined by his brother. Uh, he is not in a condition to speak. Actually, uh, see, they are in grief. They have lost uh, P K Bhatt, who was in the Kashmir Valley for even at the time when the exodus have taken place. He chose not to uh, leave the Kashmir Valley. He was here. Uh, there is a total grief. I request uh, if Sir Jeevan can show you visual that the family they don't know how to react to the situation because yesterday morning everything was fine. Everyone here was. Uh, happy they were living uh, a no- uh, in a normal life but all of a sudden those pakistani terrorists on the directions of their bosses uh, they carried out the killings of the kashmiri pandits uh, in the south kashmir and we have seen that how this has led to uh, a sense of fear among the kashmiri pandits i'm joined by one of the representatives uh, said lagatar jo hai kashmiri panditon ko nishana banaya ja raha hai kashmir khati mein dar ka mahol bhi hai kya appeal karte hain aap sarkar se सरकार से मैं ये कहना चाहता हूँ कि वहाँ पर कश्मीर में जो जमात इस्लामी है जो ये सारा कुछ काम वहाँ पर कराता है उनको बैन होना चाहिए और कश्मीर में जितने भी आउटफिट है वो सरकार की तरफ से बैन होना चाहिए और कश्मीरी पंडित जो वहाँ पर अभी रहते हैं उनकी प्रोटेक्शन होनी चाहिए या उनको एक जगह बसाइए 
एक जगह बसाने से उनको फिर सिक्योरिटी दे दीजिए तो ये बहुत बड़ी बात होती लगातार जिस तरह से किलिंग्स हो रही हैं आपके वहाँ पर जब बात हुई तो क्या कह रहे हैं जो लोग अभी भी वहाँ रह रहे हैं जो लोग वहाँ पर अभी भी रहे उनको वैसे भी सिक्योरिटी फोर्स बोले बोलते हैं भाई साहब आप घर में घरों में बैठो बाहर ही निकलो लेकिन वो तो जेल खाना बनेगा घर के अंदर ही बैठते हुआ हमेशा चौबीस घंटे अगर बाहर जैसे ये बाहर थोड़ा सा गेट के बाहर निकल गए तो मिलिटेंट आ गया उसको मारा गया और वहाँ पे इसके गांव में पांच छः घर और हैं कश्मीरी हिंदुओं के जो फ्रूट का काम करते हैं जो किसान हैं और बत्तीस साल से वो विस्थापित विस्थापित नहीं हुआ लेकिन बत्तीस साल के बाद उसको मारा गया ये बड़े अफसोस की बात है मैं एलजी साहब को एलजी सरकार को भी बोलना चाहता हूँ कि जो आपके एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन है वहाँ के एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन इसके लिए जिम्मेवार है जो वहाँ का स्थानीय एस है स्थानीय जो वहाँ के डी है बाकी चीज़ें वो इसके लिए जिम्मेवार है so clearly uh, the kashmiri pandit representatives are saying that the local administration is responsible as they failed to save the minorities that are living in the chodri gund area of the shopian the way uh, this unfortunate incident has unfolded yesterday this has also raised some of the question on the tall claims of the jnk lg administration where they have assured that uh, full proof security will be given to those who living in the kashmir valley but uh, the recent uh, incident the yesterday the incident that has unfolded has now uh, sent a sense of fear among the locals those who are living here as well as in kashmir valley we are joined by uh, the brother in law of uh, pk bhat will try to speak to him as well uh, sir लगातार हमने देखा है कि जिस तरह कश्मीरी पंडितों को निशाना बनाया गया अभी कुछ रिश्तेदार वहाँ पे होंगे वो क्या पता वो भी इनसिक्योर फील कर रहे हैं और क्या करें इस वजह से तो ज़्यादा ही कर रहे हैं कल से दबे दबे हैं आधे कमरों में बैठे हैं सारे कल जब आपकी भट्ट साहब से बात हुई थी क्या बता रहे बोला ठीक हूँ मैं ऐसे कुछ नहीं बोला उसने कोई डर की कोई कोई डर की नहीं बात है बोला मैं अपना काम कर रहा हूँ ऑर्चर्ड में इस वक्त फिर वो घर आया वापस बैठा था अंदर ही अंदर से ही वो बाहर टहल के नहीं निकलना थोड़ा आंगन से बाहर उसी वजह पता नहीं हाँ आर्मी कैंप भी वहाँ है पुलिस भी वहाँ है पता नहीं उनका क्या चाहेंगे क्या सरकार से मांग मांग करें कि इनको मतलब सिक्योरिटी दे दो कम से कम जो भी वहाँ बैठे हैं इनको कम से कम बचा लो आप जितने कितने मारोगे और कोई डी साहब नहीं करता वो मतलब अगर आपके डी साहब शुपियन में बैठे हैं अरे उसके पास दो चार गाँव में जिनमें कश्मीरी पंडित बैठे हैं क्या वो उनको चार गाँव में चार आदमी को सिक्योरिटी नहीं दे सकता एस एस पी साहब बैठे हैं वो किस लिए बैठे हैं अगर वाकई मतलब जहाँ भी डिस्ट्रिक्ट से वहाँ पर सिक्योरिटी माइनॉरिटी को किया है सिक्योर उन्होंने वहाँ उन्होंने रखे हैं पिकेट उनके घरों में रखे हैं ये शुपियान का डिस्ट्रिक्ट है जहाँ पर हम डिस्ट्रिक्ट एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन से बड़े खफा है कि उन्होंने हमारा कोई वो कभी नहीं माना कि इनको कुछ मतलब प्रॉब्लम है थ्रेटनिंग है